Group Iron Man is out in Old School RuneScape and I have teamed up with a friend aka Dovidas, Dark World Order, Max Nick and Death Rangers and first I want to say that yes I know this is a shift in content for a while but I hope you guys will all enjoy the journey and I'm super excited to get stuck into this. How I have decided to structure these videos is mostly like normal progress videos but uh, with clips now and then including the other group members as well you will see what I mean throughout the video. Remember to like the video if you liked it but let's get started. This whole plan is just who can fish the most caram ones? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, a friend. Is we, gotta do, we gotta do an episode where it's like <laughs> I fished more caram ones and then a friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. We're oh, cool. we have. Oh, we have. I, I can guess. change. I'll change my name once I put a bond <gasps> on the account. Yeah, we're all good. Is offline. I, I like it. Oh which, no. Which shot colors are available? So. Uh, let me message him. I just want to see if nothing glitches out because uh, a lot of things glitched well, out in the beginning. Him, I've heard a lot of people have been glitching out. I did see that. Did Wait, it say no anything? Well, can I, I heard can some I people like start? They start the group and like everyone gets forced logged out. I've heard that. What? The yeah, well, like losing. He's he's in the group at the minute. It's created. Yeah, it, so it still says fine. he's in the group, so it should yeah. be fine. But I I don't know. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, here. What this fuck? plate, say something out loud so I can add you. Oh, and maybe uh, I need to add a friend. Oh my god, I didn't add as a friend. Yeah. It's an arrow. Uh, are we not Are we not in a group already now? So we should we be. Are, I think yeah. we're all in a group. We're all in a group, but we haven't like gotten off the island. Oh, yeah, I, have it, I have it. I have it. I have it. I have it. It's from uh, right, like the group to tutor. Group Iron Tutor, which is in the middle. What is it? He's close. Oh, he's yeah. close to the armor crates. You can. Oh just... yeah, we got a five on our chest. We get van braces as well. What the hell? Yeah, yeah van random, braces. Isn't what? Is it? A bit, a bit strange. Dude, they're called yeah. iron van braces. That's uh, <laughs> that's new. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go through then. Yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go. Wait. Oh. 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 Guess not. Oh, we all have to do it. Oh, I have to go through. Okay. Oh yeah, we're through now. I got. I got oh, six. I'm in. I'm in oh yeah. What? Oh, yeah. oh! Oh my God! I got a random event. Maze! Holy oh. shit, dude! <laughs> Wait, already? Yeah, that's the best one. You got the best one at the start. Dude, Maze. there's no way. Yeah. Like oh wait! I got a, I got the event as well. I got a. Oh my God! I got an uncut emerald already. I got oh my! As well. Let's we all, got, we all got the mysterious. Two hundred and forty points what? split five ways. <laughs> oh God. The first thing I want to do is I want to get 25 agility for two main reasons. The first one is the Grand Tree has that requirement and that is a quest I want to do in the kind of near future. As well as we actually checked what the difference was on agility levels and how fast your run speed actually gets restored. And at the one agility it takes 12 minutes for it to restore from 1 all the way to 100. On 25 it takes about 6.5 minutes. So it's basically halved which is going to help a lot if I'm going to run around the area a lot. Which I am definitely going to do in the early game so i thought it would be a good starting point for the account somebody put one cooked shrimp in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for the homies man damn man thank you dude <laughs> oh i got the casket nice dude, guys all right all right here we go first full scroll here we go okay let's see one two three I got black plate legs, a coif, and 38 air runes. <laughs> uh, that's not Oh no. <laughs> Random event. These are always very interesting in the beginning of an account because what you get can matter a lot. You can get some really useful items like gems and stuff like that. So let's see what I get from Prison Pete. I got some herbs, toad flax. They're probably not very useful for anything, but uh, I got some of them. Working on 50 fire making right now for Winter Toad, and uh, I'm going to see how crowded this teak tree is at the Castle Wars area. Oh god, there's a lot of people already here. I guess a lot of people are doing this method for getting 50 fire making for Winter Toad. Oh well, I guess I'm going to try it and see how good it is. So the experience for cutting one tree is I think 85, so let's see when I actually cut it, so yeah 85 and it cuts pretty fast and then burning one log is 105 fire making compared to oak which is only like 60 experience, so I guess this is a bit more afk, a bit slower, but uh, yeah more chill. A beginner clue, I can probably complete that, but by the way the easy clue you saw before actually was only two steps and both of them was on Seiya that I was already at, so that was very lucky. 
was doing the beginner clue and thought I might as well complete the Varric Museum as well for 9 Slayer and Hunter. Very easy experience. The wheat actually makes the HD client lag a lot, so that is kind of annoying. But uh, first beginner clue is going to be... Oh, we got a unique Rune Scimitar Ornament Kit. Wait, that's actually kind of cool because we will probably use a Rune Scimitar for the early game, all of us. So we could share that cosmetic. An update on the group storage. Uh, Dovidas actually did the Rune Mysteries quest pretty early. So he got us 252 Rune Essence. We will need that all for Priest in Peril when we want to go to Canafis. Like do the uh, agility course in Canafis at 40 agility and stuff like that. So uh, very nice supplies right now. Why did I not think of this? You can just go to raids, you can get an ice demon in the first room, and you can actually get pretty fast fire making experience. I think like 50,000 an hour or something like that. It's very nice experience. So I'm just going to do that all the way to 50 instead of teaks. Basically, you just drop all the kindlings, which actually are cut very fast. You cut them like one or three at a time on my level, I think. And you just drop them in a pile, take one, burn them, and you get almost the same experience as a teak log. So this is a lot faster than that method. Last one before 50. Let's uh, burn this kindling and then we are off to Winter Todd. And the experience there is truly amazing. I don't know what the experience per hour is on 50, but definitely a lot faster than this. Obligatory house buying as well with the 1.6k that I have to get construction experience meanwhile doing winter toll as well by repairing the braziers. One singular game got me almost 17,000 fire making experience and of course the supply crates as well. I will save these and get some other levels as well before I open them. I only personally had like 10 cakes in my bank and I used up all that food with the winter toad and then I was going to go to the bank, the group storage. And I check Discord and I see a message from Dark World Order saying this. If you get on early, the bank is empty. Grace got everything. We're just pulling a prank on a friend for the content. So I'm mining here to get my levels up because I don't have any food for Winter Toad. And I need those levels anyways. I think 39 mining to be able to get the best ores from the crates. And I have to get some other skills up as well. But uh, I will show you guys the group stories in a bit. It is actually not entirely empty. So what do we have in the group storage right now? Well, one caramban. One singular cooked caramban. My last coins going to a steel pickaxe that I'm probably going to use all the way to 39 on iron around Varrock. I actually have one charge in my chronicle so I can teleport right away to that area. Pretty much the oldest mechanic in the game, but uh, I'm going to just hit this dummy for 5 attacks so I can actually equip the steel pickaxe, saving an inventory slot, because I do want to bank some of the iron ore. Taking a small break here, actually at 30 mining, to do a couple of small useful quests. For example, the uh, druidic ritual is a must, 3 herb lore as well. I think you can get some herb lore experience, very minor though, at winter toad, so I thought that would be a good unlock. And now I'm going to do sea slug. Everything is back in the storage and this is what it looks like. We almost got 50k and Dark World Order is doing Agility Pyramid I think. So he's going to uh, stack up on a lot of money here and I can get some runes, train magic in the future with that. Very nice. Also a lot of cakes, I can do more Winter Todd as well as the Swamp Paste which uh, I need for the Sea Slug quest. The higher level your fishing is, the higher chance you have of getting the more rare fish. The higher levels like sharks and lobsters and stuff like that, swordfish. So that is why I completed this and that is from 1 to 12. 24 fishing in like two minutes also getting my crafting up a bit to get some more high level gems So I don't only get sapphires and murder mystery done for 1.4k crafting also 2,000 coins That is very nice 11 crafting and I do want to get that a bit higher So I might go to charter ships and see if I can buy some uh, buckets of sand and soda ash I do not want to spend too much time on this So I just made 100 time to make them into molten glass and blow them and let's see what we're going to end up at 22 crafting should be good enough. I don't know exactly what the drop rate increases are, but I just wanted to get better than level 1, so 22 is good enough. Also, I have to get the last things, 5 construction to get a bit more experience in construction from the brazier repairing, and then 39 mining. And then after that, I will just get 50 woodcutting on doing Winter Todd, and that is when you can receive the magic logs that we will all need for Desert Treasure. So that's pretty much all I need before I can get into it. I might as well complete the mini quest that is home for the construction levels. It should give me like overall a thousand experience from building all these things plus the quest rewards. So that definitely will be, well, I'm already five. So I'm probably going to get like eight or nine. 
You also get this Marlos crate which you can open and you actually get a decent amount of stuff that I'm probably going to put into the uh, the group bank because these house teleports could be good for Remington teleports. So now it's just 39 mining and then it's straight to Winter Todd and I'm going to be there until a 50 wood cutting and then just open all the crates. I'll probably get like 70 fire making ex as well. The experience there is just so insane. So that should be nice for the entire group but I'm going to end the video here. If you did like the video remember to like it subscribe if you want to see the future progress that we're going to make we have some insane plans and i hope i can make some good content on it that is my goal have a good one guys take care in my last video i got all the skills i wanted to be able to use these supply crates from winter toad so that is what we're going to start off this video by doing also got a game snake list a tier so i can teleport to the camp by a friend himself i do believe he crafted them and put them into the shared storage but first i'm going to buy a staff of fire here from saf because it makes me take a bit less damage in the winter toad it counts as a warm item so that should be nice. Before we start the video though, remember to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually open these five crates. And uh, I will get a lot of them on my road to 50 woodcutting. So I don't really care about opening five of them. I want to see if I can get one of the items. Oh, 13 burnt pages. That is already a unique. Two warm gloves? Really? I've never seen that before, a duplicate on the first chest, and yeah, that's about it, but uh, very nice logs, some marantils, and uncut rubies for amulet of strength, or maybe ring of forging. On one winter toad, two people got a pet, and one of them is a group Iron Man, so that is pretty cool to already have a phoenix on like the second day of the release. So we're actually going to take a small break here, this is how many crates I've stacked up, and I've done 28 winter toads in total, I'm 66 fire making, and we're taking a break because we're going to go as a five man to do some lava dragons, get some dragon bones, maybe some rune items, we will see what we can get. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Desert outfit. Nah, that's robes, bro. <laughs> Uh, of course, of course. I didn't grab a game. So. What I have as well is, uh, is uh, mage robes, don't you see? Blue. Yeah. It's like wizard Blue hat. Wizard. <laughs> We're stacked, dude. <laughs> You're 25 combat. I'm nine. Maybe I'm one. not. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason is because I saw that picture on Reddit where uh, the guy killed like 400 group. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. I'll put that on screen. No, that was not... <laughs> The team's yeah, I, I feel like we gotta just go in and just, I don't know, maybe get a couple of kills and die. Look at this Chad, what the hell? Oh yeah. Persturva. I mean, he looks better <laughs> than us, but uh, yeah, let's get going. Dish. You got hit by a 10 by the- Dude, wait, the end can oh, one-shot me, it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually well, think I, I can die from the end. Different combat levels. D yeah, yeah, I'm level nine. nine. Dude, yeah. you're the highest level. I'm the lowest level on nine. You're all like 20 yeah, plus. Absolute chads. Oh no. Vettians around here, so. Oh god. Oh, yeah. oh god damn. I have so many things marked in here for Vettians. Yeah, Same. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm mended. Oh, you got this, the tile squares marked. Yeah, yeah. I don't see Vettians, yeah. so he's probably. Oh, there he is. Oh, go, oh, go, oh, go oh, left, go left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god. Go <laughs> weast. Oh, it's free world. It's free world. Oh, my lord. I got 160 oh. coins. Ooh. Wait, where are we going? Left side oh, or? Uh, it's here somewhere, right? Yeah, there it is. Uh, There's the swap. I'm already killing Wait, it. Wait, would it be possible oh, you're to attack saying... each other, I wonder? Because technically we should be like all the team. I'm know? attacking the lava right. dragon here on the right. We're all doing it together, yeah? Yeah, just get the same one. Oh, I didn't set a spell. Alright, let's see five people. Even though this is like five psych, we're a low level spell, but I mean, if you have five people, it should oh, be. Oh, it looks so nice all okay. casting at the same time. Just Look at all your people. trash spells in comparison to mine. Oh, wow. How, how many chaos spells? 200. Wait, I don't like that Vettian. is like. Oh, no! Oh, my God, oh shit! Oh. <laughs> I can actually. Yeah, we're all. I think oh, we can all get one shot. The Leon's coming. <laughs> Alright, we're good, we're good. Uh, is he safe spotted there? Or uh, yes, but that I dragon is so. kind of moving. Yeah, like, like, yeah that's... Like, how much is that in the store? Or do we make the uh, arrows? No, I, I, I can... I, we can make it to Alk. Uh, oh yeah, that's so nice. I'll, I, I can do a bank trip if you want. Uh, if you want to get some telegraph stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Drop it. Um, lava runes, I think you need for a swan song, eventually. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah oh, yeah, that's yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Crap their stuff. Oh, there you go. Gimme, give gimme. Give oh, yes. No, I'm gonna <laughs> oh, go and yes. die, maybe. No, yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, running running back, straight like... into Vettion. <laughs> <laughs> Anything could happen. Oh, no. 
Oh, Someone's gonna get comboed. Oh my! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> it's Please a disaster. Oh, Rune Kaichin. Nice. Huge. That is so nice. What an Dude, I can't wait for people to be like, uh, guys, can I have the rune kite, please? No, I want to have the rune kite. No, mom, it's my turn on the rune kite. <laughs> That's nice. nice. We don't have that That's yet. Huge. Yeah, Let's rune for out. them. Super so nice. Kite shield, uh, long sword, and uh, yeah, full hand. Full hand yeah. And you plan. could equip. That could be some nice tank in team <laughs> for yeah. whatever, I guess. Oh, I'll got uh, uncut emerald as well from random events. Motivates me. After like an hour or one and a half hour, not sure exactly how long, we were having a lot of fun, so I kind of forgot about the time. But we got 73 kills, and this is all the items that we managed to get. Like adamant plate bodies for almost everyone. We got some rune kite shields, two of them, and a lot of other rune items as well. And the prayer experience from the bones is going to be very nice to split up. We all went to the Chaos Altar because it has a 50% chance of saving the bone and when we have so few of them it is the best value for the bones. And I started with one prayer, so let's see where I actually end up. You can see how many levels I'm getting so rapidly. 25 prayer from one, that is so nice, it has given me a good head start on the protection prayers that I will have to grind for in the near future because I do want to complete Monkey Madness fairly soon anyways and for that i need protection prayers pretty much all of them i've really been feeling like doing some questing because i've mostly been skilling so this is the waterfall quest completed as everyone else does basically on the first days and that is 30 attack 30 strength fight arena completion as well and we do have some law runes now as well so i can just quickly teleport to different areas 36 attack and 14 thieving Tree Gnome Village is about to be completed, and besides the amazing amount of attack experience this easy quest gives, it actually gives a Gnome Amulet as well, which actually has very good stats. It doesn't have any offensive stats, which is kind of unfortunate, but it has some banging defense uh, stats. So 11,500 attack experience, 40 attacks, we can now use rune, and there you can see 13 stab slash and crush, I think, defense. After the last clip I actually went to bed and now I woke up and complete the Grand Tree quest and that's why my voice is a bit different but uh, very good thing we did the Lava Dragon thing because if I had like 14 magic this boss fight would take 10 years. Having 39 is very nice. 18,000 attack experience and almost 8k agility. This quest is so good to complete and now I have 44 attack, also got 31 agility from I think 25 and also 40 magic so some really nice levels a quick detour from questing i did some more winter todd and i actually got to 69 fire making and also on top of that 50 wood cutting which is the big one this is the point where i can open all these supply crates without really getting inefficient because now we have a chance of getting magic logs and i will also put a picture on the screen right now of the rares you can get the dragon axe would be insane but it is a one in ten thousand so getting one of those would be incredibly rare and the tomo fire is more realistic but also very very rare but getting one of those is also very nice the magic logs are needed for desert treasure in the future we will have to get quite a few of them and getting them is very annoying on an iron man so i'm going to open all of these and let's see what we get oh that is the first piece pyromancer's garb and i actually only have these two left got no magic logs so far so that is pretty unfortunate but i will show you guys the loot overall in just a sec we got some haralanders and on the rune light you can see all the things that we got i opened 36 crates we got 70,000 coins and i actually have 80,000 that i can just put into the shared storage because i don't think i need coins right now we only have 5k i'll put 80k in case i do need coins for some quests but um, yeah not the best opening of crates no rares but uh, hey we got a garb group iron man experience be like uh, rip that adk that i just put in i can telegram more gold bars and then uh, a friend be like i take adk but don't worry here's some leather gloves hey it's it's a good deal leather gloves are good i want to do the holy grail quest for defense experience and prayer experience a lot of it actually so i had to complete merlin's crystal first six quest points and let's do the holy grail quest thank god i had a rune sword for this because it would have taken ages otherwise you actually can just walk backwards one step hit it and then go in again you don't actually have to wait for the hp bar to be removed because the monster attacks so slowly that it doesn't really matter you can just go back and forth and hit it consistently after so much walking over the the 
ice mountain using some shorter ships that is finally the holy grail completed and look at this i was one defense 25 prayer and we ended up at 33 prayer only four levels away from protect from magic and 31 defense from level one and it says 8 now because I used the Excalibur spec and that gave me 9 from level 1, so it's still bugged, I guess. But uh, 42 combat. Super nice. 1,100 free prayer experience as well as the Ghost Speak amulet. I thought I might as well complete this super easy quest for a easy prayer level as well as I need it for the Priest in Peril quest anyways. You actually don't need the Restless Ghost to complete this, but it's an easy quest anyways. And the future quests will require the Restless Ghost completion for the Ghost Speak amulet. So 1.4k prayer experience and the Wolf Bane as well. Did I get a level for that? Not quite, but very close to it. I'm really just working on doing a lot of the essential quests to get to different areas like Plague City is very good for the underground pass and getting the Iban staff in the future also the Ardoin teleport scroll and the Iban staff of course you can use for barrows and stuff like that and that is also why I did priest in peril so overall just doing a lot of the essential quests but uh, I'm going to end the video here Ooh, this is potential gems but uh I'm going to dismiss it for now because I want to do the outro. But yeah, remember to read this, by the way, if you get it. Because otherwise, you will not have the Ardoin spell learned. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. Remember to look in the description for all the other YouTubers as well that I am playing Group Iron Man with. And uh, have a good one, guys. Take care. Welcome to the third episode of the Group Iron Man series. My name's Alonescape, and we are going to start this video off by completing Biohazard, which is a pretty easy quest, but after this, we are getting into the Underground Pass, and 31 agility doing that quest is going to be quite something, but 1.2k theming experience and also three quest points, so let's get into Underground Pass, and let's see how long this is actually going to take. I'll time the quest and uh, I will probably fail like 20 times on the agility course. Had to AFK some rock crabs for 25 ranged as well. That is a requirement for the quest. So just bang that out real quick. I should probably have brought magic. This is probably one of the most time consuming things about this. I have to flinch this with a rune sword. And it has very high melee defense actually. I have to kill three different types of mobs. And uh, I miss probably like 90% of the time, so this will take a while. At least I can save spot these demons and they don't actually have very high defense. I only have, of course, 25 ranged, like iron arrows and an oak short bow, but I do hit fairly consistently on them. As you can see, I'm getting decent hits. And I think 400 arrows should be enough to kill both of them. I realized I do want to do regicide after the underground pass. And you actually need 56 agility for that. And I was failing the jumping on the underground pass like crazy. So I actually just decided to go and grind out 56 agility. Which is going to take a long time of course. But look at the time. It took me 2 hours to get pretty much like 75% through the quest. But I still have a lot of the jumping to do. And so it feels like kind of dumb to maybe go and do the underground pass spend like an hour failing the jumps and then i could have just got 56 agility that i need for the next quest anyways as i need to train some agility i thought i might as well complete the tourist trap it gives a good amount of agility experience and i also did the knight sword for that so 29 smithing from one and agility 6 point or 4.6 k for 36 and then another one as well which gives 38 so i just have to do 38 to 40 on the varro course and then i can go to cannabis if you're wondering why i have the already cloak on while well, i did a quick detour did the rune mysteries took like one minute with the items that we have in the bank could just teleport back and forth and everything and uh, i put the xp lamp axio on agility for 2.5k experience it turns out i wanted to put it on herb lore but you need level 30 to be able to even do that but uh, i've soon done 100 laps of the cannabis course and <laughs> i have to say this is so boring it is uh, unreal and i i want to show you guys something look at this Dark World Order did 724 laps for full graceful at this exact course. And uh, I'm complaining at 100. After doing agility for a quite a while, I got to 52, 2 hours and 21 minutes to complete the underground pass. I went back to just uh, quickly complete it as a break. It also gives some agility experience, 3k and 3k attack, 5 whole quest points, and I just need to get that 56 agility now, and then I can do both regicide and roving elves. And actually the main reason why I want to do all these quests is because my plan is to go for Solra. I know it's uh, 
quite a hefty goal because it is kind of a late game boss I guess but uh, I think with the Ibans blast and with maybe a rune crossbow and the crystal shield from roving elves I should be able to do it if I get some decent combat stats. Really closing in on that 56 and this has taken quite a while but for the regicide quest I would actually need a few items so you can see on the right side here I need the 56 agility of course which I will get in just a bit and then I need two ropes I can just buy that the limestone I also have from winter todd so that's a good thing strip of cloth is just four balls of wool that you uh, spin basically also very easy and then uh, i need 20 coal i have the mine level for that so might as well just go and get that after the uh, 56 agility and then i need one cooked rabbit but anyways, here we are done at 56 agility, finally done with this grind, it feels very good and it's nice to have high agility anyways for future questing and run energy. And in total I ended with 133 marks of grace and I decided to buy the chest, helmet and the cape because that way I only end on 3 left and I get some expensive pieces out of it as well and I still have 3 items bought. I have to say, this arrow is pretty lit. I made the mistake of bringing the Barrel of Nafta as well, which I just need for the next quest or another quest I'm going to do Morning Sand Part 1, but they are super heavy and uh, falling down here is, oh my god, it's such a time sink and I don't even have that much food left, oh my god. Finally, I can complete the uh, Regicide quest. Actually, a lot of agility experience as well and some coins. It took me almost exactly one and a half hour. But now I can actually just use a charter ship to get to the... Um the Tyron area which is very nice I don't have to go through the underground pass anymore and I should almost be yeah 5k of 57 so nice I can just go to a charter ship pay some money 3.2k and I can get to Port Tyrus and that actually means I technically can do soul run now not 100% sure where you go for that but uh, yeah you only need to be able to I think it's out here actually to do regicide to be able to get to soul run, but obviously I don't have the stats for it yet I have to kill the most guardian from the waterfall quest without any equipment and it has 120 HP it's level 84 and I have 44 attack, 32 strength, and these uh, mobs actually aggro me pretty frequently. I think this one is tagged on me as well. But uh, yeah, it's going to take a while. I think I've been doing this for like 10 minutes now, and it's lost. Yeah, not a much HP. Finally, there we go. That took me about 26 minutes of flinching, but that is the concentration seed. And uh, now I've basically completed the quest because the rest is super easy. And now I just have to plant this seed anywhere in this room, so I guess I can just click it, and that should be that. And when it's done, all I have to do is I have to go back to where I started the quest, and it is going to be completed. I'm actually going to go for the crystal shield from this quest, because I am going to use the rune crossbow and crystal shield as my weapon setup for Solra. I obviously need 70 defense and uh, I will need a decent range level to kill Solra as well, so it is going to be the combat grind upcoming next. And uh, let's just take the shield, they are actually automatically imbued, but the first time you repair them, they cost a lot, but then it goes down more and more gradually. I think the first repair is like 750k and it goes down to 100 and 50k eventually. So what really is the goal now? Well, it is pretty much to just get my combat up as much as possible on the magic and ranged fronts and I also have to get some prayer- ooh, beginner clue. I have to get some prayer up as well because I need the protection prayers for Solra. I think my goal should be 45 prayers. I have both the mystic might and the eagle eye, but uh, I also need the backpack from man animal magnetism so I don't waste like a bunch of bolts when I'm going for like 70 plus ranged. I think 70 plus ranged and like 70 magic around that area should be good enough and 70 defense with 45 prayer to do solra so that is pretty much the goals right now and for animal magnetism i need a mithril axe and some polished buttons so a friend actually got them for me very nice so thank you so much for that 50 quest points and animal magnetism completed for some nice experience as well as of course the avas attractor which i'm going to disable the auto pickup thingy so i don't get a bunch of arrows that i don't want 17 fletching as well pretty nice but uh, that is the backpack achieved so i will save a lot of bolts now 
need to do the dig site quest so uh, Grace Cat 2 aka Max Nick is giving me some herb lore supplies so I can get that 10 which is the requirement for it. And I am doing dig site because I want to do bone voyage afterwards which I have to get some requirements for as well but uh, that is the requirement to get to ammonite crabs which are very very AFK ranged or any combat training method really. They have 100 HP and just one in every combat stat so you hit very consistently on them and and they also have a very high HP. Finally, this quest is pretty boring, but uh, it went by okay. And the experience you get is actually pretty nice. 15k mining, 2 gold bars, and 2k herb lore. That 2k herb lore is actually how many levels? That was, by the way, 4 mining. And then 7 herb lore levels. And now I only need to do bone voyage. But I think the requirement for that is actually... I I'm not sure, but I do know I have to get some uh, kudos in the Varrock uh museum so let's actually take a look so i need to get 100 kudos and that's actually it the other things are pretty easy it is going to take a while for me to get to 100 kudos i can get to 98 by just uh, basically cleaning these unclean finds but then for the last two i'm not really sure exactly how to do it also the bone voyage quest takes a bit and then after that all i'm re really going to do is just afk ammonite crabs for a very long time and maybe do some blue dragons as well for prayer experience but that's about it so i'm going to end the video here hope you guys did enjoy it if you did leave a like subscribe if you want to see future content and click any of the videos on the screen Screen right now if you want to see a video right away have a good one take care we have now completed a bone voyage and that has unlocked the most afk method to train combat stats in my opinion in the game which is the ammonite crabs very relaxing can just go there and afk 100 hp with the zero stat creatures and this is where I am going to train up most of my skills, at least early game, to a decent level. It is actually pretty good experience. I have a counter here so you guys can see how much experience I've got. And it is just purely AFK. I think you have to move like every 5 minutes or something to reset their aggro and that's about it. So there's going to be 2 detours I'm going to make during this video or maybe more. We will see how long this video actually is. And that is the prayer levels from Green Dragons and then also Soul Wars. So you might be wondering why why soul wars well because the supply crates that you get from soul wars is actually insane uh, they cost 30 seals and they give a lot of bolts that i'll need for solra as well as actually raw sharks that i do need for the fremenic trials quest the raw sharks and then after that i can do the fremenic isles for the nate is not helmet which is actually the one i want to use for solra Unfortunately, I can't bring my accumulator in here because you do need to have a cape equipped from the minigame, of course. But it's actually pretty decent combat training here, so I'll get some range levels through this anyways. Because you also get these potions of power that boosts my level by quite a bit, you can see there. And that makes me hit pretty consistently on these creatures, and yeah, the range experience is decent. Holy shit, I just opened four crates, I have one left. Look at this loot. This is from four crates. No sharks though, so I will hopefully get it on the last one. Otherwise, I have to do some more. But, uh, oh my god. Got a cabbage. But look at this. Adamant bolts, runite bolts. I can tip these uh, with, uh, I think these with onyx and these with the, uh, like, ruby. And I can use that for Solra. And look at this. 270 death runes. That is a lot of Ibans blast casts. If I get a tome of fire then i actually have only death runes as cost so that would be perfect got myself another eight and my range level by the way is currently 48 i've gained a decent amount of levels from this let's see what we get and i'm actually just going to open all of these on video so you guys can see what the loot is like and the first one is some arrows very nice there we have it raw sharks that is why i did this so doesn't really matter what i get now Regardless, it is just cheddar. Look at that! Rune Playbody! That is a lot of Alk. And Snapdragon is also Super Restores, and Raynar is Prayer Potions. So, you can see how this is super good for Iron Man. Even more Raw Sharks and the last one. Soul Runes, Death Runes, and Adamant Bolts. That is the best one I've probably got. That's 250 Iban Casts and 301 Bolts for Solra. Perfect.
You can see on the right side here, this is all the things that I got from 13 crates and I actually was very unlucky with the games. I think I played like 10 games and maybe lost like 8 of them or 7. So yeah, you can definitely get even more spoils of war than I did in the time frame. So yeah, definitely super nice for Iron Man. This is 160 Alks as well. Now that I have the raw shark, I might as well complete the Fremenic Trials and Fremenic Isles for the Natus Note Helmet. Of course, I can't equip it before I get some higher levels, but I want to have it done. The quests are a bit annoying, but I also need 40 crafting, and that is the only skill requirement except I think maybe 20 construction, which is super easy, that I have to get. And for that, I'm going to do Elemental Workshop, Observatory Quest, and then maybe some normal skilling. 23 to 28 crafting so let's do the observatory quest it only gives like 2k crafting so probably will only get yeah one level and maybe half for some reason i didn't even know that i could complete this quest but uh, i actually just did elemental workshop 2 instead i'm going to do observatory quest probably after but that gives 7.5k crafting and smithing as well and the mind helmet i think is a medium task as well yeah there we go so that is another thing off the list and 36 smithing as well as 33 crafting and that is the observatory quest completed for some minor crafting experience and I am 500 of 35 so the way I'm probably going to have to get that is by doing molten glass to 40. Of course I have been AFKing ammonite crabs and now and then and my range level is now actually at 59 and pretty close to 60 as well so we are getting closer to that 70 goal but it is very time consuming I think it was like I calculated 25 hours of ammonite crabs from like 55 to 70 so I mean it's going to take a while but I'm going to soon take a break here and do some winter thought because I need to get 25 fletching because that is the requirement for Fremenic trials and then also 40 crafting of course so uh, yeah let's get that done as a sidetrack. Me and Max Nick, aka Greyest Cat, actually did some Winter Todd for 25 fletching, and this is basically what happened and what loot we got. <laughs> My loot was so bad, oh no. I got 7 pages as like the best uh, drop, but then I also got some money, I guess, so that's not oh, that bad. 30k, that's actually quite a bit. I didn't yeah. actually get a single money drop, and I think the money drops. No really way. Come. Holy shit. Yeah, that is. Kind of unlucky, but you got the magic seed, which is very nice. Oh, the magic seed brings up my value by quite a bit. Two hundred and twenty k versus eighty four k. It's one hundred fifty k at the magic seed right there. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Well, anyway, I appreciate you doing the grind with me. It looks like I'm probably still gonna be here for a while, so good luck yep. on your, uh, your uh, Zora grind. Thank you. I'm probably gonna come back here now and then to get some more chances at the uh, magic logs and the uh, tomo fire mostly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe hopefully I can get one of those soon. But yeah, I'll give you the bolts now so you can uh, make the bolts for me in the future for Solra that I'll need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll go ahead and make this exchange. This looks 800k like for how much? For what? 2k. This looks like the most fair trade in the world. I'm, g I'm gonna get scammed. I got scammed. The, ab the absolute giant scam. But that is a ton <laughs> of Addy bolts. Yeah. So I, I will probably stay here to at least grind out the level to make diamonds. That's perfect, dude. My weapon for Solra is going to be a rune crossbow and getting one from Crazy Archaeologist is actually not that hard and that also gives me some magic training and I need a protect from range for that and that is 40 prayer done. So now I do have that, I can use it for the Crazy Archaeologist and basically take zero damage from it. I got a dual ring from Max Nick, the guy that I just did Winter Todd with, to be able to teleport to Ferox Enclave because I do want to try 500 casts of the, uh, what is it even called, Firebolt on the Crazy Archaeologist, so let's see what we can get. First kill is going to be one shark, Mage of the Ruins, yeah that is the first kill. I realized I had a lot of death runes from Soul Wars and I actually had the level to do Wind Blast so I actually changed to that spell instead so I brought 200 casts of that. It was pretty slow with Chaos spells so let's see how fast this is going to be with death spells. I don't really feel like sweating out prayer flicking on this boss, I kinda just wanna camp the prayer and my DPS is pretty bad at the moment so I actually ran out of prayer like in the exact end of the kill so this should be the kill if I just hit it like one more time but uh, I'm thinking about getting a holy symbol, it should help quite a bit coins, yeah, getting a holy symbol is very easy and it gives a good amount of prayer bonus so I'm going to go ahead and get that to be able to AFK a bit more 
I can say that this is definitely not efficient. You can see the boss is actually dying almost at the same time as my prayer runs out, but in the end I do have to flick. But um, I think I'm just wasting too many death runes at this point because I have only 44 magic and I'm splashing quite a bit on the boss. This will be the last kill I'm going to do. I'm actually going to run out of prayer. Hopefully I don't get KO'd. But um, I'm going to go back to this boss when I get at least like 50 or something, maybe a bit higher than that even because I might go here when I have fire blast instead of using wind blast. I actually don't have any more prayer now. Please die. Would be very nice if I don't get KO'd now. I might have to run away and like eat. I have a shark at least, so... Oh, getting some hits. Please die. Oh my god, it's not dead. I need a hit. Come on. Oh my god, I have to run. No, I don't want to die. I think that's it. I think he's dead now. Okay, so the last kill we're going to do is white berries. So yeah, this is definitely not worth it. I mean, I use like 80 death runes on my kill, so it is pretty slow. So I'm just going to go and train magic later. And I'm going to probably try to do Fremenic Trials now, which needs 40 crafting. So let's do that. Unfortunately, in this video, I won't be able to get the Nate is not helmet because I need to wait for some people to be able to do the Fremenic Isles. I can do the Fremenic Trials as soon as I get 40 crafting here, but there's actually like a hidden woodcutting and crafting requirement for Fremenic Isles, which is, I think it's 58 something, 56 woodcutting and 46 crafting, and I don't want to go for them myself. The reason why is because you need to make the Jack hide armor during the Fremenic Isles, and you also need to cut some trees that require a bit higher woodcutting. On normal accounts, you can just buy them but on Iron Man of course you can't do that but uh, we do have people in the group that have all of those stats so we are actually fine but I do have to wait for them and I don't want to postpone the video too much and there we go 40 crafting let's do the Fremenic Trials quest actually the first maze random I've got I got 75% of the reward left so let's see what we actually get for this one would be nice with some death runes or something and we got coal and we got some steel arrows so that was pretty bad I don't have protect from melee and I'm not sure I will be able to do this boss. Hopefully I can. I just brought full inventory of Salmon, but my melee stats are pretty bad. Well, I guess the answer is no, but the last phase had 26 HP, so I guess I can just get like some strength potions, maybe some better gear, maybe a recoil ring, but I don't know if anyone has that. I am getting some ring of recoils and some karam ones from a friend, but he is at sand crabs and he doesn't really want to leave, so I'm going to just go there and pick it up myself. 200 karam ones and two rings of recoil, perfect, that should be enough. Finally, we're done with the quest. It is not the most enjoyable quest, but look at that experience drop on the right side. And I can actually now buy Archer's Helm, but I don't really have the money for it. So I'm going to save that for the future, but it is a decent helmet. Look at all those levels, Jesus. So for magic training, I've realized a good way of probably doing that is a bit at least through barrels to have the chance of getting some of the carols or maybe even Arim's items that will be very useful for Solra. So I'm actually going to have to unlock fairy rings because if I want to do barrels without fairy rings, it is terrible. So I'm going to have to do the Lost City quest as well as the Fairy Tales Part 1, which is not too bad, but it is something I do have to complete. Apparently I have to do Nature Spirit as well, but that is Lost City completed. By the way, this is the fairy ring right here that I'm going to use for barrows in the future. Very nice. Nature spirit completed, some crafting hit points. Defense, I think, as well. Did I get any levels for that? 41 crafting and I think 33 defense. Very nice. For Fairy Tales Part 1, the item requirement I got was a Nature Talisman, and the way I'm going to get that is through the Abyss, and apparently I can't go there yet, so I have to unlock it. I was afraid this would take a long time. There we go, that's the Nature Talisman that took probably like 50 kills. I needed an Avanto Herb and Irit Leaf as well for the quest, and I can't clean them, it requires like 48 Herb Lore, but you can actually go to Sahur, which is in Narda, and she will just clean them for 200 GP each. So that is an easy way of getting that done. And that is now Fairy Tales Part 1 completed. And we get, of course, the Magic Secateurs as well, which is good for farming, as well as 3.5k farming. I think that's 17, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 17 farming from 1, so that's a nice boost. But uh, we only need to start the Fairy Tales Part 2 and do, like, some minor things, and then we should have Fairy Rings. 
I'm not entirely sure, but I think the way I'm going to do this, by the way, I can use fairy rings now and I just teleported to here. This is the place I want to get to and then I just jump over here and I can just run to Barrows all the way over here. I think the way I'm going to bank from Barrows is just teleport to the uh, Ardoin Monastery, bank there and then run down a bit and go to the fairy ring just below that. I know what you might be saying, this video has been all over the place and I would agree, but basically all the things I've done has been because that was a good moment to do it because of my teammates and all that, and also it is very good things for the account to be able to do Solra as efficient as possible. You guys will see of course in the future videos what I'm talking about, all of these things will be very clear then. So hope you guys did enjoy the episode, my stats are on the screen right now, I managed to get 40 prayer but that's about it, and I want to get to 45 is my end goal maybe even higher because of course if I start doing solo though I might be get dragon bones as well as a drop and I can just raise the prayer level that way we will have to see but mostly 70 defense 70 ranged and 70 magic is the goal when I want to start doing solo but I hope you guys did enjoy the video leave a like if you did subscribe if you want to see future content also I will actually post a link on the top of the description or not the description in the comment section I'll do it where there is a playlist to every single video in every single YouTube YouTuber in our team that is put into a list where you can watch all of our first episodes then second and third and so on so if you want to do that go check that out have a good one guys take care welcome to episode number five of the group iron man series my name's alonescape and i just woke up got my coffee completed a dragon slayer one for that defense and strength experience and the access to of course a rune plate body as well as the green dehyde body and hopefully this defense experience will get me to 40 so let's see if that was the case, 43 strength and 40 defense, that is perfect. And I don't have any money to buy the green dehyde body, but maybe when someone logs in in my team, I don't think anyone is on, nope, I will be able to get the money. Maybe not the best idea to try to do monkey madness without protect from melee running through this whole dungeon, but I think I might have done it. I only have three Karan bonds left though, but I seem to be at the end. If I can get the last hit here, that is now monkey madness one completed as well, and this is going to give me 35,000 defense experience, and that is mainly why I did this, not even to get the dragon scimitar, but of course that is a nice bonus. And there we go, that is the monkey madness completion, and I'm up at 75 quest points, I guess I should eat a uh, carambon and pick up these uh, diamonds as well. Might need them in the future, but uh, let's go up here and go to Dero or whatever he's called. Yeah, Dero. Talk to him and let's pick what experience we're gonna get. I don't remember exactly, but I think you can get attack and defense, and then also you get strength and uh, hit points, but not as much. But I do want the so let's see, focus on improving attack and defense. That is the one I want 35k, 20k, 35k, 20k. And my defense is now from 40 all the way to 46. And also, of course, I got a hit point level, 49 attack. Only one more level to 50, so that is nice. Another good quest for defense experience that is pretty fast is Olaf's quest for 12,000 defense experience and also 20k coins, which is actually not that bad. And that is now 48 defense and 4.6k of 49. So I'm working on Fremenic Eyes now, but I am the only one online and I need help from 56 woodcutting for the splint log and I'm only 51. So I have Max Nick who's going to help me with that and also of course Dovidas for 46 crafting for the yak armor. And they are not online, so I'm just going to kill some blue dragons for magic experience and dragon bones that I need for 45 prayer to unlock the eagle eye and mystic might for Solra. If you've been playing group Iron Man, you probably know by now that the group storage has been down for a couple of days. There is a system update here and they said that it would be fixed very soon, so maybe this is it. I uh, guess we're going to see after this update is in if the group storage works again. So let's see if it works, the group storage, and it is loading and it's working. But we have basically nothing here, all it's going to do is just make it easier to send items to each other I guess, so that is very nice. But um, I actually realized I have to get 46 crafting and 56 woodcutting myself for the Fremenic Isles, because you actually need partial completion of the Fremenic Isles, aka also Fremenic Trials, to be able to do the things for the quest. I thought I could just send over the cured yak hides to Dovidas, and he would be able to craft them, but that is not the case. You actually need to be on that part of the quest to be able to do it, so I will have to grind that out as well.
There is no way, dude. <laughs> With my stats, I actually managed to complete a hard clue scroll that I had in the bank since, like, the beginning of the account. Most of the steps, I think four of the steps was just kill a Saradomin wizard in an area I could reach. And one was just go to the uh, Varrock lumber yard. So, all of them very easy steps. There is so many good things I can get from this. Hopefully, I don't get the worst reward ever. But uh, any black dehyde is really nice. Of course, I can get a trimmed glory. I could also get an MSB, which would be, I think, better than a Dorgish on crossbow. Not 100% sure on that. But uh, yeah, let's see what we get from the first casket from our entire group on the group Iron Man game mode. Oh, two MSBs. No way. And Runehelm. G. Oh my god, this is insane. So many collection log- oh, oh, dude, I'm so happy about this reward. After that MSB, I had to go to uh, the last man standing and get some rune arrows, and uh, yeah, I'm terrible at this minigame, but it is what it is, I got some rune arrows, that's all that matters. Now we're getting myself 46 crafting, I did this through uncuts and also molten glass, which is the classic one, but that is now yak hide armor, and the only thing I have to do now to complete Fremnic Isles is get 56 wood cutting, which actually... I have to do... Oh, Blessed Axe, actually. Does that work as a Mithril one? I guess it does. Then I can actually use that instead of a Steel one. Never mind, it doesn't count as an Axe, it is Blessed, so... I have to use a Steel Axe all the way to 56. Dude, what am I doing? I forgot I have access to Fairy Rings. I can just get a Draymond Staff, get my Arty Cloak out, go to the Enchanted Realm and get one through Killing Tree Spirits. I was watching Dark World Order stream, check him out. And he just told me, I forgot about it completely. I don't want to spend too much time here, but I did get an adamant axe, and that should be good enough, so I'm going to go and get 56 woodcutting with an addy axe. Uh, Venonaris. Oh. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna do Venonaris. And don't, um, don't say any worlds or anything, because I'm live streaming. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Dude, I look like an absolute chad. What do you mean? <laughs> so you're using MSB? Yeah, I'm using MSB with rune arrows. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, I'm on Wait my way Wait for me, I got, I got a boss uh, to follow. Wait. Uh, by the way, you have to come from a specific side, because if you come from the other one, it's going to get, like, unlord, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, you kind have of... to come from multi. You have to come from multi side. Uh, or, or from... from um, was it a uh, west side so don't be at the exact like spider place but there's entrance there, if you see like there's a dungeon very close to venonatus oh, there's yeah. a slayer dungeon just go for yeah. that yeah yeah sure maybe i can do from here uh you could try i guess i mean i can just do it like this see bam let's see yeah it's fine for me i think okay, okay. what am i doing uh just, just come creep into yeah. your spot yeah, if you could mark these tiles, you see this line is safe, but Hold don't up, cross um, this line. What's, what what line? The spike, the web? W that web? Yeah, kind of where I'm walking. Like, this whole line is safe, basically, for melee. Okay. This oh. whole... Defense oh, well. he got he died. Oh, there's he PKs. Died, no, dude, oh, there's PKs. No, no, we, got it. we got the kill the PKs. Dude, it, we got 19k, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no. oh, gosh. See you later, Blue. No, the cash, dude. The, you're the one dying. Hey, hot world, hot world, hot world, hot world. Oh, please, dude. I don't even have prayer. Dude, they're gonna. They stole my carambuans. This was hard, hard earned carambuans. No. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna be right back and then you, it's like White Cat 2 has gotten Callisto Cub. Oh yeah, exactly. Dude, I, it would yeah, be so coming. funny if we got a pet. It would be even better because he always gets stuff when he goes be right back. Yeah, and then he comes back. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh, oh! No, this is accurate. No, no, no. Wait, wait, this is, yeah, this is accurate. Oh, oh, oh! That's oh, it. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Should right, we just face side. tank? Face tank it, dude. Face no, tank. Uh, that, might not, that might not go well. I don't think <laughs> that's good. Face cool. tank, dude. Rune sim. Like oh, oh, we did I it. Got it. No, what is that Yo, drop, man? Uh, that's uh, the worst drop. I knew, I knew we would get like that. What is that drop, man? <laughs> it is nice, though. After that quick detour, I got my 56 wood cutting as well as the decapitated troll king head. All I have to do now is go back and finish the Fremenic Isles quest. Before we go and hand in the quest, I'm actually going to buy an Archer's Helm as well because it has a decent ranged bonus and I'm going to need that for when I'm going to get 70 ranged. 
We're going to pick defense for this because I want to get 70 defense as well for Barrow's gear and attack strength, hit points I don't really care that much about. So 10k defense and another 10,000 defense. And there is also the Nate is not helmet. I actually didn't know you got one for free. I thought I would have to pay 50k for the first one, but uh, that is 50k saved and I don't say no to that. And let's equip the helmet after the pop-up screen. There we go. That's 10k woodcutting, 5k crafting, 5k construction. No way. That's going to be so many levels, I think. I was 21 before and 50 defense and 27 so yeah six construction levels let's equip the help i can't equip it i need 55 defense i forgot i do want to get into barrows as soon as possible and i can actually do that if i only get 200k and upgrade my iban staff and i had 84k but i also had 1000 soul runes so i thought if i go here i might be able to sell them for oh it's only 120 so it's not that much. Maybe there's another way to sell them to get more money. But uh, I'm sure there... Maybe I can sell blood runes. I think I have a decent amount of blood runes. I could actually alex some of the items I had in my bank that I didn't need. But uh, blood runes are still not very good. 160 if I sell like 10 of them. They are going to drop down to 120. So I will have to find some other way to get the last like 75k. Dovidas actually put in 75k that he promised I could actually take so I'm going to do that and we do have the money now if I go here take out everything we have over 200k and also the Iban staff I'm going to go and upgrade it or enchant it whatever and then also I have to use my 51 dragon bones that I got from blue dragons to get 43 prayer should be enough. There we go, that's the upgraded Staff of Iban for 200k, and it is now 2,500 casts, I think, you can charge, or use, basically, instead of 120, which is pretty bad. Here we go, 43 prayer, and I actually have some bones left, I have one bone in the bank as well, so I guess, like, 20 bones left. I might as well use all of these, but probably won't get 44. Never mind, I actually did get 44, but just barely. After getting ready for Barrows, I went to bed and now I'm awake and this is my setup for Barrows and my inventory looks like this. I'm actually only bringing one prayer potion and I'm maybe going to get some entangles or snare because I want to root them maybe so I don't have to use prayer on them sometimes. But uh, let's see actually how good this is. If you're sitting there wondering why am I using a ranged gear with magic setup, it's because all of the Barrows brothers except like Arims have very 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 bad magic defense, they have even negative, so it doesn't really matter what armor you have, as you can see you still hit very very consistently, so I can just uh, get more inventory spaces, having full range gear equipped with only my magic staff and it should be fine. I'm always going to get plus 86 on the potential because that gives the best chance for runes or the most amount of runes and I used only actually 42 death runes on a run and you can get more than that from one chest so hopefully I will be able to sustain. Let's see the first loot and we get ball drags and we get uh, some chaos runes so no death runes but I can use the, uh, chaos runes here as well I guess but not as good. There's actually a method you can do to save prayer pots completely on barrels so I can use them in the future for soul run instead and Dark World Order showed me how to do it. You basically just can mark these tiles, it's a bit different for all the barrels brothers but uh, this is basically how you do it. I'm going to stand on this tile right here and I'm going to attack him, I'm going to turn on my run with control, run to this square right here and then after that go to this square. So the boss will basically never hit you so if I do this and press control run run to that one and then run to this and it is now stuck on this one so you just do the same thing now wait a bit and i'm going to hit and run to this one and run over to that one and it is stuck there again so you can do this without getting hit without using prayer I guess because I don't take any damage now, all the talk about the gear I was using is kind of redundant. I might as well just go with like no gear, just my staff, weapon and graceful. So uh, I guess disregard everything I said before, but I guess in the main game where you have prayer potions, it is still relevant. Let's see what we get for the second burst chest. Oh, 152 death runes. That is so nice already made like 60 death runes profit so this tomb is a bit different but this is actually even easier you actually just have to move one square like this you don't have to run two squares so now when it is over there i can literally just hit it again and run right here and it's going to get stuck on the other side third chest can we get an item we cannot oh that is a hefty rune drop i don't say no to that 
While I can't say I'm going to be able to complete this elite cruise scroll, I guess I can check what the first step is. Northeast corner in Shiloh village. I already can't complete that because I haven't done the quest. Oh my god! I got an item! Gotham's helm! That's actually not bad at all. That's actually a really good item as well. On seven chests. Very nice. How Solra works is that you only take ranged damage because there is a phase where it shoots out random ranged hits and you just pray mage in that and all the other phases you basically can just easily pray the damage it does. But uh, that means you only need ranged defense for that boss and that's why I wanted to get the crystal shield because it has so high ranged defense. But look at this as well. The rune helmet has 30 ranged defense. The Guthans one has 62. So using this on Solra is actually insane because it only has minus two ranged as well, which is very minor compared to, for example, the rune helm that has minus three. This is going to be chest number 10 and it will be the last one for this video, but I will definitely come back here in the future to try to get more pieces. But let's see what we get for the last loot. Oh my god, there is no way. No way we get Carol's leather skirt. Oh, dude, wait. I can easily get a black dehyde body from deranged archaeologist. And then I have this for the other item. Oh my god, I am lucky. Okay, I don't know if uh, Dark World Order is here. Mm, yeah, it could be maybe AFK, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I did 10 barrels and I got something. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. wait. What? Was it uh, an item that we could use? It is. Okay, okay. I'm gonna share my screen. You ready? Uh, yes. If if I can see it. Wait. Oh, watch. Let's see. Oh my god. I got Gotham's helm and Karen's leather skirt in 10kc. What? Obviously, that was not a double. Ch oh, yeah, I can see it's, it was not a double. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so perfect because this has a really high range defense, which I need for Solra, and uh, carries leather skirt, and then I'll get black dehyde body from deranged archaeologist. Also, to be honest, the helmet as well is just like a good tank helm to yeah, have in general. It's so nice from 10kc. <laughs> yeah, you got it real lucky. Nice job. Now everything that's left is combat training, so that is what I'm going to strictly do. I don't need any more quests, I don't need to do anything except to just train up my combat stats. And those are of course 70 magic, 70 ranged and 70 defense. Should not be all too much of a grind, I mean it's going to take a while on ammonite crabs, but uh, shouldn't be a terrible grind. And when it's done, I am ready for Solra. Also, I might be able- why did I not reset, but... I also might be able to get an Arim's piece because there is other people in my group also doing barrels and if they manage to get one I will get it right away for my solar grind which could be nice. But that is going to do it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for future uploads. And also there is a playlist I mentioned in my last video I think. With everyone's videos in it. So if you want to watch for example Dovida's first episode. And then after that mine. Then Dark World Order. Then Max Nick. And then it jumps to episode 2. There is a playlist that will be pinned in the comments at the top of basically every video from now on in the series. So check that out if you want to do that. But uh, otherwise have a good one. Take care. <gasps> oh, there it is. There it is. The Black Dehyde body. Starting off the video with a massive draw from the deranged archaeologist. I now have all the ranged gear I basically need for Solra. Have to get my melee stats up a bit because I have to use melee to actually get 70 defense. Because on magic and ranged you can only do shared. You can't train purely defense. So I did the haunted mind quest for some strength experience. So the process is going to be 60 attack for my dragon scimitar, after that 60 strength and then I will train all the way to 70 defense with my dragon scimitar and then it is rune arrows MSB to 70 ranged and magic I have not entirely solved yet but we will see how I'm going to do that. I mean the samurai rune scimitar has been a nice fashion scape but the DPS is not that good so let's get that 60 attack, make not only the handle red on the weapon but uh, the entire thing, and I guess the handle now is actually grey, so... But yeah, we're going to now train strength, probably all the way to 60, maybe 55, we will see how I do this. But uh, after that, I can actually use this weapon to get all the way to 70 defense.
I actually don't think it's a terrible training method to go to Soul Wars because here I can just hit these monsters, drink these potions, which is basically like an overload potion. They give stats in everything and pretty decent amounts. And they're also like a prayer potion. So I can always just have my prayers on the entire time for max damage and just train like this. I mean, I might die now and then, but I also get Soul Wars points, the seals, which I can make a lot of money off. The uh, bolts as well that I'll need for Soldra, so it should be pretty decent. Uh, it is kind of a downside that you have to wait for like 3 minutes or 4 minutes between every single game, but when you're eventually in the game the experience is not that bad, and of course the supplies we can get from the Spoils of War is going to be essential for the account. Oh my god, it has been a very long grind, I have to say honestly, but uh, we finally got 60 strength, and I could have done this a lot faster on Ammonite Crabs, but I'm happy I did not do that, because I now have 935 seals. So we can get like 31 crates, I think that is, and that is going to be ridiculous supplies for our group. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to open all of these and you won't see any of my opening unless I get the pet of course, which is 1 in 400, so pretty much like an 8% chance from this, very unlikely. But uh, yeah, let's see what we get, I will show you guys the result afterwards. I'll show the last 4 I guess, and after that we're going to go over to my Runelite plugin to see all the loot, and it is just absolutely ridiculous I have to say, one bone, very nice. Also some coins, and these bolts are going to be so good for Solra. And the last drop, even more bolts, is so good. Let's uh, check the overall loot on the plugin. 200,000 just straight up cash. 2,000 soul runes, so much coal, 1.5k adamant bolts. Just talking about the more important things. 400 alks and 440 death runes, also some alkyballs like rune plate legs, rune full helm, 37,000 pure essence, by the way, we will never have to care about that, I guess, for rune crafting, very sweet. Also, diamonds and rubies are perfect because we need that for the enchanted bolts that I'll use for Solra, so overall just incredible supplies as always. Stop, you violated the law. Click right here to subscribe to my channel. Now and then I went to the mage training arena and got some points because I wanted to build up towards the infinity boots and I got some help with the cosmic runes I needed to finish off this grind from Max Nick, he crafted them for me and uh, I actually only had leather boots that I was going to use for Solra but now I have the infinity boots which gives a 5 plus magic defense and accuracy so that will be the best boots I can get my hands on for magic currently. Also went to LMS, got 5 points to be able to unlock the uh, upgraded version of the magic shortbow, so buying that for 5 points, very cheap, so let's head over to the bank, get my MSB out, and I, you know, I need this to train to 70 range, I might as well do it a bit more effectively, let's search magic, give 69 ranged bonus, and when I apply this, it now gives 75, so quite a big difference. So we actually decided to make a clan and here we are all standing with our banners except one guy couldn't come so we had a substitute to make it because you had to have five. We are called the Cool Cats 2 if you want to join this is a clan only for group Iron Man so you have to be one to join. But how you join is you just add Reddest Cat 2 you can see on the bottom right of my screen how it's spelled. You add him in game send him a message and he will sort you out. I have a big defense grind in front of me I'm 58 currently and I have to go all the way to 70 and also I don't really have any good glove slot for Solra or for training actually defense so what I'm doing is I'm just completing a very few amount of the uh, recipe for disaster subquests and that is going to unlock me at least I think I did two subquests so I think I can buy the iron gloves now which is at least three plus strength bonus if we go down here and they're very cheap as well and they are hybrid gloves so I don't have to use normal van braces, which actually gives a negative uh, magic bonus. So 300 coins for these. And uh, the ones I was using before, which was literally the only ones I had, was these. And they have... Oh, they don't have a magic uh, negative bonus. But look, they have 4 plus ranged. And then 2 defense. These have a lot more stats. And they have that 3 melee strength, which is going to be nice for uh, just training up my defense as well. 
Actually, from doing those mini quests, I got the Dwarven Rock Cake, and that allows me to drop my HP whenever I want to 1, and because of that, I'm going to try some Nightmare Zone. I only have a few points, like 2000, but if I get some more points by, like, just doing it normally, I can get enough points to maybe get overloads and absorption potions, and then be able to maintain those, and constantly be able to DPS with an overload dose on, which is going to increase my DPS by quite a bit, and when I have absorption potions, with 1 HP, I can only get hit by 1, and that is going to be basically infinite HP, so I'm going to try this out and see how good this is going to work. I got some points, got some overloads and absorption potions, and as you can see, I got myself to 1 HP, and I did that of course by using an overload which drains 50 HP, and then using the Dwarven Rock Cake to get to 1, and uh, you can actually stay on 1 HP forever, and you will have the absorption you can see on the top left here, it only drains a 1 every single time, because monsters in runescape cannot hit higher than your hp so you can see on the thing right here that goes around you can see when i'm going to get another hp you can actually reset that by just doing that and it is all the way to the beginning again so i can stay for one hp forever and just have like a thousand hp now technically and uh, let's see what the experience rate is going to be i without overload had like a 25k experience an hour so let's see what the difference is with an overload it is pretty substantial. Without overloads, it was 25.7k exactly an hour, and with overloads, it is 35.2k. So that is a pretty decent hourly rate, I would say, but I don't know if it's better than Ammonite Crabs. I will try after this round right here, when I don't have any more potions left. And if we can break 35.3k, then I am going to do Ammonite Crabs instead. Okay, I definitely underestimated the Ammonite Crabs. I knew they were good, but... Uh, Okay, 45.6k, so 10,000 experience more an hour. I will unfortunately have to keep doing Ammonite Crabs. I wanted to do something a bit more fun, but uh, yeah, this is uh, where I'm going to be stuck at. You know what? I think uh, I should at least do an attempt at Solra, even if I have really bad gear. This is going to be the gear I'm going to try to kill it with. And of course, the Sammy Robes, I don't have Mystic yet. That is too expensive. The Nades Not Helmet, Amulet of Power. And we do have the Ruby Bolts Enchanted and the Diamond Bolts Enchanted. I didn't want to spend the entire day just grinding Ammonite Crabs without doing at least something exciting. So let's see if we can actually manage to get a kill. The plan was honestly not really to get a kill. Of course, if I could, I would want it, but uh, I really was just here to learn how to do it effectively, and uh, I learned a lot. For example, Karen once you cannot eat at the same time as drinking a potion. I didn't know that, but that is a minor thing I learned. I also learned that on the magic phase, you have to wait until the end of it to drink an anti-poison, otherwise you can get re-poisoned and have to waste doses. So that is another thing I learned, as well as I learned I need better gear. This gear, I could do a kill if I stood behind a pillar and just avoided all the magic phases but that means I would get like 10 minutes plus kills which is not really what I'm here for I would like to get like three four minute kills which I'm pretty sure I can get when I get the 70 defense and 70 range and all the stats that I need so to make it easier for me, I'm going to get the Magic Arena Cape to get some more magic bonus instead of using that uh, backpack, the Avos Accumulator. So let's get the Samurak Cape for 10 magic bonus and that should help me do some more damage on the boss because most of my damage will come from magic. So I got the cape of course and I got back to Solra and I have to say that the DPS might not be the problem, it's more the fact that I take so much damage so really getting that 70 defense is going to be the key to be able to do this because I only really take range damage of course, some of the snakeling damage is kind of annoying as well but um, most of the damage comes from venom and ranged hits and I have now learned how to do the venom a lot better so that should not be that much of a problem but uh, the ranged hits consistently hit me for like 30 so you can see here, boom dead. Our team has actually finally got four rune crossbows and we also have over a thousand ruby bolts enchanted so we decided to go to some wilderness bosses and actually see how good it would be on these bosses. Oh ruby bolt! Oh, Where am I meant to be? Like, uh, like uh, meant to be? Oh I got ruby proc. Hello? Oh, another ruby bolt. Like all the way uh, left. Come to... Hmm. Yeah I'm oh, taking that dude. as well. That was mine. 20. Nice, oh, 20. 20. Oh, this Easy is actually boys. going fast. Oh, a big so hit? Quick, oh, I though. Hit. Done. I've ruby the Easy. Two. Very nice. First kill. Wow. Rune pickaxe. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> that is a big yeah. out. So it also oh. Oh, Here oh, comes no. the teddy bear. He was oh. not supposed to shoot me, because now he's going to get an aggressive. <laughs> uh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't die, buddy. 
<laughs> I, I don't believe he's. Oh, he's no, incredible. I, I, think, I think you got him, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Didn't even though he's dead. Now, Did you ruby a zero? I think so. I took damage and nothing happened. Else runes. Oh, oh uh, nice. There nice. we go. Good luck. All right. Next kill. Is... Limpard roots. <laughs> 25. Oh, that's good. Hey, nice. Good. How many? Uh, 25. Perfect. Oh. That's, that's temple I, I caught for someone. Wait, really? Yeah, that's is that, great. Is that quest thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Temple I caught, this needs 20, 20 limbs. Woof. Oh, I think I killed Oh my god, are you kidding me? Huh. They can't attack yeah, us, they can't attack us. <laughs> what did I we get? Super Explorer, uh, Dark Crabs and Super Explorer. Right, let's bank. Let's bank. And get, uh, that, yeah. I reckon. I guess. Right. Just cash in. He's DMing his team. I think oh. it's dead now, no. or maybe. One more hit. There oh, it is. There we go. It's not Ooh. mine. Uh, well, it was a uh, green text, but uh, it is magic seed. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. Really quick, boys. Oh, oh like he's. Uh, Wee! <laughs> oh, dude. oh, it's walking Whoa. away. No, kill it. Sorry, he won't lose his health. Wait, oh, let's no, like load it again. Maybe be get patient. Okay, yeah, get the bolts. Um, oh, it's be patient. Okay. What did we get? Magic seed once again. Oh my <laughs> god. That's like the worst drop for us. Okay. Dice quickly. All right, good enough. Ooh. Uh, 200 blood runes. That's decent. You can sell those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we're oh. dead. No, they're high uh, level. Never mind. No. Oh, we're good. We're good. No, but, but, oh, they took the kill, I think. Though. We're scared. I was scared there. Oh, we're yeah. Alone. Maybe. Wait, wait, wait. Almost. Uh, I think it did. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. So they didn't. Hey, look. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> I remember. How. Oh, these more people. There's another group of peekers. They say, okay. yeah. Should we, uh, should we hop quick? No, no, just check. They uh, can't kill us. I no, they cannot kill us, but yeah, they but could have friends. like low level accounts. Yeah, low they're, level accounts. Everyone's like meow. What? Oh, of course. He's, he's picking up. He picked up ruby bolts. <laughs> I mean, if he wants the ruby bolts that bad, he can have them. I he's guess. He's making stonks. Why is he standing there? He's so brave. Like this is literally what I would think that's a lord, but it's oh, not. Oh no! It's, uh, I got yeah, he, he oh, attacked he it. Oh, he attacked it. Yeah, yeah. He can't. Oh, yeah, halt. Auto retaliate. Auto retaliate. Uh, I'm out. I did with accuracy, I believe. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, it's not super insane, but it is probably one of the better ones. 100 grimy toad flags. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Is, that's bruised, but that's gonna be forever to get him. I'm gonna do an accurate as well. Oh, I hit an accurate. It worked. First time we got 19k. Uncut Dragonstone. Hell yeah. Wow. How many? One. One. One? Just one. Wow. Just the yeah. one. Oh no. Into the ether. Oh my I god. Oh, dude. Ooh. 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 Bank right now. That is the big <laughs> no one. Way we got it. Oh, that it showed in the chat. Huge. That's so nice. Yeah. You wanna. That I'll, I'll go back. Wait, you guys stay. Bank. Yeah, you stay. You yeah. stay. You should pop. What the hell? Okay. Hey, range <laughs> XP. Give it a gray. <laughs> you can get the rune crossbow. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Blood runes. Ah. Huh. 200. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> so lucky, I can't believe. Last kill as well. 500 red spider eggs. Good idea. That's the, the big one right, right there. there. Most of my time spent the past days have been just killing ammonite crabs, so I haven't had a bunch of interesting things to record, but at least I got some for the video. But I have been grinding out 70 defense really hard, and I am getting pretty close to it. I am currently very close to even 68 defense, but the levels are taking about 2 hours to do at this point with 60 strength and the dragon scimitar, so it takes quite a long time, but I should have it done kind of soon and then after that I'm gonna get 70 ranged and when I have both of those I am going to try for serious the Solra kills. But for now this is going to be the end of this video, remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see future uploads and you can also click any of the videos on the screen right now or the playlist to the entire series if you want to see a video right away. Have a good one, take care. It was a long and slow grind to get this done, but only 164 experience of 70 defense and uh, when I do get that I can wear both my crystal shield and my Gotham's helm 
which is going to be insane ranged defense for Solra. So we can get the last hit here. We are going to go now 70 defense and we're going to head to the bank and equip that uh, nice looking gear. I only have 64 ranged, so I can't yet use the best gear, which is the black dehyde body with the carrier's leather top, but I can equip my crystal shield and the Gotham's helm. And the ranged defense I had before with this setup right here was 130. And uh, let's see the difference with both of these. 213. So that is quite the difference in range defense, which is going to help a lot for Solra. I was actually inspired by Soul Mission, the man himself, to do the Shades of Morton quest and the minigame to actually get the Amulet of the Damned, because that has the same stats as an Amulet of Glory. So I got the quest done, and it is now time to try to get that Amulet of the Damned, because it is going to be the best Amulet I can get for Solra. I should be getting the black key here, which gives me access to the room with the shades that I actually need to farm quite a lot of probably to get all the silver keys, so that is now the black key that gives me access to the room. Now, the Amulet of the Damned is actually a degradable amulet, so I will only be using it on Solra, and I have four keys here, so let's use the keys on the chest. Come on, uh, please be the Amulet of the Damned, it's one in 16. Oh, that is a uh, <laughs> diamond ring, that is not what I wanted, another one. Adamant Spear Poison? That is a poison weapon. I don't think I have any of those. And a Flame to Bag. That, I know that one is very common. I think it's 1 in 2, so it's 50% drop rate. So let's open the uh, third one. Please be the loot. Battle Staff. That is some Alkibos at least. And we have one last brown key. Please be the last. And we get a Black Spear. That is not what I wanted. Another four keys. Oh my god, the first one! <laughs> Amulet of the Damned has been achieved. A full one, of course. Let's open the other ones as well. Would be nice to get a duplicate, a rune sword. Okay, no duplicate, but there it is. That's the necklace. Unironically, I think this is going to be the last time I go to Ammonite Crabs, which is a very nice feeling. I have to get from 68 or actually halfway to 69 to 70 ranged. I can then wear the absolutely stacked gear, carol skirt and the black dehyde body. And then I'm actually ready for Solra. We also have some, I think, pineapple pizzas in the bank, which gives uh, more HP than current ones. So I have some better food to use for Solra, so we should be able to get a kill. Finally, I can leave this place with 70 range. I didn't get the pop up because the, uh, of course, the crab attacked me. But that is now everything I technically need, except for Misty Gear. But that is not super needed for Solra. I can equip all my stacked range gear now, so... This is going to be very nice to look at. Oh my god, look at this. How am I looking like this? Like 9 days into group Iron Man. Infinity boots, of course scuffed iron gloves, but uh, that is, I have to deal with that. Amulet of the Damned, Crystal Shield, Gotham's Helm, Carol's Leather Skirt, and 231 range defense. This is a stacked range setup. Also getting myself 45 prayer for the Mystic uh, Might for 15% more magic damage instead of the Mystic Lore. And now I am 100% uh, ready to try out getting the Solra kills. Oh my god, dude, you have to be joking me. I had no idea this was how it worked. If you die with the Amulet of the Damned, which I did like halfway through a kill on Solra, I just suicided because I ran out of food. It just disappears. It's just over. You, it doesn't degrade or anything. It's just gone. So I guess I have to reuse the uh, power amulet. Good thing it didn't take me too long to grind out that amulet. But uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. Stop. You violated the law. Click right here to subscribe to my channel. So I have to say, I was kind of disappointed in how this gear was actually doing. I thought that I could be shredding the boss with ranged, which in some cases I did with the Ruby Bolt procs, but it was mostly due to the procs. I did not really expect it to be this bad with magic, because I thought Sammy robes would be fine. Turns out, if you have Sammy robes on, you have basically no accuracy at all, and the Iban staff is kind of slow, so most of my damage actually on the boss was just ranged. And I didn't really expect that, so I was doing very poor DPS, and I kind of learned from this attempt that I definitely need to upgrade my magic gear to be able to reliably kill this boss, otherwise I, it's just going to take way too long, and I'm going to run out of supplies regardless, even if I do everything perfect, which I am not doing, because I'm not used to killing it with so low gear. On my main account, I've always had anti-venoms, so I have to really learn how to do the anti-poisons perfectly before I can get consistent kills, but uh, yeah, I learned from this attempt that I basically needed to get the mystics at least. 
I wish we had infinite supplies, but I don't want to waste all the things we have on my solar attempt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase my chances to actually get the kills. And that is increase my magic gear because Sammy robes is just terrible. Like look at my magic attack here. 37 if I unequip them. I have 33. It makes no difference basically having this or not. It's like you're wearing nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get mystics at least. And I'm going to train my magic meanwhile doing barrows. So I have a chance of getting arams as well. It should be a good way of getting some magic upgrades i need 63 magic to be able to enter the mage guild with a boost so let's at least get that and then invest in mystics and the first chest is nothing oh my god a darox helmet on the second chest how useful is that actually i guess getting the full darox set would be very nice but uh, i already have the guthans helm and i think it's worse than that so i guess it's a cool item to get though Imagine the back to back, and no, not this time. Can we get an Arim's robe top? Oh my god, I actually got an item. Darok Sam, that's a duplicate. I'm already getting duplicates. I've done 16 chests and I've got four items, one duplicate. Did eight chests overall. This is going to be the last one and two Darok's helmets. I did not expect to get that, but let's see what the last is going to be. And then after I am just going to go and finish off 63 magic on something else and buy the mystics. Hopefully I can get some money from the team. And the last is nothing. I had 110k myself and Dovidas gave me 90k, so let's talk to this guy right here and have a look at these things. So the chest is 120k and the bottom 80k, so I can buy both of these and let's actually compare these stats now. So this is the magic setup I usually use, 31 magic bonus and with these I have 62, so basically double, so that should help a lot. No! Oh, you have to be joking me! 45 HP! Oh, well, that is definitely doable, so that's a good sign. I've actually run out of prey potions, so I can't really do another attempt, but now that I do know that I can easily kill Solra with the gear I have, I am actually going to do some LMS for Dark World Order, because I need to get him a imbued magic shortbow as well as some rune arrows, and he's going to just grind out Twisted Banshees, which have a good drop rate of Raynars, get a bunch of prey potions for me, and I can go straight back into it. Also did some Chaos Druids, and got myself some herbs for him as well. Was a bit more warmed up and used to LMS this time, so went a bit better and I got the magic shortbow scroll as well as 900 arrows. I might get more for him in a bit, but uh, he apparently is already in the group storage. But I'll put this in and also, there we go, he put 18 prayer potions in. So we're going to put this in and we're also going to take like 10 for now and I can go back to Solra. Can we get the kill here? I just need one more hit now, I think. I'm Venom that I don't have anything else, so I'm going to just hold... Okay. Yep. Uh, at least I didn't get a rare, but that's 25 total tracks gone. But uh, at least I got the kill, I got the achievement, that's all that matters, but uh, that kind of sucks. Why does it always have to be so close, dude? I have one food left. Oh, it's a mage face as well. Oh, uh, please do... Oh, it's dead! Oh my god, I got a kill, and I'm not dead. And, oh my god, is that the worst thing I could have got? 5 minutes and 48 second kill. That is very slow. I feel like I was kind of unlucky though with DPS. I think my first attempt was 4 minutes and 41. Even though I got those kills, you saw the first one, even when I died, was 4 minutes and 40 something seconds. And the second one was almost 6 minutes. So it is very unrealistic that I can farm this boss just yet. I have to get some upgrades, so I don't want to waste all too much supplies. So I'm just going to stop right here, but I'm very happy with the kills. So my plan is to get my magic up and maybe even get to 70 and try to get Arims from Barrows and I'm doing Horror from the Deep now to get the Damaged Bandos book. I'm going to go to Imps in the Wilderness that can drop the Ecumenical Keys and I can actually get money from those to buy Nature Runes and Death Runes and I can use that for Barrows. Where you farm the ecumenical keys, you need a piece of bandos so the bandos enemies do not hit you. Also, I have a samurai cape or I have samurai robes as well, so I can use that for Sammy protection. Oh, no way. First kill and I got an ecumenical key. That is very lucky. It's 60k alk every time you get one or 61.5k. I don't have an armadillo item, so that's going to be annoying. 
Last one for the trip, you can actually only have three in your inventory before you do some diaries, so that is like 180k. From like 31k all the way to how much? 216k and just three keys and all of this money is going straight into runes. I'm going to high alk mean while doing barrels. That way I can get upgrades for Soldra in Arams and Carol's top for example, meanwhile also leveling magic. So after the last clip I went to bed and today I'm going to grind more money but look at this. I'm going to go into the bank and I'm going to go into the group storage and Dovidas was actually doing uh, barrels yesterday and look at what he got. He got a Carol's leather top. There's no way. And he said I can just take it for Solra. So I am going to do that and of course I'm going to share it with the team if they need it as well as you always do but uh Wow, that is no more black dehyde body. Let's actually take a look at how I look in this. Now let's compare it to the black dehyde body to see what upgrade this basically was. So I'm going to mouse over the black dehyde body. You can see all the minus stats right there. Or might as well do this so you can see all the plus stats. Plus 20 magic defense. That's very nice. Also 7 plus ranged defense. So that is a bit more ranged defense for Solra. And also of course for the fashion scape it is a 10 out of 10. I'm very happy about the Solra progress I made in this video because I've never, as I said, killed the boss with such low gear and I'm happy that I could manage to kill it plus also learn so much about it on low tier levels because now I know how to kill it, I can consistently kill it but it just drains a lot of supplies for the team and I don't want to drain all of our supplies and maybe it's not really worth it for the drops so I'm just going to spend some time, you know, of course, getting some better stats and stuff like that for Solra so I can do it more efficiently but I think this is a good time to end the video hopefully in the next video i can do a bit more efficient solra so see you then hope you liked the video like it if you liked it subscribe if you want to see future content and i'll see you in the next one guys take care what is up guys welcome to another video i just spent like 450k cash from ecumenical keys on nature runes we have almost 2000 of them and we're going to go to barrows with some death runes on ibon's blast alk meanwhile doing it and just blast out magic levels. Nothing so far, but I just hit 65 magic. Can we get something on that chest? We cannot, but 120 blood runes. I'm actually alking them, so that is a nice uh, addition to the stack. Before you say you should sell the blood runes to the Ali Morrison shop, well, no one in our group has done the quest and done the Sudoku, so we actually can't do that yet, and they do alk for... 248 it's not that bad oh look at that that is a duplicate but that is so nice because we are going to need more of these for like bandos maybe or some other activities so a duplicate carries leather skirt is definitely not a bad drop hey look at that that is a back-to-back -back verx flail I actually need that the verx set is pretty good actually Oh, no, no, that is an Aram's item that I don't need. Oh my god, imagine if that was actually the top or the bottom. Is there any use for this staff? Maybe there is, actually. I don't know how much better it would be than the staff of Iban. It has pretty good magic stats, but I can't even equip it. But would that be good with like a Tome of Fire if we could get that? Maybe it would be. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a bit because these clips are recorded over a few days and I might have said the same thing twice so sorry about that but uh, I have been doing some LMS now and then to get rune arrows because I need a lot of them and also some dragonstone bolts as well for barrows but the reason I need the rune arrows is because I am alking them meanwhile doing barrows and I don't want to alk my blood runes so I am doing rune arrows instead and you actually turn a profit from this because you alk them for two 240 each and the nature rune I am buying in the uh, major arena shop is roughly like 200 when it's a bit more stocked and 220 something at max <laughs> oh. what is this man what am I looking at three Darok helmets I mean at least it's an item I'm getting and uh, as long as we don't get over five then we're good after getting that Aram staff, I actually went to Max Nick, one of my teammates, to talk about how good the Fire Wave spell with the Tomo Fire and Aram staff could possibly be compared to the Iban staff, of course for Solra. And we kind of came to the conclusion that with Tomo Fire, I can hit 30s with the Fire Surge because it has a max hit of 20 and the Tomo Fire increases the damage by 50% on fire spells. But then also the Aram staff, and if I have 75 magic, I can get the uh, tier 2 Mage Arena Cloak, which 
which gives a magic bonus as well, I should be able to, with all of those things, hit 34, which is 9 higher than the Iban staff. It does require blood runes, but I'm just going to save the blood runes I get from now on, all the way to 75 magic basically, so no more alking those, and I'm just going to get uh, rune arrows from LMS instead and alk those, but that might be a thing I should go for, a Tomo Fire from Winter Todd, I mean we have two people doing Winter Todd or being able to do it, so we might have a chance of getting it. You know what the hardest Barrow's brother is? This stepping stone. I actually spend more time on this stepping stone than any of the brothers, that is not a joke. On average, I fall like three times. I've fallen five times now, and a sixth time, there you go, six times fallen. Can I get it on the seventh one, or am I going to fall a seventh time as well? Oh, it's a miracle, I actually made it. I'll be doing some detours to Winter Todd to try to get some Tomes of Fire, and I got some magic logs in the first crates, which is very unlikely actually with my woodcutting level, but it's very nice with that's the treasure. Oh, a Darox plate leg. Uh, okay, so that is now two Darox items. I have the helmet, actually three of them, and the legs. So only the chest and the weapon. We're actually up to chest number 50, and my magic level is currently 69. Very nice level, and 60% to 70, so soon we get that big level 70 when I can use the Arim staff or the Arim's gear, but I'm not going to use the staff before I get that Tomo Fire. I have been doing some Winter Todd and now and then to try to get a chance of getting it. I'm currently 76 fire making, so I did 4 levels there, but uh, let's see what we get for chest number 50. Nothing. But an achievement. I would say a pretty big milestone, 70 magic from uh, alking and doing barrows at the same time, very nice, and so if I get an arms piece now, I can equip it. Oh, I had no idea, I actually need 70 attack as well to wear the arms staff. Of course I could get that, but uh, that is quite the grind. <clears throat> oh! Guthans War Spear, uh, that is the third Guthans item, we only missed the top now, that's insane. My group have been talking about doing Dagonoth Kings as a 5 man for a long time now and people are just never online at the same time, but hopefully today can be the day because I am pretty tired of doing this and not going to lie, I mean uh, the amount of drops I've got is just bonkers, I've got one item in every 5.8 chests which is like 3 times the drop rate and also I am almost 71 magic but I have been doing this for like 17 hours and I need a break so it would be nice if we could get that done. Stop, you violated the law, click right here to subscribe to my channel, if you've already done it. You can go free. Finally, everyone is actually on at the same time, and we are going to go to Dagonoth Kings. I had to hand over my rune kite shield, which actually was a Dark World Order's kite shield, but I had to give it back because I have very tanky gear, and uh, the other people are not going to have as tanky gear, so I am going to be fine with an anti-dragon shield. And it's me, and then I think it's Dovi with like the Fremenic, and it is, it's great. Dude, the rune plate skirts, dude. <laughs> oh, the rune plate skirts. I threw two of them in the shared storage, which is probably why. What is that rune square shield? <laughs> Dude, look yeah, at got my shield. Bar it got buffed, the square shield recently. It has no oh. negative like attack bonus anymore. Yeah. They just need to shoot ours. Alright, shoot ours oh, out down. No, I nice. don't think I will. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <you did> it. <laughs> no. With a sword. <laughs> oh, Master of come on, yeah. gimme. Nice, no XP, no XP waste. And it's actually good that you ate that food now, because you actually have the inventory space. <laughs> I ate okay. zero food, but that's because so, you guys think. This world's actually fruit, fruit, free. Oh, don't die. Oh, oh, no, turn to retaliate. Auto -retaliate. <laughs> turn off auto retaliate. Don't okay. Forget. Spike. That's a lot of zeros. Oh. Watch it, don't die. Oh. Rex. Panicked. I, I, dead. I, I died immediately. <laughs> Why? You got hit like a 50. Yeah, you might want to get back I up did. the ladder. God. Of course I get hit like a 50 immediately. Oh, and that, like that, will ha that will happen regularly if you're on the wrong prayer. That's um part of the challenge of this boss. Wow. Really underestimated this place, I gotta say. Steel Kai Shield, that's an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Nice upgrade, boys. Oh, no. I have range right now. Good call. Rune axe? Oh, that's, Ooh. That's, that's actually the same rate as the other axe, unfortunately. No! Yeah. Did you, did you wait, 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 wait. Teleport out! <laughs> no, 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 no one's shooting me with magic, it's okay. okay, okay. Teleport out! Oh, that flick, dude. Oh, not even close, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 
Oh, uh, no, now there is, okay. <laughs> no, my bones. What happened? Oh, we got Hell a dragon yeah. axe. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, come in. holy Did shit. Got a dragon one. axe, go. that's huge. Massive. <laughs> Wait, what do mage, we pray? Mage, 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 mage. I'll oh, pray mage, oh shit. Fucking wreck my Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, we're killing the, of course. Kill wreck, kill, kill Oh wrecks. my god, that is actually huge, dragon axe oh, already. God. Oh, Dragon Med Helm, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's actually good though. Right? Yeah, Look at this. Fashion scape. <laughs> oh, I'll help until I die. I don't... Oh. Oh. Bye, Dovi. I was out of food. That was a that was oh. big help. Dovi, are you in the kitchen waiting for a drop? <laughs> that's what it sounded like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's ready for no, the no, run no. We were actually mainly at Dagonoth Kings to get Max Nick a Berserker Ring, which only drops from the Rex boss, the one that you kill with magic, and that can actually be safe spotted, so we just decided to do that instead, but uh, after a short while we kind of realized that it's kind of a waste to be five people there, we should rather be five people in different instances, so we're probably going to do that another time, or people can just go there whenever they want to grind it out for the team, but overall it was a very fun experience to do Dagonoth Kings as a five Man. When we have a bit better gear, we can definitely go there and just shred all the bosses. But uh, we had some people with like adamant crossbow, so it was a bit rough on the supreme boss. After that though, we actually decided to go and get ourselves Fighter Torso because we were all five people here, so we might as well. And I have never done this minigame before in my life, so this will be quite an experience to uh, experience this minigame I've heard so much bad things about. Uh, uh, live in Barbarian Assault with a friend. Right, one. <laughs> Everyone ready? One, yeah. two, yep. three, fire. Pop. Oh, nice. we did it. Oh. Nice. The one tick. Very nice. Done with two rolls. Oh, it's the final countdown. We're good. Okay, we nice. Just, like literally, basically almost perfect. Finally done. done with this. This took, yeah. how long okay. did, this, did this take? Three hours and 45 minutes. Oh God. Wow. Fucking. All of it's fate. <laughs> I almost, I almost clicked level up. <laughs> I'm glad I could help oh you boys get your god. torso. Imagine I click level right? up. Oh my god. You can now join us. I was gonna buy a granite war. body just because, but you know I don't have the money for that. Oh, there oh, we make go. Sure you click, click the penance torso. Fight their torso. Well, Fight line their up, boys. Torso unlocked. I had a decent amount of footage from the Barbarian Assault, but I felt like everyone else in our group has already posted their video about it, and honestly, it was mostly just us being kind of depressed about how boring the minigame was, so I didn't want to post that in my video as probably most of you guys have already seen it in other videos, but if you haven't, go and check their videos out. They will always be linked in my description, all the channels, and I think pretty much all of them has put some Barbarian Assault content in, and I don't want to bore you with uh, like the fifth time seeing the same thing. So this is going to be the end of this video. In the next one, I am going to get 75 magic and I'm going to get the Arena 2 cape, but uh, I'm not going to do it through Barrows because I am pretty done here, I'm going to be honest with you. I have done, uh, I think I'm at like 68 chests or something, Thing, and I hit 72 magic just recently, so I am getting pretty done with this. Someone else is going to have to pick up the barrows grind from me, so the next one is not going to include barrows. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video nonetheless. Remember to subscribe if you want to do that, and like the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Welcome to the ninth episode of the Group Iron Man series. We're starting this one off actually by getting 75 magic. And I did this through Alking and doing the Arceus library all the way from 72. The experience rate was actually around 120,000 an hour. And it's also cheap on runes because it doesn't cost any runes to get the book experience. So there we go. That is now 75 magic and we're going to go and get the imbued magic capes. So before I can start the imbue quest, I actually have to train with all these different staves, the Gothics, Saradomin and Samurai in the mage training arena. I'm not sure exactly how many casts it is I have to do, maybe it's like a hundred or something, and they're actually quite expensive. It's two blood runes per cast, so I might have to ask my teammates a bit for uh, some runes. But also, the reason why you have to do that is because you need to kill the bosses, the three bosses you have to kill, with the respective staves. So if you're killing the Samurai boss, you have to kill it with the Samurai staff, and if you can't use that in the wilderness, then you can't kill it.
at times like this, I'm pretty happy I'm not in hardcore iron on that because uh, otherwise I would not really want to do this. It, it would be uh, kind of risky, but I have to do 100 casts of each of these staves. I actually looked it up and that would be 600 blood runes to complete all these staves. And then I'll have like 400 left to do the actual bosses. So maybe I don't have to ask my team for runes. One more cast, haven't been PK'd and that is the Samrock staff completed, one out of three. Last cast for Gothics and we're done with that one as well, so only one more to go. And this should be it, so there we go, done. So let's go and actually get the imbued cape now, have to kill the three wilderness bosses. I'm not sure exactly how hard this is going to be with my level, but uh, should be doable. So now I get this enchanted symbol in my inventory and when I click it, it is basically like a clue scroll tracking device. It will show me where I need to go and then the boss will spawn. There is three different ones, of course a Samurak, Gothics and a Saradomin one and I have to kill them with the respective staves. So let's see if I can actually do this. Look at the HP of this boss, 320 and if you don't kill it fast enough it heals and it hits through prayer as well. So that is why I was kind of concerned if I would be able to kill these bosses because they are very, very strong. Uh, either way, I will have to go back and do more tries because I really want to get this done. Also, you have to kill like a ball that it spawns now and then so it doesn't heal. And if you don't kill it fast enough, it actually heals quite a lot. So it is quite a hard boss to kill. It seems like we're going to get a kill here actually, I just started kiting it around the tree, I still take hits but it's not that bad. So that is the first one down, very nice to see, Ents Roots, and so now I have to go back and get my Saradomin or Samurak Staff and kill that one. The Samurak boss is actually quite a lot easier, all you have to do is stay very far away from him because he shoots out these balls and if they hit you, you take damage depending on how far away you were. I was kind of close to him in the beginning and I got hit for like a 25 and uh, now that I'm far away I get hit for like 1 damage or 2 damage and of course the consistent hits that the boss does is very high but uh, I should have enough food in my inventory to kill it, I mean it has 72 HP left and I have some food. That is the second boss dead and let's go for the third one and get the imbued cape. Definitely the scariest one, can we get the kill here please, I don't have much food left, there we go. Oh, that one was actually really intense, but that is the Justiciar's hand, and we can now actually get the imbued cape as long as I don't die with all these in my inventory. You can't actually bank them, so you have to bring them every time. All the pieces have been handed in, so all I have to do now, because I want the samurai cape, I'm going to use it on him, and let's imbue that cape. There we go, that is the imbued samurai cape. Let's actually compare it to the other cape. So let's take out, like, a Saradomin cape, let's compare the stats. The, uh... In normal one has 10 attack magic bonus, the imbued one has 15, and it also has 2% plus magic bonus, which is a very big buff. On the defensive stats, the normal one has a 1 stab, 1 slash, 2 crush, and 10 magic, and the imbued one has 3 slash, 3 stab, 3 crush, and then 15 magic. So this is quite a decent amount better, but I have to unequip this actually to be able to equip it. But look at that, it's so fancy. I mean, it's not a melee cape, but uh, I have to say, I look pretty stacked in this gear. I'm going to do some Slayer now, actually, because I need to work on 70 attack, because that is the level I need to equip the Aram staff. And then after that, really all I need to do before I can go into Solra again is get the Tomo Fire, which of course is a very RNG grind, and it might take a while, but uh, it would be the best thing to do for Solra, I do believe, because getting the Trident, which is the next upgrade, is a very long Slayer grind, and our Slayer player guy is currently at 53, so it's going to take a while before we can get that. Stop. You violated the law. Click right here to subscribe to my channel. If you've already done it, you can go free. My slayer level is currently only 26, so we're going to level that up a bit, and I had a bronze dragon task, but I had like 40 of them, so I actually went to Coradel and skipped that, and I did a wolf task, so let's see what we can get from Konar. I do want to do Konar because of the brimstone keys, they are so useful. Hopefully not something terrible as a task. Are you kidding me? Bronze dragon back to back. Well, I guess we're skipping that again. Wait, did I say Curadel in my last clip? I actually meant Turadel. It's a RuneScape 3 thing, Curadel. I swear, if I get bronze dragons three times in a row, please do not do this to me. Fire giant in the stronghold slayer dungeon. That is a good one, actually. 
What? A collection item on the first drop, uh, Longbone. And uh, task completed, Walking Volcano. I actually have no idea what that even is. I guess it has something to do with killing a fire giant. Actually, I'm looking at these infinity boots and I'm thinking, why am I wearing these? I mean, I need the melee strength. I mean, they're fancy, but I should probably get the death plateau done. It's such a fast quest for the climbing boots that actually gives melee strength now that I'm going to train it. So I'm going to leave this area for just a bit and do the quest for the best boots I can get my hands on right now. It should be the quest completed. Yeah, there we go. 3000 attack experience as well and ability to make claws. If only you could make dragon claws, that would be nice. But uh, let's go and buy the climbing boots. 12 gold for some really nice melee boots. So let's buy those and you see 2 plus strength is very nice compared to the infinity boots that gives only magic bonus. I will have to grind quite a lot of slayer actually because we've kind of come to the conclusion that it's kind of impossible to only have one slayer person because if you're going to grind like 5 black masks, 5 whips, 5 primordial boots, 5 tridents, you know all the things, it's going to be insane for one person to do that and I'm kind of the combat guy of the team anyways along with Max Nick so I might as well start a grind and it should not be all too long before we can actually start doing the black mask grinds together. He's 53, I'm 30 so I will have to catch up a bit. Actually from doing barrels I got a lot of these chaos runes and I might as well sell all of them for Tockle because I can spend this to actually buy the obsidian shield which gives 5 plus strength bonus and currently I'm using a god book that is damaged which gives basically nothing. It also has better defensive stats. I don't think selling all of these will get me enough. I need 67,500 so I might have to sell some other runes as well. If we can, it's so nice when you can just hold in shift and sell 50 at a time, it goes super fast. So yeah, I am uh, missing around 8,000. I actually went ahead and got the Karamja gloves because that gives a discount on the store and it is 58.5k. So I'm going to buy that now. I have the tuckle for it. So let's compare it. 5 strength, of course the minus 5 prayer, but then look at the defense bonuses, like 40 in everything and then 60 ranged. Also looks pretty good. So I started with 31 Slayer and that Fire Giant task got me all the way to 36. Next task is going to be Dagonoths in the Lighthouse. I think I need prayer for that. So that's going to be some prayer pots. Reason why I thought I would need prayer potions is because this is multi-area and you can see how many Dagonoths there are. So if I would have like four of them on me at the same time, I would probably get shredded. But maybe I can just stand here along the ladder and I will be fine. Look at that, the first brimstone key from my troll task, the Dagonoth task was super easy and I got this one, I think I am 40 slayer, yeah 40 slayer as well. Actually never really done this before but I got a weapon poison drop from Ankus and I just put it on my dragon dagger and it worked. So I have a dragon dagger poison now, if uh, I in the future can get the P++ that would be of course even more poison damage. Oh my god, look at this drop, brimstone key and a curved bone in one drop. I think the brimstone key is like 1 in 100 from these and the uh, curved bone is 1 in 5000. So getting both of them in one drop is uh, very rare to say the least. I think this should be a good time to stop doing Slayer. I'm going to kill this one and it is the last one on the task I need to do and after that I'm actually going to hit exactly 50 slayers we get to end on an even level and I actually have five brimstone keys in my bank so we're going to go ahead and open those. I don't really know if there's any specific item I want to get from them but uh, alkyballs and money is always really good. I was actually thinking about unlocking bigger and badder but I only have 156 points so I don't actually want to spend all my points on that because if I do get like a bronze dragon task soon or something then I can't skip it. Hellhounds, that's actually a very good one, but uh, let's open these five keys. As I said, mostly alkyballs I think is what I want, so let's just see what we get. Uh, redwood tree seed? I mean, I think it's worth a lot in the main game, but I don't know how good that is. How much is it actually worth? Can I even check? Oh, it doesn't say. Oh, there, 38k. It's not worth that much. Some alkyballs, some uncut rubies, and for the last one, even more uncut rubies. The only things I really need before I can do a Solra efficiently is the 70 attack for the RM staff, which is not going to be a very hard grind to do, but I need the Tomo Fire, which is the really RNG based grind. So I'm going to do some Winter Todd now, but I'm going to do that off video. I mean, you guys have seen enough of it already, so I'm going to end the video here. Hope you guys did enjoy it and like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see future content. Also click any of the videos on the screen right now if you want to see content right away. Have a good one. Take care. 
Getting 69 attack is the first thing in the video on a hellhound and with 61 strength I can now enter the warriors guild and I don't really care about getting the dragon defender right now because I'm not really going to be doing a lot of melee. I am really only getting 70 attack to be able to use the Arim staff but I might as well use the last level of attack training in the warriors guild and see how many defenders I can get because in the future I will need them anyways when I'm doing like melee slayer or stuff like that. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I am going to hit 70 attack here and I did anticipate to get more than the iron defender. I have killed, actually I can show you guys on the uh, rune light here, I've killed 171 and the drop rate is 1 in 50 so I should have got 3.5 defenders but I only got 2. So that is a bit unlucky, but it is what it is. As I said, I don't really care that much about the defenders. I have to do that grind in the future, so it would be nice to get more of them, but right now I don't really need them. So now that I have 70 attack, I can use the Arum staff, and it is the staff I want to use. Let's unequip it and look at this. 5% magic damage as well as it has 15 magic accuracy and the Iban staff only has 10. So it is a better staff just straight up. It gives more damage, but the problem is if you use Iban staff, you can max it 25, even on 50 magic. But even if I have 75 magic, the Arum staff is not better than the Iban staff alone. But if you have the Tomo Fire, it actually makes the Fire Wave stronger than Iban's Blast, which is the goal I want to get. But of course, the Tomo Fire is a very RNG grind, but I will be doing it now and then, and I won't show any of it. So a lot of the video will just be me doing Winter Todd outside of the video. But what is the video going to be about? Well, I actually want to round out my stats a bit because my total level is like 200 behind some of the others in my group because I've just been grinding combat stats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start training up some of my lower skills when I'm not doing Winter Todd so we can actually get a decent total level and then in the background I can maybe get a Tomo Fire. As soon as I do I'm going straight into Soldra whenever that is. I have not been doing any birdhouse runs at all for just free hunter experience because because finding these different hop seeds in the seed store has been basically impossible but I'm on pretty early today so I'm going to try to jump to different worlds and see if I can get any and then I'll get started with my hunter training passively because I already have the clockworks in my bank we got them made very early so it should be an easy start as you can see, got myself some decent amount of seeds and made the basic birdhouses and it will take around 50 minutes and then I can come back here and get some experience. Probably only have to do like one run of the regular ones and then I can go for oak pretty fast because they give a lot of experience. I think a good thing to do meanwhile waiting for the birdhouses is just to do fishing because I have only 30 and that is kind of slacking because the rest of my group has done quite a decent amount of fishing for food. I have basically supplied no food for the group so I think this is a good thing to get up. So currently I'm 43 fishing and 21 hunter but another skill I want to work on as well is farming only 17 and I need to get some super compost I think the best way of doing that is just buying pineapples and then making it myself in the charter ships so I guess I'm going to be world hopping a bit to get some of that. Also I realized I am actually above 35 fishing which means I can do temporos so I'm going to do that meanwhile waiting for the birdhouses and my super compost and all the farming stuff in the future as well. Just finished a farm run and I got 69 ultra compost as well so I had to mine some volcanic ash but uh, yeah that is a good starting amount and I've done some temporos as well soon 47 fishing. So I'm up to Willow Birdhouses now and look at the experience for 50 minutes. 560 times 4 of course because you can make 4 every 50 minutes. So that is like 2000 something experience, 2200 or something every 50 minutes. And then when I get to uh, the maple ones that is going to increase even more. So it is very nice experience casually. I'm just using my reward permits here. I had 20 and now I have 10 left and these flakes are really good because they duplicate fish. I'm not really sure exactly how they work. I've never really used them but I've read that they duplicate fish. So if I get a lot of these and I'm going to like fish sharks or something or maybe crabs in the wilderness, duplicating them is of course very nice for Iron Man. But overall I got this loot and oh wow 131 seaweed. That's a lot of soda ash. But let's open these caskets, they can do, uh, or they can give jewelry and uh, rune items I think. Yeah, look at that, sapphire necklace, and the last one is jades. And there we have the first total level milestone I guess, 1.1k, I think I started around 1050, so we've gained 50 so far. 
Bit of a milestone, I guess. Just hit 50 fishing and in 8 levels, I'm probably going to stop doing temporos because at that point, I can actually do a barbarian fishing a bit more efficiently. I think you can start at like, after this, I'll just check real quick, but uh, I think you can actually start here at 48, but at 58, the experience rate is going to go up by quite a lot. So I think that's a good point to start barbarian fishing. Realize there is some free total levels to get as well from the Eye of Glothrine quest. Just a quick detour from all the fishing and also been doing some winter tod. I have some crates stacked up in the bank that I want to open at the end of the video. And that is the Eye of Glothrine quest for 6,000 runecraft experience. Actually 12k magic as well. And that is from 9 to 23 runecrafting. So a lot of free total levels right there. And here we go, the last 7 experience at Temporos to get 58 fishing and I'm actually going to stop there. I feel like I've done enough fishing for this episode and I'm at 1151 total but now let's actually use all the reward permits. 159 reward permits, so let's see what we can get from this. Hopefully we can get one of the unique items. It is not looking so good. I actually only got 2 caskets from this so far, which is very low. I think when I got the uh, 50 or something last time I did this, I actually got like 3 caskets so that was very bad. I got some soaked pages and I got emerald bracelets and sapphire necklaces from the chests but another thing that is very good is just the spirit flakes that duplicates fish and all the raw food for cooking. Something very risky with the amount of money I have on my account is I have 165k by the way. Uh, I'm going to the Revenants because I need some money but it is of course very risky because you have to pay 100k to go in. If you get PK'd you lose it but I have to try because Revenants were just updated. They drop more items and also they heal less. I should be easier to kill them this time around. So let's see if I'm going to just get PK'd or if I'm going to get some nice rewards. There is the fee, 100k, so let's do that. Yes, don't ask again, and uh, let's get started with uh, seeing if we can get any drops. There's two imps here, right? I thought it was only one here before, so that is probably a change, I would assume. New collection log item, Revenant Ether. Only two of them though, so nothing too big. So this is one of the new things they actually put on the loot table. The blighted items that you can use in the wilderness only. So that is kind of interesting because you can get like blighted super stores I would assume. And those could be really good for wilderness bosses in the future. I'm doing this unscald because I don't want to risk my black dehyde body and my amulet of strength. But three runite bars from one single drop from a hobgoblin. That is not bad. <laughs> Another collection log item, Revenant Cave Teleports, and how many is it? Oh, only one. So, also some Blighted Manta What? Wait, that's so many Blighted Manta Rays. I thought it would be one. It's like 14 of them. You also get these Blighted Spell Sacks that allows you to cast different spells. For example, this one you can see here, Snare. I can cast it with only one of the uh, Blighted Sacks cast. But uh, I'm actually just going to go and get Scald because I don't really think I need the Black Dead Body and the Amulet of Strength. So I'm just going to bring the uh, Dragon Scimitar and that's it. Okay, I feel like Hobgoblins is definitely the play. Look at how good the drops are. Two rune plate bodies, and before that I actually got four battle staves. They're just kind of hard to kill for me. Especially before I have the bracelet as well, I take a lot of damage, but uh, the drops are making up for it. Oh, I got some. The blighted super stores, four of them. That is pretty nice actually to use even in the cave. I believe I've been here now for around one and a half hour and I would say that probably with my stats and the dragon scimitar it's not really quite worth it yet. You can see all the loot and all the kills I did here. I did some pyre fiends. Of course I did make more than my money back but uh, currently I'm killing them pretty slow. I have to bank now and then so it's probably better to just wait until I have some better weapons like tier 70 weapons where I can kill them a lot more efficiently but uh, for now I'm going to leave the revenant. I'm going to be using all the raw food that I got from Temporos to get my cooking up. I'm 38 now and I'm using the Lumbridge range because it has a reduced burn rate and I should be fine even without the cooking gauntlets. Bit of a milestone as well, just hit 40 hunter and I am now up to 51 cooking but I still have some more stuff to cook so we're not done quite yet. That's all the cooking done and I have now resupplied myself for some food to do more winter tod because we basically had nothing. I was using salamons and trouts which is not very good. So having lobsters and like 100 swordfish is going to last me a while. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. And I am right now 58 cooking, so we got a good amount of total levels from that. And this is how many crates I've collected casually over the video, and this is 27 crates. So let's see if we can get lucky and get a tome of fire from this, otherwise I still have to continue the grind of course, but uh, yeah, let's hopefully get lucky.
Oh, there we have the Bruma Torch. That is a new unique. That actually works as a light source, I'm pretty sure. So that is actually a pretty useful item overall. Another Bruma Torch, like two crates after that or something. And the last crates, I'll just uh, open them all on video. And a th <laughs> oh my god, a third Bruma Torch. Okay, well, let's open these quick. And we get, oh, Pyromancer's Boots. That is now the entire set. But uh, no Tome of Fire just yet. I'm going to go into the bank. And I think, let me see on Rune Light if we can see everything. Yeah, just give me one sec. All the loot that we got from those crates was right here. 260k, got two Rainar Siege, which is pretty good. And we got four Rainars as well for Prey Potions, but three Bruma Torches. That is uh, quite something. It is kind of annoying that I have to do Winter Todd a bit later into the series instead of in the beginning, but I really do want that Tome of Fire and just get into Solra right away, so I am going to keep doing this for a while. Hopefully get some of my teammates to do it as well to uh, get my chances up of getting that Tome of Fire. But for now, this is going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. 1 million fire making experience done in one sitting here at Winter Todd, farming for the Tomo Fire, which is the item I need to start doing Solra. I'm at 85 fire making. Let's open four crates here. I am opening them pretty much right away after I get them because as soon as I get the tome, I am done here. No tome this time either. Managed to get Max Nick to join me as Winter Todd, the greatest cat too. He took some time out of his uh, insane Slayer grind and Black Mask grind to come here and help me get the tome. Hopefully one of us get, will get lucky at least. So we just hit 2 million fire making experience on the counter. Still no tome of fire. The current KC is 231. Max Nick just finished 50 crates. No tome of fire. So uh, that is kind of unfortunate. I'll open these five now real quick. Some warm gloves and hey, uh, teak seed is not bad. That's like 7k farming experience, but uh, I am up to 246 and also no tome. You know what? I have done 170 winter tods since I started recording for this video and I am almost at 91 fire making and I still do not have the tome of fire. And uh, we are overall like 700 winter tods in as a group and we still don't have a tome so we are very unlucky actually on the tome so far and i don't want to spend all the way out to 99 possibly maybe even more than that to get the tome uh, before i can actually post any content at all so what i'm actually going to work on as a small break and i'm still going to do more winter told in the video trust me but it is 55 slayer because i need bolts for solra and we can't really go to soul wars and farm addy bolts all the time so we are going to use broad bolts instead and that requires 55 slayer so that is a detour i will make during this video i swear when i saw that color of the text i thought i got a smoldering stone but uh, no it is a dark totem base which is not bad either if I do get a task where I can get superiors, I am going to unlock it because I have 174 points and it costs 150. So let's see what we actually get. Assignment, trolls in Keldagrim, no superiors on that one. So we're going to wait a bit. Honestly, I think the best task I could get is like blood Veld because it has both superiors and it's good experience. Also give blood runes and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, what are we going to get? Please no brown dragons, greater demons and the chasm of fire. That is... it's probably worth doing. I was actually looking into what the easy combat diaries require you to have to be able to complete the entire thing. Because if you do, you get a 5k experience lamp that I'll probably just put in Herblore or something as you usually do. But then you also get a hilt item that lets you teleport three times directly to the God Wars dungeon. And we might be doing some God Wars dungeon in the near future, so having that would be very nice. And the achievements are not very hard. I basically can complete everything except for one task. And that is kill a worm, which requires 62 Slayer. But maybe I can get some boost somehow. I don't know how hard it would be to get a wild pie. Probably very hard. So I would probably have to get all the way to 62. But I actually feel like I want to do that. It is uh, something I have to get up anyways, Slayer levels that is, and I might as well just complete the easy diaries while I'm at it. I think the hardest easy combat diary I will have to do is this one, King Black Dragon Novice. Kill the King Black Dragon 10 times. Now I'm thinking, oh this one as well, 10 giant mole is kind of hard, but this one is the 62 Slayer, 
But other than that, I think everything else is pretty easy. Sarachnis 10 times, that's also kind of easy. Lizardman Shamans, kill a Lizardman Shaman in Mulch, which has no dealt damage to anyone, excluding its spawns. Probably not very hard either. No way, I got back-to-back -back Brimstone Keys. Look in the chat. That was a back-to-back. -back. Nice! An easy task to complete is to kill one healer giant, one moss giant, and one fire giant in this cave. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Meanwhile, I'm doing my slayer task. Only 11 left, by the way, so pretty soon done with that as well. Should be the task done here in one more hit. There we go. Let's run up here. And when he dies... Oh, Dark Totem. I didn't even know you could get that from this. But yeah, there you go. Congratulations, you've completed an easy combat task. Wow, I had no idea this counted as uh, the uh, current dungeon. I guess it does. So you can actually get pieces. Imagine if I would get one of the Mystic pieces or the Broken Hasta. A, eh, we can hope. And we get Sea Turtles. That is a lot of food. Uh, probably decent, I would say. And then steel bars, that is, I guess, cannonballs, if uh, someone would ever want to smith that in the future. Oh, blood welds in the God Wars dungeon, no! That is so bad. I feel like I have to skip that, because in the God Wars dungeon it's going to be such a pain. Oh, that is sad that I have to skip that. Greater demons in the catacombs of current. Ooh, well, okay, I'll do it. There we go, 55 Slayer, and I have been given 1,000 Broad Bolts by Max Nick, who could make them, so we're actually going to go and first off open two Brimstone Keys and also try to complete this hard cruise scroll that I got, but after that, we're actually going to try to do some KBD if it's possible to solo it. Let's see what we get from these keys, hopefully something good. Some coal, I actually think someone needed that in our group, so not terrible, and then even more coal, alright, we have a lot of that now. Actually could complete this, so let's see what we're going to get. Would be nice with some alky balls, but anything is pretty good. God Dehides is also good. What is this? Green Fire Lighter's new unique, eh? Taking that. I hope this gear will be enough to get some KBD kills. Only need 10, so if I can do one per trip, that is alright. I don't need to stay there for ages. But uh, hopefully I don't get PK. That would be pretty bad as well. I would lose the black Dehides. Nice, no one is in this session, and uh, wow, I am getting hit pretty hard, uh, this is, <laughs> hopefully I will be able to do this. Oh, it drains my stats as well, that is not very good, I don't think we even have any restores, but it doesn't seem to be that bad drain. Oh my god, I'm taking insane amounts of damage, maybe I will have to call, call for some backup for this. I mean, the damage output I'm doing is not the problem, I am killing it fairly fast, but you can see I'm out of food now and it's only halfway dead, I will have to teleport to the Ferox Enclave again so I won't get the kill. But um, if I would have another person here, we could probably kill it pretty fast and uh, we would split the damage taken, which would make it a lot more bearable. You can see the damage, it's not bad that I'm doing. Went to the bank and came back and no one had touched the boss, so that was pretty lucky. And I can at least finish the first kill on my own if I can just get one more hit in here. That should be it. And that is the first KC done. What is the first drop going to be? And we get some blood runes. We get some dragon bones, of course. But uh, yeah, I would love to have some help here. So in two hours we're going to do it as a group, actually we're going to do a couple of KBD kills, maybe finish the task for everyone, but until then I'm just going to farm some giant keys or mossy keys because I will need a bunch of them for a lot of tasks actually those bosses give. I could kill the uh, hill giants right here because there's a lot of them, but I might as well kill actually in the cave that I was at before. Because I think it can drop the totem pieces on the normal hill giant as well, so I might as well just do it here. It's less of them, but they probably have very fast respawn, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, that is not a totem piece and not a key, but ancient shard, that is another addition to why I should do them in here, I guess. Okay, another ancient shard, only one more if I would get the dark light and I can actually make the arc light, which is super good weapon. But uh, by the way, I do know you can kill these in the wilderness for pretty much double the drop chance of getting a key but uh, yeah as i said the ancient shards i will need in the future anyways and i don't mind being here a bit longer okay i'm three times the drop rate i feel like i'm definitely going to go into the wilderness and just try to finish this off oh my god finally there we go that's the giant key and that took me how many in the wilderness 81 so not that bad finally got it though i think from looking at the achievement, I think I will be able to get all the tr three achievements in one kill. Uh, but what I have to do is I have to kill it on a free-to-play world. I have to kill it when it's rooted. 
And that should be everything. So one kill, kill it when it's rooted and kill it in a free to play world. So if I can do all of that in one kill, I'm basically done. So this is actually my gear. I mean, this is the best free to play gear I can use. I don't know if there's any. I mean, I could get a wizard hat, but it wouldn't really make much of a difference. Hopefully I get all the three in one so I don't have to go and get another key because that was painful. Three HP. I just rooted him. So please let me hit. Oh no, that's a mess. It only lasts for 10 seconds to root, so I'm not going to risk another shot here. I'm just going to reroute it. Come on, can we reroute it, please? Oh, uh, that's some damage. Okay, so it's 3 HP. If I get the hit here, please do not unroot now, please. Let's see if that's all the challenges. All the three in one. Perfect. I don't have to go and get another key. Finishing off some very easy tasks, killing a blood veld being the first one. I have to kill a greater demon with a silver light. <laughs> it's the best one I have. I don't have dark light or arc light yet, of course, but hey, got that done as well. Wait, I just realized I got a medium challenge on Obor, so that means I did not get all of them. Kill Obor while he's immobilized. Wait, there's no way. I'm pretty sure he was rooted when I killed him, so why did I not get that? Probably something I must have misunderstood then. But it's time now to go and get that 10k on King Black Dragon. We're going as a three-man Max, Nick, Dovidas, and me, so it shouldn't be too hard. Oh, I, have, I didn't even bring a tele. Oh, I didn't bring a teleport. I have to. Oh my god, how do I get out of here without a teleport? <laughs> um, uh, running into to uh, Chaos Temple. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, or you could just die and just respawn, collect all your items. Yeah, I could. I'm, ho teleport. I'm on halfway point now, so I have five kills. Rune oh, limbs. That oh, could have been good if uh, <laughs> we didn't have rune crossbows already. Well, I can make the- we only have four. I can make the fifth. Oh, That's really? Nice. Come on, get the kill. Oh my, oh god. my god. 24 melee. I'm like trying to flick it, but like I, I like misclick and then bam, I just take a 24 to the face. Yeah, power amulet again. Two of those. Oh, ho, ho. hello. What we doing, boys? Potential last kill here. KBD. Oh! Uh Dragon, nice. uh, dragon rune longsword, I mean. <laughs> dragon long Dragon longsword. Okay, but that's my right, task so completed. Good. After completing the 10 kills for KBD, by the way, we only did it for me. The other ones uh, didn't really feel like completing the easy diaries right now anyways. So I went to the giant mole and killing this with range with my setup is probably the best bet, but it is also very slow. But that is the first kill and also an achievement. Hard one, actually. But this is the last kill, it took me like an hour to do this, but I was just chilling with my teammates in the voice chat, so it wasn't too bad, but uh, doing this without the uh, hard diary in Falador is pretty annoying. After that, I got myself two mossy keys from the wilderness, I got pretty lucky on them, I think it took me like 80 kills to get both of them, and there are five tasks for this boss, the harder ones being the two last ones, which is kill the boss with either poison or venom being the final source of damage, and I'm going to do that through my dragon dagger, and then the second one is of course kill it on a free to play world, should be dying here in a sec. And I hope that I'm going to get all the achievements from this, because I use the anti-poison so I wouldn't take any poison damage, which is one of the tasks. And having the magic prayer up. Okay, there we go. So it died. And let's see, one of the tasks, and then all the other ones as well. And I got a mossy key as well. So I have another attempt at the free-to-play kill. But I think the only thing I have to do now is just kill it on a free-to-play world, so shouldn't be that bad. I'm not joking. This is my gear. Uh, I don't actually have, like, any rune items in my bank at all. I only have Barrow's gear. Uh, the only rune item I had was a rune med helm, so hopefully this monk's gear is going to be enough and the rune 2 age was the best weapon I had. So let's uh, hope I don't die. If I die though, I have another key, so it's not that terrible. I have to say, my prayer was kind of close on that one, but managed to get the kill for some law runes, and that is now all the challenges completed from this boss. After that, I went ahead and got 100% Shazian favor right here, and I got a full tier 5 set, which allows me to kill Lizardman Shamans, so let's do that. There are two tasks for those. There's one task to just kill one, and there is one to not take damage, I think, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get both of them in this task, I'm not sure if I took any damage, honestly, but regardless, I'm going to get one of the tasks done here, so let's see if we get one or two. And we get both of them. Alright, so that's pretty easy. Going to get the fabric as well to make the mage gear, I guess. But uh, yeah, two more tasks done. Now for the last thing I want to do for the video is I want to open all of these crates. I have been doing some winter thought on the side and uh, I am really hoping to get that Tomo Fire. The progress I made on the easy diary so far 
is uh, this. I'm very close to done. I really only need to get 62 uh, Slayer for the Aberrant Spectres and the Worm. And then I have to do a very easy Temporal's task. And then I have to do 10 Sarachnis kills and kill Obor. Meanwhile, he is entangled. I think I screwed that up. So not too hard tasks. I'm going to get that 100% in the next video. But uh, let's see if we can manage to get the Tome of Fire. And that is that. I did not get a Tome of Fire just yet and uh, I mean I am pretty close to 92 fire making so pretty much halfway there. But I'm going to still work on it, really want that, I really want to use that for Soldra. so it is a passive grind I'll work on, meanwhile doing other things. Hope you guys did enjoy the episode though, if you did please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see future content, and have a good one, take care. Most of this video is actually going to be dedicated to killing Lizardmen Shamans, because in the last video I killed some of them and I was kind of interested in trying it out. So Lizard Kickers is kind of a weird item, but you can actually buy 10 of them from the bar in Shazian, and they are actually budget ranging potions. They give 4 plus range, so I'm going to use those meanwhile killing the shamans. I'm going to try the rune crossbow with broad bolts, but I'm not sure if this is better than an MSB with the rune arrows. We will see, I guess. I'll try both of them and see which one is best, but this is the starting setup I'm going with. And this is why I want to do them. They drop so many alkyballs, 25.5k from one of the normal alks and whoops, accidentally <laughs> alk the death rune, but uh, they also drop a lot of runes, so that's a good thing. Oh, that is not the right Warhammer, but 25k Alk, probably going to get baited by a lot of those. Oh, there we go, Serix Talisman, that is a 1 in 250, and I got it very early actually. Very good unlock for Teleport Sonsea. First, Hard Clue Scroll of the Grind, I think these can drop Elites as well, but I already have one in the bank, and I don't really feel like doing Elites, they're not really worth it, but I will try to do all the Hard Clues off video, and I'll open the caskets at the end of the video if I manage to get any. Oh my god, I got so baited. Dragon Medhelm, I mean, it's a 60k Alex, so I can't complain, but I have to say I really thought that was a Dragon Warhammer. It looks so similar on the ground and the same text as well. That is a 1 in 1600 drop. It's not as rare as the uh, Dragon Warhammer, but uh, as you can see on the screen right now, that is a very rare drop to get. Now going to try a while with the Maddox Shortbow. I did about 150 kills with the Rune Crossbow and I feel like the Maddox Shortbow is going to be better. But I'm not sure, just getting the Rune Arrows is a bit more annoying doing LMS than Broad Bolts, but I do think this might be better. Lizardmen Shamans have actually zero range defense, so probably having a faster bow is going to be higher DPS. You can see I'm hitting very consistently, so it's probably going to be better with a Magic Short Bow. I just have to go to LMS a bit now and then and get more rune arrows. Another Serix Talisman, and it's actually not bad to get duplicates, because I'm pretty sure you can destroy them and get charges for your other one. So I can dismantle this one, I'll do it in a bit, and I think you get a good amount of charges. Maybe I can do it now when it's jumping. And there we go, I got like 100 teeth, so that is a lot of charges. On my last video, I got a comment about when am I going to contribute to the group storage, and uh, I haven't really been able to because the grinds I've been doing haven't really been contributing a lot, but I have still been doing it off video now and then. For example, my winter Todd crates, like I gave them all my Raynor seeds so they can give me prayer potions and stuff like that and level herb lore. But now, Dovidas actually needs a lot of money because he's going for 70 smithing, so I'm going to give him 1 million cash putting that in there and also I am giving 100 law runes to Dark World Order for the portal room as well as 750 chaos runes and 70 for mithril ore for Max Nick because he wants to exchange it for Tockle for obsidian legs. So when I started doing LMS on this account to get rune arrows, the MSB imbue and all that, I was so, so rusty. I was terrible at the game. I was dying like all the time, not really getting many kills, maybe one per game, which is the first fight. But from doing this a bit more now and then for restocking on rune arrows for alking or for, for example, Lizard Man Shamans that I'm doing now, I have actually improved a bit. I mean, I am not nearly as good as the actual good PKers, but uh, I'm putting some clips in the background here, you can see, and uh, I don't know if I put any clips of me LMSing in another video, I think I had one, but
but in the beginning I was super slow with my switches but uh, yeah playing this probably like 50 games now I've got uh, a bit better which is actually making it a bit more enjoyable and I might actually go for a rune pouch in the future which is 70 points and now that I have actually a couple of wins I might be able to do it in a reasonable time because if you lose like all the time you barely get any kills it's going to take ages but uh, if you can win some games or even get like 3-4 kills per game then it shouldn't be that bad. And there's another one, Serex Talisman number 3, which is very lucky because it's 1 in 250 and I've done like 300 kills so far, so very lucky on those. Currently on a Winter Toddler Detour and I am actually very close to 93. I did 92 to 93 and I have all the crates in my bank from that, so we're going to open that after this and uh, this is how I kind of want to do it. Now and then I'll do an entire level at Winter Todd and then open the crates afterwards. And this is how many crates one level basically is, so let's see if we can get lucky and get the tome of fire and the last two doesn't seem like we're going to get it no we do not this is actually the last lizardman shaman i'm going to kill it is the number 300th lizard shaman and it takes a very long time to kill these i mean they have 150 hp and uh, they jump around a lot after run around from the minions and all that but let's have a look at the loot so this is all the loot that i got 1.7 million 300 kills three talismans which was very lucky i got two hard clue scrolls but actually both of them i could not do so that was kind of unfortunate and we got a lot of alkyballs i probably made like a million in alkyballs so that is the main reason why i wanted to do this as well as a bunch of uh, runes as well 433 death runes and actually i got two entire range levels so i am now 73 from 71 so our team is inching a bit closer to actually doing God Wars dungeon bosses as a team and I have not completed the Edgar's Ruse quest so that is what I want to do now. That means I have to do Troll Stronghold first but that should not be too much of a big deal. So let's complete both of those quests and actually Edgar's Ruse give a lot of herb lore experience and I want to get to 38 so I can actually make my own prayer potion so that is going to help a bit with that as well. That is the Troll Stronghold completed. Very random reward. A law talisman. Not really sure why that is a reward, but uh, I may, I'll put it in the bank. Maybe it's useful for something. So I'm working on Edgar's Ruse now and after this I am actually planning on doing Shadow of the Storm which also needs the Golem quest because after that I get the Dark Light and I already have the Ancient Shards to make the Arc Light and I think Max Nick actually got a greater demon task and it would be pretty nice to try and duo Samurak or even Trio. We will see what we can get together but it would be very fun to try. Let's see how many levels I get from 33 to 37 almost actually 38 Herbro so that is perfect like... How much is that? 500 experience of prayer bots. Should be the golem quest completed when I put this key into the clay golem. Also, I guess I have to put this program on. Is there going to be an instant completion? Nope, there is some dialogue. There we go. 1k crafting, 1k thieving. And uh, we should be able to do Shadow of the Storm now and 29 thieving. And that's Shadow of the Storm completed. I'm actually going to put this experience in attack 10,000 because the next goal now, because I can technically get the arc light, is to get 75 attack because that is actually how high the requirement for the weapon is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the Dragon Defender, meanwhile training attack. And uh, when I get the Dragon Defender, I am going to go for 62 Slayer, also training attack, because I need that to complete the easy combat diary. So I'm a uh, Basically completing a bunch of things at the same time. Hey, look at that, Dragon Defender. The Defender grind is over. I killed uh, probably like 500 overall Cyclops for this, so not too bad at all. And now it is time for another melee upgrade, which is the Fire Cape. There is nothing that could have been better timing than this. I was going to use the Natus Knot helmet for the Fire Cape, but it's not really a ranged helmet. And then... Max Nick opened a clue scroll the same time I was going to go there and he got me this and said I could use it. Bandos Coif. So that is going to be a massive upgrade. Also put 10 prey pots in here for me for the fire cape. 
So let's see the ranged bonus. This is actually seven ranged bonus better. So that is actually quite massive. The setup I'm going to be using is right here. I have the Shazian boots for some ranged offense, as well as the red Dehyde Van Braces. They are better than the iron gloves that I had, as well as I have a switch to the Rune Crossbow and Crystal Shield with Broad Bolts for when the Majors come, because they're a lot more tanky, so the Magic Shortbow is not that great there. And the Diamond Bolts Enchanted is for when I get to Jad. So I basically have a weapon switch, and I also have bolt switches, and my food is, of course, or his prey pots. Oh, I should get a new one. And uh, strawberries. Strawberries heal five each, and there's five in one of these baskets. So it's 25 healing one slot, which is definitely the best I can get currently. Well, I have to say, it is not looking great. Uh, this is my supplies I currently have. I'm on wave 46, and I have been flicking prayers quite a bit. I just have very low prayer, like 49, but uh, hopefully I will be able to make it. Guess we'll see. So last time I think I did Fire Cape was like three years ago on Old School RuneScape, so uh, I am not really doing it this perfectly at all. I only have four strawberries left, 26 HP, and one and a half prayer potion with of course full prayer. I'm away 57. It is possible that I do get to Jad, and if I would be an insane player, maybe I would be able to kill Jad, but I guess we'll see. Oh. Uh... Ah. <sighs> That sucks. Now, after that death, I made two adjustments. The first one is I'm not going to be bringing an MSB with rune arrows because that is just taking up too much space and I don't think I need it. And I think one more basket and one more prey potion is going to help a lot more. I also got 52 prayer from 49 using some bones and sold heads so that uh, my prey potions are going to restore a bit more prayer, which is going to help a lot. Actually, such a lucky last spawn. The uh, Jad boss actually spawns where the orange one spawned. So so I will just be able to kill it and then save slot around the uh, Italy rock right here. So won't have to fight the boss instantly when it spawns. Yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh my god. Almost two hours to complete that. And of course I get the lag as well. I actually got this lag a couple of times with the Runelite client uh, doing the fire cape, which actually drained me some HP and, uh, and prayer. But uh, there we go. Oh, so nice to have this done. I really, really do not like the fire cape. I'm not going to lie, I just don't enjoy it. But there it is, it's done. Look at this absolute unit. My strength bonus is now 98, but I'm still rocking the iron gloves. I haven't really got myself to uh, start working on the recipe for disaster. That will be for the future, but let's get into some Slayer because I want to get closer to the 75 attack. Also need 62 Slayer for uh, completing the easy combat diaries. You know, I'm one of those guys who just prefer to open my brimstone chest when I go to corner anyways after each task. Got one from that and we get... Torstall seeds. Is that good? I guess it could be in the future, but uh, Iron Dragons in the Brimhaven dungeon. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing any of the dragon tasks. Maybe I should have blocked that. Black Demons in the Catacombs of Current. That is not bad. I think they dropped some rune items that I can alk. Reddest Cat 2 is online, and that is, of course, the Dark World Order, and uh, he has a black mask that he hasn't imbued yet. And he's not going to do Slayer for a bit, so he actually said I can use that, and with the Dragon Defender, Torso, Fire Cape Strength bonus, and a Black Mask, I should be getting some really good XP rates. Picking up the Black Mask, actually I probably want to take some more Supers as well because I'm running out, but there we go, and uh, Dark World Order is actually working on Prayer Grind right now, 70, before uh, doing Barrels, because he wants to uh, complete the Mauritania Diary, so I'm putting these in to help him out a bit, it's really all the heads I still had. Recently hit 73 attack and 56 slayer, so only two more attack levels until I can use the arc light. And I will try to fish for a great demon task and Max Snake will do the same. When we both get it, or if one of us gets it, or if we just get bored and we can't get one, we'll go and duo Samurai. And what the two items we're looking mostly for is, at that boss, is actually the Staff of the Dead for me, which is one in 512 or 508, not sure, because it is better than the 
Arum Staff for Solra if I do get that Tome of Fire. So that is a nice item for me to get and uh, you do need 75 attack for it anyway so I'm getting that now as well. So it lines up perfectly and uh, for him he needs the Samurakian Spear. Not really sure why but uh, he said he needs it so a good reason to do uh, the boss together. But for now I'm going to end the video here. In the next video we are going to 100% do some Samurai. Super stoked about that. Will be very interesting to see if we can get something. Brimstone key. Nice. But um, before I end the video, I just want to say that I actually have a goal to uh, reach 13k subs by the end of this month. So if you guys do enjoy my content and you do want to subscribe to my YouTube, please do that. It means a lot to me and like the video if you did enjoy it. And until next time, have a good one. Take care. There it is, 75 attack, and that is a big level because in my last video I said that I was going for the arc light, and that is now available to me. I have the ancient shards, I can make the arc light, and all I want to do now is get a greater demon task, and we can actually go and kill Samurak together with uh, Max Nick. So meanwhile I'm working on getting a greater demon task, of course I got a hard clear scroll, so let's see what the first one, I could actually complete this one as well, which is not that common with uh, the amount of quest points I have. Let's see what the first is going to be, and it is some uh, mediocre stuff I would say, I guess it's a collection log item this one. Well, I've been doing a couple of Slayer tasks and I am actually out of Slayer points and I got 131 black demons. It says I have 30 points, but I do not actually. And uh, I don't have any prayer pots and doing that task without it is going to be a pain. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to give up on a Slayer task and we're going to go without it. But first, I have to make the Arc Light. Combine Dark Light with three ancient shards, yes. And there is the Arc Light, which... Uh, I can equip because I have 75 attack and the special attack is actually very interesting. You can see here, it temporarily drains your target's attack strength and defense by 5%. Is twice as effective uh, versus demons. So, if we actually land a spec on Krill, that is 10% reduction in all his stats. And you can use it twice and we have two of them. So that's going to do a lot of damage on the boss in terms of uh, how strong the boss will be, how much damage it's going to take. So this is a very nice unlock. Now before we can go, I actually have to wait for Max Nick to work towards 70 prayer, which is actually pretty close to, so it should be in like 2 hours we can go. But until then I have nothing really to do except wait for him, so what I'm going to do in this time is I'm going to do some small questing. I have Iron Gloves from Recipe for Disaster right now, not equipped, but uh, I am working on some of the requirements for Recipe for Disaster, so I'm doing Goblin Diplomacy yet. Yes, it is like 3 weeks or something into Group Iron Man and I have not done Goblin goblin diplomacy that is a disaster but it's getting done now five quest points for this that is ridiculous i didn't know it was that crazy also 49 crafting <laughs> first glove upgrade incoming right here let's use that and we get some cooking experience crafting and farming as well that is not bad farming experience actually and did we get a level for that nope Another gigantic quest completed, the Gertrude's Cat. I'm very impressed with myself being able to complete this quest so early into group Iron Man. Is there no complete screen? What? Oh, there it is. That was so delayed. Uh, that is, of course, for the Evil Dave part of the recipe for disaster. And, uh, I mean, I will have to grow this cat now or use this kitten to actually get the spices, which will probably take a very long time, but hey, I might as well try. I mean, yeah, it was a bit tedious to do this with a kitten, but it only took like 15 minutes, so definitely was better to do it now before waiting like two and a half hours for it to grow fully. So if you're doing this now late, I would definitely do it with a kitten. It's not terrible. Second glove upgrade incoming, using this on Evil Dave, and 7,000 cooking experience, which is actually pretty nice because we're going to have to get all the way to 70 cooking for another quest, which is... I'm only 58, so that's going to be a bit of a struggle to do. For the next part, I had to complete the big chompy bird hunting, but that is a very easy quest, and it is done. I also have to do Witch's House, I think. Can't believe I haven't done that either. And that is the Witch's House completed. Actually, not terrible hit points experience. Third glove upgrade. Let's use the cake on the Lumbridge Guide for some cooking and magic experience as well. And uh, only three more to go, but I think all of them are pretty difficult. And this will be the last fourth upgrade to my gloves. This is the uh, Scratch Bone Crusher. I can't pronounce that. Quest completed. 1500 cooking, wood cutting ranged, crafting experience. And I think we have access to the Adamant Gloves now, which 
is quite an upgrade from iron. And there they are, the adamant gloves. They cost 3.2k, so I can buy a couple of them if I would die and lose them. Let's look at the upgrade here. The iron gloves gives like 3 or 2 plus and everything, and 3 melee strength, and the added gloves give 7. So they're more than double as good, so that's a very good upgrade. Even for Soldra when I'm going there, they are very good defensives. Yeah, I did it as well twice. Okay, now go in. Oh. Alright, there you guys are, nice. Missed first spec, unfortunately. Oh, I hit my All spec. Right. Oh, and I hit it on a minion. I missed mine. I have dragon dagger, but I hit 27 25 with it. He's not taking as much damage as, <laughs> as I thought he would. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm hitting. I guess, yeah. He's quite tanky. Oh, I don't have defender on. Oh my god, what am I doing? He is more tank. But oh. I think you also get poison only the tank gets poisoned. I think. Yeah, so maybe. So we mean I need the uh, anti poison. Give yeah. it to me. Ooh. No, I took no damage. First damage, just one. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> Nick is taking yeah, the, the minions damage, just I guess. change randomly. Oh yeah, they do. Oh, right, it's soon scared. dead. I'm dead. Oh. I'm dead. Oh shit. Wow. That's a lot Take of damage. Point. You can keep playing oh, magic, dead. to be honest. He's dead at least. Coins, dude. Coins. First drop. Well, oh, I got it. Someone else is gonna have to take over the tank now. Can we just kill like one minion at a time? I'm hitting now. Come on. Come and on. he's dead. Dead. Nice. Good job, boys. Lanta dimes. Should we get rid of the mage first? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Easy. That was such a good method. Land to dimes <laughs> hey. again. Did anyone complete our task? No. no. What task? Was, was... Oh, I guess because I got the KC. It was Yar no more. Whatever that is. <laughs> Pretty means it a... didn't spec you, maybe? Yeah, you kill him without using the spec. Oh, okay. He's spawns now, fully by the way. Stopped, maybe? I'm almost finished the KC. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so I would hold it. <laughs> No, you could try well, it. You could get it again when we get it, so it doesn't really matter. Do, do, actually, do, do, do you want to try that? So he attacks Look one of us. Look at this. <laughs> Absolutely cheesy. There we go. Right there we go. Now. You okay. see? You no, see? You go under. Did you see that? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now you can stay under him. Oh, I tried. He's low. Okay. Just be patient with it. Yeah, yeah. One of you will tank soon. So there you go. Play. Now alone has to do it. Oh, dude, dude, that I works, actually. dude, I don't have up, the walk up. option. It's so awkward. Just right click walk. I know, but it's so bad for oh, me. Oh, e, 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 e. uh, dude. Oh, Yo. Okay. I know this is. Meta. Dude, I'm poisoned as well. Actually. See, didn't attack me again. Oh my god. Okay, now I failed, obviously, but. Yeah. We can yeah, do that, that works well though. I could I could walk him all Dude. day long. Oh, honestly. I eat went up, to, eat up, bro. I went to like one HP. Holy shit. Okay, it's on me now. So just we'll come there and eat. I'm gonna have to TP probably. Wait, is it aggro on me? I don't even know who's on. He's on me. Dude, he's. Well, I'm gonna hit. Dude, I need to TP here. I'm taking. Oh, eight. Or retaliate. I need to turn off. Eighteen oh, poison now. hit, dude. Oh. oh god, I'm Come so on, dead. kill him! Oh, oh no. I didn't click the food in time. That works Wait, so kill him, well. Kill though. him, kill him, kill him! He's so dead! Oh, we yes. got him! Yes. Holy shit. Oh, god. Dude, look at the poison <laughs> damage. Rune Simmon and Pog. Oh, I have to TP, I'm gonna die! <laughs> Me too. Oh. Okay, I thought you actually got one no, shot. No, no, not, not one hit. Yes. Like that. <laughs> you got one hit on me. Dude, I oh my god. Slapping. <laughs> yeah, he has no defense now. I mean, oh my god, that okay. kills. Okay. That was first. Alright, so get rid of what major first. Ooh, super, oh, super restores. restores. That's not bad. Holy shit. We should try to save those if possible. I think he's gonna swap now, maybe. Kill him? Yep, he's Man. on grey. Nice, easy. Very nice. Major. Coins again. Coins. Nice. We're getting rich, <laughs> dude. That's the most, most common drop. 20,000 golden coins. Imagine if you would see $20,000 dropped on the ground. Would you not be happy? I suppose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's insane. Like getting twenty thousand dollars right on the I ground. I've been man. watching the Nini. Dude, I'm gonna land the spec this time, one hundred percent. 
I hit. Ooh. Oh my god, dude. I, this is my kill. Oh my god, I haven't missed yet. Oh my... 21. Okay, 21 again. I've done all this damage. 100% nice. Sammy Spear. Adamant arrows! Well, they're poisoned, so... Uh, 60 Slayer. 60 Slayer. <laughs> 60 Slayer of a black demon in here, boys. Hey. That's hilarious. It's we're going to be... I'm gonna end. call that we're gonna get coins. I'm, it's a bold... Uh, oh! Oh my god, how did I know that? What a surprise. What a surprise. Not at all, like 20 coin drops in a row. Surprised Pikachu face. But we're, I'm going to die. I got 48. Yeah, yeah, so I'm 67, so... I'll try to attack him. Oh, you went for it. Okay. I did not hit spec, you didn't. I did not hit spec either. Uh -huh. Oh, I think you... Oh, I'm dead. Oh. I knew it. Unlucky. 35. Oh god, that's on me now. On you now, yeah. Unlucky. Yeah, this, this is the last kill we can do, right? Not yeah, some other yeah. food. Oh, oh my god, no, Tovi, don't die. You're, you're too young to die. Don't die yet. Uh, oh, you have no prayer on. No! Last kill. Oh, I'm attacking the min. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. The boss, guys, the boss. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. No, he's not dead. Oh, no, oh he's, dead. he's dead. That's last kill. Can we get something? Adamant play, play buddy. buddy. Oh, I didn't pick it up at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Now, unfortunately, we did not manage to get a rare drop from Samurai, but we did overall like 40 kills and it was a very fun experience. But I am back to Winter Todd. I've done roughly 700,000 experience and usually I just open all the crates right away because when I do get the tome, I am done here. But I have some crates here I saved. I am, by the way, 94 fire making right now, working towards that 99 or the tome of fire. But let's open these real quick and see if we can get lucky. So far, no tome. It feels like it doesn't even exist in this game. No tome yet, but uh, I am going to keep doing some Winter Todd now. And uh, this will be the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Welcome to another video. We are about to hit 95 fire making without a tome yet. One more and there we go. Four more levels until 99 and hopefully before that I will have the tome of fire. But uh, you never know with this RNG. I've never had more motivation to get the Tomo Fire done. I am going to stay here for even longer than what I anticipated because I'm going to put a picture on the screen right now. I cannot believe this. Nick actually got an imbued heart that I will be able to use on Solra. And it is not going to really increase my damage, like my max hit, but it is going to definitely give me better accuracy. So if I have the Tomo Fire with the Arum Staff, and the imbued heart I should be able to shred with magic. Another fire making level coming in here and I do have a decent amount of crates in the bank we're going to open and try to get that tome 96 fire making so so far in this video I have done crates pretty much for two and a half levels because I started on 94 and a half so uh, let's see if we can get some tome. This is how many crates I've collected. You can see I have a decent amount in this tab and of course I do have the uh, duplicate pyromancer items here as well that I will turn in for pages. I currently have almost 700 pages and I think also Max Nick has like 500 so if I do eventually get the tome I will have charges forever basically. Well, uh, it is not looking great. We have these crates left and uh, am I going to actually get 99 fire making before I get the tome? And yeah, two and a half levels, still no tome. What I'm going to do as a break from Winter Todd is I'm actually going to try to kill Solra with my OG setup, the Iban Staff, and I didn't really have any food for it that was good, so I'm going to get pineapple pizzas. I got all the materials here to make a decent amount. Also, I might use some uh, potatoes with cheese as well, but I'm putting this in here so Dovidas can make all of them because you need 65 cooking. I do not have that. Now, meanwhile, I'm waiting for him to make those pizzas. I actually just noticed that my teak trees are finished. These are the first ones. I've planted and none of them died and I'm now 37 farming these give a ridiculous amount of farming experience they take like three days to grow though so look at this 
37 to 39. Almost actually... Oh, I got my first Hispori seed as well. I can't really use that until uh, very high farming or like 65, 60 something with boost. But uh, yeah, I got that seed. And uh, 41 farming from 37 so far. And the last one is going to get me to 43. So that is like 6 farming levels from only these trees. And I actually have like 20 teak tree seeds as well from Winter Todd. And like probably 25 mahogany seeds which is even more experience in the future i think that should be the kill actually right there hopefully it doesn't live with one hp yeah there we go so managed to do an ibon's blast kill and we get uh, actually dragon bones that is not a bad drop five and a half minutes though that is very slow so there's actually two upgrades I can make to make Solra even more consistent before I do get the Tome of Fire, which is the Rune Pouch at 75 points, uh, which is going to save me one inventory space. The Death Runes and Fire Runes go into one spot, and overall the Rune Pouch is just very good overall. Also, I am using Diamond Bolts, which is technically Adamant Bolts. I could get these Dragonstone Bolts E, and they are actually quite a bit better for Solra. So I, there's two things I can get from LMS here. Meanwhile, actually, one of my teammates are doing a lot of wind to Todd right now to try to help me get the tome. Another absolutely massive benefit to having the imbued heart, which I now have in my inventory, it boosts magic by a lot more than anything else really we can get our hands on, and that is an 8 plus magic boost all the way to 83. And that actually means, oh, rune crafting level, that I, with the level of the boost, can make barrels tablets. And uh, before I was doing it very inefficiently, but it's actually not really for me. It's mostly for Dark World Order, who now has the Mauritania Legs 3 as well. And he can do a bunch of barrels, maybe get me some Arams pieces for Solra. Overall, very good for the team. Let's see how long this actually takes to make one of the tablets. Let's create... 90 magic experience per one as well. It's it's not that slow. It's not that bad I will have to log out now and then though to uh, reset the magic buff because Otherwise I have to wait like seven minutes So you can see here seven minutes to reactivate the imbued heart as well So that would be kind of unfortunate actually two major things in this clip look at this Dovidas just hit 75 crafting that means I will not be forced to use an amulet of power on solar anymore I will have a glory and also we are now done with the tabs. I made 149, so just shy of one, but the boost ran out. I still have some dense blocks as well, but this should be enough for the group to do a good amount of barrows. Got Darox this time. Let's try to get him a bit lower with some ranged hits. Let's freeze him. Should I go for the... I'm so high HP, I can't go for Darox yet. Maybe I should wait to like 50 HP. I could maybe do it now. Should I try to do it now? Let's go for it. Dude, I swear, let's go for it. Wait. Oh, 60 actually got it. <laughs> Dude, I love Darox. Can we get a Darok KO here? Let's try to freeze him. Okay, let's go for it. Come on, hit hard. Oh, 77. No, he lives. There is no way, dude. That could have been it. Oh, come on, D-Class. Let's carry me, please. They are so overpowered. Oh my god, they're so good. Even on Darox. Or maybe uh, he actually swapped to Mystic there. Yeah, dude, every time you get D-Class, it's like free vi wins, dude, free kills. It's just spec randomly and you get the kills. Finally, there we go, 75 points. I am not the biggest fan of LMS, but it is a good way to get the Rune Pouch. So there it is, very good unlock for Solra and all overall the future PVMing. Let's get some Dragonstone Bolts now as well. And back to Solra to try out a kill with the room pouch and I have to say it is very nice. I mean I have three pineapple pizzas left now. Having the uh, additional inventory space is definitely helping out a lot. And when I do get the Tomo Fire I feel like I definitely can grind this out. Let's see what the loot is going to be. And it is some Chaos Runes, Coal and Solra Scales. But it is back to Winter Todd to uh, try again to get the Tome. So only 5 more Winter Tods to 500 mark, which is pretty nice, but something pretty big actually happened. We got a Carol's Coif, Dark World Order actually got one, and that means we now have the full entire Carol set. I do want to try that for Solra actually, so I am going to do some more Winter Todd. After that, I'm going to borrow the entire set and see if it's actually better than the Rune Crossbow with Dragonstone Bolts E. I'm not sure if that's going to actually be the case, but it's going to be fun to try. Look at this beautiful set. Let's uh, take it all out and equip it and see how it actually looks on me. Yep, that is going to be very nice and fun to try at Solra. 
I did have an Amulet of the Damned before we actually had a Glory because it has the same stats as that, but it does actually disappear when you die. But I didn't really bring teleports, emergency teleports to Solra when I had it because I didn't know about that mechanic. But now that we do have full carols, it is actually such a strong amulet I have with the set for ranged DPS. So I'm going to try to get another one, maybe even two because they're not very hard to get. In case I would die, I still have another one. We got four keys. I think it is one in 13 or something like that. So let's see if we can get lucky. And we do. All right. There is the first amulet of the damned. Uh, I'll get one more. Can we get one from this key? No, we cannot. But yeah, I'll get one more in case I die. And the first key back. Another amulet of the damned. So overall, I did five keys and I got two amulets of the damned. That is insane luck. So now that I have a pretty good ranged setup for Soul Rod that I'm pretty happy with, I will have to try it out, but I think it's going to do well, especially with the Amulet of the Damned. I actually want to just kind of boost my magic up casually, because I'm pretty close to 76, but just having a higher magic is going to help at Soul Rod. And for that, I want to complete the Desert Treasure quest, which requires 53 thieving, and also the Temple of Ikov quest, which I can just complete whenever I want to. But the biggest block is the... Uh, thieving levels. I have to get all the way to 59, then I am actually going to get donated a decent amount of runes so I can actually burst magic to just quickly get my magic level up. And here we go, the first milestone, 42 thieving done on fruit stalls, now I can actually go on a detour and do Temple of Ikov, and after that 53 thieving to do Desert Treasure. And that should be the Temple of Ikov completed, actually some decent experience from this 8k fletching and almost 11,000 range experience. Did I get any levels? Yeah, 65 fletching and no range level. Found this pretty interesting, when you have the HD client of course on rune light you can see further than you can with the normal one and you can see the DK caves are actually back here. For some reason they placed the Dagonoth King's cave with the pyramid plunder in the same instance. Interesting. And in the level 40 room, we have Keldagrim, uh, very nice and random as well. And I think I also saw actually uh, some Mauritania stuff in another area. And there we go, that is 53 thieving, just finished it off on some Alcarid warriors, but of course did mostly at Pyramid Plunder, but that is now all the requirements to do Desert Treasure. And this is the completion of the Desert Treasure quest, which actually also gives me some magic experience. 20,007 for some reason, not sure about that 7. But now I can use the Ancient Spellbook, which uh, also 76 magic. We're going to try to do some ice bursting with. So this is the location I'm going to be bursting at. It is not the ideal location because I haven't done Monkey Madness 2 to unlock those monkeys that are like stacked up billions of them. But uh, these are not that bad either because I think this is the second best option with the amount of spiders there are. And uh, I only have like four prey potions to protect from melee but that should be fine to sustain me because they do double rain ours now and then. I have the imbued heart and I have a good amount of herbs. Let's actually take a look at this. I have 6k chaos runes, 2 5k death runes and 10,000 water runes which is uh, probably like okay let's not get attacked it's uh, around 1,500 casts so should be decent so I've been doing this for like 45 minutes now and that means my experience an hour should be around 100,000 which is surprisingly low actually because when I was doing the Arceus library and Alking at the same time which granted is a lot more click intensive but if you do that then you get like 110k and it barely costs any runes it's only nature runes for the Alking and that's it and I'm getting lucky with the Raynars as well but um, I am yeah that's kind of disappointing but uh, I'm actually going to stop here I think I'll do uh, just these kills here and uh, then I want to save the runes because I have an idea with the imbued heart I can boost far above level 80 and I can actually do blood blitz at Solra it has the same max hit as Ibon's blast and it also heals you when you do damage so that might actually be a good spell to use for Solra it is a bit more expensive but uh, yeah it's going to probably make my kills a bit more sustainable as well as with the carol setup I should be doing pretty fine so this is now my upgraded, hopefully at least upgraded, Solra setup and I'm actually going to use only the Carol's Coif even for magic because it actually doesn't really have much of a magic negative, it's only minus one and it is another inventory spot I can take. So this range setup is hopefully going to carry me and then I have this magic setup with the imbued heart, I can boost to 84 magic and blood blitz requires 80 so for like 4 minutes I have the boost which should be enough hopefully. 
So this is now post commentary after trying this setup for two kills and I have to say that after all this grinding of doing Desert Treasure, all the quests and you being able to use Ancients, also getting the Amulet of the Damned, us also being able to use Fall Carols and uh, I have to say I'm disappointed. Uh, I actually thought that the Amulet of the Damned with Carols would shred the boss because I was reading a lot on Reddit that uh, it is a very good setup before you get the blowpipe but it turns out I didn't really feel like it was doing that great work for the risk of also risking the Amulet of the Damned without combo food that I don't actually really have right now so it is a very risky I can just get comboed out really hard and lose my Amulet of the Damned so I'm probably just not going to do that again I am going to go with a normal glory and the rune crossbow with dragonstone bolts so all of that was unfortunately a bust now the magic setup is better i would say i would say that the blood blitz do help with my healing as well as it does pretty much the same damage as the ibans blast but it is very expensive and runes are hard to get by on an iron man even in a five man group so i am going to say that even after all of this it is uh, probably best to not reinvent the wheel, go with the Ivan's Blast and uh, just do it like I've always done it. Unfortunately that is the case, but all of this was a bit of an experiment to see if I could get by by some other setup than just getting the Tomo Fire, but it seems like doing that is still the way to go. And there is the uh, Ivan's Blast kill for some Dragon Bones. How long was that kill? 3.45. That has, yeah, that is a new record. Very nice. But again, I am now after some solo testing back to Winter Todd, and I actually just hit 97 fire making, and I don't really care about getting 99. I've never really cared about it. I just want a tome. So what I'm going to do actually is just, as you can see here, I'm in a separate world with only one person, and we're doing max points Winter Todd pretty much, where I'm at 4,500 points almost, and we are probably going to go all the way to 13,000, which is the max amount of points you can get, and this way you don't really have to to wait the one and a half minute between each game you can just stack up as much points as you can 13.5k is the cap and in that you will get 27 rolls on the uh, table and that means every single of the crates that i open have a one in 37 chance of giving me the tome of fire which is the only thing i'm here for so we're going to end the video with opening one of these 13.5k points crates and see what we can get and you will see how this actually looks. I am going to continue doing this most likely, maybe not all of them will be 13k points but uh, a lot more than at least 750 that I was normally doing and hopefully I can get the Tomo fire before 99 fire making. Let's open this and see what we get. Okay, well, yeah, open the crate anyways, and we do not get a tome or fire, but this is what it looks like. I probably got some duplicates as well, like maybe uh, some herbs or something like that that I got twice, but uh, yeah, no tome or fire yet, but I uh, hope you guys did enjoy the episode. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Welcome to another video, guys, and uh, we are going to start this one off by finishing Winter Todd. I am getting 99 fire making. Uh, there it is. It is completed. It was a very boring grind and I will get the uh, fire, fire making skill cape. I don't know really how useful it is. Don't think it's that good. It is a uh, light source at uh, dungeons like the giant mole and stuff like that. But I do have as a last thing the crates to open from 98 to 99 fire making. If I do not get the tome in that then I am actually not returning here. Because we have another guy that is going to do Winter Todd to uh, 99 anyways. If he gets a tome, then uh, I can use it. But otherwise, I am going to be done here. Now, if you're wondering what my collection log looks like, this is it. 614 Winter Todds to get 99. I do have a lot more than 250 pages, but it locks out of that. I did not get a Dragon Axe yet. Of course, not the Tome and not the Pet, but I got a good amount of the Pyromancer's set items. And uh, the amount of crates I have to open is this many. Most of them are 750 points. Some of them are even over a thousand points. So I've tried to give myself the best chance of getting the tome. And uh, we have the last 11 here. Doesn't seem like we're going to get a tome. 
Pyromancer's Garb, but we get some seeds, a Raynor seed, not bad, U seed, Snapdragon seeds, oh actually three of them, that's not bad. Last four crates, will I go from 50 all the way to 99 fire making without getting a Tome of Fire? Let's see what we're going to get, get some seeds, and the last one is going to be no Tome of Fire. Now, if you're wondering what skills I got along with 99 fire making, I got 67 woodcutting, 67 fletching, and 48 construction, which is some nice levels, of course, and an Iron Man to get for free. Doesn't take any materials, but let's get the uh, fire skill cape here. Yes, that seems reasonable. And uh, I also actually have a hard clue scroll we're going to open, but uh, that is the fire skill cape. It looks pretty decent, I would say, but uh, not a very useful skill cape, unfortunately. But uh, let's open the hard clue and see what we get. And we get a very mediocre clue scroll. That's my fourth one. But now that we are done with Winter Todd, even though I didn't get a Tome, I am actually just going to put Sulra unfortunately on hold for a bit, because with the Iban staff and my current levels, it is a bit too much of a struggle to kill it. So I have other goals to work on now, until the next person in our team is going to Winter Todd. And of course, as soon as one of our teammates do get that Tome of Fire, I can actually go to Sulra and just hard grind the boss. But until then, I have a lot of other goals to work on, the first one being completing the easy combat diaries that I worked on like two videos ago or something like that and the first thing I need to do for that is get 62 slayer and after that I can kill a worm which is the last hard requirement I need for the diary after that I just need to kill 10 Sarachnus and I think one obor second hard clue of the video still on that black demon task and we get literally pure alkyballs I don't have a black mask right now, but I still saved one black demon for a Scotiso kill, which is going to be the first one for my entire account. I still get some Slayer experience for doing it, even if I don't have the black mask damage increase, so let's see what the first Scotiso loot is going to be for the account. And there it is, the first Scotiso kill. We get some adamant ore, also some tasks as well. And of course we get a clue scroll, that is a guaranteed drop. We only got one ancient shard, which is the most common, but you can get a decent amount. I'm not sure if you can get up to four or five, but you definitely can get more than one. So not the best in terms of shards. Let's see what the Scotiso hard clue scroll have for us. And even more alkyballs, surprisingly. <laughs> Oh yes, the 1 in 5k curved bone drop. Uh, I have to say I'm actually not very disappointed getting such a rare drop from fire giants because their drops are not too great anyway. So getting this is pretty nice construction experience when I do complete uh, the quest to hand them in. I think death to the Dorgishan. I had 61 slayers, only one more level to go to finish the diary, but I also did a quick detour and completed the dwarf cannon quest because that allows me to smith cannonballs and I'm actually going to do that now and then in my AFK time to help actually Max Nick get some cannonballs to speed up his slayer. He's currently 75 slayer and is by far the highest person in our team slayer wise. So if I can help him out on the grind as well to get tridents in the future and abyss of whips and stuff like that, I will gladly do that. This should be the last greater demon before 62 slayer. I can now kill worms, which is the last requirement I had before I could complete all the easy tasks. So let's finish the few last tasks I still have. The first one being Aberrant Spectre, which is 60 slayer, which is the first slayer requirement I had. And of course, the actual reason to why I got 62 slayer to kill a worm to complete a slithery encounter. Last things I need is a very easy Temporal's task, 10 Sarachnis kills and 1 Obor challenge. So I have to get a giant key, I have to do 1 Temporal's and 10 Sarachnis kills is probably not that bad because I actually have a Vigorous Chain Maze to borrow that is the crush equivalent to a Dragon Scimitar. Temporal's task done. Actually very quickly managed to get a giant key, took a bit longer the first time I got one, hopefully this time I won't fail the challenge, it is that I have to kill Obor meanwhile he is untangled, shouldn't be that much of a problem with higher magic level. Alright, let's land a snare here, and then right away attack him, if I splash this then I will have to try again, should be the task done, let's see if it is, and it is, sleeping giant. So the only task I have left to do now, as you can see, 32 out of 33, is to get 10 Sarachnis kills, and I'm going to do this solo. I hope that the Vigoras Chain Maze is going to be enough with the crush bonus it gives to uh, do decent damage to Sarachnis with super pots as well. So let's see how we do this. Uh, the maze definitely did not disappoint. That was not that bad. How long was that kill? 
Oh, there's no tracker on the time. I don't know why I don't have that enabled, but uh, that was not that slow, actually, and a medium achievement as well. Oh, Dragon Bones. That is actually, wait, that's actually more Dragon Bones than Solar drops. They, he only drops 12 and this drops 14. Not bad. I'm so used to having timers when doing Solar and stuff like that, but I did download a plugin. Should be a timer. Yeah, there we go. So normally these bosses do not have a timer, but I do have it downloaded now. So 2 minutes and 27 is really not bad for Sarachnus. Oh, collection log item, giant egg sack, that is 100 red spider eggs if I cut it open. I think a very slow last kill, but that is the kill number 10 for some chaos runes, it was a 341. But that is the last task completed, you can see here in the chat, I completed all of the easy tier combat achievements. So here we have the reward, we have the uh, Gomal's Hilt 1, as well as a 5k experience lamp that of course I'm going to be putting on Herblore. And do we get any level for that? I think we should. 43 herb lore. Yes, we did. And what this is, is um, you can wheel this in the offhand. I don't know really if it's good for anything. Let's see what stats it gives if I unequip my uh, dragon defender. It has no stats. I don't think it has any stats at least. Uh, but it is uh, slightly fancy. But with the higher tiers, of course, they, it becomes even better. But uh, you can teleport to Trollheim with this three times a day. A pretty cool animation as well. And it is even closer than the Trollheim teleport, so when we're actually going to do God Wars, that is very handy. A dilemma I've had for a long time is that I haven't really ever had a good magic or ranged offhand. I've only really had the crystal shield as the best shield I have, and that gives only defensive stats. It is actually very bad for ranged and magic, because it gives minus 10 for both of them roughly. So I thought a good idea would be to try and casually grind the Odium and Malediction shards, which are dropped by the wilderness bosses Scorpia, Crazy Archaeologist and Chaos Fanatic. You have to get one of the shards each and there is three of them unique. And why these shields are so good is because they are offensive magic and ranged shields. It gives actually pretty decent stats and they also have good defensive stats. So using these for overall future ranged and magic is going to be super good. A very slow boss to kill, but the first Chaos Fanatic kill is a split bark body. It takes 3 minutes and 36 seconds to kill it with the uh, broad bolts and rune crossbow. So this might take a while because the drop rate of a shard is 1 in 256. First milestone kill should be kill number 10 for uh, some anchovy pizzas and also a combat task for medium diaries. Because the Chaos Fanatic is a very tanky boss with my setup, it takes a long time to kill. I am going to, for the variety sake, kill all of the bosses that drops the shards, which is the Crazy Archaeologist, I've killed that before, which I kill with magic, and then I'll kill Scorpia, which shouldn't be that hard to be honest to kill with Ancient Magics, now that I have that unlocked. So let's see if we can get anything from those as well, but I'll stay here a bit longer. Scorpio is a bit interesting in the case of that it's in a multi-zone, so you can actually do this as a group, and that's probably what we'll do in the future, but I did want to stay here for a bit and try out the boss solo to see how it was, because it's kind of hard to get everyone together at some times, and you know, I don't want to depend too much on my group on my goals sometimes, so I am going to probably be here for a bit, try it out, and get some decent magic experience at the same time, actually. Case in number 20, I actually get a bit faster kills now, I've perfected this a bit better for rune scimitar. Below too many kills, not too bad, but it is very costly on my runes. I think I'm going to go for 50 KC on Scorpia, I'm at 36 right now, it is very expensive in runes, but I think I'm going to do 50 Scorpia kills and then I'll go to uh, Crazy Archaeologist to 50 KC there, and in the future I am actually going to do this probably duo with Max Nick, we already talked about doing it and it is going to be a lot more efficient that way, but I think doing 50 KC on the bosses is a good start. Last Scorpia kill incoming for 50 KC, which means we're actually on the high scores after this, but uh, very low rank most likely. And the last drop is Uncut Emerald, and also a task completed, which is actually a hard task. And lastly, it's time for 50 KC on the Crazy Archaeologist. We also got a medium task for that one, not sure what that was, but uh, hey, it's a medium task. Oh my god, I saw the purple text, I thought it was one of the shards, but Onyx Ball Tips is not too bad either. Oh! Oh, there we go! That is kill 46, Malediction Shard 2. Let's get out of here right now. That is just before 50kz as well, beautiful! 
Out of the three bosses that drops the shards, the Crazy Archaeologist and the Chaos Fanatic are both single way combat, so I'm going to try some more Chaos Fanatic. If I would get the Malediction Shard from this boss, I have done the hard work, because after that I can just go with my team, farm out Scorpia super quick and rack up that KC and hopefully get the last shard. Oh my god, that is the Malediction Shard 3 from Pinkus Cat 2, they're doing Scorpia? And I was doing the Chaos Fanatic and they got the third shard. If I get the uh, first shard from the Chaos Fanatic, I have the ward. So this is going to be kill number 50, but I think I want to stay here longer because now this is the only shard that I still miss. The Malediction shard from this boss is the last one to complete the entire shield. So why not stay a bit longer to give myself a bit of a better chance to get it. Another milestone kill just reached 75 and you can see that the kill time is widely inconsistent, it's like 2 minutes and then 4 minutes almost, but the times I get like 2 minute kills is because of the diamond bolts enchanted. They go through defense sometimes, so it is very very nice. The broad bolts almost always got 4 minute kills, now you can see I am just slapping the boss with the diamond bolts enchanted, so definitely worth getting them if you're doing this yourself. And there we go, that is the 100 KC hit and I'm getting about 20 kills an hour, so that means I've been here for 5 hours roughly, and I only have like 250 diamond bolts E left, and they are actually helping me speed this up as I said a lot, so I'm just going to stay here for the remaining amounts of bolts I have, I probably will end up at like 130 KC or something like that, so let's hope that I actually get that malediction shard in those KCs. And this is going to be, unfortunately, the last kill. Oh my god, no way! There's no way! Okay, oh my god, oh my god. Dude, I, I'm serious, that is insane. Oh, we have the Malediction Ward. I was- that was my last bolt! Okay, that was maybe a bit of an overreaction, but I was 100% planning on being like, Oh, I really wish I got it, because it would have made the video so much better. Oh my god, dude, my heart is- uh, that is so nice! Let's go and make the Malediction Ward maybe one of the first group Iron Man to have this. And this is the area, I'm going to use the shards on the lava somewhere, the Volcanic Forge. And uh, we drop the three shield shards in, we now have the Malediction Ward. Let's make sure that it is protected if I die, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah, of course. And, uh, wow. That looks beautiful, it's like the obsidian shield but for magic and the stats on this is absolutely incredible, look at that, plus 12 magic and they actually have the same, both the Odium Ward and the uh, Malediction Ward have the same defense stats as a Dragon Square Shield and a lot of people actually use the uh, Rune Square Shield for Solra because it doesn't give any negative ranged bonus, so having this for magic specifically, both defensively and offensively is very very good. Now that we're back in safety, let's uh, have another look at this shield. 12 plus magic and 50 melee de defenses roughly and then 15 magic as well. No re range defense but I don't really need that for Solra anyways in the future because I would need the Odium Ward when I range and that has some range defense. So uh, yeah, super happy with this upgrade. Dude, compare that to the crystal shield I had before, which has minus 22 magic compared to this one. It had like minus 10 magic before. I was using this with the Iban staff. Now I can use this, which is going to help so much. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the group Iron Man content as much as I enjoy making it. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see future videos, and click the notification bell thingy if you want to get notified when I post new videos. Until next time guys, take care. Welcome to another Iron Man episode, starting this one off by getting some free farming levels. I have teak trees that I've planted, 7.3 thousand experience each. Let's see how many levels we get, 43 all the way until 47. Very nice levels to start off the video. I currently have 117 quest points and I feel like I've always been quite behind on quest points overall or overall questing. So I'm going to actually dedicate the beginning of this video for some questing. I'm going to start off by doing all the free to play quests. Not really going to show much of it but I completed the Corsair's Curse and that allowed me to complete this medium casket and that is a very bad reward. 
all the free to play quests are pretty easy and actually this is the last one i will show you guys all of the free to play quests are completed shield of arab is the last one and with the help of one of my really old accounts i could actually log on to a free to play world to complete this with myself and that is now all the free to play quests completed 143 quest points quite the bump from i think 117 that i started at now when it comes to member quests the first ones i want to work on are some current quests so client of current is the first one after the last clip i went to bed and oh my god guys you guys have no idea what just happened i woke up uh, I looked at my phone, I rushed to my PC after what I saw. Look at this! Oh, it's so beautiful, we have a Tome of Fire! Even more pages as well, from Winter Todd. I am not sure if Dark World Order or uh, Doug, which is our new teammate, got this. They were both doing Winter Todd at the same time, I think it was Dark World Order. Oh, we have the Tome of Fire, we also have Ranging Potions! Ah, uh, dude, it's time for Solra. I mean, I'm going to complete some of the current quests, but then it's straight into Solra. I am so happy about this. Client of current completed, and also some experience lamps we can put on Herblore. 500 each, so I guess 1k free experience. Not too bad. And this is the Ascent of our Chaos quest completed as well for 500 uh, runecrafting and 1.5k hunters, some coins as well, and a memoir page. I think what these pages allow you to do if you add them, oh, 25 runecrafting, you can add them to this book and that allows you to teleport to this specific area if you charge the book. Uh, so that is a good way to get here instead of using the uh, Xerix Talisman because this doesn't actually teleport to all of the different locations on current. This word is so hard for a Swedish person to pronounce. Depths of despair. Oh my god, so hard to say that. But it is completed. And 4000 coins, 1.5k agility experience, another favor certificate. So I can get some more Hosidius favor. As well as the page for the memoirs. But I have it in the bank now. I'm going to do Queen of Thieves now. Which is going to be the last quest I'll do for this video. For now at least. Because I really want to get into Solra. And here we go. This is the Queen of Thieves thieves completed let's go through the dialogue 2000 thieving experience which is not that bad and also of course another page and the 10 percent pisco radius favor which is actually a, an annoying reputation to get up or favor so nice to have that as well done oh my god look how beautiful i look i can finally make use of the arum staff and look at my magic damage bonus it is seven percent and my max hit with the tome of fire just baseline with the fire wave is 30 but 7% on top of that means I can actually max hit 32. So having both of these together is super nice of a bonus. So I should be blasting now. Oh my god. This is so good. What is that kill time? I was even kind of unlucky. 3 minutes 41. Okay, so not that good. But it is a personal best. But I actually kind of screwed uh, that up and was kind of unlucky as well. So yeah, but yeah, I actually got the kill on the first try, so nice. Oh my god, this was so fast. This is insanely fast. Okay, the drop is not great, but uh, 2 minutes and 26. Yeah, that's the power of the Tome of Fire sometimes. I ramble that so hard. That's 10kc, also a decently fast kill, some coconuts, and a lot of law runes, which is not bad. Oh, that's such a good drop. Torstals. I, I, we can actually trade them in with Jekyll for Staminas. So I didn't record when I got this drop, but uh, grapes are actually one of the essential drops we need. I'm going to put these into the storage right away because this is actually equal to 50,000 cooking experience. And we're trying to get someone to 80 cooking right now so we can cook over 11,000 sharks. Which would be quite an upgrade for me to use sharks instead of potato with butter here. Wait, what did I just go past? Why is there a... There's <laughs> there's someone who died with like 20 cabbages here or something. What would they even be doing? Milestone KC 20 and we get even more grapes. Soon I'll hopefully have sharks. By the way, Nick just logged in and he had the imbued heart. I've been doing 20 plus killers now without the imbued heart. But now I can actually get this and it won't take up any of my inventory space. Because what I actually do before I go to Solra is I just drink a super defense potion dose. I would click this. So I just do like that. 
put it into the bank, drink one dose, take out the money that I need for the charter ship, and I am off to Solra. Oh, there we go. That is the first Manta Ray drop, which actually means I have 35 of the uh, 22 healing food instead of using potato with butter. So that's going to help quite a lot. So much food left after that. Ooh, and even more grapes. Look how easy this is now. Like, I used pretty much half my inventory of food only. Actually, less than that. Oh, that's a collection log item that actually speeds up my travel here as well. Four teleports right to the boss. Very nice to get some of those, but I'm back to potato with butter. By the way, before when I said 11k sharks, apparently it was a typo. We have 1.5k, but still, still a decent amount. Oh my god, Nick actually just got a Senite shard. If uh, Dovidas gets from 75 all the way to 84 crafting, he can actually make a ring of suffering for me, which is going to be so nice. I can just put all the rings of recoil into it and I don't have to uh, keep destroying it and resetting my rings between each kill. It's going to be such a nice quality of life thing to bring here. Oh, holy magic fang. Uh, how useful is that? That's probably the worst one I could have got. Ah, uh, that's only useful if you have Staff of the Dead or a Trident, but uh, wow, that's a low KC to get a unique. I'll put that in the bank for the future. Can't complain. Dovidas was actually opening some Laren's keys and look at what he got. He got a Dagon High Robe Bottom and let's compare that to Mystic. He said I could use it for Solra and uh, the Mystic has 15-15 and this has 18-14. Also Prey Bonus, so it has better offensive bonuses, which is all that really matters. The defensive doesn't really matter that much. Plus 3 on magic and plus 2 on prayer. Basically everyone in the team already has 70 prayers so they are just giving me the bones now and I'm going to use them gradually as I get them because just having higher prayer level gives my prey potions to give me more prayer so might as well just do it for uh, preserving more pots on Solra. Starting at level 52, let's see what the first batch of bones I was given is going to get us to. 76,000 prayer experience and we ended at 57, so that should be like one more prayer point per uh, prayer potion sip. So I'm up to 44 KC right now and I don't really have any ranging pots, no prayer pots, barely any super anti-poisons. I could just buy normal anti-poisons from Karamja, but that still doesn't really help. I don't have any prayer potions. So we're going for the last kill, which is going to be 45 for this video until we get more prayer pots supplied. Wow. Oh my god. Is that actually... <sighs> wow, what did I get? I got Manta Ray drop. That is so unfortunate. I actually got super unlucky during that entire uh, kill attempt. By the way, if you're wondering, I actually only have to tell it out once, I think, in all these 40 kills I've done in this video. And I've died twice. So overall, like three failed attempts in 40 kills. So the Tom of Fire is actually doing really well. Now, if you're wondering how many burnt pages in the Tome of Fire did I use during all those 40 kills, Let's have a look. It started with 20,000 charges and I still have 18,346 charges and I still have 700 burnt pages as well. So I am not going to run out of charges in this tome for a very long time. That is a benefit to getting 99 fire making at least without getting a tome. For some reason one of the kills did not get counted in, but this is all the loot that I got from doing solo in this video. Of course the magic fang was a very nice drop, but unfortunately most likely the most useless item at this current moment to get. But it is of course a 1 in a 128 chance of getting any of the uniques, so it is nice to get one this early. Hopefully the next one is going to be the serpentine visage or the tanzanite fang, both of which are super useful for future farming of Solra, but this is going to be the end of this video hope you guys did enjoy it if you did leave a like subscribe if you want to see future uploads and click the notification bell if you want to get notified when but until next time have a good one take care What's up guys, welcome to another group Iron Man episode. In the last one I did a bunch of Soldra, but currently we do not have any more prayer potions, so I cannot do that. And I think one thing I want to work on meanwhile I'm waiting for new supplies to do Soldra is actually Song of the Elves, which is a massive quest that requires 70 in a bunch of skills. I will put the requirements on the screen right now. 
and I want to work on this passively over the course of multiple videos between, as I said, the Solra killing. So I'm going to start off by doing some Hunter. I am currently 52 and I need to get that all the way to 70. Probably might not do that in the video, but we will see what happens. Already a pretty important level, 53 Hunter, which means I can now catch Grey Chinchompas. And I actually need to do a quest to be able to do that, to use Box Traps. So I'm going to do that. It is called Eagle's Peak. And here we have the completion of Eagle's Peak, 2.5k Hunter experience and 2 quest points as well, and access to Box Traps. So let's go and catch some Grey Chinchompas. On my way to buy some box traps, I found this crashed star, which is actually the first one I've ever mined in old school RuneScape. So I'm going to mine the entire thing, if that's even how it works, and collect this stardust and see what I get from it. Terms of experience and reward. An entire star took like 40 minutes, I guess, and that was 13.5k experience, 17.5k an hour, so not really that good experience, but it is very AFK, and I also got 682 stardust, which I can show you guys what you can buy for. So these are the things you can buy for it. You can buy 100 soft clay for 150 stardust. You can buy some gems for 300. You can buy a prospector item recolor for 3000 stardust. Or you can buy a celestial ring for 2000. I think you also charge the ring with the stardust. And the uh, chance effect it has is like when you mine something it has a 10% chance to duplicate the ore. Probably don't give you duplicate experience for it. But I think that's still the best item. Doing the tick manipulation is something I rarely do, but I do do it on box trap. So look, without it, this is how long it takes. That, and now I'm going to do it with uh, the next box trap. Look how easy it is, by the way. You just click on the knife, tick log, and then instantly on a box trap, and it's done. You can walk away. This will be the last great chinchomp I catch at 494 for 59 hunter. I want to rush that 63 for red chinchompas, and I'm going to red salamanders until 63. So meanwhile I'm leveling Hunter, I also am Alking because of course having higher magic level for when I do go into Solra again is always beneficial and I was actually just gifted 3000 gold bracelets by Max Nick which actually alks for a good amount of money. Let's have a look. It alks for 330 each and the rune arrows I'm getting from LMS currently are alking for 240. And I already have 2.2k nature runes and I'm spending all the money that I get from alking into new nature runes. So that is going to last me a while. Another big hunter level coming in. 63 hunter and now all the way to 70 I am going to do red chinchompas. Which should be a decent amount and I can use them after to train ranged very quickly. I would say pretty big milestone level with the magic incoming right here. That is 80 magic, which is a pretty nice level to have. I am of course going to keep alking meanwhile doing hunter and I am currently level 65, pretty close to 66. So I'm up to 68 hunter right now and we just got some more prey potions that I could have. So I'm going to go and do some solra. Hopefully I will get lucky and then after that I'm actually going to just do 70 hunter because it is nice to have it done. So this is kill number 50 and this is actually a milestone kill that is a bit more important because when you die after 50 kills you have to pay 100,000 coins to retrieve your items. Shouldn't really be too much of a problem before it was free but I just have panic teleport out now if I know I'm going to die so shouldn't be too bad. Oh nice, I was actually waiting for that. Kill number 51, Dragon Halberd. That is actually an item I'm not going to alk, even though it's 150k or something alk. I'm actually going to save that, that looks pretty nice. I'm going to save it because the special attack is pretty good. It hits very hard, I will probably show you guys later in the video how good this is. <gasps> yes! No way! No way! No way! I got the visage. I got I got it. That's the best drop I could have got. There is nothing else that could have been better. Oh my god, I'm oh dude, if I get 75 defense, I have poison immunity, a uh, venom immunity. That is so nice. I can't believe that. 55 KC. All right. So now that I have that, which is just insane. 55 KC and I have a magic fang and a serpentine visage, and I think actually this visage is the best drop I could have got. I don't need anti-poisons anymore. Killing Solra from now on will be a breeze. But to be able to actually equip it, I need 75 defense, which I currently only have a 70, and I'm probably going to actually do a 65 slayer because I want to get that for dust devils for using my chinchompas. I'll do that with a melee and get 
75 defense while doing it. Also have to get 52 crafting, but that is going to be very easy to uh, craft the helmet. So I'm about to get 72 defense here, and I've also hit 63 slayer, but I want to show you guys the dragon halberd spec. Let me actually just hit 72 first. So we don't get interrupted on that. There we go, 72. And now I'm going to pray and look at this bag. It only takes 30, 25, 24. And then another one, let's see what we hit. Okay, that was unlucky. But I think the highest I've hit is like 33, 32. So you can hit very hard with this. Actually, so good timing. I'm going to get 65 Slayer on this Greater Demon. And look how close I actually am to 75 defense already. This was the goal I wanted to get to, to be able to use my Chinchompas later on on Dust Devils for both money and good experience. But now I just have to get 75 and I have the Serpentine Helm. There it is, the 75 defense and the beautiful serpentine helmet that I now have charged with a lot of scales. That is all the scales that I had, but I will get a lot back. I'm going to do a bunch of more Solra, but I also got 11 brimstone keys from that, so let's see what we can get from this. And the last key is going to be Rune for Hams. I actually have 1.5 million cash right now. And so this should actually bring me close to 2 million, which probably all will go into nature runes or a lot of it will, because I want to be alking me while doing like hunter or future agility and stuff like that. So before going back to Solra, I decided to finish off 70 hunter and this is going to be the end of that grind. 70 hunter achieved, which is one of the Priftina's goals or a song of the elves. Pretty nice level to get and I will definitely do more hunter in the future anyways, it's just a very good skill to have. But I am now also going to use up all the red chinchompas that I've collected on dust devils, which I just unlocked for some good money and ranged experience. Now the thing I quickly want to mention is that Max Nick actually just gave me 5,000 maple longbows, he's been uh, leveling some fletching and I'm going to be using them for alking. By the way, he did allow me to take them, so I'm not just stealing stuff. But I have 1.8 million cash almost now, and uh, I can just buy easily 5,000 atriums for that. But I'm going to not do that right now, because I want to use all these red chinchompas, all the grey as well. Getting all them stacked up is super easy in the uh, catacombs of current. Let's see, these XP drops 200 experience, 180, 216. Jesus, this XP rate is going to be insane, and I have 1,272 to use overall. Throwing my last Tunchompa, and that is 261,000 ranged experience only from that. I think I was getting like 190k ranged experience an hour, so that was very fast. And I went all the way to 78 ranged, and you can see 27% into the level, so two whole levels pretty much. It was such a good decision to wait until Dust Devils to use my Tunchompas, because I made 770k cash from all that, so now I have 2.5 million I can spend on nature runes for alking and all that kind of good stuff but uh, also actually 2100 chaos runes i have a decent amount of death runes and i have almost 6k chaos runes might actually consider to uh, level my magic a bit i need to get to 84 that's why i can actually with the imbued heart imbue the uh, future uh, ring of suffering that we will get pretty soon because dovidas is working hard on crafting and he's only like three levels left on that so i will have to get 84 magic as well to uh, imbue the ring this is why the Serpem is so nice. This is the second kill on one single trip, which means I don't have to bank as frequently as I needed before, which is going to save me a lot of time. It's going to speed up the process a lot. Oh, another adamant bar drop. That is actually a very good drop to get because that is, I do believe, 200 adamant darts for whenever someone gets, uh, or when we overall get a blowpipe in the team. That's uh, going to be very good ammo to use. Oh my god, what? Dude, there's no way. 69, oh my god, that's a so good, such a good case to get it on. Tanzanite Fang, what? That is the last item. I just finished the entire solo log on 69kc. That is half the drop rate for one item. What? There's no way. How can I get Serpentine Helmet on like 55kc, 15kc later, I get the blowpipe. Let's use the uh, chisel on this Tanzanite Fang, and uh, there it is, the toxic blowpipe. I have to get more of these items for the team to have more of them overall when we go for PVMing, but let's put the Solar Scales in. But I do not have any darts, so I can't equip it yet, I only have like 12 rune darts, some steel darts, and I do want to get some adamant and mithril darts, I think that is going to be the best ones to use. 
And there we go, that is the darts. I think Dovidas actually smithed them and then uh, Nick made them into the darts with feathers. So let's uh, start with the adamant darts, I suppose. And now we can actually equip this. Look at this absolutely stacked range setup. I cannot believe I actually have the Tanzanite Fang. Let's actually have a look at this. I need to show you guys my collection log on Solra because I basically finished it at 69kc. I mean, I had still missed the Onyx, the Jar of Swamp, the Tanzanites, or the Mutagens, I mean, and uh, the pet as well. But basically all the uh, important items that I needed, I have received. Here we go, let's try out the blowpipe. Also, I have a spec, of course, that heals me depending on how hard I hit. So that is going to help me with sustaining a bit. Let's try the spec. Okay, healed a bit and I missed the second one. Uh, not the best display of the weapon, but it is a very good weapon at least. Now that I have all the uniques though, I am actually going to take some time to level my prayer because I have only 57 and just having higher prayer in general is nice and getting closer to 70 for piety when I'm going to do a lot of melee. I was given a lot of unsolded dragon heads by my team and also I have a decent amount of other heads as well. So I'm just going to reanimate all of those and also use the worm bones that I got from a worm task and some dragon bones and let's see what prayer level we can get to. You actually need 90 magic to use the end soul dragon heads but uh, 1560 prayer experience for one and I'm bringing just a few per inventory and uh, I have the imbued heart boost to get exactly to 90 so now I can't do it so I can do like two heads maybe and then in between I'll do the uh, demon heads until I can boost again. That is now 60 prayer and I still have a good amount of dragon heads left so we should get to uh, probably like 63 or something like that but uh, I guess we'll see but that is the chivalry prayer unlocked whenever I do the quest for it. And this is the last and sold head overall I had in my bank. It is a scorpion one that actually still gets 450 prayer experience, but I hit actually almost 64 prayer on that. But we still have the wyvern bones and a few dragon bones in the bank, so we are going to hit 64 with that. And the last wyvern bone on the altar multiple times, I guess. Nice. Oh my god. Okay. So we got 71% to 65. That is some nice prayer gains from 57. I think my next goal now that I have all the Solra uniques that I need for a bit is to actually rush that 84 magic to be able to enchant the Senite ring into a ring of suffering when we do get that, which we're actually getting pretty close to. I think Dovidas is 82 crafting and he only needs to get to 84 and then he can 5 plus boost to 89 to make it. So I'm going to buy a bunch of nature runes and I'm going to be doing agility that I need to get to 70 anyways in the future for both uh, Siliana and uh, Song of the Elves. So I'm going to just be alking 4,000 723 maple longbows meanwhile doing agility but that's going to take a while so i'm going to end the video here i cannot believe how lucky i was with solra and having all the uniques on solra is going to speed up killing the boss itself for future duplicates so much also the blowpipe is going to be insane to use at various different bosses like it's not bad at bandos it's also not bad on really anything that you can range because you can use the special attack to sustain with more healing and overall just super good to have it so uh hope you guys did enjoy the episode if you did leave a like subscribe if you want to see the future uploads and take care Welcome to another Group Iron Man episode. I just finished buying the 4,700 nature runes that I need to alk all the maple longbows. And I'm going to be doing some agility meanwhile alking. And uh, I want to get 84 magic and also have to get 70 agility. But 70 agility is a very long grind. So I'll probably work at it uh, bit by bit. Before alking and doing agility, I went here to the wilderness and got 60 agility without alks. Because of course I don't want to risk all the money and the nature runes in the wilderness. But the wilderness course is just way faster than the Falador one but now I have the Sears agility course which is actually one of the better ones for alking as well so it's perfect. Very nice I just got the notification that my teak trees on the fossil island has fully grown which is going to get me to over 55 farming which allows me to plant mahogany trees and I have a decent amount of seeds by the way I'm getting closer to 62 agility and but let's go and get that 55 farming first and plant the new trees. Look at this, so beautiful, should be 55 here, there we go. Won't quite get 56, but uh, I can now plant the mahogany ones. I have 16 of these seeds, so uh, it is time to get some insane experience. These, by the way, give like 7.6k, and the mahogany ones give like 15.2k or something like that. So the experience is kind of insane from this.
63 agility incoming here when I jump down and with that I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who is watching my content supporting being subscribed liking the video everything it really means the world to me and I cannot believe I just hit 13,000 subscribers and I'm already at 13.1k I mean it really means a lot to me I, I really want that to be known like all the time I just focus on making the best content and you guys you know watching enjoying the content all that it really is rewarding for me to see that and it is very uh, humbling to be able to actually say that I have a group of people that watch my content and actually enjoy what I do so thank you guys for uh, for doing that now to avoid the agility burnout which is uh, very easy to happen I am going to take a break to do some barrels I am currently at 69 KC I can go to my collection log I I have been very lucky with items we do actually have a Gotham's chain skirt already so if I would get the Gotham's plate body or any really Aram's items that would be huge as well as there's so many items to get let's be real here there's so many good items I could get and I actually want to get to 100 KC in this video so that means 31 kills and hopefully we can get something in that that is pretty good I'm going to be making some barrels tablets with the imbued heart boost and uh, I'm probably going to make like 31 so I have for all the runs and also, to be honest, this is a pretty good time to have an excuse to use my blowpipe. It is blasting on Arim. And of course, when I say that, I miss every shot. But uh, before this, it was very good. There you go. Well, look at that. I am a professional YouTuber. 82 magic. I missed it completely, so sorry about that. But uh, two more levels until we can enchant Senai Jewelry with the imbued heart boost so you can uh, see now if I use this I get to 91 and two more levels and I get that 93 for uh, rings of suffering that we already have two we can make I assume a lot of people are actually using the Tomo Fire right now in the game because there are so many new group Iron Men. I am going to show you guys a small trick that allows you to uh, make it a bit more convenient to swap between ranged and magic if you are using it. So if we, if we let Aram die here, if I actually uh, equip the Tomo Fire before my staff, then I still have the auto cast on. But if I would do this and I would equip the staff first I do not so if you do use a tome of fire you want to make sure that you actually swap to the tome first when you do the switches no items yet but this is chest number 80 and for that we get some decent runes I would say but 20 chests to go oh come on <laughs> okay well that is a unique for me but it is the second one overall for the team so not too great chest number 90 coming up so only 10 more after this one and we get nothing it is time for chest number 100, after this we're going back to agility, but it was a fun detour, we got 211,000 magic experience and the last chest is going to be some runes again. But nice, 100 KC looks good. We are getting very close to 84 magic, about to get 83 here, alking while doing agility of course, so only one more level to go now. Taking a break here at 65 agility, just hit it. We're going to complete Death to the Dorgishan quest, which requires Lost Tribe and Death to the Dorgishan to hand in some long bones and curved bones for some free construction experience. Should be the Lost Tribe completed, a very fast quest. The Death to the Dorgishan is a bit longer, but still a pretty easy quest coming up. And that is the Death to the Dorgishan quest completed, so let's go and get some free construction experience inside of the city. So let's see how much experience I get for all these bones. It is actually going to be quite a lot, I think. I'm currently 48 construction and we also get some coins. So let's see, 40,500 experience and 10,000 coins. And uh, that gave me all the way to 52 construction. So four levels for that, very nice. Now I just woke up and that's why my voice is a bit different, but I just want to say that I woke up, I read some comments on my latest YouTube video talking about how I wasn't really doing much for the team in terms of helping out, giving supplies to the group storage and stuff like that, and I want to just explain this real brief because I don't want to talk about it too long. Oh, give me one sec. So overall, since the beginning, if you watch my series, you know that I talked about doing Solra very early into my series, and that's always been the goal. That's why I don't really even use the Toxic Blowpipe that much. I have it in the uh, group storage here for other people to use. And also, I lended out my Serpentine Helmet for Dovidas when he was doing the Vorkath grind for the Avas Accumulator upgrade. Overall, I have put in a lot of items, but I just don't show it because I don't feel like it's that interesting to 
be like, oh yeah, I just put in like 25 Raynor seeds from Winter Todd, or you know, a thousand logs or something like that. I do put in things regularly, like I put the Carol's crossbow in, I don't need it. I have put in a lot of herbs for Dark World Orders, uh, herb grind, adamant bolts from Soul Wars, all these kind of good stuff, the Malediction Ward and the Dragon Halberd. So don't worry guys, I am putting things into the group storage, I just don't show most of it because I don't feel like it's that interesting unless it's a very important thing I want to put in. Our new team member Doug has been doing a lot of temporals and he's got like over 6,000 raw swordfish so I actually decided to buy 2,000 off of him because I want to work on 70 cooking in the kind of near future for Barrow's Gloves. It's not my highest priority but it's just nice to have it banked and I actually wanted to pay him in pure cash because he needs it for runes and stuff like that but I actually couldn't do that. I put money into the storage hoping that it would work. Also traded him but that didn't work either so I put 460k in for the sword fish but uh, it's only three days left until the restriction on new members where you can actually trade whatever money you want over is lifted so that is the time he will be able to take that money so a bit of a two in one here i am completing the family crest to get both the gold smithing gauntlet and the cooking gauntlets because of course i need that cooking gauntlet for 70 cooking and i need the gold smithing gauntlet to get my 70 smithing for the future song of the elves quest i want to do so i just completed that real quick and uh, i will be able to get those gloves whenever i want to you basically just turn these steel gauntlets into whatever gloves you want I'll probably end up doing the cooking first, so I just got the cooking gauntlets, you have to pay this guy 25k. By the way, if you don't know what this is, I think most people know, but I'm sure there is someone who hasn't done this before. These gloves actually decrease the burn rate of lobsters, swordfish, monkfish, sharks, and anglerfish by quite a lot. So if I have these with swordfish, I shouldn't really be burning any of them. And you can turn them into the goldsmith gauntlet if you want as well, for only 25k, and that gives goldsmithing 2.5 times the experience so instead of 22.5 experience per gold bar that you make at the blast furnace you get 56.25 which makes it like insane experience an hour and pretty cheap as well just felt like doing all the wines as well that I had, so I had over a thousand in my bank and that is going to be more than 200,000 experience. If you don't know how this works by the way, you just put the grapes into a jug of water and it basically just stacks up the experience as long as you want. You can see the timer above my inventory is uh, resetting all the time. When this timer runs out, I will get the experience for every single wine that I've created and uh, I don't have that many left, so you're going to see a massive experience drop in just a bit. Completed the last wines and in 4 seconds, let's see that XP drop, I'm 60 cooking and 197,000 got me all the way to 65, actually almost 66 and now I should have enough raw swordfish in the bank to get all the way to 70 whenever I feel like doing that. But now after all that, I am going to sit down in my chair and complete 70 agility and uh, first level coming in here after this tightrope, 67 agility and we're up at 468 laps so far in this video, but let's uh, get 70 agility. And here we have 68 agility, two more to go. And this is the jump for 69 agility, so only one more level to go after this one. Feels good to soon be done with agility. And a very nice additional thing, on top of getting 69 agility, I just reached the amount of Mark of Grace I need to be able to buy all the last pieces of the Graceful set. Wait, do I not have that? Yeah, I do. Okay, <laughs> there's the gloves. And that is the entire Graceful set completed. Also, I was gifted a decent amount of items to Alk, meanwhile doing agility to get at least some magic experience, as I'm going to be putting in the money back here to Dark World Order, who was the person that gave me all the stuff, and I think he's going to use all this money on smithing. Now before I go and get 70 agility, I am actually going to start doing a lot of herb runs. I'm starting with Aventos and I'm going to work towards doing a lot of them in general because Dark World Order is getting pretty close to stamina potions and I do want to help him as much as possible with that and I kind of have been slacking with herb runs in general so I feel like it's my time to do this. And finally, it is the last jump over this edge for 70 agility and we are done with agility for probably a very long time after to this so very nice to have that done 70 agility and also we got 23 more marks of grace which is 200 amli crystals for stamina potions which is equal to 54 those stamina pots when we can make them so that is pretty nice 
Something I should have done a very long time ago but isn't that bad that I skipped is Tears of Gothics because how long you can be in here and get more experience is dependent on how many quest points you have. So if I would have done this at like 50 quest points the experience would be minimal but now at 153 I can actually collect quite a lot of experience every single week from here. 98 tiers and I, that's going to go into rune crafting. I think I'm 25 right now so let's see how many levels I get. 25 to 28 so almost 4000 experience for free in a very slow skill so it is very good to do this. So looking at the song of the elves level requirements I still need. I do need 70 wood cutting and I'm actually already pretty close to that from just winter Todd. and we do have a dragon axe that I got to borrow and I am 67 right now. I'm going to do all the way to 70 on Sullysep mush rooms or however you pronounce that and the reason why is because the experience rate from this is actually very very high it's like 100k an hour so i should be done in about one and a half two hours or something like that but also on top of that cutting this you get a lot of these fossils i'm not sure how much i'm going to get from just three levels but it should be a good amount and you can actually turn them in for xp lamps at the museum in varrock and i will use all of that on Herblor and I will need a lot of help to get to 70 Herblor for the quest. Oh my god, look at this. Look at all these fossils I've got. This is one inventory. This is insane. But here we go, this is going to be 70 wood cutting and a random event as well. But yeah, that was super fast and let's actually go and clean all the fossils that I have now and see how much Herblor experience we can get for it. I will just uh, quickly show you guys how many I have. It's not a massive amount, but for the short amount of time I spent here, like one and a half hour, it is absolutely phenomenal. 20 small, 9 medium, 12 large and uh, these rare fossils are unfortunately useless. So this is all the lamps that I could get, which is very nice for the amount of wood cutting I had to do. So let's put it all into Herblore, 2k. Dude, this is going to be so nice. 3.5k. We will see at the end here how much the total experience was. I was uh, 44 Herblore before using all these lamps. So let's see what I'll get to. By the way, the large fossils are 5k each. So the experience is actually kind of nuts from this. So let's uh, use the last one. And the overall experience that I got was 30,000. That is actually insane from doing that little amount of wood cutting. And we got all the way to 48, almost 49 from 44. But now it is time to finish off 84 magic so that I can imbue the future Rings of Suffering. By the way, I think Max Nick has actually got overall like 5 Senites now. It's insane, he's been super lucky, but I think we're going to make 2 Rings of Suffering and Dovidas is at 84 and a half crafting. I think he's going for 85 to be able to easier boost than with Stews. So uh, yeah, let's get that 84 magic by Ice Bursting. I have quite a lot of runes. Now before Dovidas can actually make the Ring of Suffering, he needs to complete Monkey Madness 2 himself and he is going to do that tomorrow. So there is no mega rush of getting 84 for magic. I still want to get 84 magic though in this video, so that is going to be done, but I am going to take a quick break here before he logs off. You can see here in 20 minutes he is logging off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend basically most of my money to buy an Onyx and have him make me an Amulet of Fury, and then in the next one I will get the Ring of Suffering. And there we go, that is all the tockle I need to buy an Onyx, 260k, so let's buy that, and let's go and get that Fury. And here we go, that is the Onyx Amulet U, and if I put a ball of wool on that, I would get an Onyx Amulet, and then I just have to boost a bit to be able to enchant it. But that is now an Amulet of Fury, whenever he accepts. He didn't scam me, very nice. Sheesh, look at that Onyx Amulet, dude. Now I just have to enchant this. And uh, there we go, 97 magic experience, let's compare the Amulet of Fury to the Glory. I have the Glory equipped. Oh my god, look at that, plus 2 prayer, plus 2 melee strength, and 12 a plus in all defenses. And it also looks super fancy. And it is not only me who has an Amulet of Fury now, we could actually make 3, I have 1 equipped, and then 2 I will put into the storage that I just enchanted, so that will be very nice for the team. As I was kind of stuck on the normal spellbook after that, I just decided to alk for the last experience, and this is 84 magic achieved. So now, with the imbued heart, I can reach the Senite Jewelry Enchant. So, whenever we get that Monkey Madness 2 done by Dovidas, we can make Rings of Suffering. 
So I have been keeping up with the farm runs as much as I can, but I also ran out of compost for a bit, so I had to make some new ones, but I'm at 200 Aventos roughly, and I have of course Avento seed planted, and I have still 10 in my bank here, as well as in the storage, we have 28 more, and all of those will go into super energies that we can then turn into stamina potions, which is the key to being able to do Siliana. The uh, Commander Siliana in God Wars Dungeon drops various different things and I want the Armadil Crossbow mostly for Max Nick because he is, as a madman, planning on doing the Inferno pretty soon and that would be a very good item for him. So hopefully you expect some Siliana in the near future, but until next time this is the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it, like it if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see future uploads and take care. My mining level is only 46 and I need 70 for Song of the Elves, so let's start off the video by raising that by quite a bit, mining granites. First mining milestone, level 50, and when I get to 61 I can use a dragon pickaxe that we have in the bank, so that is going to help quite a bit. So I'm currently at 56 mining, but Dovidas just put in the first Senite ring and another Onyx amulet that he wants as a fury, but we're going to enchant the first Senite ring into a ring of suffering, and this is for Nick. He is going to actually use that for the inferno so let's click the heart imbue it and then also the onyx amulet and that is the first ring of suffering for the team and another amulet of fury for dovidas and here we go this is 60 mining quite an achievement and one more and i can actually use a dragon pickaxe that we have but finally both me and max nick are now ready to actually do some siliana we do not have stamina potions yet but we do have a method of getting that we're going to try to do some theater of blood and actually get stamina pots that way <laughs> <laughs> Let's hopefully not get screwed over here. Uh, enter without teleport crystals. Oh, you have to go first, okay? I'll tank for, for the, at least the first part. Oh, yeah, make sure you move around a lot with those blood spawns. They'll, one yep. will always target you, and yep. then the rest of them is just gonna be random. Dude, the maiden of Sagan D's, dude. <laughs> uh, I hit one. Dude, this blood thing, do I. What do I do just with it? Sure, just avoid it for now. Okay. If a, couple, if a couple more spawns, we'll freeze one, and then we'll kill it. It never despawns? Uh, now it'll never despawn. You'd have to actually kill it. Okay. I'm oh, 70 now. Dude, they're so far away. I got one. Oh, fuck. Doable? Come on! Oh man, this is not going dude, dude, this is so bad. <laughs> oh no, I uh, proc'd at least. I guess I can look at that. I'm, I'm not gonna waste any food, I'm just dying here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it was, a good, it was a good test. I was yeah. actually genuinely curious. But we good. should just wait yeah. for Dog Order. He has stamina like very soon, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a better choice. So nice, finally got stamina. Oh, looks beautiful. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get holy sandals from this medium clue as well. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I get holy sandals, and then we go Siliana, and then we get uh, Armadil crossbow for Nick. And it's a good day. Then we all go Vetion and get me a ring. Exactly. <laughs> we just go and do it, lol. It's just they just kill the boss and you get them. It's pretty common. Yeah. Uh, a business skeleton is hitting him with a baguette. Business skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> business. <laughs> he's got. He's got to go for a meeting about his bread business. <laughs> See, this. This is why you you play RuneScape here. Oi! Why did he hit me? <laughs> no! What is he doing? No! I have no business with you, business. No! Skeleton. Please, please, don't, <laughs> don't hit me, dude. What the? F Wait, Lord, Lord. Help! What the? Oh my god, this guy! No, please! I should, I, dude. I have to go into the wilderness and bait this guy. Time to go with the, with my, all my money into the wilderness. Oh, he's, he he's too scared, hey, bro, he's dude. He's got a briefcase full of money. He ain't you. <laughs> I mean, I think we're gonna get ranger boots. To be honest with you, I'm realistic. Adam at longsword, you say? Yep. I think you're gonna eat your own words, dude. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> no way, strength amulet as well though. That's that's hey, kind of fancy. Hey, look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. There we go. That's the stamina finally though. Jesus. And 
I will give you the strength amulet T for that. Fuck off. Actually, I'll put the adamant longsword in as well, actually, for good take measure. It, take all the other pots you need as well, like take some prayer, take some... Yeah, like, bro, you can probably stay in there for ages, and whatever I bring, I'll just bring whatever you're low on, like, a few extra prayer. Yeah, he's like one hit off, dead. Know, oh, like, I forgot to do the whole stand. method, I'll do it next, I'll do it next, about... No, oh, dead. Maybe. First kill. Nice. Good luck. Magic potion. <laughs> Oh, that is not the best. Rune battle axe, hey! Drop table. Oh no. Oh, just stay Help. as long as you can, I guess. Diamonds. Diamonds. Pick them up, and I guess. And... Okay, I'm getting ready to TP. I should TP now. Oh, bye bye. So on the first trip, me and Nick did how many kills? Like six? Five. Five. Okay. Five kills. Okay, so now we're gonna go with three people. How many do you think we're gonna get? Like 15? Six? six? Oh. <laughs> oh no. I hope at least 10, but. We'll yeah. See. Yeah. 10 kills. Is that enough to get an ACB? I mean, I've gotten a hilt on 4KC before. Uh, okay, well then, ch math checks out. Right, we're gonna it took get me it. 700 to get the no, no, it took me over 1,000 to get the hilt. Oh, uh, we don't talk about that though. Here we go. Yeah, it's not that bad. All right, Sarah. Oh, Sarah Bruce and restores. That's not bad. Just kill boys. Dude, not running. <laughs> Dude, Im imagine having an infernal cape and not being oh able to cancel me out now. Well, we're just gonna be doing this all day now. Okay. <laughs> uh, zero, zero run. <laughs> I gotta actually. Hey, super right. restores. That's a good drop. Oh my God, Adamant plate body. No way. What? Dude, You're that's right, bro. that's like 8k alk. Oh, like how many gold ore is that? Like 40? <laughs> that's how you got look at. Oh my god. How much Smith and XP is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Raynor weed. Oh my god, dude. I can't believe it. Absolute. Yeah, if you do this, I think it's like 99.9% .9 drop rate of uh, a unique. No, no, no. You got, you got a flex on her, you know. She's an e-girl, so you gotta show her the goods. Okay, now we get ACB. The Goblin Salute strategy, it's... No. Bro, I'm out. <laughs> I'm uh, out guys, I think I have to go. <laughs> this is definitely my kill. For the ACB! Law runes both times, dude! At what? least the stack's going up. Oh I'm yeah, 200 law runes, dude. <gasps> Another adamant plate body, no way! <laughs> Come on, get the last hit. It's like 22 HP. Please! I have no run, dude! I'm so bad. I got a TP. I TP'd. Well, we still squeeze like the kill. So so can, can, you, can you kill it, you think? Most likely, most likely. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I, I got the kill. <laughs> oh, well, how many kills did we get overall? Like, I got 8kc. What did you get? Uh, three. Uh, three? three. Yeah. Four. Four, okay. So we overall did uh, 15 three, kills? Four, yeah. 15 Silianas, yeah. I am here back at the Granite Mine and uh, getting the stamina potions from the Theater of Blood did not go as planned, but we got them from Dark World Order instead, so that was a good thing. Also, doing Siliana was a bit harder than we expected. The minions were hitting pretty consistently on us, but it was a fun thing to do, and we're definitely going to do more in the future. All the drops there is really nice, but I think I should be getting from one mine here 61 mining, and I will be able to use the Dragon Pickaxe now, which is going to speed this up by quite a bit. A quick shout out to Sorry Mr. Tom. He actually decided to give me a bond, which uh, is the first bond or like donation type thing I've ever got, which is uh, 14 days of membership. We were just chatting here at the Granite Mine, and uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that, it means a lot. Actually, something I realized is that now that we have Staminas, doing Blast Furnace is so much better experience because you can run all the time. And I'm stopping at 62 mining, I think, and I'm getting the Ice Gloves here, and I'm going to spend all my money, the 1.2 million I have, on Gold Ores and see how far I can get on my Smithing Grind towards 70. 
Buying gold ore at the blast furnace gets expensive very fast, so when it's fully stocked, which is 100, they are 225 each. And if I buy one inventory, they are now 346. So what I'm doing is I'm just buying one inventory if it's fully stocked and then running to the bank putting it in and then I'm hopping to another world to get as many as I can. I'm at 3000 gold ore and I'm actually going to save this last 200k because you also need to pay a bit to be able to use the blast furnace before you level 60. I probably should be able to get to 60 with those 3000 gold ore but I'm not 100% but uh, I can basically just put in money here after I think pay this guy first. Yeah, 2.5k and you have to pay pretty often in the beginning, like every 10 minutes. So all you really have to do if you have the ice gauntlets and the goldsmithing gauntlet is put the ore on the conveyor belt like this, have the goldsmithing gauntlet equipped, you will get a 1.5k experience drop, equip the ice gloves and then just take out all the gold bars and that's all you do. And that is the last gold ore I had for 165,000 experience. That is a lot of experience. I went all the way from, I think, 44 to 57. And I also actually hit over 1.5k total during that. And right after I ran out of money, I see this message from Dovidas. He actually got a 10 million cash stack mostly from doing Revenants. And he said I could take 4 million as a payback for the 1 million I gave him a long time ago. Quite an interest rate on that one. Honestly, I forgot how good power mining on iron was. Like, look at how fast this is. 35 experience, 35 experience, 35 experience. And the granite gives like 50 all the way to 75, depending on how much of it you get each time. But this is just so much faster. Another mining level, 63, only 7 more to go until I'm done with mining. But now that I got so much money from Dovidas, I am really feeling like smashing out as much smithing with that as possible not sure if it will be enough for 70 but should get me pretty close and that is all the gold ore i need 9300 and i still have 800k left which is actually perfect because you of course need to pay the small fee to be able to use the blast furnace let's get 70 smithing well 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 uh, here we go this is actually the last gold ore that i will have to smith for the 70 requirement so let's get that 70 smithing done and actually during this time you can see on my total level i did actually hit over 15,000 total levels so i am getting up there a bit in the total levels i mean there are people who are like 1800 already but uh, i'm not that sweaty so 12,000 gold bars that i can actually use for crafting in the future which is going to be quite a lot of crafting experience for gold bracelets and i can also also uh, alk them for a good amount of money so whenever i have some downtime i can actually do some gold bar smithing into gold bracelets and it's 25 crafting experience per one so all those gold bars if i do them is going to be like 300,000 crafting experience but of course over a long time now that I have the smithing goal done, I am actually going to start working on the construction goal, which is 70, and I'm going to do it through Mahogany Homes, or with t clocks, I guess, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport to Ape Atoll with the imbued heart boost like I'm doing now, run up the ladder right here, and then there are teak trees right there, and then just teleport back to Castle Wars, and that's how I'm going to bank like 2000 t clocks, which should be enough for 70 construction, I'm pretty sure. So right now I'm at 1476 teak logs and I'm actually going to stop here for this video. I don't want to drag it out too much but I only need like 500 more and then I should have enough logs roughly to get 70 construction. Which is very nice to have that done pretty soon but uh, let's actually have a quick look at the Song of the Elves requirements. It is right there and I need of course the Morning Sand Part 2 making history. Both of these uh, quest lines are going to be pretty fast compared to obviously leveling the skills. 70 construction should be done very soon 70 mining also should be done pretty soon and 70 farming i'm already close to 60 and i have some mahogany trees planted so that should also kind of be fine the 70 herb lore is the big hard problem that i actually have to work towards but i think i might get gifted some herbs now and then from dark world order because he's already hit the herb lore gold of stamina that he wanted but also i'm going to be doing a lot of farm runs for herbs i'm already at doing irits right now and that should help with both 70 farming and 70 herb lore i think we can get to prifton us pretty soon honestly which is very nice to see and uh, yeah hope you guys did enjoy this video like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see the future uploads and until next time guys have a good one
Welcome to another video. In the last one, I ended it off with doing some wood cutting on teaks to try to get a decent amount of teak planks to be able to do construction with the mahogany homes. And I have currently 1644 planks and 250 steel bars, which you also use meanwhile doing it. But I don't think this should be enough for 70 construction all the way from 52, but I should get fairly close. And I do have some other planks as well. I could also make some mahogany planks. So maybe I will have enough banked overall for 70. I'm just briefly going to explain how this works. So you get a contract that tells you what house you have to go to. So now I got Tao's house in Falador. You have to build the specific things it asks you to build. And there is a plugin for it just called Mahogany Homes. You can download it on the plugin hub. And then you make all the things. And I think my contract should be done now. So now I just have to talk to Tao. And I should get 2,250 experience. I think it, of course, goes up the higher tier logs you do. Or planks, I mean. So Mahogany would be more. And Teak is 2,250. I think there are other locations you can get contracts at also. But I'm just going to be using this one. And here you get to choose. I'm going to with the 51, which is the Teak ones, I think. And this one says I have to go to Jess in East Ardoin. So I just teleport there. And I with the plugin, you can see here it becomes really easy. It just shows you basically where to go. So I'm 121 construction experience in and I'm going to be getting a 60 farming here which means I only need 10 more levels to be able to have the requirement for Song of the Elves. So we're getting some nice progress. I don't have any use seeds unfortunately but uh, whenever I get some I can plant those. And we're also getting 60 construction here so only 10 more levels on that skill as well going pretty nicely. So I'm currently at 64 construction and I just got enough points to buy a plank sack and that can hold up to 24 planks and that is also a collection log item which is going to make this a bit smoother to be able to bring more planks. So after 461,000 construction done through the construction contracts I am now at 67 construction. I'm getting so close to 70 that I just want to finish it off and I only have 22 teak planks left and only 9 teak logs. I think overall I need to get like 400, 400 than 50 or something like that so it's not much at all so i'm just going to go back to ape at all do the wood cutting there and finish off 70 construction just finishing off the last 282 experience with some oak planks that i had in the bank but that is now 70 construction achieved and the only skills that we now miss for song of the elves is 70 mining 70 herb lore and 70 farming so now that I have that done, I'm actually going to work on getting all the free herb lore experience I can get. And the first thing I want to do is complete the jungle's potion quest, which I cannot believe I haven't done yet. But 775 experience. But now I can do Shiloh Village and after that I can do the one small favor quest, which gives like 20,000 free herb lore experience. And that is going to be the Shiloh Village completed. Actually a very easy quest, way easier than I remember it being. But uh, that unlocks of course Duradel Slayer when I get 100 combat. Some crafting experience right there and the one small favor quest which is going to be kind of fine with stamina so actually you have to run a lot but yeah it's fine. And finally here we go this is the one small favor completed it was not really that bad with the quest helper and that is going to be 20,000 experience I can put into herb lore. Apparently a lot of uh, conversation here, but there we go. That is uh, two antique lamps and two quest points as well. Let's put those both on herb lore and I'm just going to keep a counter up here that you guys can uh, basically see how much herb lore experience I'm going to get during this video. I'm going to be working on doing quests and achievement diaries in general and that is how I'm going to get a bunch of lamps to use on herb lore. I was I think 50 herb lore and after this I am now 51, so almost two levels. And here we have the hero's quest completed. It doesn't really give a lot of herb lore experience, but it does give some, which is going to push me over the level. You also get a bunch of experience in other skills. Look at that. 1,300 herb lore experience. And also, of course, I can now use the dragon battle axe, which is a pretty nice boost. 52 herb lore. And the main reason why I did this is because now I have everything to complete the legends quest, which actually gives quite a lot of herb lore experience. And finally, there we go. That is the legend quest completed and I can go here and find herb lore and you can actually do this four times so let's choose 7600 herb lore experience and you can do that three more times so this is going to be a good amount of herb lore experience it's kind of tedious you have to go through the uh, chat op options all the time guess I have to do it two more times but uh, yeah that should be actually another level after that so 54 herb lore 
And that's the last one. Let's also get the uh, pop-up here, I think, of the Legends quest completion. There we go, four quest points. And I think, actually, when it comes to Recipe for Disaster, which is actually a pretty good quest to complete as well for Herblore experience, I think 20,000 experience or maybe 10,000, I actually only need to get 70 cooking to do the last part, so... That should also be something I complete in this video and get Barrow's Gloves on top of it. So what did I decide to do after the Legends quest? Well, judging by this absolute chat of a character, you might understand what I did. I completed all the easy diaries and got a good amount of XP lamps. Unfortunately, they are not a lot of experience, but uh, I am going to start working on the medium diaries as well. I also have some quests that I am planning to do as well for a blow experience, but I think each of them is going to be 2.5k so let's see how much we're going to end that after uh, 56k total after using the first one 78k so like 24,000 experience for that and that is also 55 herb lore now i think i want to take a break from doing diaries because doing that was kind of boring i'm not going to lie got this of course shad setup every single item is from diary so that's pretty cool but uh, i'm actually going to work on the uh, vampire quest line the tw taste of hope and sins of the father and stuff like that because uh, i need to get into the dark mayor area in the future anyways and they actually give quite a lot of xp tomes so the first quest in search of the mark is completed i don't think it gives any good xp rewards 600 attack defense strength hit points and crafting but it is the first step in the entire series completed. What is wrong with the price of lean snails? I need 10 of them and they're 13k each. Look at this. What? Why does it say 2k here? Is it just the actively traded price is like 13k or something? Or I, I have no idea why that is. And that is the in aid of the Mark Q completed as well for some experience, just really combat and uh, crafting, I guess. And I don't even remember which quest is the next one. I think it might be a taste of hope, but I uh, could be wrong. I was wrong. It was the darkness of Hallowvale, but let's do that now. Oh yes, the uh, infamous agility course that you have to go through multiple times during all these quest lines. I think overall you have to go through like back and forth in this uh, agility course which takes multiple minutes. Probably like six times if not even more. I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure it's that many. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Actually, the first quest here in the series that is going to give me some herb lore experience, so let's complete it. Agility Thieving Construction, and here is the Tome of Experience that gives, I think, 2,000 or maybe 3k, yeah, 2,000 three times on herb lore, so 6,000 experience. And it is actually going to be a level as well, so 56 uh, herb lore, I think it is. Yeah, 56, but now I can actually do Taste of Hope, and I'm pretty sure that also gives the uh, XP Tomes. Now before we do Taste of Hope, look at this, I have three fully grown mahogany trees ready to be harvested and this is going to be like 45,000 farming experience and I have a lot of mahogany seeds so I will keep doing this. I'm currently 61 farming, I'm keeping up with my herb runs as much as I can because I need the herb lore experience as well as the farming experience. Am I going to get? Oh no! I'm going to be 600 experience of 63 but uh, yeah we're getting closer to 70 farming as well. Look at this dude, he's trying to kill me with uh, his ranged attacks and I can literally just pray. Look at this guy, he's just uh, doing nothing. So the last fight is upon me and this is the gear I'm going to be using. Fairly sure it's going to be easy for me to do, I mean I saw a settled Swampletic series do this with like the worst gear ever and what like uh, meat pizzas or something so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be fine. And there we go, that is uh, Rannis Draken killed and uh, now I just have to go and talk to some NPCs I'm pretty sure and we are done with a taste of blood. Now when it comes to the Sins of the Father quest which I can actually complete at this point I am going to wait just a bit because the experience tomes that you get from that, which is overall 45,000 experience, you have to only use on a skill that is above 60. So before I do that, I am going to get myself 60 herb lore. On top of getting the Tome of Experience, the Draken's Medallion is actually extremely handy. Just teleporting to the Theater of Blood on demand is going to be such a nice convenience. Also, let's get the experience here. Herb Lore 2.5k. I think it is three times, so it should be like 7.5k like the other quest was. Yeah, there we go. Not quite a level, but it is now everything I have to do 
for the sins of the father completed except i think 56 crafting but uh, you guys remember what i did in my last episode if we can find the uh where, where are they gold bars Twelve thousand. that's how i'm going to get it honestly there's very few medium diaries that doesn't require quests and i don't want to do any more quests in this video except the sins of the father i'm kind of done with questing honestly but the medium lumbridge i could complete and the xp lamp should be like 5,000 experience i assume 7.5k so that's even better but that is now 57 herblore only going to be doing two of them the candorin one is now completed for another 7.5k experience so let's put that on herblore almost half a level for that pretty nice but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to complete the entire recipe for disaster which uh, has two parts left and uh, after that i will get both the barrels gloves and 20,000 herblore experience and to do the last part of the quest, I needed to get 70 cooking, so that is now done if I don't burn the last one. Luckily, I didn't, and actually, look at this, 70 cooking on exactly the amount of swordfish that I had. And I burned 260 of them. That was all of them, look. I have no left, perfect. Yes, that is it. 10,000 agility, 10,000 cooking, and that is all the subquests completed. And I actually have a 172 quest points, which I realized I need 175. So I just need to complete some minor quests to uh, be able to do the last fight, get the 20k herblore experience lamp and the barrels gloves. There actually happens to be a perfect quest for me to complete, which is making history. It gives three quest points, which is all that I need, and it is also actually a requirement that I still needed for the Song of the Elves, so I got both of that in one quest. And that is now Barrow's Gloves finally unlocked on the account, they are of course going to be very useful for any type of PVMing I'm going to do, and the 20,000 experience lamp that is going straight into Herblore for 20,000, 20, 58 Herblore, so only two more levels to go now, and I'm actually going to do it in Soliceps, I think, because I have like 150,000 Herblore experience left to do in Fossils, so I'm going to get a lot of woodcutting levels from that probably, and it is a very nice method of getting Herblore experience. So there's actually two very nice benefits in herblore wise from doing soliceps. The first one is of course the experience lamps that you get from the fossils, which is going to be the majority of the experience. But on top of that you also get these, the Mortemeyer fungus. And I have been doing Avanto farm runs for a while now, so I probably have like 400 of them in the bank. And every one of these is one super energy pot that I can make with that, which is 117 experience. So it's basically two different ways you get herblore experience doing this. So I did woodcutting all the way to 74 last night and then I went to bed and I woke up and realized that there are actually two very easy quests I can do that gives 10,000 experience for free. And the first one is In Search of Knowledge. Just completed that and I'm going to put that on Herblore of course. 10,000 experience and we also have the Curse of the Empty Lord that gives the ghostly robes that also gives another 10,000 experience. But uh, I will complete that and then we're going to hand in the fossils I got from woodcutting and that hopefully is going to be enough for 60 Herblore. Looking like a PKer 10 years ago in this ghostly robes, but uh, completed the Curse of the Empty Lord, got all the ghostly robes for Fashionscape, and if you talk to the Historian Mines after that, you're going to get a 10,000 experience lamp, and there might actually be more XP lamps that I can get from him, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it seems like actually we can, maybe from Legends Quest or something like that. Yep, two experience lamps, even three maybe? Oh, never mind. Okay, so two of them, and the first one is 1k, and this one should be a 10k from the Curse of the Empty Lord. Yeah, what? 1000? There's no way, dude. What? I could talk to him one more time, so this has to be the one, right? If this is like 1k, then I don't know. Oh, that is the 10k. Okay, perfect. So that should be 59 herb lore, and let's go down and clean the fossils and see if we can reach 60. I'm pretty sure these fossils should be enough, so let's start cleaning them and get that 60 herb lore. Alright, let's see. Let's use all these lamps if we can actually get it. 5k, yeah, there's no way we're not going to get it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's a lot of experience from these uh, fossils. I think overall I got like 45k, actually probably more than that. And that is now 60 herb lore. So what we need to do now... 
which is the last thing is get 56 crafting on gold bars and make gold bracelets so luckily i have 12,000 banked and then we can get 45,000 free experience from the sins of the father quest 2050 gold bracelets and some diamond rings and ruby amulets to get to 56 crafting so we got that done we can do sins of the father but also i got 114 mortmire fungus from the solar sap woodcutting grind which is a 117.5 herblore experience each so that is like 12,000 herblore experience with the eventos i have so we're at the end of the sins of the father quest and this boss fight is actually unironically pretty difficult i've seen some hardcore iron man almost die to this like some other youtubers also saw i think dovidas in our group was actually doing this kind of recently and he had to teleport out or die like four times so let's see if i will be able to do this on the first attempt if not then it is not too bad if you do die you have to pay like 100k but that's about it i believe almost all the damage i'm taking is magic damage so maybe using darox and torso is not the play i am just getting kind of shredded by his normal attacks i'm not really screwing up all the other mechanics so i'm probably going to teleport out now he is actually not dead because after this there's a phase where you take a lot of damage so i'm just going to leave and uh, try with dragon hides are you kidding me no way that's literally one hp oh my god are you kidding me for reals man hey very nice hits there actually so that took me three attempts that's not too bad since so the father is now completed and let's claim all this free experience on herb lore we now have 60 in it so of course we can get the xp let's see 15k three times that is beautiful we're now over 200,000 herb lore experience in this video and we also hit 61 almost 62 off of that but with that we're going to end the video here i hope you guys did enjoy it and the progress we're making towards priftinas is a very very nice the only skills we're still missing of course is farming herb lore and mining to 70 probably mining being the last one because it is so easy to do how i'm going to get farming and herb lore up in general is most likely through herb runs and maybe some mahogany trees now and then and uh, that should get me enough herbs to get to 70 herb lore as well so that should be a good way of doing it but hope you guys did enjoy the video like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see my future uploads and until next time guys have a good one I was just woodcutting some soliceps and all of a sudden Max Nick just comes up to me and gives me a senite ring for uh, actually killing Soldra which is such a nice convenience item and that means in this video we're actually going to do some Solra. It was actually completely unexpected, I had no idea it was going to do that for me, but let's make the Enchanted Ring of Suffering, and now we have to go to the Nightmare Zone and imbue it. I'm pretty sure my Nightmare Zone setup on what bosses I'm fighting is pretty bad, I think the one I'm fighting right now is terrible points, because you have to kill it three times and it only gives points for one of the faces I'm pretty sure. But uh, should be fine if I change it up a bit. I shouldn't take more than like three hours to do this. And that is all the points I needed. So let's go out. And the ring of course is now 10 in all defense stats and one prayer bonus. But let's upgrade it with the imbue. That is now done. And it has three prayer bonus. So I actually did more than double the prayer bonus. And 20 in all stats. And now if I get all these rings of recoil into this. Let's see how many charges. 8,000. 280 recoil charges that is so nice so i started with 70 kills on solra and this is kill number 80 so i've done 10 kills and it is very nice with the ring of suffering i think for this video my goal will be 100 kills so we have 20 more to do oh there we go that's the first one that is a 500 solar scale drop making that a 633 solar scale in one drop those are excellent currently at 86 kc and i realized i should just use all my bones that i have banked because having obviously a higher prayer level is going to save me some prey potions and look how many i have i have almost 300 dragon bones and i've been gifted all of this basically just to get to 70 prayer so if i would pass 70 i'm currently 64 then i'm just going to put in the external ones into the group storage for a dog whenever he needs 70 prayer Turns out we did have enough bones, perfect, 70 prayer achieved, and I think we still have like 50 dragon bones, I did use pretty much all the other things we had, but now that I have 70 prayer I might as well complete the king's ransom, because when we're going to do bandos and stuff like that as a group it is very nice to have the piety prayer. 
This is unironically the worst hitbox I've ever seen. I tried to talk to him, but you can't if I right click like all around him. I have to move my mouse here to almost the door. What is that? So of course the quest itself is actually not the uh, piety unlock, it is the training ground you have to do afterwards, but that is very simple. Actually, the main reason why I thought getting piety now is a good moment is because we actually have Max, Nick, and the soon Dovidas both going to use wild pies to boost and kill abyssal demons, and uh, they are hopefully going to get us a couple of whips, and having piety unlocked with that is going to be absolute blaster at bandos and stuff like that. Oh my god, look at the drain on this. I have basically no stats left. Good thing I brought my Ring of Suffering. I actually pretty much only killed the last one with Ring of Suffering because I have no strength and defense. But that was uh, like 80,000 combat experience in different skills. I don't think I got any levels for that. No, I didn't. But we now have the Piety Prayer. I can use that on future bundles or whatever PVMing I want to do with melee. We are back to Solra and this is KC number 90 for even more Solra scales. That is such a good drop. I don't know if I mentioned why before, but it is because we do have two items and soon three items being the trident of the swamp that actually use these scales. And I don't have that high KC, so we don't have a bunch of them. So getting the bigger Solra scale drops are perfect. And here we go, this is KC number 100 for some battle staves, and that is also a task completed, of course, for 100 kills. Let's have a quick look, actually, at the loot, where I'm going to stop, and I mostly did this for scales, so I would say that this is pretty successful, because I got two of those bigger scale drops. Almost 7,000 in 30 kills is very nice, on top of the papaya seeds that I'm going to use for 70 farming, which I am getting pretty close to, so that is very nice to see. There is a quest called A Kingdom Divided that I would love to get completed. It unlocks a lot of things, including thralls on the Archeo spellbook, some spells on that as well, and also gives a 10,000 experience lamp, as well as I think the Architectural Alliance also give 10,000 experience, so that is 20,000 Herblore experience I can get. I have all the level requirements, but I do need actually a 100% favor in all the different houses on current to be able to do the Architectural Alliance. So that is what we're going to do now. I currently have 100% in Archaeos and Shazian, but not the other three. I'm going to start off with the Hosidius one, which is basically just dig up Saltpeter, and as I am 30% now, I will need 700 of these, as one of them gives 0.1% of the favor. But luckily it is pretty fast and there is a deposit box right here and when I do have the 700 ones you put them all into normal compost that you can just buy and then you quickly hand them in to one of the characters here. I've collected all the saltpeter and the compost I need and how I'm going to do it is I'll take out four at a time like this and I just have the uh, top of my inventory with some random stuff and then I just click like this because if you're going to make them manually uh, it is way faster than if you would make it automatically. I can just quickly show you guys, if I would take out like this, you can see how slow this is without uh, clicking myself. We now have the 700 required and she can take everything from the bank, so I didn't really need to bring all of them because you can't note them. So let's donate them all and that should be 100% Hosidius favor completed. It is now time to finish off the Piscarelius favor and dig up a bunch of these buckets of sandworms. Each one of them actually gives 0.36% favor, so it is kind of fast. I only need like 200 of them and as you can see it goes pretty fast. So when you got yourself a full inventory you hand it in to Tynan, after that bring coins and you can just buy buckets new from him so you don't have to go all the way to the bank because he actually takes your buckets. And here we go, there's the last inventory of buckets, let's see that 100% favor completed, and now we only need the Lovakenj favor, which I think is going to be the most annoying one by far, but uh, let's get it done. So from 0 to 20%, I'm going to just mine Volcanic Sulfur. It is kind of AFK and it doesn't take that long, but at 20% I can complete the Forsaken Tower quest, get 10% favor for free, and at 30% I can actually smith the Lovakench armors, which is going to be pretty fast, get me some mining and smithing experience, and I should get 100% pretty fast from that. The last 0.1%, there we go, 20% achieved, so let's now do the Forsaken Tower quest. By the way, that took me 35 minutes to do from 0%. And this is going to be the Forsaken Tower completed for the 10% favor and some minor experience as well. So let's click on the certificate, and yes, now we should have 30% favor. So now we have to go and actually mine Lovakite. I have to get like 300 bars, which is... Uh, 
quite a lot of mining, it's going to take a while, but uh, with my smithing level I can only do the tier 2 armors, and I will show you guys how you do that. Well, it seems I need 65 mining before I can actually mine the lava kite itself, so I guess that is a detour I will have to take. 63 to 65 is not that bad though. I'm going to be power mining iron, and actually last time I did this, I did it outside of the mining guild, but in the mining guild, I was actually informed by some comments that it does actually respawn faster, so the XP rate inside of the mining guild is actually quite a lot higher. As you can see, I have basically no downtime waiting for the iron ore to respawn, so this is a pretty good experience an hour, probably like 55k or something. And that is going to be 65 mining done, so let's go and finish off the Lovakench favor. So now that I can mine these rocks, I bought myself enough nature runes to get 300 plus bars, and I already have over 600 coal, so I'm going to be fine on that front. I'm going to take out 18 coal, and I'm going to be mining these Lovakite ore, and then I just instantly superheat them into bars and get 9 per inventory, and I will need around 300 of these bars to get my favor to 100%. I thought I would need 300 100 bars to get all the way to 100% but I might be fine with 215 because there is actually a thing you can do at 65% to unlock like the minecart traveling options which gives 25% free favor so let's see if we can manage with this amount of bars otherwise I'll just get some more. So I have to make seven of the tier one sets that's going to allow me then to be able to make the tier two sets that give even more favor 3% per set and that is the set I will have to make all the way to 65% then unlock the the minecart network get to 90 percent and then make like three or four more tier two sets so it's going to be quite a lot of bars i'm hoping that it's going to be enough but i guess we'll see so in my inventory i have all the sets that i could complete i hope this is going to be enough after this i need 75 percent to be able to complete it with the minecart system let's deliver it also 18,000 smithing and 8k mining and i have 76 percent perfect so i can complete it now it is finally about to be done, we're going to get 100% in all the favors when I talk to this dwarf light here, and that is now 100% in everything. We can complete the Tale of the Righteous as well as the Architectural Alliance, and then we have the Kingdom Divided to complete, to complete all the quests on Zaya. This area is actually so cool, I love this area. It's in the quest Tale of the Righteous, and you're actually only here once, I'm pretty sure. Maybe in the Kingdom Divided you will be here, I'm not sure, I've never done the quest. But I remember being here the first time ever in the Twisted League release, and uh, I actually made it my thumbnail for the first uh, episode of that series, because I thought the area was so cool. Like, look at this, corrupt lizard man, with all the crystals over the, all over the place, yeah, it looks really nice. The Tale of the Righteous is about to be completed right here, which is the last individual quest for the different houses, and we get the last memoir page as well, and now I can do the Architectural Alliance that actually gives 10,000 experience, and then we are going to the big quest, the Kingdom Divided. Now, besides the 10,000 experience lamp this actually gives me, it also gives me a very convenient teleport. It actually unlocks the uh, heart teleport, I think it's called, on the Xerix Talisman. So now, if I teleport to the hearts, I will land right here. So I don't have to use the current castle teleport anymore, so that is, of course, very useful if I'm on the Ancient Spellbook or something like that, or the Archaeos one. But let's put this on Herblor, 10,000 experience for free, and now it is time for the Kingdom Divided quest. Oh my god, look at this guy. I, I don't think he's too hard, I've seen some other YouTubers kill him, but uh, damn, he looks uh, very intimidating. Last hit, there we go. The hitboxes, by the way, of the fire waves are terrible, so if you're doing this yourself, make sure you have good margins. Oh my goodness, look at the chat, what is that soundtrack name? Not even going to say it, I'm gonna get demonetized. I have to say I really love the visuals of the boss fights in this quest, this is the second one, and I mean, it's not hard boss fights, they're very easy, but I love the visuals, they are uh, very clean. And that is a Kingdom Divided completed. The Book of the Dead, by the way, you actually have to have in your inventory or equipped to be able to use the Thrall spells, which I'm going to show in just a bit. They are actually extremely strong for PVMing. And the Experience Lamp that we're going to put on Herblore for 10,000 free Herblore experience. Is that a level? It is not, but 5,600 of 63, pretty close. And now let's go over to the Archaeos spellbook and show off the spell. So let's have a look at these thralls. There are three different ones, one that uses mage, one that ranges, and one that melees. I'm not sure if it really matters which one you pick, but uh, 
it is different animations at least and different types of npcs so the one i'm going to click first is the zombie one and they are up for your ma magic level times 0.6 in seconds so if you're 99 magic it is going to last almost exactly one minute but because i am 84 it lasts a bit shorter than that but the mechanic of these thralls is that they actually hit through defense they don't hit hard they hit up to i think three damage but they hit pretty fast and as i said they go through defense so they almost always hit which is a nice extra dps increase to your uh, pvming and you know if five people have thralls and you're killing bandos it's going to be a lot of extra damage it's probably going to be like having an extra player which is super nice let's look at all of them the skeleton which is the ranger and then we have the major Oh, it's on cooldown. I have to wait a bit. But the Major is kind of cool as well. It is... Um, let's see how it looks. It is the ghost that is in the Arceus uh, quest. I can't remember which one it is. The Ascent of Arceus, I think. So, they all look pretty cool. Oh, look at that. That is one dead Mahogany tree. But, actually, that doesn't matter. Because when I click this tree, I'm going to get... 65 farming 65 farming is a pretty big level actually because that allows me to plant his spore and that is like 10,000 experience a day so i have like five seeds maybe so let's get started with that and here we go this is the first spore seed planted on the account slightly late but farming is not one of my favorite skills i just have to hit it to 70 for priftinas that's really all that i care about I went into my analytics and I saw that 75% of the people watching my channel is not subscribed. If you watch this far and you enjoy my content then make sure to subscribe if you want to see when I post the new episodes. And until next time guys, take care. Oh my goodness guys, I've been doing a lot of woodcutting, 311,000 woodcutting on Soliceps and I have this many fossils. I hope that this is going to be enough to fill in all the last displays. Let's see how much experience we get. Well, it seems like I'm missing only two displays, a plant fossil display and then I think this medium display. Yeah, it is a medium display. Those are the only ones I'm missing. And because there's only two left, I don't really feel like the XP lamps from those are worth going back to solid step woodcutting. So this is all the lamps I'm going to get from the museum in general on this account. I have pretty much finished it off as much as I wanted. So let's see how much herb lore experience this is. 45.5 thousand herb lore experience and that just barely hit me 64 herb lore. So only six more levels to go until we have basically the hardest requirement for Song of the Elves. I have a very clear plan for this video and that is to complete the Hard Mauritania Diary and that has a lot of requirements that I still have to get and Cabin Fever, Rum Deal, Ghost Ahoy, some quests I have to do, also 71 Agility and I have to do the Great Brain Robbery. It says that I only have to start it but we actually even as a group have planned to go to Vetion pretty soon and the Great Brain Robbery gives the uh, Anchor Weapon and that is a very very good weapon to have on Vetion. So I'm actually going to get both the anchor and complete a bunch of quests, meanwhile doing farm runs, that I will also be able to complete the Mauritania Diary with afterwards. The main reason why the Mauritania Diary hard one is so good for me to complete is because it gives the bonus of picking up two Mortmire fungus in the Canifis Swamp, the Mortmire Swamp, every time you pick up one of the mushrooms. That is essential because I have been mostly doing Avanto farm runs and they are actually comboed with the Mortmire fungus to make the super energy potion which is probably how I'm going to get the majority of my herb lore experience. You know these kids in old school runescape using the uh, in-game plugin for all the quests they don't know the pure bliss of a watching slayer music just wait for five minutes for this to grow in the actual guide. He just stood there for five minutes in the guide just looking at the plant grow. Mr. Deceased Andy here. I accidentally didn't wear my Slayer gloves killing the fever spider, so now my stats are drained into oblivion. But this is the completion of Rum Deal. It actually gives some very good experience. I think it gives farming experience like 7,000 or something like that. 
Yeah, 7k prayer, 7k fishing, and 7k farming. The holy branch is actually pretty good as well. It is like uh, when you have it in your inventory, your prey potions or uh, your superstores are going to give one more prey point per sip, I think. So in the long run, it is good to have if your full inventory is just filled with the prey potions. Should be the completion of cabin fever. There we go. 7k crafting smithing and agility. And now actually all we have to do to be able to do the great brain robbery and get the anchor is do a creature of Frankenstein, which is a super quick quest. So let's get into that. Creature of a Frankenstein completed. They could not do Frankenstein because obviously that is copyrighted. I had no idea this existed. I was going here to buy the fur for the quest that I need. I need 10 of them. And look at all these outfits you can buy. I just bought the red and black one because that's my favorite colors. I look really good. This is some nice fashion skip. I think this is actually a woman's outfit now that I think about it. Hey, it's fine. It's 2021. Loving it. Oh my god. I was just going into the storage to uh, check if we had some charged glories. What is this? We have an abyssal whip. That is awesome. I'm not going to take it though, but uh, they have started the whip grind. That is so nice to see. On the ground, we have the barrel chest anchor. Let's pick it up. And now we are going to have to complete the quest and repair it. I think it's 250k to repair it, but I've just been alking some battle staves to get the money I need. But that is the quest completed for 6,000 prayer, 3k crafting, 2k construction, the of course barrel chest anchor, and an experience lamp I think is 5,000 experience, so we take that in herb lore. So to be able to repair it, you have to go to this guy right here, Smith, and you have to have the book of piracy in your inventory, otherwise you cannot do this. And let's do yes please, 230k cash is now gone, and that is the barrel chest anchor, which is a very fashionable weapon. And it's a very slow hitting weapon, but it hits like an absolute truck. So what do we miss for the diaries now? Well, it's a layer of Tarn Resolore, which is easy. And then we have to do Ghost Ahoy and then 71 Agility. That is really all we still need for the hard and medium Mauritania diaries. Oh my god, look at this timing. We actually got our second whip. They were just talking about how many kills they had done. And Dovidas was complaining that he had to use a wild pie every single like minute because he's only 80 Slayer. And then the second after he gets another Abyssal whip. So the timing on that was perfect. The second to last thing I have to complete before I can do the entire diary, the Ghost Ahoy quest is completed. Also the Ectophile is actually a really useful item, a one-click teleport to the Ectophantus that automatically recharges when you get here. So it's a very convenient item, but now I only have to do the mini quest Tarn's Lair. The last quest we're going to do for this video, the mini quest Tarn's Lair, is going to be completed now. And uh, after this, I only need to get 71 agility, which is going to be pretty fast. I'm probably going to do it on the Seer's course and get some uh, marks of grace and uh, we can turn those into staminas. The overall last level I needed, 71 agility. Now I have other requirements to finish both the medium and the hard diary. We were just uh, actually chilling in Discord with the team and actually uh, Protox, a YouTuber from RuneScape 3 joined and we were just chilling so the level went by super fast. So I'm working on the hard Mauritania diary and both me and this guy are completely lost on how to find the mithril ore. It's at the Salve amulet place, but I can't remember. This place is such a maze, man. I, th I Maybe it's down here? Oh my god, we found the place, but <laughs> we, we need to have a light source. This is what happens when you go down. Uh, I guess we're going back to the bank. Oh my god, there is no way we did this. I actually went all the way around to find it, and uh, then I went back to get a lit sapphire lantern so I could go down, and then I went back, and it still did not work. And then I googled it. This is what you do. And I'm here. Wow. I'm dumb. Both the medium and the hard diary is completed, and then this guy is still looking for the mithril ore. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But let's get the experience lamps here on herb lore, uh, 7.5k, and this should be 15k. So that's a lot of free herb lore experience, and of course the Mauritania Three Legs, which has a Berg the Roth teleport and the Ectophantus teleport. And uh, now when I get the uh, Mortmire Fungus with the uh, Bloom effect on the uh, Sickle, I'm going to get two every single time, which is going to help out a lot with making super energies. 
I still have a decent amount of Avento seeds, so I'm just going to collect a bunch of Mortmeyer fungus, probably like 1,500 of them or something, just to uh, have the regions for when I do get the Aventos. Look at this, I'm going to be blooming here, and when I pick up this mushroom, I should get two. Yeah, so that's going to basically double the speed of me collecting all these uh, mushrooms. A quick detour from collecting Mortmeyer fungus, I'm up at like 1,100 at this point, but this is the first Hispori for the account. Let's see what we're going to get, if we're going to get the bottomless bucket. No, but 66 farming, pretty nice. A U seed, actually very nice, I didn't have any of those. And some Atas seeds. Uh, these seeds actually have different perks, I'm not sure which one this is, but I can look it up. Okay, so what it does is you need 76 farming to be able to use it, and when you plant it for 3.5 days, you get 5% more yields. So 5% more herbs for 3.5 days is uh, very nice of a perk. I think I'm going to be happy with this amount, almost 1.6k Mortmeyer fungus, and overall I have some irids as well, and marantils. I should be able to, with these, when I get to like 1600 Aventos, maybe with some diaries as well, finish off 70 herb lore. So I'm basically just playing the waiting game, making some unfinished potions right now, because I'm waiting for the people in my team to get on to do Vetion, we've planned to do it today. But uh, meanwhile waiting, I might as well complete Morning's End Part 1 and 2, because I need to do that before the Song of the Elves anyways, and I'm getting very close to uh, being able to do that quest. Morning's End Part 1 about to be completed, which is definitely the easier one. 25,000 theming experience is actually really nice, and actually 200 quest points on the dot. Now it's time for Morning's End Part 2. So if you're not familiar with Morning's End Part 2, at the end of the quest, before you finish it, you either give this guy a Death Talisman, which I cannot get because you need to kill Dark Beasts, which require 90 Slayer to get one, or you complete his list. I have to get all these different items. That's a lot of items, but uh, I've looked through them and I think most of them are kind of easy. There are just uh, a couple of them that I'm not really sure how to get. Took some time, but that was all the items handed in, and this should be the completion of Morning's End Part 2 for 20,000 agility experience, and that is now all the quest requirements for Song of the Elves. So so what would you say, Nick, for wow. group bossing? Like, nice, nice. Would you prefer Bandos or Vetion? I mean, I, I've said it in the chat, I prefer Bandos, because yeah, okay. the, so uh, the drops are more realistic to achieve, and it's it's just better content because we've already done Vetion. Yeah. The, uh, I, I was there with uh, Dovidus and Dark for a while and then they did it du Duo for a while. So it's something we've already done. We've done every Wilderness boss. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I agree. So, do you want to uh, wait until we get the fourth whip because we have three currently and then go when we have four? Or do you want to like three man it now for a bit and then uh, four so man the it when. Yeah. So the thing is, that's a good question, uh, and I would like to know your guys' opinion because I, like Dark just said, he might be busy all day today, but at the same time, I would want him to come rather yeah, than same. him not to be yeah. there. So that that's gonna be up to you guys. I'm, I guess I'm fine either way, but at the same time, it's like I would rather him be there. Yeah. So yeah, this is my setup. I am going to be ranging the boss because we only have two whips right now and I have the lowest melee stats out of Max, Snake and Dovidas. So they are going to be meleeing with Max, Snake as the tank. So let's see how this is going to be. We are uh, deciding to go with three because... I mean, we're going to do Bandos a lot of uh, times in the future and whenever Dark World Order is available, that is when we can four man it. Nice, first well, that, kill. That went well. Jeez, that was that so well. easy. <laughs> Rune to oh, age. Oh, 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 on the ground, it looked like a god sword. Oh, that was actually a really good kill. Yeah. Because you guys finished it right before he was about to attack me. Snapdragons. That's our blur experience. Oh. There you go. That was good uh, damage from you. Yeah. So it works sometimes, but whip is more consistent, I guess. Oh, I guess you did out DPS, though, so maybe maybe it isn't that bad. You're gonna get the last hit for us. Oh my god. Go to the end, dude. Oh well. <laughs> Flip it. Oh my god, you're alive! Kill it! You can still. You can still live. Oh. oh. Dead. <laughs> wait, what if I get the drop and then you guys have to wait? Well, I guess you, you guys have like. Yeah, like we have. Moment. We're fine, probably. Oh, get the Slay XP as well. Nice. Oh, it's gonna be yours. Two top yeah. of a key. I've got four loose in my bank. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I'd like to tank. Okay. Uh, not not this trip though. 
Uh, I'm, I'm already like uh, at the goblins almost. Oh, <laughs> dude. Yes. Oh, if I hit one like big hit now, he can die, but I'm gonna die probably. Nah. All right. Mm. Oh. My feet was going. <laughs> believe. My nope. 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 I tell it out. He was like 30 HP. That was a Every fast single. kill. How fast was that? That was the fastest. No way there wasn't. Room hey, pick. Okay, that was 24 seconds. Oof, 24. Like two seconds with a few. Yeah. I saw that collection item uh, pop out. Oh my like, god, whoa. God Sword Shard 1. Only two more to go and then a Bandos hilt. I mean, yeah, it's good Dude. that we get that before the hilt. Yeah. We just kill this for a God Sword Shard and then TP out, I guess. Sounds good. Ooh, 79 ranged. Congratulations. There we go. I've done 120 I, I, damage so far. Yeah, yeah like... I did nothing all I hit really hard as well, but I'm not gonna get the kill, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, oh my god, dude, whip is so good. I can't wait to get one. I hit actually really consistent with range there, and still I didn't get it. Yeah, dude, we're getting so many rune items. Like, rune 2 age, rune 2 age, rune longsword, rune longsword, back to back or something. I mean, it, it's like deceiving us. When we did Zami, do you remember how many coin drops we got yeah. like, all the time? It's pretty much coin drops, but in a in a different, different form, way. yeah. So random. Another rune longsword? Are you kidding me? That's well, three yeah, rune longswords in a row, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, I do have three longswords and one two-hander in my inventory. <laughs> nice. It's that. Kill it's that. It, it's that. It. Oh no! Oh, come on! Blow pipe it. Fast oh, attack. Sunny, Sunny alone. Oh, hey! No, please. He hit a one. He hit a one. <laughs> I'm running, dude. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh my god, I actually did not expect that. Ooh, grimy snap How dragons. How yours? I hit so good. I I didn't even track the hits at all. I was looking at alone getting fucked. <laughs> but he didn't get owned. So I was looking at you earlier also. I was like... Ooh, no, snap dragon seed. Bad. We're oh, getting a like lot of them. Roll. Yeah, we're getting a lot of like back-to-back -back drops. Snapdragon seed, snapdragon seed, snapdragon seed, and before that, I'm rune ranged. swords. <laughs> Kill number seven for me, my KC, for Bandos Hilt. Oh yeah, my so god, are you kidding me? <laughs> there you go. That's not the red drop I wanted, man. <laughs> you jinxed it now. Oh yeah. my god. Just, Just run. Any moment. I'm running away from the boss. Oh, come on! Yo, what the hell, dude? Oh. Jesus, that was so long. I'm, I'm still not tanking. Or, uh... Stand on the dude. Okay, now he's gonna stop target. The yep. free mage. Okay. Not me. <gasps> oh! 60 <laughs> hit. And for 13 the... HP. That was dead. Coins. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Tragic. Uh, me next. I... Picking, up, picking up the bones. Five prayer experience. I'm not gonna be 16k again. 16k, oh no, just Alka Glory. <laughs> okay. Glory, no. no, 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 no. I will, I will, I will deposit a dragon fruit tree seed. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So we ended up doing about 50 plus bandos kill in just one evening and tomorrow we're going back again but that is going to be for the next video. We're planning to do a lot of bandos as a four man as you guys could see Dark Will Order did manage to get in on the last trip but he was really tired and I think we were kind of tired as well. So we were going to go tomorrow instead but this is where I'm going to end the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one guys. Take care. So in my last video I ended off doing some bandos with the team and we're going to do that today as well. But what I want to do meanwhile waiting is I want to train my combat stats up a bit because we are actually going to get me a whip before going to bandos. Hopefully unless the RNG for Max Nick is terrible on the Abyss of Demons. So I'm going to be doing some Slayer because it is very good to get herbs anyways for my 70 herb lore grind that I need. And I'm doing farm runs meanwhile doing Slayer. So let's see what the first assignment we can get is. Black demons, that is not that bad. Slayer level coming in, just hit 66 Slayer, 51,000 experience to 67. And after that, what task are we going to get from Neve? Fire Giants, that's not bad. 
And that is the fire giant task done. I hit 78 strength on that. And the herbs actually from this task was surprisingly good. This is some nice herb lore experience. But uh, let's get a new task. Ooh, another black demon task. I think I will have to skip that actually. I want to get to 400 points though. Because I want to unlock the slayer helmet. Because I have the black mask now. This is actually mine before I was borrowing. A burn specters, that is perfect. Actually, a task I really wanted. That is a lot of herb lore experience. Man, I wish I had a herb sack. Unfortunately, I don't. But this is from 23 kill count. Insane amounts of herbs. I mean, you know what? Instead of having to bank all the time, I might as well actually just go to Tithe Farm and get the herb sack. I mean, we have stamina potions now, and I can do the medium level fruits. So the farming experience is not going to be terrible, and it shouldn't take too long. So let's go and do it. 100 fruit the first time, and I actually didn't use a single stamina potion though. So I don't even need this, which is very nice. Might be because of the graceful. Let's see how many points and experience we get. We need 350 points. And, uh, of course, farming experience is just great, because I need 70 anyways for Song of the Elves. And we get how much? 21,000 experience and 26 points. So, I will have to do this, like, 15 times over. Oh, that's 68 farming. Oh, it's only 250? Okay, so that's even faster. I'm only going to have to do that uh, 9 more times at this point. Going to be getting 69 farming here, which means that I am 100% going to get 70 farming on this grind, which is the requirement I need for Song of the Elves, so that is very convenient. And that means, most likely in this video, I will be able to get all the requirements done for Song of the Elves. So Max Nick is currently killing Abyssal Demons, and he is uh, using Ancients, and that is of course very rune costly. And as soon as he gets the last, aka fourth whip, we are going to Bandle, so I'm going to give him all of these runes to help him out on that should be enough for hopefully the whip and this is going to be 70 farming from those fruits so we are now done with farming for song of the elves but we still need some more points to uh, be done with tithe farm and uh, there it is i was actually even talking about him maybe not coming for the bandos trip because he wanted to get that last whip but there it is, we now have 4 whips, and that means I am, by the way, currently at, like, 200, okay. I'm at 206 points, so I'm very close to the herb sack. But we're now going on a detour to do some bandos. I already did some content on bandos in my last video, so I'm actually just going to show the highlights this time. Oh, oh that's a new that's one, a new I think, one. right? Oh, yeah. bog. Wait, we had the, yeah, we had God's for Shard 1 before, so that's another one. One more to go, oh, and then yeah. bandos healed. So we just need God's for Shard 3, right? Yep. Away. Yeah, it does the same effect. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, because uh, like. Oh, oh no way! It. Oh, oh my shit. god! Bandos hit! Wow, that's the best wow. job we could have got almost, that's right? The best drop. Yeah, oh that's my the best god! Drop. So wait, we only need shard that's three raids. then, right? That's yes, raids. We, yeah, just need oh shard three. God. Oh my that's god! That's raids ready. Nice, dude. <laughs> Holy oh, chat there! Oh, look oh, at the chat in the oh game. Oh my yeah. god! Wait for the wait for the stream. Oh my god! I was about to die because I was like I was like looking at the hilt. Holy, Holy. The fuck, boys. And then you would then take the planks to your house, make them, and then- Oh! oh no that way! Oh, dude. Whoa, that's huge! <laughs> oh, my- <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's, that's like- helped. That's literally like 20 kills no later, or 15. Way. Now we have two spec weapons. Alright, we're gonna okay. grind well, I guess we now have to get have more shards. Sarah for me. You gotta grind Sarah for me to get all the shards. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god, two hills. Oh, that's the one! That's the one! Oh, oh shit! Oh my we god! Got we got a god sword! <laughs> Oh uh, my god. I was you baiting you guys. Yo, let's go! You were baiting? He was actually baiting you! Yes, I was little baiting you guys. <laughs> you thought, Why did you think that I was talking about yours? <laughs> so confused. Dovidus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that your bait? <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. so confused. I think Dovidus thought I was getting excited over his bait, but I was yes. actually yes. excited. Oh. We got it. That's oh, actually the one we have to do. Bro, the, this. For me, that was so weird, right? Because I saw the three. And I was like, oh, cool, we got it. And then I saw the two on the floor, and I was like, wait, did I get yeah. two as well? Oh, I was like... so confused as well, <laughs> holy shit. Well, 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 what a bandle strip that was. I went to bed after that, and that is why I have the morning voice right now. But we are back to the tithe farm to finish off all the points and also 71 farming. But now we can buy the herb sack. I don't know if I mentioned what it does. It basically just allows you to store 30 of each herb inside of it. So... Of course, I have to type this in, but what it does is that, yeah, you can store like 30 Raynars, 30 Dwarfweeds, 30 Irits all at once. You can stack so many herbs into it, so 
that is going to give my Aberrant Spectre task a lot more convenience to them. So let's go ahead and buy it. That is now the herb sack, of course, a collection log item as well. But before we go back to the Aberrant Spectres, I'm actually going to use all of the potions I have in the bank. I just want to see how close I can get to 70 herb lore. So this is all the potions that I made. I still have some Carantine potions and some Haralander potions, but I do not have the secondaries. But I got 218,000 experience and I am currently level 69. So I'm going to pick up where I ended my Slayer grind and I'm going to collect some more herbs with my herb sack and uh, hopefully we should get enough herbs kind of in the near future to get that 70 herb lore. I really just want to get into Priftenas, get it done with Song of the Elves and I managed to squeeze out some more herb lore experience. I need 47,000 left and I am doing herb runs but I'm going to at the same time even off task just farm aberrant specters for the last herbs because we have no herbs as a team because we fed basically everything to Dark World Order to get Saradomin Bruce but uh, I think it shouldn't be that much of a grind to be honest. Oh, and by the way, I am trying to hit 15k subscribers by the end of the year. That would be the dream for me. So if you want to help me with that, make sure to subscribe, but only do so if you like my content. Oh my god, this is perfect. Look at this. I got a genie when I only had 1.9k herb lore experience left to 70. Let's get this. And I'm actually oh, 690 experience. And now we are going to get some dragon scales. And make the uh, first uh, magic potions or whatever this is. Uh, no, anti-fires, of course. And that should be enough for me to get 70 herb lore. And here we go. This is going to be it for 70 herb lore. The last four potions. And then after this... There we go. Now I just have to get 70 mining. And we have everything done for Song of the Elves. The next clip is 70 mining. And then it is Song of the Elves. It has been quite a grind, I would say, to get all the 70s because I had to do most of it myself. Of course, the smithing grind, I got help with the money for the gold ore, but other than that, I did pretty much everything on my own. And that is going to be the last skill I had to get. 70 mining, so let's now complete Song of the Elves. Ah, there we go. That is the library done. It was actually not that bad. The first time I did it, it was with a YouTube guide and it took like one and a half hour. This time I timed it. It says 42 minutes. Minutes. So Rune Light, the quest plugin, is just uh, lovely. Oh my god, is this it? Oh, there it is. Woo, that was like a 10 minute fight. I actually died twice as well. I just brought like only Saradomin Bruce and Restores and that turned out to not be the best thing because then my uh, attacks were just... I mean, I basically didn't get enough DPS in because I had to brew to full HP because how the boss works is that there will be a moment where the boss hits you for your entire HP except one. So you need to make sure you're on full HP. If you're not at that HP, well, then you're going to get one shot. And I did die like that once. I tried to like spam Bruce to get to that stage, but then I couldn't really DPS. So yeah, the best way to do it was definitely bring a mix of like Sea Turtles and Saradomin Bruce. And of course, Blood Blitz to keep up my HP so I didn't have to use that much food. But, uh, wow, finally, that is the completion of Song of the Elves, which uh, I will get in just a sec here. First time entering the Elf City. Let's see that quest completion screen. It is nice to have this done. Look at the experience as well. 20k in all the skills that you needed to have to complete the quest. Let's see that in the chat as well. Song of the Elves is now completed. I can do the Corrupted Gauntlet, the normal gauntlet, of course. I can do Solcano. If I get my thieving up, I can uh, thieve from the elves here. And if I get my agility higher, I can use the Priftenas agility course. Also, we have access to the crystal chest, which uh, is you turn crystal keys into crystal, um, or well, the better versions of the crystal key. And then you use it on a chest in here. 
So yeah, this is going to be very interesting to use. The first thing I want to do is complete a normal gauntlet. I can't enter the corrupted before I complete one of the normal ones, but uh, the normal ones are pretty easy. The most extremely simple way to explain the gauntlet is you basically spawn in this dungeon, here in the end is the boss, and you have basically a certain time, you can see on the top left here I have 8 minutes and 15 seconds left, to actually get enough gear, food and potions and everything to be able to kill the boss. If you die on the boss you get terrible reward, if you kill it you get the good reward basically. So now I have some gear and a weapon, a tier 3 magic weapon which is the highest you can get and a tier 3 ranged weapon, also some prey potion and basically a full inventory of food, I can drop these crystal shards and uh, why you need two different types of weapons is because the boss will start praying against what you're using so after a certain amount of attacks I can actually go in here and show you guys when I attack now with magic, it is going to start praying versus magic in a few attacks. Also, it uh, will start spawning these tiles on the ground. When they are yellow, you cannot stand in them. And if you do, you're going to get destroyed. So there you can see, now I have to change to ranged instead. And that is the boss defeated. Now the corrupted version, which is a lot harder than this, is basically the same thing, but it is just way harder. Like the last boss is hitting a lot more, you have less time to prepare, everything is just way harder. So that is what I'm going to mostly do, but let's see what the reward for the normal one was. Yeah, that's not that bad. And that is the first corrupted gauntlet kill. I actually did not manage to get it recorded because I was actually focusing really hard on completing that. Because it was very, very difficult. With uh, my stats, it is pretty hard to complete it. But let's see what the first corrupted gauntlet loot is going to be for the account. And it is uh, some average rune drops, but definitely not bad. And now we also have this fashionscape corrupted gauntlet cape. I am definitely going to do a lot more of the Corrupted Gauntlet, but I also want to do some Salcano just to show off the boss. It is a skilling boss and it's a very chill skilling boss in my opinion. And you ideally want to be like 3 or 4 people in one world and I was just hopping basically until I found a world with uh, only 2 players in it. Because that is the way you get the best reward. So you basically just mine these rock formations that it's pointing to. You uh, well, smith them in this furnace, then you runecraft them here and when you have these just go into the blue one and you throw it at the boss and then it goes down at 0% or 0 HP and then you get to mine it. And this is precisely why this boss is so insane to do. 230 mithril bars in one single drop. Yeah, it's pretty busted for Iron Man smithing I have to say. I honestly had a very hard time finding a world where there were uh, 3 people or 2 people in the session that needed another one, so I just decided to go to the uh, Salcano world. It is definitely going to be a bit less loot every time, but it is going to be very reliable and fast kill, so it should be fine. So I just wanted to do a couple of kills for the video and this is going to be kill number 20 and all the loot I've got is in my inventory right now. So you can see how good this boss is. I did some in masses and I did some in four man. And uh, let's actually have a look at how much value this is. So I'm going to put everything in and take out the sharks. Almost 2 million on a main account. And of course the adamant bars, like 52 of those are 520 adamant darts. And also 184 adamant ore, which you can also of course turn into bars. So really nice. But that is going to do it for this video. I am so hyped to get into stuff in Priftinus, mostly corrupted gauntlets. And maybe if we're really lucky in the near future, we can get one of those crystal weapon seeds for the bow of Ferradin or the blade of Seldor. But that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next one guys. Take care. Welcome to another Group Iron Man episode. We are going to start this one off by doing quite a bit of Corrupted Gauntlet. It is pretty hard for me to get KC right now with my stats, but I should be able to get some. So let's see if we can get lucky and get something good. First Gauntlet kill of the video. Let's see what we get. Imagine getting the uh, Crystal Weapon seed on the first one. And that is not that, but it's uh, pretty decent runes. Cosmics are rare. If you're wondering, I am not doing the 5-1 method, by the way. I might try to learn it, but that was a personal best for some more runes, rubies, and arrows. Third chest is some alchemy. Oh my god, that's a lot of rune plate skirts. That's a double drop. KC number 5. After this one, I will show 10, 15, 20, every 5. So let's see what we get. And we get some runes and alchemy balls. 
I was wondering why I got the Gauntlet Adept, which is for 10kc achievement now on 9kc, but it's obviously because I did one normal as well. So if you're wondering if that counts in, it definitely does. So the ninth chest is going to be... Rune Halberds, that's some decent Alex. Just look at my inventory, this is from 9 completions. Also, I did die now and then quite a bit. But uh, the only decent item I got from the deaths was an Adam Play Body 10k Alex, so I kept that one. But let's just have a quick price check here. This is 1 million, and basically everything in Alex, I guess, except the gems a bit. But yeah, most of it is very useful. But that is the Corrupted Gauntlet Veteran, so that is actually 10kc on the Corrupted Gauntlet. So let's see what we get for this chest. And we get some nature runes. Ooh, three rune chain bodies, that's almost 100k. 15 completions, the loot is stacking up in my inventory, and we are getting... Wow, that's a lot of mithril arrows, but uh, I don't think they're very useful for anything. Oh my god, look at all those alkyballs. Three plate legs and three halberds. That's uh, 225k. Oh my god, still getting personal bests on kill count number 20. And what are we going to get for this one? And some uh, rune items again. But look at all these rune items. The alkyballs are stacking. The Corrupted Hunglef is a pretty long fight, actually. It's like 4 minutes for me, 4 minutes or 4.30 or something like that. And it is actually very click intensive. You have to swap weapons, you have to swap prayers, you have to move, and you have to do all of these things very quickly. If you screw them up, you can actually get hit for massive amounts. And on top of that, you have very limited supplies usually. So sometimes I go in there with the uh, half of my inventory full of food, and sometimes I go in with basically a full inventory. And you know, if you have half an inventory, then if you screw up one prayer, you're basically done. Of course, if you have higher stats, you have augury, rigor, all those things, then you can screw up a bit more. But with a lower tier account doing this, with of course only using Eagle Eye and Mystic Might, it is a bit more difficult. I am currently not really dying that much anymore. I did die a lot in the beginning, but the more practice I've had, of course, doing both the run for getting the gear and the supply and on the Corrupted Hunt left itself, I am successfully getting kills almost 50-60% of the time, which is still, of course, not close to 100%, but uh, with my setup and, you know, everything when it comes to the Corrupted Gauntlet being a bit random sometimes, because uh, you go in there, you don't get the rooms you want, you spend like two minutes trying to find some fishing spots and you just can't find them, it's kind of unlucky, then you just kind of have to give up, at least with my stats. So I just wanted to include a full kill that was a bit sped up, and uh, yeah. That's about it. Oh my goodness, look at that perfect corrupted Hunlef. I'm kind of interested to see what that actually was. It was a master. Kill the corrupted Hunlef without taking damage from tornadoes, damage floors, or stomp attacks. Also, do not take damage off prayer and do not attack the corrupted Hunlef with the wrong weapon. Wow, that's not that bad. Let's see what we get for that. And we get a lot of Alkyballs as usual. And uh, that is now 25 Corrupted Gauntlet KC, and I have been here for many many hours, so it is very time consuming because I do fail now and then because of my stats, and of course I screw up as well, but after this I am going to take a break from this, so let's see what we get for chest number 25, and we get some uh, average drops I guess. In basically just pure cash, I got like 2.5 million from doing that, and I got 175 crystal shards, I'm just going to keep them for uh, future upkeep of the crystal weapons. In my last video I did 20 Salcano, but uh, I still want to keep doing this boss because it is so extremely good for Iron Man supply wise, so we are going to do some Salcano now, it is some nice bossing, but it is a lot more relaxing than the click intensive corrupted gauntlet. With the inventory I brought, I actually got 16 kills that trip and this is the loot from that it is of course incredible look at 1100 coal almost a thousand gold ore actually got the first dragonstone drop as well so that's pretty nice the mining XP from this is actually not terrible, I just hit 71 mining and that is basically all from Salcano and that was in 41 kills so basically an entire level from 41 kills. Oh my god, that is the first unique and it is the Salcano shard which is actually really nice because it is a cosmetic upgrade to the dragon pickaxe. I'm not sure how rare it is, I can check off with this. But uh, let's actually unequip this and put this on. Look at this. 
it now looks a lot fancier. Actually, a very good drop as well. 277k in uh, Runite Ore. I looked that up and uh, apparently it is 1 in 750 drop rate if you were the MVP. And if you're not, then it's like 1 in 1.5k. So uh, that was pretty lucky. KC number 50 has been reached, actually no combat achievement for that, but uh, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to get a runecrafting level here. I actually started with, I think, 33, so I've actually got soon 3 runecrafting levels from just doing these 50 kills. Another runecrafting level, 37 runecrafting, should I go for 99 runecrafting on this boss? Imagine all the loot you would get, but uh, then I would probably have no content for like uh, 5 years. 38 rune crafting. I'm actually very close to my goal that I wanted to complete for this video, which is a 100 Solcano. I'm currently on 97, so only three more to go, meaning that is the last rune crafting level I will get on this grind. Last Solcano for this video 100 KC for some silver ore. Now, oh, that looks so beautiful. But let's have a look at the loot on the rune light client. That is everything I got. Of course, this Salcano shard was very nice to see. Of course, it's uh, not a very useful item, but it is a very cool cosmetic. And look at this. 2,317 mithril bars and 4k gold ore, 650 adamant. It's just insane. And all of these uh, mithril bars and adamant bars are going to uh, go into smithing darts. Because I want to use mithril darts and the blowpipe on Slayer to get my Slayer helmet. Because uh, that is going to train my ranged in a pretty good fashion. And ranged in the Corrupted Gauntlet is a very good stat to have higher. Because the mage level doesn't really matter that much. You don't really hit harder, it's just accuracy. But the range level does uh, matter quite a bit. So I used 1000 mithril bars to make... 10,000 mithril dart tips and that is going to be a lot of fletching experience as well. I have the feathers here and I think uh, that should be quite enough for all the blow piping I will need to do on this slayer grind. Let's see how much one of these is in uh, 112 fletching experience and I can just do this. Look, look at this experience. Oh my goodness. 10,000 mithril darts now fletched. Let's put that into the blowpipe and also I've got two fletching levels from that so free total levels I guess. But talking about free total levels we also have the tiers of gothics completed, 38 runecrafting and how much experience did we get? I missed it but 40 runecrafting almost 41 that is massive. So I'm going to start off doing Slayer with melee because the black mask obviously works for melee but not for ranged. But when I do get that Slayer helmet, which uh, shouldn't take all too long, then I can do ranged. But uh, 67 Slayer, first Slayer level. So it's been a while and I've done a couple of tasks, but this is a corner task, task number 50, which gives 270 points, which is now enough Slayer points to buy the Slayer helmet, and after this I have to imbue it with Nightmare Zone. Shouldn't be that bad, last time I did Nightmare Zone for the uh, uh, Ring of Suffering imbue, I had a Dragon Scimitar, but now I have an Abyssal Whip, so it should be a lot faster. And this is the one, Malevolent Masquerade, let's buy that, and I guess I literally just do that, yep, there we go, that is the Slayer Helmet, bit late to the party I guess, but uh, now you have it done, let's go and imbue it. I would say about uh, three and a half hours later, I have all the points that I needed, and let's go and imbue the Slayer Helmet, it is now bit brighter that's the visual upgrade and uh, the slayer helmet is no longer only a melee helmet it is now for ranged and magic so now we can actually get training with some ranged and do some slayer actually not a bad task to start off with aberrant specters now i could of course get the salve amulet imbued that would work on aberrant specters but that's a lot of more nightmare zone and i'm not really feeling like doing that right now the uh, salve amulet is the same as the slayer helmet it only works for melee in the beginning but if you do enchant it it works for magic and ranged as well or maybe it's only for ranged i'm not sure but uh, yeah i'm not going to do that this time oh my god look at this consistency the dps is insane already 2.5k ranged experience and i just started this is going to be a good task very early on already 80 ranged i was already close to it but that is a pretty nice milestone it's uh, broadcasted in the clan as well I think my overarching goals is going to be to uh, do some Slayer with a blowpipe, go to Solra, re 
recharge my scales for it because we are soon going to have a trident because max snake is like i think 80k slayer experience of 87 when you can get the trident and when i have a trident i can get easy scales from solra and meanwhile doing that training range with the blowpipe slayer and everything i can do some corrupted gauntlet maybe some salcano now and then to work towards that enhanced crystal seed and of course smithing supplies from salcano I keep getting these aberrant spectre tasks, maybe I should get the imbued salve amulet, it will speed it up by quite a bit I guess, but uh, that is not going to be for now, this is going to be the end of this video, I hope you guys did enjoy it, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see my future uploads, and take care. In my last video, I actually talked about getting the imbued salve amulet for undead slayer tasks like aberrant spectres, and uh, I actually went ahead and got all the points for it, but then I realized it doesn't stack, but now I already have the points, so I might as well just imbue it. It is now imbued, it is blue now, EI. I mean, it is useful for Vorkath and stuff like that off Slayer task, but uh, yeah, kind of unfortunate I spent the time on this when uh, I kind of realized very shortly after it doesn't stack. I was actually going to wait until we have a trident to do the solar grind, but uh, I might as well just do some solar kills before we get it, because Max Nick is currently not on and he is the guy to get the trident, so you know. Nothing else to do, really. Might as well. Oh, second dragon halberd for the account. I can actually buy these in Priftinus, but they are very expensive. So it's nice to get one for free. <gasps> Collection... What? Oh, it's just a... T oh my god, I got so baited. I thought I got a unique. Wow, it was just an elite combat task. Hey. <laughs> I was streaming on YouTube and we did one corrupted gauntlet for fun and look at that, another dragon halberd. So we now have three, they are by the way good as a spec weapon, so that is why they are very nice to get. This is going to be kill number 80 on Solra in this one video and I've got no uniques and this is no different, that was a fast kill. But for now I think I'm going to be done with Solra until we get a trident because he is 87 and he is just trying to get a kraken task. And uh, so I'm going to stop here, but let's see how many scales I've got banked. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I think I forgot to tell you guys why I was grinding Solra. It's just for the scales, because I want the blowpipe for Slayer. I think I was talking about that in my last video, but maybe not in this one. 20,000 scales. Let's put all of this in. Yeah, that's a lot of scales for the blowpipe. It's uh, going to be fully charged, I think, and 3.8k left, so... We're going to be able to train quite a bit of ranged on Slayer, which is going to be very useful for Corrupted Gauntlet whenever I do that, because ranged matters quite a bit there. Oh my god, look at that! Mystic Robotum Dark on this task. Yeah, I think that's kind of rare, like 1 in 512 or something, so that's a collection log item. 81 ranged coming in here, if I just get one hit, there we go. It didn't pop up because I got damaged, I guess, but uh, yeah, 81 ranged. A couple of tasks later, we are now going to hit 69 Slayer, and I think my goal for Slayer is just going to be do a bit now and then, get some ranged experience, and then keep on going with the Corrupted Gauntlet, or Solra, or whatever bosses I wanna do, so that is going to be where I stop for now. Starting off the Corrupted Gauntlet grind on 26kc for this video, let's see where we're going to end, and hopefully get this Enhanced Crystal Weapon Seed. Of course, we have to see what the first chest is going to be. Oh, another Dragon Halberd, that is nice. The loot is stacking up and the KC number 30 is going to be some runes, crystal shards, as usual. Oh my god, I had no food left and 6 HP. Imagine if I get the enhanced crystal seed on this. Imagine. We have one minute until a system update, but uh, look at what Max Nick got. He got a trident, and I'm going to use that for Soldra, so let's uh, charge it actually before the update. Wait, did I not bring out all the things I need? Oh yeah, the fire runes. Okay, so I am going to charge this with almost full charge, I guess. One from it, and uh, why I'm not going to use my magic fang on this to actually make it even better is because then I have to charge it with Solra scales, and I am, as I said, doing mostly Solra for the scales. This is going to be fine enough anyways. But not quite going to Solra yet, we're not done with Corrupted Gauntlet yet. 40 KC, so we're technically 10% of the drop rate to the Enhanced Crystal Seed, but actually getting any of the seeds is like 1 in 25 or something. There are two of them that are 1 in 50, so uh, let's see what we get for chest number 40. A Dragon Halberd again, not bad. 
the corrupted gauntlet master for a master combat task that is 50 kc done and this is where i'm going to stop for this video look at all this loot in the bag i'm actually missing some death runes and chaos runes from when i charged my trident last loot is another dragon halberd look how many i got i've got five of them so we are definitely very good on those for spec weapons might actually do some god wars dungeon in the future with them like five people specking the general grader and just instantly killing him will be uh, pretty fun to try oh my god it's going to be so fun and interesting to try the trident on soldra now i actually can use the malediction ward as well don't have to use the tome of fire also bringing the crystal shield with a range setup might be able to stay here for quite long actually i think my record before was two kills maybe i can squeeze in three per trip now oh my god that felt so slow how was that 411 the trident felt super inaccurate. Maybe it was just uh, maybe just the first time. Let's hope it is. One damage. Three damage. Miss. Miss. What is this trident? This is like uh, I what miss again? I ordered this trident on Wish or something. What is <laughs> for miss again? Oh my god. Well, it ended up being 3.13, so one minute faster than the last one, but uh, maybe I was just unlucky. Oh my god, I just realized I'm over 100 combats. That is a bit of a milestone, I guess. I think I got it from getting an HP level in the Corrupted Gauntlet, so I can actually use Duradel now as a Slayer Master. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> How many dragon halberds am I going to get in this video? I feel like I have like nine of them in my bank now or something. By the way, something I realized, I am only uh, 37,000 experience of 86 magic. And 86 magic is actually a break point when my trident gets another max hit. So maybe that might change a bit. I mean, the trident has 15 accuracy and the toxic trident from with the magic fang has 25. So it would help a lot with the accuracy, but I really don't know how many skills it will consume but i do want to try it but you actually need 59 crafting to be able to uh, make that and i'm only 58 but luckily i have done the corrupted gauntlets i have all of these to cut should be enough 59 crafting let's now apply the magic fang to the trident and now it has 25 magic accuracy i'm going to start by adding 2k of the scales i guess it is now charged with 2000 charges and I do want to see how many I use per kill. If it's like 100 or something, then I am definitely not going to do this. I feel like that was slightly faster, definitely. Let's see the time. 2.58. So yeah, it was definitely faster. And now to the moment of truth, I had 2,000 charges in my staff and I had 2,000 in my helmet. Exactly, I reset it. The helmet used 40 shards, so that's not that bad, I guess. And the weapon used around the same amount so i guess i'm using like 80 and i got 200 so maybe i mean it's not that bad it's probably i mean it's maybe better to do faster kills and get a bit less shards because i need to farm so many of the uh, uniques anyways and this is going to be kill number 200 as Doug actually completes the recipe for disaster. That is awesome. But uh, now i have actually not got a unique drop since 69 kc which means 131 kills since I saw the last rare. And the drop rate of getting any of them in a single kill is 1 in 128. Of course, overall, I'm still extremely lucky, but uh, it is evening out, I guess. And that is going to be kill number 230 for some Solandra teleports and some grapes. Look at that, 230 kill count. And I am pretty happy with that for Solra. I am now going to show you guys the overall loot. It uh, didn't track some of the kills for some reason, not really sure why, but uh, this is 29,000 scales banked. I actually got a lot of teleport drops as well, so that was very convenient. I barely had to run at all to the boss, I just used uh, the teleports. And uh, 3,000 grapes, that is uh, 600,000 cooking experience, so very nice. Three dragon halberds, some snapdragons, like overall you can see the loot is of course incredibly good from Solra. No uniques though, should have uh, technically got one from the amount of kills that I got, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, I can't really complain when we already have a blowpipe, serp helm and a magic fang.
So I went ahead and unlocked everything I got from the Corrupted Gauntlet and some of the solo items like some Dragon Halberds. I of course actually kept one of them for myself and I put four of them into the storage. Also I did keep the battle staves because in the future you know you can instead of unlocking them for 4.2k for normal battle staves you can make them into a water battle staves or whatever. And they're going to unlock for like 9k. So I'm going to save those but 2 million more cash from that. And my cash stack is now over... 3.3 million honestly if i keep doing gauntlets quite a bit i should get this to 10 million in no time so that is very nice to see but for now i'm going to end the video here remember to like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see the future uploads and until the next time take care welcome to another group iron man episode in this one i am actually going to do corrupted gauntlet but not only that i am also going to try to get some total levels because i am now behind a bit on total levels i think most of us are getting closer to 1700 and i do want to keep up with the team on that front Though of course doug is uh, a bit behind but he is grinding hard it just completed the recipe for disaster so he should catch up in no time but uh, i have a couple of skills here that are a bit lower like fishing thieving crafting uh, rune crafting especially so yeah let's get some total levels and beside that of course do some corrupted gauntlet now and then have a decent amount of uncuts from the corrupted gauntlet so first level we're going to get is 60 crafting which is going to be broadcasted in the clan as well there we go 60 crafting and 1650 total level so that is going to be a lot of notifications for the clan I actually managed to squeeze in 61 crafting with the gems I had, but now I want to do some thieving, but before doing that, I feel like getting the rogue's outfit is definitely a good thing, so I guess, do I talk to this guy or this guy? I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, let's do the minigame and get the rogue's outfit. The rogue's den plugin is not defaulted into Runelite, so if you're going to do this, definitely download it. It is on the plugin hub. It literally tells you, even in text, what you're supposed to do. So first it says I have to stand on these tiles, and then after that I need to run to the next ones. If I don't do that, it is going to fail the thing. And also here, just open, and then here it says I have to run and open this one. Otherwise, I am also going to get caught by these traps, so... If you follow this, it is the most simple thing ever in the whole game. Is the first one going to be a success? Oh my god, it is not. Okay, so basically, oh my god, some agility experience as well. So basically, when you get to the end, it is kind of RNG, depending on your thieving level. If you're going to succeed, if you succeed, you can get one of the pieces, or you can get like a lockpick or something bad. But uh, yeah, this probably will take some time to get. We have a crate, let's see what we get. A piece of rogue's equipment, oh, so you actually get to choose, so that is perfect. That is now the first piece, I guess, mask. Perfect, one piece down. Oh my god, I'm so lucky. Uh, I actually only failed uh, one time, and that is the entire set completed. Let's go to the bank, the full rogue's outfit is now done. We can now do thieving getting double loot that is by the way what the set does this is actually giving you double loot every time you pickpocket so i'm going to be doing some blackjacking and i completed the feud quest here in just a second actually gives a lot of thieving experience as well i think 15k and that is going to be an entire level basically i think i'm like 8,000 off or something okay i guess that should be the feud quest completed 15k and that is 56 thieving as well but let's get blackjacking if we get this knockout here, this is going to be 60 thieving, first milestone level of this video, very nice. I am uh, going to do quite a bit of thieving in this video, so let's see how far we can get. Look at this, Nick actually told me he has finally finished all the dragon boots and the tridents, and I put my tridents back in the storage, so I'm going to take out one of each. That is going to be one for everyone in the team. So whenever we actually want to do raids, like Chambers of Seric in the future, we all have a tridents which is actually massive but look at this the climbing boots give two strength bonus and like no defensive and the dragon boots give four and decent defensive so that is super nice upgrade pretty big thieving level here because at 65 i can do mana fight thugs which is actually quite a bit better experience so let's fly through some levels so this is going to be a 70 thieving and mana fight thugs are actually insanely good experience but i am not really getting that much use of my rogue outfit because i don't think it duplicates the money when they are knocked out so i'm actually going to try some ardoin knights for a bit i do want to get the ardoin medium diary first the done because that gives a 10 percent pickpocket success rate 
inside of Ardoin, which of course the knights are. And I have to complete four quests for that. I basically only have to start the watchtower, but might as well complete it when I'm at it. So that's going to be four quests completed, and then I can be able to complete the diary. Here we go, the first quest completed, 9k crafting, 1k thieving for Hand in the Sand, which is actually a very useful quest outside of just the diary. Now I can access the uh, rune shop up in the uh, second floor. Let's go to, uh, I think it's this guy right here. Now he sells me a bunch of different runes. So this is a good way to get nature runes. Tower of Life completed, 210 quest points. I am getting a bit closer to the quest cape, but uh, still pretty far off because I have some big quests to do. Actually, I have 105 out of 150, so I'm not quite there yet. Actually, very nice to have the Watchtower quest completed, 4 quest points and a good magic experience, but as you can see, it also unlocks the Watchtower teleport, so I can actually use this now, and that is a pretty fast Yanil teleport. Why can't I use this? Oh, I guess I <laughs> have to learn it first. There we go, now I can use it, and this is a fast teleport to Yanil, instead of having to go through the Castle Wars teleport. And here we go, this is actually going to be the last quest I needed to do, the Enlightened Journey for some nice experience as well, 3k farming, nice. So we can actually complete the entire Medium Diary now. Now, as you can see in the chat, it says that you've got a 10% better chance of pickpocketing in... Ardoin. So if you complete the hard diary, you basically get that bonus for everywhere. So it is kind of good for like wires where you can get the bloodshot from pickpocketing. But uh, yeah, that is now 10% better pickpocketing in Ardoin for Ardoinites. Also, I'll put this on Erdor, I think. Or 7.5k. Well, I have done roughly an hour of this now, and even with the diary, I am getting 104,000 experience an hour, and apparently the money on this level is actually not really that much better than mana fight thugs anyways. So uh, I am going to stop doing this, but it's nice to have the diary done anyways for the future when I'm going to do Ardoin Knights on higher levels. I mean, it's not even close. Look at this, 190,000 experience an hour. It's almost double on the mana fight thugs, so uh, yeah, definitely doing this. 1 million thieving experience on the counter, and that is now 75 thieving. That means I've done like 20 thieving levels in this video, and I feel like that's quite enough. So I'm going to take a break from thieving now, maybe for this video. And uh, yeah, 20 total levels is very nice. I'm now at 1671. I'm going to wait for Dark World Order, who is currently using the Dragon Pickaxe to do some day old essence mining to train my runecrafting until he is done. I am going to probably AFK some fishing. Well, I ended up doing just two quick levels, but apparently I cannot use the Dragon Pickaxe because Nick has to use it for 68 mining from 64, and I don't want to wait that long, so I'm just going to do day alt mining with my rune pickaxe, which I have a lot of. Actually, it was not that bad. We have 10,000 day alt shards, and I actually got a mining level as well, so we're only one total level off another milestone, 1675, but let's actually get all the day alt essence for this, and then after that, I have to do the Lunar Diplomacy quest, because uh, if I'm doing the Oriana Altar, I need the teleport on the Lunar Spellbook for that. So uh, let's, uh, oh, I have to cover a charge like this. Because 11k, and that is now a lot of essence. And that is the Lunar Diplomacy quest completed. Actually, runecrafting experience for this as well, 5,000. And that is going to be one runecrafting level. It should be, yeah, pretty close to two. And that is the 1675 total level achieved as well. And uh, what I needed on this spellbook, actually, I can just change it uh, now, I guess. Let's uh, pray. And now we're on the Lunar spellbook, and it should be around... 71 this one oriana teleport it teleports you to the beginning where you basically bank pick up all the essence and you run to the altar teleport back again and repeat so when i can get my minigame teleport ready i'm going to teleport to soul wars and go and get my medium pouch from the abyss but until then i just wanted to try and see how much one inventory with just a small pouch is going to be in runecrafting experience 441 uh that did not include the pouch as well, so 506 in one run. And then I basically just teleport with this one to the beginning, run to the bank as well. You can see everyone is doing that. And also when the pouches degrade, I have the NPC contact, can talk to the Dark Mage and basically repair the pouches this way, instead of having to go all the way to the Abyss. Yeah, because I was on the Lunar Spellbook, I had to wait for my minigame teleport, but that is the medium pouch. So now I can start training this a bit more efficiently. 
quite an important milestone. 50 runecrafting incoming here and that means I can now actually get a large pouch. So I have to go over to the abyss again and kill some monsters to get it. There it is, the large pouch that took a bit actually. I had to kill like 60 monsters maybe, so not terrible but a while. And this is where I'm going to stop doing runecrafting for this video. Let's craft these runes. I think I've done 6,000 essence and apparently I forgot to repair the pouch. But that is 55 runecrafting. And it went pretty fast, I would say. It's not that bad. But uh, I am now 1689 total. But there is something now that I want to do because I have the Lunar Spellbook. And that is unlock Humidify. Because I have 3000 grapes in the bank. Which is uh, equal to 600,000 cooking experience if I use them on jugs of water. And using the Humidify spell with it is... Can you guys hear this? That's a plane. Holy... <laughs> Hey, can I record please? But uh, yeah, that is going to speed up uh, filling the jugs of water by a lot. So I'm going to do the Dream Mentor quest. So I'm going to be doing the boss fight now for Dream Mentor. And this boss right here, the Inadequacy, is actually the by far best boss to have unlocked in the Nightmare Zone. So actually doing this is a massive thing for the account. Whenever I want to imbue anything from the Nightmare Zone, having this actually just boosts the points by a lot. I think the first time on my account, my main account, I didn't have this. I got like 400k, 500k points an hour with really good stats. After I got this, I got a million. So it, it is just crazy. It's super good. But that is the Dream Mentor completed, new Lunar Spells is now unlocked, and 15k hit points, 10k magic, and a Dreamy Lamp, which is actually a combat lamp that I can't actually use on Prayer, I'm pretty sure, so let's see what we can use it on. Okay, I'm just going to put it on hit points, I think that's fine. And that is 15k hit points experience. So now to show off the Humidify spell, look at this, I can just click this with a full inventory of jugs. Wait a second, and they are now all jugs of water. So that's going to speed up the process a lot, shouldn't take that long to get 3000. And that is all the wines completed, 3000 unfermented wines, 5 seconds to see these total levels coming in. How many are we going to get? 600,000 cooking experience for 6 total levels, only 5 away from 1700 now. We have made some nice total level gains in this video. Honestly, I wanted to get 1700 for the video, but getting 5 total levels is just going to take too long and I will have to postpone the video. But I did actually promise some corrupted gauntlet in the beginning of this video, so I'm going to do a couple of them. And uh, let's see if we can get lucky and get the first crystal seed for the account. And the first chest is of course number 51 for the account. Let's see what we can get. And that is an average drop, unfortunately. <laughs> oh my god, there's no way I missed it! I got a crystal weapon seed. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. But uh, that is terrible. It is the worst seed you can get. It is made to use the crystal bow and crystal shield, which you can just buy anyways. So that basically just saved me like, what, 700k if I want to buy the bow in the future? Which is okay, I guess, but the armor seed is the really good one. To compare it in value on the main game, the armor seed is actually like 11 million. So it is quite a difference. Meanwhile, I failed and got a Mithril Fall Helmet. This guy gets an enhanced crystal weapon seed. That's what I want. That's the one in 400 that gives the bow of Theradinan. Oh, no way, dude. Ah, uh, another crystal weapon seed. The worst one I can get. I'm clearly feeling that this is not my day. I died twice before actually getting the fifth kill here and also getting unlucky with the weapon seeds. This is going to be the last chest I open. Please be something nice. And it is not. But uh, 55 KC done, more than halfway towards that 100 mark. And I guess we got some stuff for the collection log. Does it actually show for the collection log? I need to check that. I'm not sure it does the gauntlet and yeah okay it does so that is nice at least that is an unlock but this is where i'm going to end the video if you're wondering i have 651 crystal shards for whenever we do get that bow of theradin which is going to be the dream when i can actually have that but for now this will be the end of this video hope you guys did enjoy it remember to like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see when i post new content you can also click any of the annotations on the screen right now videos playlists whatever you want to do and until next time, guys, take care. <gasps> what?
No way! Oh, I thought it was an enhanced seed. Oh my god, I got two seeds in one chest. And then one of them is the armor seed, 11 million. Oh my god, finally, on 71 KC, we get something good from the gauntlet. So when I make the crystal helmet, it is going to be untradeable. And I was actually wondering, should I keep this and let my teammates have it for when someone else gets the bow, Ferradinen or something like that. But the thing is, they do not have the crystal shards. And uh, I have like 700 of them or something. And uh, the helmet is not really usable if you don't have any crystal shards. So I might as well just make it by talking to Kowena and she is going to take some of the crystal shards to make the helmet. So that is now a crystal helmet on the account. And overall you need 6 armor seeds for the full set, which is a super good set. If you have the entire set, the crystal weaponry, including the bow of Ferradinan, gets 30% more accuracy and 15% more damage. So having uh, the full crystal set is going to be essential to use the bow of Ferradinan. But yes, I am indeed doing some Corrupted Gauntlet to begin this video. I have done 20 so far and only got one good drop. Let's see what we get for 75 and some alky balls as usual. But by the way, I'm basically just instantly alking all the things that I get. And so far I've got 2.4 million, which is definitely not bad. Like, honestly, I've been doing Corrupted Gauntlet a bit now and then, and I've stacked up the KC, you know, casually, but I do actually really want to just hard grind it out. Of course, I can't really guarantee that I'm going to get, like, any good items, because I could be spending, like, 100 hours here and not even get much at all. But I do want to spend most of this video doing the Corrupted Gauntlet to try and get as many items as I can, and I'm currently at 78 KC. Look at that, a new personal best on a milestone. 80 chests means I'm still improving, which is very nice, for some room play bodies. <gasps> no fucking way! There's no way! The young left pet! This is so cool, I love this pet! 1 in 800 drop rates, that's double the drop rates. Of an enhanced weapon seed. Oh my god, I have the pet! I love this pet, you can transform it, look at this, it's red now. Oh my god, no way! Now if you're wondering, the pet is 1 in 800 drop rate from Corrupted Gauntlet, and the enhanced weapon seed, which is uh, what I really want, is 1 in 400. So this is like getting two of those. So I am going to have to say I'm pretty happy though, even uh, if it's not the perfect item. I'm going to ensure it, 500k. So now even if I die with this, it is going to be uh, reclaimable from Probita. But uh, yeah, I would rather have got an enhanced weapon seed, but can't really complain. Oh, no, come on. I have so many of these now. I think I have like four banked. Imagine if they were all armor seeds. They're the same drop rate as well. 90 KC, and after this we're actually going to go as a 4-man, I think. We're going all of us except Max Nick, so this is actually going to be the first time we have Doug in group bossing. We're going to do some Dagonoth Kings, so some highlights of that will be after this if we manage to get something. But chest number 90 is going to be just some normal Archibalds. But look! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! What will happen? Grand Knight oh, look, look at this! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is what an absolute chat looks like. Oh, bro, it's the green dragon bot. <laughs> oh, dragon oh, X. Oh, let's go, let's go. Oh, okay. That took a while. That took a while. I oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? That's, That's like back to back. back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wait, how many do oh, we have? Oh. We have four, four now. now. Four, Just so one more. Pissering. Oh, yeah. finally. One, one. That's actually finally. not bad, right? That's not bad. The damn ring. <laughs> it's pretty good for... Where would it even be good at, actually? I think if you use that and imbue it for, like, bursting, maybe? No. You no. Do, no. do Zenite ring over it because of the, uh, the oh. prayer bonus. Oh, oh. the final act. Yeah. Nice. Hell yeah, let's go. Final act. Oh, oh finally. Oh let's my go. god. Bro, I was just go. chilling, uh, oh, looking at my table and stuff. Finally. I was like, hey. oh, oh, hey, we I'm got happy. it. Hey, it's off my log as well, at least. <laughs> yes. 
the gauntlet master achievement which is 100 runs it is of course 99 corrupted ones but one normal after this it is going to be 100 corrupted though let's see what we get for 99 some alky balls let's see if we can get something good for a run a 100 of the corrupted gauntlet though there we go that is the 100 mark achieved and we started on i think 55 in this video so we have almost doubled our kc let's see what we get oh my god we actually got an armor seed on 100 that is so nice unfortunately i can't really use this for anything yet uh but when i do get another one i can actually make the legs the legs cost two and the chest cost three awesome to have two oh there we go yes okay second armor seed finally we can now make the legs Ah, oh, nice! I have the helm and the legs now, which is very nice bonus for even my crystal bow. Far off having the levels to make them myself, so let's pay some crystal shards for her to make it for me. There we go, that is the leggings completed, and they are of course ranged legs. All the crystal armor is basically ranged gear. That also gives accuracy and damage to using crystal weapons. Of course, extremely strong with the bow ferradin, but also works for the crystal bow. So having both of these is not that bad. Another very nice thing is that from doing gauntlets, I have now reached 11 million cash. Basically all of it from the gauntlet. And uh, I also have 720 crystal shards. I got some alkyball still. And look at these uncuts. That's a good amount of crafting experience whenever I want it. And that is 125 Corrupted Gauntlet completions, and I am going to go over here. This is the total amount of runs I've done, 92, but of course some of them are fails. Uh, so yeah, overall 92 runs. That is a lot of time spent in the Corrupted Gauntlet, but this will be the last one I do for this video. Let's see what the last loot is going to be. It is nothing special, unfortunately. But I'm very happy with the progress. I mean, I got the pet. I'm going to drop that right there. Metamorphosis looks so nice. Got the crystal helmet and the crystal legs. Which means I am done with half of the armor seeds I need. The helmet was one, the legs is two, and the chest is three. So uh, we only need the bow ferradinen, which is of course the very rare item, the insanely good ranged weapon, and then the crystal chest, and I am officially done with the gauntlet. Two things I want to quickly mention. The first thing is that the Christmas event is out, and I'm going to complete that, and we can check the rewards for it. The second thing is that the Frozen Door is a mini quest that was released also with the Christmas event, which is actually the pre-quest for Nex. Which is very exciting. And this is the same thing you kind of have to do for RuneScape 3. Which is you have to collect four key pieces from Armadil Leader. Oh, Armadillion Leader? Is that from the boss? That's interesting. If you have to kill the bosses for it. Because in RS3 you only have to kill the minions. Until they drop the key pieces. And you need all the four key pieces to make the frozen key. Which allows you to access next. But it says Leader. So might have to go and kill the actual bosses. The Christmas event is done and I got this a big present so let's see what I get. I am expecting actually to get all of the Christmas items from all the events previously because I've done none. So let's see what we're going to get. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this inventory. That is so many items and also uh oh my god. Let's wear this. That's a nice that's like a double Santa hat. And what is this? A wieldable present. We got... This is a traditional... Oh my god! That's a morphing Santa. Or not Santa, a snowman. Let's look at these pieces. That's a nice outfit. That's a skiller outfit right there with a beer belly, I guess. Uh, goblin decorations. Not really sure what that is. Fill the decorations from the goblins so you can use furniture in my house. Okay, nice. That's pretty cool. This is the best one, though. The gnome shield transform. Oh, it's just different colors. Yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. And this is a party hat with a Santa hat inside of it. So I was thinking about what to do now. And I actually want to try some solo Saradomen. Of course, getting a drop there is pretty damn hard. But uh, I kind of want to try it with the ranged and Serp helmet. And, you know, rune crossbow with ruby bolts and diamond bolts. We have a bunch of them. So I got myself three ecumenical keys. And uh, let's see how I do. 
Let's see how many kills I can get in one trip. I have 8kc right now and the setup I'm using is a range setup with really high range to defense because I'm going to be, uh, you know, praying mage, kiting the boss and taking hits from Bree from the ranged hits. Of course, I will have quite a bit higher than 177 because I can't equip these items just yet, which together is 88 more range defense. So just eight, add 88 to this because uh, if I equip them, I'm going to be attacked by the minions. But yeah. Let's see how this goes. The first kill of the trip. Let's see how this goes. That didn't take too many supplies. And of course we get the frozen key piece as well. There it is. As I was talking about before. And uh, that is one of the four pieces I need to go to next. So it seems like it has 100% drop rate. Which is very good to know. Well this seems like the end of the trip. I have no more food. And uh, guess how many kills I got. I got a total of two kills, but I do feel like I could have done better. I think I took some hits from the boss and uh, yeah, I'm going to try again and see if we can do better. All right, that's definitely an improvement. That was four kills on that trip, got to 14 KC. Of course, I know that this is not really that efficient because if we would group do this, it would be a lot better. But I really just wanted to try and see how it would be solo. Maybe it wouldn't be that bad. But yeah, four kills per trip is definitely not worth it. So I'm just going to stop right here. Something I was made aware of recently is that you can actually turn these crystal weapon seeds, which are kind of useless for me, into crystal acorns if you go to Pennat in Priftenas. So if I talk to him, I should be able to turn them in. Yes. Offer crystal weapon seed. Three of them. I really don't need them. And then yes, don't ask again. And that is three crystal acorns. I planted the first crystal tree of the account and I had to get some garden pies to be able to do that and I'm going to add some ultra compost to it because depending on what compost you use the more crystal shards you're going to get. I should be getting around 14 to 16 with ultra compost which is not bad which means that all of these three acorns is basically like 45 crystal shards which is pretty nice. I mean getting them is kind of hard. Um, the corrupted gauntlet gives like 6 to 8 per completion so it's like 2 completions in one tree. So between doing gauntlets, I've been doing some fishing now and then, and that is 65 fishing. I think I started with 61 before this video, and that is just really to raise my total levels. I actually recently got 1700, but I got that in the middle of a gauntlet run from 85 hit points, but uh, yeah. I want to get to 70 baseline, so that is one I have to get up. But that is going to do it for this video. The next one will, of course, have some Corrupted Gauntlet in it as well. But we are planning on doing some Chambers of Seric now that we have Tridents. So that is probably going to be included in the next video as well. So the next one is going to be a banger, hopefully. But until next time, guys, remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see future content. Click any of the videos on the screen right now or playlist if you want to see videos right away. And until next time, guys, take care. Hey, Evo, I'll go mine like uh, until Amethyst was Easy. like level 90 mining, I think. Oh, we oh, got a task. Yeah, master task. <laughs> <laughs> Easy <laughs> carry, dude. Easy carry. Do that. Oh that my sense. god, we just destroyed this guy. Holy Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The difference between two to pe three people. <laughs> that is so <laughs> easy. Wow. There we go. You're gonna pick up the seeds? Uh, only seeds you need to pick up our boot shoot. Uh, actually, we do need to mix. We need to pick up all three for the for this raid. This girl, or just someone threw meat on that tree, or what's going I, on? Should be the last time. I have no clue. <laughs> it must be the lore. Someone. Maybe. The lore. <laughs> the meat well, tree lore. I mean, Cash every boss, nothing. every boss drops a uh, drops a book, so you can read it. Maybe oh, there's lore yeah. in the meat tree. Yeah, now it's not eating. I think. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's so not dying now. Do we still play ranged? Yeah, still play ranged against. This. Oh, don't, never be. Don't be in melee range. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can hit oh, really hard through prayers. I remember that. Oh, go to the tree. Uh, oh, now she is unlucky. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So it, sometimes, oh, we both hit a oh! Ruby. Oh, triple. <laughs> triple ruby. I've never seen that. Wait, can we just bypass and kill? Before tree. Yeah, I think I think I think we can. Oh, I I, I got chance. I got chance. Come on, kill it. Oh, it's dead. I think. No, one more. Yeah, hit. yeah it won't. What the? Is it Wait, people in chat? Oh my oh, god. This is far north or south as possible. I'll let you know. If you're on the wrong tile. Oh, but uh, you gotta tell me when to move. I don't know. I have the tiles mod, but I actually don't know when to move. When it's facing you. So it's facing you. So swap tile. 
Well, well I I'm not support. Yep, you're good. It's facing, now move. Uh, Mage Hand is dead now. Alright, then you just come to melee. Hold my trusty halberd. I hit like a 70 something BGS. Oh my god, your Hull specs, dude, are crazy. <laughs> yeah, you should you should have no problem with accuracy. I hit like a 7. I can. I have to watch the VOD back later, but it was like a 74 BGS or something stupid. I'm coming to you. I'll come to you. Okay. okay. <laughs> back back oh, okay, I'll move. Yeah, 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 you have a lot of time as long as you communicate. Spike's happening right now. Boom. Oh, oh, do you have to see how he. Oh, that's smart. Is that <laughs> We're all three attacking it though, so it should be fun. Yep. Wait, what What do you no, play you now? Keep, keep Range or? Uh, whatever it's using. Mage right now. And Dovidus, oh, you just right. keep running. If it's st at, turn to the middle, just go towards one side. Uh, along, you still have to go on your side. Oh, okay. Still have to stay on the Wait, side. do I still have to do the same thing that I did? Yes, 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 yes. Just to, Okay, okay. Just, it doesn't have to be between those two tiles though. It can be, uh, how do I explain it? Uh, like, like more and more to the middle if you need to. Yes, 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 yes. Just make sure you're never on the middle exactly tile. Okay, I have no food left. Me either. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's so close. Out. Oh. oh, it's so close. I'm gonna try not to die. I don't have much food Dovidus left. Dovidus can bring supplies in for you. Dovidus can bring in supplies for you. Running. Oh my god. Oh. It's One, 63 two, three, four, HP. Oh, come on. Take this. I'm gonna try. I'm running. I'll bring soon. I'm climbing down. Oh my god, again, are you kidding me? I'm taking the one in the back. I'm dead. Okay, oh, I'm also dead, bunch. probably. Pick up supplies if you can. Trying to take them before I die, but... Yeah, I think I'm fine. Just check Breeze. We'll, we'll, are you kidding me? Go. Another heal. Don't worry about the heal too much, just worry about staying alive. 7 <laughs> HP! Rubius. Ruby yes, there you go. I have Titan. No. Um, no uh, purple for me. Yeah. No. Okay. Nah, no purple. Uh, what do you want to get points though? What do you want to yeah. get points? That's actually really, really good. Obviously, yeah, well, it could have been a little better if we didn't die at the end. I got What's forty the total that you get to draw. Uh, how many points average until you get a drop? Yeah. Yeah. Eight hundred and thirty-five k. Okay. Okay. There's like 1 in 20 chance now we had. Something like that. After that, I want to do some Slayer. So let's see what the first task is going to be from Duradel. The first one. Suquas. Are you kidding me? You know what? I'm getting the proselyte gear. I want to save prey potions. Had to become a female for this. And this is the recruitment drive completed. One of the three quests needed for proselyte. And uh, this is the wanted quest completed. 5000 slayer experience as well. Convenient as I want to train some slayer. And lastly, this is the Slug Menace quest completed. The reason why I really wanted to get the Proselyte is because for basically every melee task, I will have a lot higher prayer bonus than what I had before. I was using Monk Robes, so this is going to be quite a difference. So this is my gear. Look at the prayer bonus I'm going to drink to full, and that lasts six and a half minutes. The full prayer while praying only protect from melee, and I have a prayer bonus of 26, so that's not bad. Milestone task incoming on some Dagonal from of course Konar 60 tasks for 90 points I think I'm going to be buying superiors when I get a bit more points so if I get a bad one I can skip because I have so much money now from the gauntlet, I am going to put in 8 million in the storage and this is actually going mostly to people's onyxes for for example amulet of fury to dog and also I think uh, some senai jewelry for dovidas like a ring of suffering and also the rest of the money, which is going to be like 3-4 million, is just to anyone who needs the money. By the way, I have a Dagonoth task right now, and I was thinking about maybe going to solo some Dagonoth kings. So let's see if we can get that done. You know, on a female, the crystal legs actually looks kind of like uh, the budget version of Armadale chain skirts, which is kind of cool because it, both of them are ranged gear, this is just a bit worse. Because of how Dagonoth Kings work, I am able to kill all of them. I don't have to only kill Rex, I can, you know, save spot this one, the other one spawned right now, but it's not being aggroed because I have so long range with a crystal bow. 
Well, that is the first drop, a dragon axe, actually not really what we wanted at all. I guess it's actually not useless, we already have five dragon axes, but it's not useless because if we get these infernal stones or whatever they're called, the smoldering stones, they actually consume the axe, so having more of them is not bad. And that is 70 Slayer achieved, you can see it in the chat, unfortunately the message got uh, removed right away from the spinal lips, but uh, yeah, nice achievement. Okay, well, another dragon axe on the third trip, I think. I actually died one time, so that was kind of unfortunate. But uh, other than that, the trips have been going good, but uh, I would love to see some rings at this point. Hey, that is not a ring, but Mud Battle Staff is definitely not bad. I'm pretty sure there are some uses for that on the uh, Lunar Spellbook. I already know we're getting uh, right here. Fir first call, that's not gonna be wrong. I believe, man. Right. Oh my- are Oh you no! <laughs> <laughs> no way! No. That's the, the wrong I ring! You had it. No. Pretty much done with my diagonal task, but uh, my crystal tree has grown for 13k farming experience and I need to get an axe. I completely forgot about that. Whoops. There we go. So let's see how many crystal shards we're going to get. Should be like 14 to 16. 15, yeah, so right in the middle. That's not bad. A very nice task for superiors. 177 dust devils. So I'm actually going to go ahead now. I have 200 points. I will end up on 50 points. But that is now bigger and badder unlocked. So let's see if we can get some superiors. And there it is. The choke devil. The first superior for the account. Imagine if I would get an imbued heart on the first one. Let's see what we get. And the drop is going to be a totem base, so nothing really. But there's always a next time. No more superiors that task, unfortunately. But I just quickly want to say that if you're enjoying the video, remember to like it. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. Only 33% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So I would greatly appreciate if you hit that button if you're enjoying the content. Oh my god, I got a worm task, and actually, by the way, the crystal bow with the crystal legs is a really nice DPS with the Slayer Helmet. You can see that here. I think it's actually better than the blowpipe. I might be wrong, but I feel like it's very close to it, if not better. But I got a superior on the first kill. So let's see what we get from this one. 71 Slayer, but uh, nothing too great otherwise. Did manage to pick up a hard casket from that task. Let's see what we're going to get from this one. And we get collection log item, but only dig side teleports. But I feel like two Slayer levels is quite enough for this video. I just want to work on it casually, meanwhile also doing some corrupted gauntlet. So it is time for that. I ended my last video at 125 KC. So let's see what we can reach in this one. Oi! Nine chests in, and we get a crystal armor seed. That is so nice to see. I only need two more to be able to make the full crystal armor set, which is uh, the last part is the plate body, so very nice to see that. 20 kills in overall. Let's see what we get for this one. I think I want to go all the way to 150, so five more after this one, and we get some runes. But uh, yeah, really happy with that armor seed. And that is Corrupted Gauntlet. Grand Master for 150 kills, which is a Grand Master task, of course, very nice. A bit of a quick segment, I guess, in this video on the gauntlet, but uh, 25 kills takes a while. But let's see what we get for the last chest. We get some Alkaballs, as usual. So now, before we end the video, I have two important messages to say. The first one is that I have heard a lot of comments asking me to show a full gauntlet run, and I didn't want to do that in the actual video. So what I did instead is that there will be an unlisted video of an entire run of me telling me why I do the different things and what I do in a full corrupted gauntlet clear. So if you want to see that, the link to that will be in the description. And the second thing is... We have talked a lot in the team and we felt like we haven't really been doing enough group content and next is being released kind of soon so we are actually planning on doing a lot of group content in the future so if that is something you enjoy then that is going to be something you're going to get quite a lot of I think my goals is going to be group bossing as much as possible with the team and at the same time work on corrupted gauntlet and maybe some skilling goals some minor goals as well on the side so that is probably going to be the future of this series but for now I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see the future uploads. You can also click any of the videos on the screen right now if you want to see content right away. And until next time, guys, take care. That doesn't sound, like that sound appetizing.
Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking. What? It's just. Wait, it's yeah. just oh, a oh, oh, oh my god. There we go. Dude, how have we only got hilts, man? <laughs> only <laughs> hilts. Yeah, wow. Up, up, yeah, yeah, one more. Three hilts. Oh, hill. oh my Don't god. Don't you also have all three of them in wow. the collection log? <laughs> yes, I have three hilts in my collection log. <laughs> what? Yo. Was that the one? I don't even yep, know. That's the one we need. That's hey. the one we need. Oh, we need that. Okay, perfect. Nice. Yeah. So one yeah, more I, and we get oh. another BGS, right? What? Chaos, Chaos Talisman. What is that curse <laughs> to drop? Hey, I guess you're underground, right? That thing. Oh, no. That has to be rare. Yeah, we're looking at a 1,667. One, 1, wow. There's a hold exactly. What? Oh, no. Remember, more are you reason. kidding me? Even more? The rune arrows, I've <laughs> never seen that. I'm already on the drop table. Uh, okay, the rune arrow is at least more common than the... Uh, how, how rare? It's a 1 in 1,000, pretty much. Oh exactly. my god, stop it. Oh, Jesus. God, there goes your... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hit really big BGS. Oh! oh teleport! <laughs> just run, just run, just run forever. Oi. Run forever. Yeah, Goodbye. Bye. You can buy my friends. Bye. bye. Who is it? Okay, it's... it's... God damn it. Doug. Not me. It's Doug again. It's, it's always Doug. Doug. I hit really good though. I hit like 93 BGS. So easy. Very nice. There we go. And the minions quit. Uh, to the mage. Rune oh, pickaxe. Oh. Oh. oh no. I teleported right when I got hit there. <laughs> this is a disaster. <laughs> right. I was going to teleport We've done, a, anyway, we've done so. a lot of time though. So probably yeah. a good place to uh, wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. I I have, I have no prayer left. I think we did like what 150 kills or something. Yeah, yeah, we put a, we put a good lot into uh, it. So that was 119, 68. So I did. I did like 40. 51, 51 from me, and then yeah, yeah. definitely over 100. Pretty happy with that bandle strip, but tomorrow we are actually going over to Siliana, and for that you need ecumenical keys. I only have one, so I'm just going to go ahead right now when everyone is offline and get those keys ready for tomorrow. There is the first key on the ground, only one more to go. And that is a back-to-back. -back. I actually got it right away after. That was overall like 12 imps, I think. Now, meanwhile, waiting for the Siliana trip, which is going to be happening today in a few hours, I'm going to be doing a couple of Corrupted Gauntlet runs. I've already done five, but I got nothing too interesting so far. So overall, got 10 chests in. This is 160 and five after the recording. We are now going to Siliana. So meanwhile, I'm waiting for everyone to get ready. By the way, Doggy could not join us today. He's watching the new Spider-Man movie in the cinema, so I uh, hope he enjoys that. But why we want to do Sara mainly is to get Armadale Crossbow, because uh, Nick needs that for the Inferno, as well as when Nyx is released, you need the Armadale Crossbow to be able to get the Saros Crossbow or whatever Sarite Crossbow. If we would get that drop, you need to kind of sacrifice the Armadale Crossbow to be able to use it. Oh, Ooh, oh, that's, that's the, the one. one! That's the one! That's the one! There's the one? Yep, yes. it is. Yes. It is. We, have a big, we have two BGSs. Awesome, holy shit. That was fast. That was really fast. It's extremely fast. I I actually got some inspiration from all the snake grass we're getting from this boss. Uh, so look in Discord for a sec. Nice looking. <laughs> is that what you're doing on the side while waiting? <laughs> yeah. The spawn time is long, you know, so I gotta do something. <laughs> well, you actually just... Okay. That's good, that's good, I like that. It's time to post this on, on Reddit. Come on. <laughs> Come on, this last kill has to be something. Please. 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 No! Maybe we get a god search on from these minions. Now, unfortunately, as you saw, we got nothing too interesting this time from Sarah Domin, but we are going back to Bandos tomorrow, I do believe. Maybe we will change the plans, we're not sure quite yet. But it is back to Gauntlet for me, so let's see what we can get this time. Oh, yes, yes, there we go, that is an armor seed. Only need one more for the full crystal armor, that is so nice. No way! There's no way! There's no way! Oh my god, that is the Bo Faradinan! No way! I actually got it! 164kc! Holy shit! Oh my god, dude. I, this is so cliche to say, but I'm actually shaking. I actually got the seed! Holy shit! If I get one more armor seed, I am... It's insane! <laughs> I still can't believe that. That is... Oh, wow, that is so insanely lucky. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, I guess I'm going to use this on her, 
And she is going to craft it for me. Yes, I want the bow Feraldina. And I'm not sure how many crystal shards this is going to take, but no one is really uh, that close to being able to make it. 100, I guess that was. Or 150, I think. So that's not that bad because I'm going to be able to get a lot of them. How many charges does it start off with? It starts off with 10,000. Okay, that's a lot of charges. Look at the stats on this. 28 range strength and 28 ranged accuracy over the crystal bow. And it does scale with the crystal armor. It gets increased by the crystal armor, I should say. So if I get the last crystal armor seed, which I'm going to keep going for, I am going to do the most insane DPS out of the whole team. Actually, by the way, now that I have that, I realized I finished the entire log on 164kc. I did another one, that's why it's 165. But uh, yeah, that is uh, quite lucky, I would say. And it's a good place to get lucky at because this is pretty tedious to do. And I hit 170 kill count and this is where I'm going to stop. Of course, I want the last armor seed, but I might do that for the next video or maybe later on in the video, not quite sure. But I do want to try out the bow. I'm going to do some slayer. I actually have a worm task right now, which is perfect. You do range them. So last time I used the crystal bow, this time the bow Feradina. So let's see how it works. All right, let's try this out. Range pot, prey eagle eye. First hit is a hit. 15. That's a pretty good one. 26. Hitting very consistently. 17. This is like a 24. Oh my god. Dad, yeah, this is... This is a very nice bow to have for uh, Slayer and overall just PVMing. This is going to be uh, beautiful for my ranged experience and uh, all the future bossing. So the max hit I've seen so far with Slayer Helmet of course, but also lacking the Crystal Chest is 36. Which is ridiculously high because I am not using Rigor, I'm just using Eagle Eye. So if I had the Crystal Body, I was on a Slayer task and I had Rigor, I would assume my max hit just on a guesstimate would be like 42, which is ridiculously high. Something I would really like to get is Like a Boss. It's 200 points and it allows Duradel, Conar and Neve to assign boss monsters. And I think you can choose between like 3 and 35 kills. So if I would get like Bandos or something or whatever boss that we want to do, having a Slayer Helmet on that with the Bow of Feradinan is going to be so nice DPS. But let's see what we get for task 67. Trolls, uh, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'll probably melee it though, I don't want to use too many crystal shards. Now, before we do the troll task, I actually got a hard clue scroll. I want to do as many of them as possible, as we still need some god items, like the god dehyde bodies and the chaps and stuff like that, which is very nice. But I need the blue dehyde van braces, and you need 66 crafting for that, so I had to make a mushroom pie, which boosts crafting by 4. I'm actually very close to 63 already, but uh, I'm going to get the uh, blue dehyde here, and I'm going to make the van braces, and we should be able to complete the clue scroll. There it is. Let's see if the luck can continue after the bow Feradinan in hard clues. Ah, armable page one, unholy blessing. Definitely not a bad clue scroll. Another hard clue I got from a black demon task. Let's see what we get from this one. That's a lot of alkyballs. So I've never actually done an elf task in my entire life. I always just skip them, but I thought I might try them in the dungeon in Priftenas. And uh, wow, they are dropping a lot of these crystal teleport seeds. I don't even know why you would want so many of them. They have a drop rate of the, like 1 in 5, I think. Can you grind them down for like shards or something? I'm not sure what you would use so many for. We are setting up to go to Bandos and I am going to run a small little trick on my teammates. I'm going to be bringing the crystal bow for the first kills, swap to the bow for in a mid-trip and see the reaction when they notice it. I haven't told any of my teammates about it, so this should be fun. As a group. Oh. Fastest group I am, Menko. Alright, let's get it. No! Ooh, that was close. Well, it hit 23, but... I mean, yeah. 26. You can also maybe drink up if you're missing prayer or anything. Wait, 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 wait. A bad RNG. Wait, Ooh, is that... 17. Uh, you have what? to get you have to get ready. That's not a bofa. That oh, is not a bofa. bofa. That is a bofa. Get that quiet. Wait, I don't. Did you get bofa? Huh? You got bofa. When did you get a bofa? <laughs> <laughs> get that quiet, mate. No, this is, this is not a bofa. It's a crystal bow. 
Congrats, oh, dude. No. dude <laughs> so wait, so no one knew? I was like, what did no, I miss? He, no, he, like... just, he just wore it. He's, he's <laughs> did you get it early this morning when like, no one was yes, online? Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> Bandos boots, are you spares. kidding me? Hey, it's not yeah. bad. It's yeah, not bad. it's not bad, I guess. We need one clues. So, yeah, pretty cool. Nice out there for Finally Masters. Finally do my clue scroll on my bank. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, you oh, still have that, don't you? The master yeah. clue is gonna be third age, so we basically got a third age drop right there. True. Exactly. No, five. we would have, but then alone called it, so you know. No. How <laughs> He's destroyed it now. <laughs> Think for your own mental. Just tell yourself you're gonna do oh, five hundred regardless of. Man. Oh wait, my what? god. That was. Oh. <laughs> you, literally, you literally had like one HP. Oh, did you nearly die? Did. I didn't notice. <laughs> oh yeah, twice also. Oh I my god. Aid Bru. I don't think you can tick it with Bruce. I actually don't know. But you can. You can. I'm not. Good luck in the beginning. Are you? Oh my god. <laughs> nice. I do not get luck in the beginning. <laughs> I got lucky now, baby. Dragon Med Helm. Oh my god. Nice. So we are now over 300 KC on Bandos and we have no tassets and no chest plate but we can't really complain with Bandos boots and three Bandos hilts. But now I am actually going to go to Chambers of Seric with Max Nick. So we ended up doing one raid and that was kind of the goal. We just wanted one clear together to get some practice in and uh, I died twice and I think Nick died zero or one times. So I'm not really sure I don't remember exactly but I have to say that both my deaths were kind of unfortunate i mean i could have avoided both of them if i wasn't bad at raids but um the first death was i got targeted by one of those things that turns off your prayer and they were kind of in the same tile so i didn't really see which one was on me and i also at the same time got teleported to nick where you take damage depending on the range away from each other so i died there and the second time i got uh, comboed by two exploding crystals for 30 30 but uh, we did got get nothing uh, we didn't get a purple or anything but I actually got this, the Ancient Tablet, which allows me now to teleport right to the Chambers of Zeric on the Zeric's Talisman, which is not bad because it's very close to our bank and for future raids it's uh, very convenient. Now also during that raid I had a discussion with Max Nick about maybe that I should be destroying the crystal helmet, which is going to basically lose me 20 crystal shards, which is not that bad. Because when you destroy it, you get no crystal shards back, and it currently has 2,000 charges, which is equal to 22 crystal shards in this case. But if I do that, I actually get the armor seed back. And if I have three of them, I can make the chest plate, which is actually super nice if I would use that with the slayer helmet, because I wouldn't be using the crystal helm anyways with the slayer helmet. And on top of that, the crystal body gives a lot more stats than the crystal helmet does for the crystal weaponry, like the uh, damage bonus and accuracy bonus. So overall, I would get more out of it if I would actually just revert this crystal helmet, and whenever in the future I get another crystal armor seed, I can make the helmet again. And I only really lose 20 crystal shards from doing this, so I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to revert this, yes, dismantle it, and that is the armor seed back. And now, if I go here, and I talk to her, she can make the crystal body for me, and that is going to cost a lot of shards, like, what, 200 or something? But now I actually have the body, which gives, like, crazy stats. It's like, if I remember correctly, it's like 7.5% more damage with the bow of Ferradinan, and 15% accuracy. Or something crazy like that, so it's definitely a lot better than the helmet that gives, like, 2.5% damage and 5% accuracy. Okay, so I've tried the bow Ferradin with the crystal body and the legs, plus the Slayer Helmet, plus the Anguish that I actually got to use now. And uh, my max hit before all of these things was 36, as you guys saw earlier in the video. My max hit I've seen since making the crystal body and using the Anguish was 42. So my max hit raised by a lot, and I can see that my accuracy and the consistency of the high hits is really good. Just because of that, I hit a 5. Oh, look at this. 40 hit right there. Yeah, this is going to be so nice for slaying. And that should be also 72 slayer. Very nice. 
But now to end the video I am going to spend all of my points on the like a boss unlock which I was talking about earlier in the video. I did pick up a task which was Calphites to make sure I did not get like steel dragons or something right away after spending all my points. So that is now the ability to get bosses as a task which is going to be very nice for the future. But that is going to do it for this video, hope you guys did enjoy it, and uh, have a Merry Christmas to you guys who do celebrate it if I do not post a video before then, and until next time guys, take care. Welcome to another Group Iron Man episode, in the last one of course I got the crystal armor completed except for the helmet, I swapped the helmet to the chest plate, and we got the bow of Feraldinan. Now, you can actually pay 2000 crystal shards to make the bow of Feraldinan undegradable, it doesn't take any crystal shards to use anymore, but that is a lot of crystal shards, and I currently only have roughly 600 of them, so what I'm going to start off this video by doing is Solcano masses and just farm a lot of crystal shards and also some decent smithing supplies. So when doing Salcano masses, the kills are extremely fast and you really only need to get your minimal stats in, which is like 50 health done and 50 damage to the shields, which can be kind of hard sometimes with so many people in here because it just dies so quickly. But as long as you do the damage, you should be getting the crystal shards. On average, you should be getting around 1 to 3 crystal shards per kill. So if I need 1,400 of them, that is a lot of kills. It's going to be roughly 700 kills that I need to do. So uh, yeah, let's get grinding. 27 kills the first trip and this is all the loot that I got, which is actually not bad at all. Even in masses you get pretty decent loot, 55 crystal shards, but because I have so much money, which uh, yeah, I relogged, uh, because I have so much money, I have like 13 mil or something in the bank, I actually want to get a regen bracelet that uh, basically regens double the amount of health, which is pretty convenient when you're not taking that much damage at a skilling boss. Still have 11 million cash left, the benefit of doing so much gauntlet, but that should be enough chaos runes for an uncut onyx. And that's the onyx, I'm going to be putting it into the group storage so that Dovidas can craft that into the onyx bracelet whenever he's available and then I can enchant it. Got the onyx bracelet back and let's now enchant this for the region bracelet. I think I want to get a good mix of things that gives me crystal shards in in this video, so I'm probably going to stop at like maybe 250, maybe 300 volcano kills, I've done 49 so far, and after that I might do some gauntlet, I might do some other things that gives crystal shards, I guess we'll see, but uh, I will definitely not spend the entire video at volcano. I think a good activity I can do when I can't really focus on anything and I need to AFK is just cutting teaks, which is of course some nice woodcutting experience, but also every 80 logs on average you get one crystal shard. Also I should get 80 hunter now that I think about it, these crystal implings could be some nice shards as well. Might go for that, not sure, but uh, in the kind of near future I want to catch these. Well, I've done a bit of a test here and you can see 106,000 woodcutting experience was 10 crystal shards. So it is definitely not a great method of getting crystal shards, but as I said, whenever I want some AFK time, I can do this. After that woodcutting, I actually felt like doing some gauntlets. I did 10 runs and I have all the loot in my inventory. This is the loot for the last one. And as you can see, the crystal shards from this is pretty good. I should end at over 80 after this. And the last chest is some normal stuff, but yeah, 82. But I am back to Salcano, and this is KC number 200 for some adamant ore, very nice drop, and that means I've doubled my KC so far. 63 crystal shards on this one trip, I can stay here for so long with this region bracelet. And that is 250 Salcanos done, I think I'll take a break here and go back to the gauntlet. It is better crystal shards from the gauntlet if I don't really die any time at all, if I do 100% success rate it definitely is better. But I think my overall Salcano goal for this video is going to be 300. It is very time consuming even in masses and the crystal shards are okay, but uh, not as good as the gauntlet and I still need an armor seed. By the way, a quick update here. I have over 1000 crystal shards and actually if I go to my bow for Adinan, I have how many charges? Like 19k. And that is 190 crystal shards. When you do actually corrupt it, it discounts that. So I actually only need like 1810 crystal shards. 
but I also need to get uh, 82 smithing to be able to corrupt it from 72, so that's 10 levels. I get some uh, supplies from Salcano, of course, which is great. And then I also need 82 crafting, or actually only need 78, because with a mushroom pie I can boost that. And I have some uncuts that I've got from the gauntlet, so we can see here I have these. Like 1,100 uh, sapphires, almost 1k emeralds, and also I have a lot of gold bars. Whoops. I have a lot of gold bars that I can make into jewelry with these. And also Max Nick said he has a decent amount of uh, molten glass that I can have, so all of that should be sorted. That is a big milestone. 200 corrupted gauntlets done. Let's see what we're going to get for this chest. And we get nothing too special, but 200 is very nice. I want to work on my crafting a bit, so I'm going to get as much out of the gems I have that I've got from the Corrupted Gauntlets. I'm going to be crafting all of them and then also use my gold bars that I have, like 9,000 of, and make jewelry out of them. And let's see what level we end at. Quite a lot of crafting later. This is going to be actually two big milestones. 70 crafting and 1725 total. So that is going to be actually two broadcasts in the chat. Look at that. That is so many broadcasts. And if you're wondering how much I still have left, well, I've made 1.3k almost em emerald amulets, almost 700 ruby amulets, like 171 diamond bracelets, but I still have 7k gold bars and 2,000 sapphires, and I'm running kind of low on emeralds, but uh, yeah, pretty much 2,000 left I'm going to use. I have a question to you guys. Uh, what is the most boring slash annoying skill to do in old school runescape in your opinion? And no, you cannot say runecrafting. Because every comment would be runecrafting if uh, that was allowed. So, in the comments, please let me know what the most annoying skill in the game is for you. And also, I am back to Solcano. I finished with a 490,000 crafting experience from uh, all the gems. And uh, I got to, I guess, 71 and pretty close to 72. So, pretty nice experience from that. And I'm going to get 300 KC here now. At 279kc right now, and look at the storage. There's actually two things here. The first thing is the molten glass, which Nick just gave me. He had a bunch, and this should be enough for 78, so I'm going to finish that after I get 300kc. But also look at this. We now have two Aram's robe tops and one Aram's robe skirt, which is just a massive upgrade for Solra or Raids or whatever over the Dragon High gear. And actually Doug got all of these three, I'm pretty sure. We're only really missing the hood for the full Aram set. It's not very useful, but the chest and the legs or the skirt is extremely useful. And that is going to be kill number 300. And for some reason, one of the kills did not get tracked, but uh, this is all the loot. 199 which of course is more like 200 but uh, yeah 8.8 .8 million but basically all of them was done in masses so uh, you get a lot less loot that way but you get basically the same amount of crystal shards and that is why i did it in masses but uh, yeah still pretty good amount of mithril bars also like look at these adamant ores all these can be made into bars if we have the coal for it which is like 16,000 adamant darts for the uh, blowpipe so that is a lot but now that I'm done with Solcano for this video, by the way, a quick update, I have 1.2k crystal shards, so I still need roughly 600 to finish the corrupted bow, but uh, we have all the crafting banked, basically, I think I'm, I might be like 500 molten glass off, but I can always just get some uncuts or something from the gauntlet, but this should get me, which is going to take me a very long time, look how slow this is, it is going to get me to 77, and pretty close to 78, I'm sure of it, and 78 is the goal, so let's, uh, complete this. And it turns out I did have enough molten glass for 78. That took a very long time. 1,250,000 crafting experience later. It is now done and I still have 108 molten glass. And now it is time for smithing. We're going to start off by doing... Actually, let me uh, remove the screen marker real quick. I don't know if that was even recorded, but um, yep, I am going to use all these steel bars and all the mithril bars first off. I'm just going to basically make plate bodies, and then after that, I am going to do probably blast furnace for all the remaining smithing experience I have to get. I have to get a lot. I need to get from basically 73, because I'm so close, all the way to 82. 995,000 smithing experience done, and this is actually going to be the last smithing experience I get. 
for 80 smithing which is a nice milestone to get but why i'm actually stopping on 80 instead of 82 is because i can easily easily boost with stews and every level is taking me like 4500 gold ore which is a lot of time and i've been just uh, growing my kitten ba for basically the stew boosting and I feel kind of done with skilling. I mean, 63 crafting to 78. And then, uh, of course, like 73 to 80 smithing. I think that's quite enough for me. And I still need to get crystal shards as well. So I'm going to stop here and I will have the mushroom pie for crafting. And then at the same time, just stew boost two levels. It's going to be pretty easy. Obviously, the goal of this video was to get the Corrupted Bow of Feradinan, but 600 more Crystal Shards is just way too much to grind out. It's like 70 Corrupted Gauntlet completions, which uh, is quite a lot, and I would love to uh, upload a video in the next week. So uh, I'm going to do some Corrupted Gauntlets, but uh, I'm going to be realistic. I might do like 15 or something like that, and then that's going to be it for the video. Let's see what we get for this one, and we get Average Drop, I guess. Oh, there it is. That's the last crystal armor seed I need. That's for the helmet. I'm not sure, does it cost any crystal shards to make now that I have the stats for it? I I think it costs some, but I think it's a worthy sacrifice. Right, so I have 1,259 crystal shards, and let's now make the helmet. Yeah, that cost 50 crystal shards, which is, uh, of course, setting me back a bit on the corrupted bow. But having the full set now is really nice for bossing. I don't really need to be on a slayer task now. Because otherwise I would have wanted the Slayer Helmet for obviously the full damage bonus. But now I can just use the Crystal Helmet for like God Wars bosses and stuff. And that is the full Crystal Armor with the Bow Faradin and of course uh, looking very nice. The overall damage bonus that this bow now has with the full Crystal Set is 30% more accuracy. Which means I miss so rarely like... Using this full set gives me insane accuracy and that is why the DPS on this bow is so extremely high as well as 15% more damage which makes it a absolute beast of a weapon. Because I have so many shards left to farm and it is going to take a very long time, I am going to end the video here and in the next one I am going to be corrupting the bow and focusing on using the bow at different areas in the game, just trying it out with the full crystal armor, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see future content. Also you can click any other videos on the screen right now if you want to be uh, watching a video right away. But until next time guys... Take care. What is up guys? Welcome to another Group Iron Man video. In the beginning of this one, I am still farming my Crystal Shards for corrupting my bow Faradinan, but I am very close, I only need 400 more, and Max Nick actually just got access to Priftinas, so we're going to do Corrupted Gauntlet at the same time, and then after that we're going to open the chest at the same time, and in the chat you will be able to see what he got and what I got, and hopefully we can get lucky. Okay, so you're outside? Yep. Alright, hold on, Oh, nice Addy Scimitar, dude, from the last fail. <laughs> yeah, the Addy Scimitar. Uh, we, we don't talk about the Addy Scimitar. Yeah. You ready? Right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh, oh, I thought I got something because I thought I read the. Uh, oh, no, no. yeah, we got nothing. Let me get my. Uh, Alright, here we go. This was my fifth KC. Got the, here we the, go. Completed. Oh, I man, believe. You ready? Three, two, one. Nothing again, dude. Welcome to my prison. <laughs> Last one now, okay. Let's All see right. what we get. Wanna count down? Oh, oh. No, oh. To... YOLO. Ah, oh, we got nothing. Unlucky. Unlucky. Oh, that is a weapon seed, which is actually not terrible. I mean, I can convert this to 10 crystal shards, which is uh, like one and a half crop the gauntlet run. You go and talk to Amrod in the bar, and you click this one. Ten shards, there you go. There's not really any other use for this, except maybe turning it into acorns, but uh, then I have to wait for the trees to grow, so... 
After I turned in that crystal weapon seed, I kind of thought of another idea of getting crystal shards, uh, and that is killing these Ioworth warriors. They have a 1 in 1000 drop rate of the enhanced crystal teleport seed, and you can actually turn that in for 150 crystal shards. So if I would get lucky and get like two of them, I would basically be done with all the shards that I need. And also it is combat training, so let's see if we can get lucky. Also, on top of that, they do drop normal crystal shards, I think 1 in 24 or 25, so I should expect to get a decent amount of them. We actually need quite a lot of items from Hard Clue Scrolls still for the team, so I actually completed the Hard Clue I had in the bank, and these can drop Hard Clues, 1 in 128, and hopefully I will get a couple to do during this grind, and then we're going to actually open a few of them together as a team at the same time, and the main items we are going to be looking for are God of Dehyde items for Nex, because we don't really have many of them, and ranged is the best use at Nex. I will put two graphs graphics I've made basically uh, yesterday on the screen right now of the uh, optimal setup we could have which is kind of unrealistic and then the second one on the right side will be a lower tier one which you can see includes the god dehyde so that is kind of what we're looking for and there we go that is the first hard clue scroll i think everyone else is going to try to have 10 of them but i only have one in the bank and this is going to be the second one if i can complete this so it's going to be pretty hard to reach uh, 10 with a drop rate of 1 in 128 but uh, maybe we'll see I actually did have to complete the Fairy Tales Part 2 quest for this hard clue scroll, but with that done, if I now talk to her, she get the next clue, and if I talk to her again, I should actually complete the quest, which is nice. I mean, uh, I wasn't really planning on doing it, but having it done for future hard clue scroll steps is nice regardless. That is some herb door and thieving experience, and the lamp can be used on anything, so that's going to go to 2,500 herb door experience. Nice. Oh my god, look at that beam. I actually got one of the seeds. Uh, it took some time. I was not unlucky. Let's have a look at the side here. 901 kills. That took a very long time, but it is now... That is the wrong frame. Uh, I'm going to turn this in for 150 crystal shards. And uh, here we go. Talk to Amrod and choose the enhanced crystal teleport seed. 150 crystal shards that is a lot of shards and i'm going back to try to get another one of course i would have to be very lucky to get two but uh, you never know with rng i managed to get a nine hard clue scrolls so far and uh, my team wants to do the opening now i think everyone else has 10 but uh, i'm fine with nine i'm not going to spend like an hour more to get the last one so uh, let's see what we get are we ready boys okay two. i'm ready all right three two one, come on, clan spam, go. Okay, I got the chat spam. Oh, so I, I many see. items. <laughs> oh, I got a fury or no? I got a berserker necklace. Or what or is all these items? Bad oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got two traps for sure. So we have to, we have enough chaps. Okay, uh, damn. If you filter it by group, we, we got you can see chaps. the items. I got. Oh my god. Well, or <laughs> we have two five chaps for sure now. I got two chaps. Oh, okay, got so two. we actually this got five chaps in like, there as well. We got five chaps in general, like just in this opening. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh my Dude, I... god. So unfortunately, as you saw, we basically only got chaps. Bodies was kind of what we needed because we already had all the chaps. So that is unfortunate, but it was fun to do the opening. I've been here for like 45 more minutes and we decided to do some Samurak because we want to try to get a Samurakian spear for anyone in the team that wants to kill some rune dragons with Dragon Slayer 2 completed for the 1 in 800 drop rate of the dragon limbs, which would give us access to the dragon crossbow. If we cannot get the Armadillo crossbow from Siliana, you, you never know with the RNG, you know? So we're going to go and do some Sammy. Oh, we have that one already, unfortunately. Wait, is that a oh, dupe? No. Yeah. Uh, do we need that like, one or was that a dupe? Dupe, I think. I <laughs> guess I, I think that's a video. dupe, right? Yeah, it's a dupe. Uh, unfortunate. Okay. It's the spear, right? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost called it, dude. Like, imagine if wow. that was actually the spear. Wow. I was so close to calling that. The, I was like, that's the spear. The oh. Steam Battle Staff literally just looks like an air staff. That is cringe. <laughs> yep. I that see is... it, put it on. Dude, it's so cringe. Look at this. <laughs> Bro, it, oh my god, they haven't even like done anything. To no, it. it's... <laughs> I mean, it's, oh. it's kind of like cyan colored, I guess. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, it does have some uses, though. There are certain uh, areas where you're actually in the Lunar Spellbook where you want both. It's yes. always it's always the yeah. Lunar Spellbook with these weird staves. Yeah, you, you oh, oh my oh, god, they're the same. Oh no. 
That's even from Krill, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was from Krill. Oh, yes. we need that. We need that. Yeah, we need yeah, that. One one. Actually, a useful I'll... one. Nice. Yo, let's go. One more. We just need God, God Sword Shard 1 for yep. the next uh, hill. I had to leave a bit earlier, but actually after that trip, the rest of the team went for another one and got the last God Sword Shard. So we can now actually make the third BGS for the team, which is the last hilt we have in the bank. Now that is done. I had 80 smithing, so just to finish that. So time to put it in the storage. But now it is time to do some corrupted gauntlet to finish off like the last 90 shards that I need to corrupt the bow. Oh, another armor seed. That is very nice. Uh, I'm going to keep this and give it to Nick because he is grinding out the crystal armor right now. So that is excellent. I think that's it. 1,812 shards and I have some charged in my bow as well. So let's see if we can corrupt the bow. It has been a very long grind and I'm excited to be done with it and actually use the bow for a bit. We have a Dwarven Stout matured for a two smithing boost as I'm 80 and we have the Mushroom Pie for the four crafting boost. Let's uh, drink and eat both of them and now sing and I can make the corrupted bow. Yes, I have all the shards. Let's do it. And that is now the corrupted bow of Feradinen completed. If you don't know what that does, it basically makes it infinite. I don't have to charge it anymore with crystal shards. So it is not uh, a ways to use it anywhere, basically. I can use it without really losing any shards. And uh, for the crystal armor as well, that is still degradable. But it is only degraded if you take a hit. So if I'm doing some PvM activity where you take no damage, like Slayer, and I'm just protecting, the crystal armor is literally infinite. So this makes the bow infinite as well, which is excellent. And I might recolor it. There's a couple of different ones. You can pay 500k. I will look into that. So these are the different colors. You can have white, black, purple, green, golden, white kind of, red and blue. I'm not sure which one I want to get. Uh, it's 500k for each one. I think I'll go with the blue one. I kind of like it because it fits with the crystal armor. So now I just use it on the bow. And yes, it is going to be recolored blue now. So let's see. Yep, that fits pretty nicely. You can change it whenever you want to for just 500k, so I am not too worried about that. Now that I have the bow corrupted, there is a couple of PVM things I want to try out and see how good it is. The first one is camping the bow on Solra, which means I am not bringing any switches. I'm just going to be camping the bow with the accuracy that I have right now. The gear that I have is pretty good still on Solra. It's like the twisted bow strategy, but... Uh, Let's see if it's good. I'm not sure. I've never really done this before. So uh, let's see what time we get. I'm going to do a couple of kills with this setup and then maybe try to bring the switch setup and see how that goes. That was definitely not a fast kill, but very convenient. No switches or anything. 329. Might have been unlucky though. So let's try another time. All right, three minutes this time, so a bit better, like 20 seconds better, but still not nearly as good as I can get with the mage and the range setup. And even now with this, instead of having the rune crossbow, if I have the mage switch, it should be incredibly fast. So let's see the speeds we can get with the switch now. Now let's see the difference with absolute full sweat, the full magic setup with the arms that we just achieved by Doug's luck at Barrows the full switch as well as the book that allows me to spawn thralls this should be interesting and the kill time is for the first attempt two minutes and 10 seconds already my personal best oh this is a fast one oh my god i was hitting good all the time 138 yeah that is the potential of having all this mage gear with the bow of Feradinen with an imbued heart as well a very stacked that's like main account speed 138 but even though of course that hype kill of 138 speed running using everything is very nice to see it is still not that bad to camp the bow of Feradinen. i mean it's very chill and i could get like three mini kills maybe and there's no switches, so I also get like five more inventory slots or six even. Don't have to bring the imbued heart, or maybe even seven. So I will have a lot more food so I can do more kills per trip as well. So it is something to consider to maybe go with a full setup now and then. Now a place where I can use the entire crystal armor, I don't have to use the serpentine helmet, is God Wars Dungeon, and I'm going to do this off task. We're going three people to Krill, and it's going to be very interesting to see if this setup will be able to outdamage the Arc Light, which is a massive DPS on this boss. It's going to be interesting to see the DPS. Unfortunately, I cannot be in voice. My headset has broken. I should get one tomorrow, a new one. But for this one, there is going to be only my voice. 
So in the background right now, you can see an entire kill that we did and Dovidas, which is the tank right now, was actually on a Slayer task as well. So he had the Slayer helmet and the Arc Light. And this specific kill, I did manage to out damage him. I think around 40%, maybe even 50% of the times I got the kill. So it's definitely not bad, but uh, I would say that this boss as a trio is a bit of a, it's a bit of a problem because sometimes the boss aggros me and my defenses are terrible. I was getting getting hit a lot as well as my teammates as well so we are actually going to try to do bandos instead now the bow Faradinen on bandos is actually one of the best if not the absolute best weapon to use on the boss the stats on it is just perfect for it and uh, we're going to actually be in voice this time got to borrow a headset from my uh from my girlfriend but yeah let's uh let's see what we get or if we get something wrecked with main hand bgs Oh, oh are you God. kidding me? No way, another duplicate boots. <laughs> no. Oh no. Are you oh kidding me? No. Dude, no. stop! No. Stop! How do we only get <laughs> It's the hilt all over again, but now it's a bando's Bro. boots? Bro. My so God. Three hilts and three boots. That's yep. all. Dude. Yep. This is a scam game, man. Oh my god. Dude, nice. <laughs> so many of these, man. How many have we got? One, two, uh, three in one trip. And they're all the ones we already have. So unfortunately nothing too great from that bandos trip but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how many kills I got in that trip. We were four people so the kills were split amongst four people. And, um, well, we did about 60 kills and my kill count was 41. So I got 41 of the kills in a 4-man and uh, 19 of the kills went to the other people. So the Boa Faradinen at Bandos is an S-tier weapon. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some Slayer in hopes of getting a Dagonoth task because I do want to try the bow, bow out on some solo DKs as well. And I would love to get an Archer's Ring. Now that is interesting, that's the first boss task I've had, and Giant Mole is actually a boss where the Boa Faradinen is really good. So I'm actually going to go for the max amount, it's going to be kind of interesting, and also the Mole Claws and Mole Skin that it drops actually can turn into the uh, Bird Nests, which is actually used to make Saradomin Brew, so it's pretty good drops. Oh my god, 25 seconds, I actually got a kill there before it even dug down, which is very nice because I don't have the Falador Hard Diary done, so I actually have to track it down every time. But uh, this is uh, very good here, I have to say. The kills are like 41 seconds, 1 minute, 11. Kind of depends on the hits and how many times it digs down. Definitely going to do all the future mole tasks, but looking at my inventory, I can trade in all these mole skins and claws for nests. And you get these crates, and they have different tags. You can see this one has rings, and you can only open them in a bank. I got two ones with rings and 97 with seeds and 10 of the empty ones, so definitely a lot more seeds. This is going to stack up very quickly if I would camp the boss, because this took me like 30 minutes maybe to finish, so uh, quite a lot of Saradomin Brews right there and seeds. No Dagonoth task yet, but uh, this is going to be a Slayer level, 73 Slayer. If I get two more levels, I can do Gargoyles, and I would love to try the Bow of Ferdina on the uh, Grotesque Guardians, which is the Gargoyle boss, so whenever I get that 75, I will try it. Oh, I did not expect that. 88 hit points, and that is actually 1750 total as well. Pretty nice milestone. Now, I really wanted a Dagonoth task, but uh, I've been doing quite a bit of tasks and I haven't got one. I have 60 points right now and I'm going to try to get one and uh, hopefully we will get lucky. First one is Greater Demons, would be nice for Sammy, but uh, I do want to get a Dagonoth task now. So first skip, get Trolls, that is not the one. And let's do a last skip, last chance to get it. And we get Fossil Island Wyvern, so not lucky this time, and I think this is where I'm going to end the video. In the next one, I'm going to try to do Diagonal Kings in the beginning. So basically all the content I will do now for the next week roughly will be about next preparations and increasing my setup for next and the team setup in general. So I will try to get Archer's Rings, I will try to get the God of Dehyde Bodies from Clue Scrolls, overall things that you will see in the future videos, but uh, hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see future content, and uh, have a good one.
Welcome to another Group Iron Man episode. This one will be all about the next preparations. And to start off, I have two clue scrolls completed here from Slayer. The medium clue, we are looking for Ranger Boots, which is uh, very rare, of course, but that is the ideal item. And from the hard clue scrolls, we are looking for God Dehyde Bodies. So let's start with the medium one and see what we get. And we get... Uh, that is not Ranger Boots, is what I can say. And for the hard one, we get a Saradom in page 1, which is not very useful, but there is going to be plenty more clue scrolls in this video, hopefully. Oh yes, that is a hefty diagonal task that's going to be all done on the Kings. Let's hope we get a Berserker Ring, which is the last one for the team, which is going to be mine, coincidentally, or an Archer's Ring, which actually would be maybe even better because of Nex. Well, that kind of creeped up on me, 74 Slayer, and I've been here for like 50 kills so far, no rings, but I did get a hard clue, so we will open all of them, as many as I get from the task at the end. Well, that is the task finished, I got no rings, but I did get a Dragon Axe, which means I have four Dragon Axes in my bank, and we actually already have one each, so we have way too many of them, but I did get three hard clue scrolls, so let's see if we can get any God Dehyde bodies. First one is terrible, second one is somehow even worse, and the last one is a collection log item, but that is uh, very bad hard clues, unfortunately. It has been quite a while since something happened, but I just got a Commander Siliana task, and I think I might actually, with this gear, be able to solo a couple of kills. So I'm going to set this to like, maybe 9? That should be enough. If I get 3 kills, I should at least be able to do 3 kill trips. Should be able to do more than that, but I think 9 is good enough. That is the task done, and I had to do it in 2 trips, and the second trip was only the last 2 kills. I did 7 kills, and then 2 kills, and I am probably just going to teleport out here. Even though I have supplies, it is uh, not really worth it to do this solo compared to in a group. Oh my god, I got 3 Criara as a task, or well, I picked 3, but I have no points and uh, doing this is going to be quite hard it is actually the last god wars boss i haven't done on this account and i am going to get 200 levels for black chance and try to solo it and this is going to be 73 hunter i think i am going to catch like maybe 150 black chance or something like that i think that should be enough for three kills also by the way i am going to get the last piece of the frozen key if i do manage to kill Kriara. so that is going to be pretty nice to have the frozen key completed as well only encountered one PK and I did not die and that should be 201 so I went for a bit more than 150. Hopefully I will be able to do all the three kills in one trip but uh, Armadil is a very hard God Wars dungeon boss compared to the other ones, especially to solo so it uh, might be hard to do that. Well it was a very long time since I did Armadil and I kind of oversighted that I can't only kill it with Shinchompas, I should have brought bolts as well, I did have the crossbow for the Mithril grapple to get over here but uh, I didn't even think about that the minion, of course, is going to die when uh, doing this. Because you want to chinchompa the minion that is standing beside Kriara, like I'm doing now. And that way... Well, Kriara has very high defense. But if you hit the minion with the chinchompa, it is going to counter the defense of the minion. You do damage to that, and the splat damage will go over to Kriara, counting the minion's defense. So as you can see, I am shredding Kriara this way, even though it has very high defense. And as long as you click on Kriara between each hit on the minion it is not going to do anything except just range you so you won't take that much damage but look at this i kind of <laughs> thought i could uh, chin jump with the minion but that was not the case try the blowpipe but then i don't have the crystal shield on so that was kind of a disaster but uh yeah even for getting the bolts, I did manage to get two kills, so I have to go back for the last one, but uh, in that trip we got the last key piece, so let's now assemble them and get the frozen key. That kind of looks like the RS3 version, but uh, a bit more chunky, I guess. And it doesn't seem to have any charges, so that's interesting. It does in the RS3 version for Nex, but uh, seems like it's infinite here. Well, I did have enough chinchompas at least, but uh, I am going to leave right now with the task completed. That was not a nice task to do, it took a very long time, but at least I unlocked black chinchompas as uh, an opportunity. Maybe we will use it when we uh, group it in the future. Still hunting for the Dagonoth King task, which I haven't got in a long while now, but that is 75 Slayer, which is a pretty nice milestone. Also, as you can see, I unlock gargoyles, and if I do get a gargoyle task, I will 
will try to get the brittle key. I'm not really sure how it works exactly. I think it's like after 100 gargoyle kills you get it guaranteed. I'm not really sure. But when I do get the key I am going to try some of the grotesque guardians. It has been quite a lot of tasks and I still do not have a diagonal task. But after this one I will be on task 99. And that is also 89 range. The main reason why I'm recording. But after this I can do a corner task. And it's going to be task number 100. And I should get a bunch of points. And with those I will try really hard to get a Dagonoth task. If I do not get one, I am most likely just going to go there with a crystal helmet or something and uh, do it without the Slayer task because I really want that Archer's Ring. Now before we complete task number 100, I have a couple of more hard clue scrolls that I collected. Three more, so let's pray for that Dehyde bodies. Let's see what we can get. First one is a Samurak page, not really what we want, but it is a collection log. Second one is terrible. These are so bad, all the hard clues in this video so far. Please, last one. Oh, Master Scroll Book. That is not that bad. I guess it is a unique, but uh, no godly hide bodies yet. About to be done with the task pretty soon and get all those points, but uh, look at this, four brimstone keys and I think I have six in my bank as well, I haven't really bothered opening them, but I can just do a, a rapid quick succession of opening them after this. Oh, that is lovely to see, almost 500 points from having like no points at all, so let's hopefully get spooned on a Dagonoth task so I don't have to waste all the points. Well, it is not a Dagonoth task, but uh, I said I'm going to do a Gargoyle task if I get it, and how the brittle key that on unlocks the boss works is uh, it's a 1 in 150 drop rate from the normal gargoyles so I should get one of the keys in this kill count but you never know either all of them will be on the normal ones if I don't get the key or I might do a couple of bosses to try it out. Before that though let's do this real quick I'm just going to spam open and the items I would be looking for is just the dark mystic items I guess because they are collection log items and pretty cool to get. Oh of course the rain our seeds are very nice as well I can't really complain about that and the two last key steel bars I actually want to make into cannonballs most likely if I get the granite dust also from the grotesque guardians you can actually upgrade the uh, cannonballs and get even more value out of them and that is some nice ranged experience which I gladly would like to have for next oh that is nice I only took half the task pretty much to get the brittle key so we have 91 kills left to do I am not going to postpone the DK's grind for the archer's ring that much but I want to do a couple of kills at least that is a lot of combat tasks and I did very poorly on that one like what was the kill time 252 yeah I can definitely improve on that super combat potions yeah look at these drops man this is actually the first uh, or basically the only way for us to get super combat potions on the uh, group Iron Man right now because it is a very high herb lore level requirement it's like 90 so it's nice to get some I don't think it's really worth for me to be here for very long, so I'm just going to be done at 10kc. It was fun to try it. In the future, I am definitely going to do more kills, but uh, this is the loot for 10 kills. It's not terrible, but uh, when I want to get done with the task as fast as possible. I actually got 76 Slayer by finishing on the normal ones, but uh, Barrow's Brothers as a task. If I pick six of them, that should be one round, and I just want to get Dagonoths at this point, so I will do one round of Barrow's. Maybe we'll get lucky and get some Carol's items. The one and only Barrow's chest for this video, let's see what we get. And oh my god, wait, I actually think that's the last piece. That is actually full Guthans. I am, uh, dude, what? That is so nice! I have no more points now, this is the last chance I have to get a Dagonoth task. If I don't get it, I am just going to go to DK's without a Slayer Helmet, which is fine to get the Archer's Ring. But let's see if we can get one, and we do not get one. We get a terrible task as well, but uh, yeah, let's go to DK's off task. Well, that is uh, unfortunate, that is very early into the trip. Unfortunately, we don't ne really need the Serious Ring for anything, but I guess it's nice to get something at least. Again, not really the item I want, but that is actually the second mod battle staff we have for the team, and I got both of them. I guess there is the uh, Lunar Spellbook that has some uses for that. Oh my god, what is this? A seer collar. I'm not sure really if that's useful for anything. Maybe there is some dye or something you need it for, but uh, would be nice to get some rings instead of these weird drops. And that is the second ring drop, warrior's ring, not what we want to see. I think the team has like eight or nine of them right now. 
There it is, the Berserker Ring, which is the fifth one for the team, being my Berserker Ring. So I am going to imbue this later in the video. Very nice to see, done with that, only need the Archer's Ring now for the team. So I'm at like 300 DKs killed, you can see here on the side, I have 89 Prime, 91 Rex and 94 Supreme. Supreme being the one that can drop the Archer's Ring and it is a 1 in 128. So technically I am not unlucky on the Archer's Ring just yet, of course I have overall like 250 supreme kills or something so i should have one by now but uh, we are going to take a break here i will go back to it in the video and try to get that archer's ring because i really want it for next but uh, we're going to take a break here to help the team get the uh, lost shard to the frozen key i already have it as you guys saw but uh, most of the team doesn't have the criara one so we're going as a team to get that for everyone and uh, by the way look at this seven dragon axes but uh, the team is currently getting ecumenical keys so i I am going to go to Nightmare Zone, get some points, and try to imbue the Berserker Ring as well. Well, I barely had any time to get any points, but I do want to show off how much points I actually get now compared to before. So, when I had way less quests completed, I got like 2k points from one kill. And look at this now, 58 to 83,000. I just got like 30,000 points from one single NPC kill, so getting like 800k or maybe it's even 1.2 million for the Berserk Ring, I'm not sure exactly, is not going to be very hard, you can get like 2 million points an hour. Oh, and this is the big one. That was like, what, 60,000 points from the inadequacy? That is why the Dream Enter quest is very nice to have for the Nightmare Zone. So the strategy we're doing for Armadale is basically everyone in a corner, we just protect the range and everyone shoots the boss and this way it is going to just be stuck in the middle only doing ranged hits. So as you can see now we all attack it, it just sits there in the middle and the minion you can see over here, the uh, flight Kelisa is the melee minion, it is basically just going back and forth to each person, basically doing nothing. Of course we still take some damage from uh, the minions, like the major can hit me for pretty high amounts of damage but otherwise it is a uh, very afk and chill as you can see so we finished all the key pieces for the team but we didn't really get any uh, rare drops of course we only did like 10 kills or something so can't expect anything but it's only 650 to imbue the ring so now it is the imbued berserker ring and if i do manage to get the archer's ring which i am going back to dk's now and praying for it then i will have to get another 650k points which is like 20 minutes so Definitely not bad. God, are you kidding me? Yeah, congratulations, man. No, that's not the ring I want, dude. Another circle. Dude. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> not like this, dude. Give me the Arches ring already. I'm killing Supreme now, so hopefully I get it. Another Sears ring. I have so many rings that is not the Archer's ring at this point. And that is a third Berserker ring for me, which uh, we now have. I think that is seven Berserker rings, which we definitely do not need. But I guess if we're going to PK on Group Iron, then we have that. Oh my god, I actually got it. There is no way. I was That was my last trip. I was going to leave after this. Oh my god, that is such a relief. I'm going to show you guys all the uh, loot here, how many kills I did. I did 170 Supreme, 161 Prime, and 163 Rex. And look at all that Rex loot. Three Berserker Rings, four Dragon Axes. Actually, let me go to the bank real quick. I am going to show you guys how many Dragon Axes I have, how many like rings overall I have. Oh my god, I think I did like 10 trips to DKs. Look at this. And also I have basically 74 prayer banked here for when we do get the rigor. Look at all these rings. Uh, the warrior's rings are way too many. We have way too many. I think we have overall 10 or something. The dragon axes we already have way too many. I guess we have like 14 now. And berserk rings as well. But uh, that is the first archer's ring for the team. So... Let's go and imbue it. Finally, we have the imbued archer's ring. That is so nice to see. It has 8 ranged attack bonus and 8 ranged defense. The 8 ranged attack bonus being very nice for Nex. Because it is probably going to have very high defense. So it is uh, super good to have that. And I am still unsure if I'm going with the crossbow or the crystal armor with the bow of Feradinan. But regardless, this is going to be an essential ring to have. Now to end the video, I do have one last hard clue scroll that I got from the Dagon of Kings. Let's see if we can get a god dehyde body for the team. I am going to use the crystal armor at next, but uh, can we help out the team? 
and uh, that, that's a lot of uniques enchanted top and pith helmet in the same one but not a god dehyde body but with that, I am going to end the video here. Tomorrow we are going to do next on release as a team. Hopefully get a couple of kills and I will make a video on it. Likewise, the whole team probably will. So you will get a lot of content in the next day. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked it. Remember to leave a like if you did. Subscribe for future content. And click any other videos on the screen right now if you want to see content right away. Have a good one guys. Take care. Tomorrow next is going to be released into the game and we are going to do it as a team and to prepare I am going to fish Okay, not only fish, but I'm going to do farm runs and meanwhile just afk and barbarian fishing because I need to get some total levels We are so close to the front page and I need to do some afk anyway So I thought getting some fishing levels might be a good thing to afk and do the herb runs for snapdragons and maybe Raynars for the restores and prey potions that we will need for next. Meanwhile, I am doing fishing. Up to 69 fishing and this is also going to be another level which is going to be 71 herb lore for the team. Another total level for the scoreboard. Next should be coming out in around an hour and I got the ecumenical keys. I don't have the diaries to get more than three but it should be enough. They do work for next by the way. So I'm just going to get some total levels here. I have a couple of skills that are very close, like 152 runecrafting, 5k agility, 20k mining is kind of close, I suppose, and fletching I can get some darts. 70 fletching and 57 runecrafting at the same time, let's get it. 70 fletching, runecraft, and that is 57 runecrafting, which means we are now 1770 total, so 5 more and that will broadcast. And there it is, 25 minutes until next release, but uh, let's have a look at the high scores, look at that. We are now on the front page, ranked 20, and we are pretty close to being able to be like top 15 or something. If we all just work on total levels for a bit, we can get there pretty easily, so that is nice to see. I think the gear setups I might try is first the full crystal armor with the bow for Adinan, but they did say that crossbows are going to be pretty good at next. So I might have to go with this setup, which is definitely a lot worse when it comes to DPS. Most likely, I mean, we don't know really, but uh, we will try first with the bow for Adinan, for me at least. And if that doesn't work, it's too bad, I take too much damage, or it's just bad DPS, then I guess this is the setup I'm going to go with. There, there's... <laughs> <laughs> it is so stacked with people here, holy... Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm looking at your stream. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. You said nine. You've got like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally all max people as well. Just chilling with full armadillo. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm right. just going in there talking to her. Yes. And don't so ask again. Now. Run. Oh, there's, it, it, I have the advantage of other people tanking the minions for me. So we're good. Oh, it's trying to barrage me. I'm tanking everything. Don't auto retaliate, please. Okay, I'm in the next room. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You can just look at this counter here, like the scoreboard, and it just keeps going up to. Yeah, no, no kills. And there's 30 global deaths, and if you click it again, it goes up all the time. Oh, there is a kill now. 313. Yeah. 313? That's fast. Yeah, but that's probably in like a, you know, 25 person mass or something, you know? It's like so many people here. You might have already seen on my channel that I already posted a video about Nex and that was on my main account. That is because unfortunately after talking with the team for quite a while, we decided to not do Nex on release on the group Iron Man because there are no empty sessions. Basically every single area has like 50 people in them and it is impossible to find an empty world and if we would hit the boss with our group Iron Man, we would lose the stars beside our name which is the prestige. Which is uh, something most of my teammates wanted to keep and it would be kind of useless to just uh, remove it for one day of doing next. If you wait like a week we can do it as a team uh, with only us five and that is better for the team anyways in terms of drops. But what I want to do instead is I want to try to kill some of the creatures in here and see what the loot from them is like. I just killed a Blood Reaver because I looked at the drop rate of items and they seem to be actually even better than the spiritual creatures. I might try to kill these. But look what I got. I got a blood essence. And look at that. It says it's worth 2 million. 
This is actually used to make blood runes and you get more blood runes when you use it uh, somehow. But uh, if it's 2 million as the base price, it has to be kind of rare. But uh, also on top of that, uh, the ancient ceremonial pieces can drop from the blood reavers. So it's a bit more interesting of a drop table. Oh my god, another blood essence very shortly after, like 15 kills. It is actually only a 1 in 128. So it is probably going to crash a lot from 2 million, but uh, yeah, interesting. So I did click on it, as you saw in the last clip, and it says you have 1000 charges on it when it's active. So I guess if I craft 1000 blood runes now, it has the chance of duplicating them, I believe. Bit random maybe, but a pretty big milestone. This is going to be 90 ranged on the group Iron Man. That's going to be nice for next or any future ranging that I'm going to do, which is obviously quite a lot now that I have the uh, Bow for Adinan. That is what I was actually looking for. The ancient ceremonial item. It is purely a cosmetic item, but it is very cool to have. I'm very happy I got the top, actually. Look how nice this looks. The drop rate is 1 in 640 for each piece individually. So getting one of the items is 1 in 128. So it's not very rare, but it can take a while to get the full set, you know. But I'm very happy I got the chest. It's very nice. If I get the legs and the helmet, I'm pretty much done with the set. I don't really care about the gloves and the boots. I actually finished the entire Slayer task I had on the Spiritual Rangers, and that is actually the monster I got to the top on, but I think I'm going to be happy here. You can see my kill count. I've killed quite a lot of creatures in here. I will probably go back for every Spiritual Creature task and kill the Rangers, and uh, hopefully in the future get the full ceremonial outfit because I think it looks so good. But now I am going to work on something else. If you're wondering what the overall drops from the creatures are, here they are, 151 blood reavers for all of this, the prayer potions being the notable interesting drops and the rain arts and snapdragons, and I did kill some mages on my main account and I will definitely kill these over the rangers in the future, because they drop the super stores 3 dose quite frequently, which is very nice for Iron Man. So my team has been working a lot on killing the wilderness bosses, the crazy archaeologist, chaos fanatic and scorpia to try to get odium wards which is going to be very useful for next when we do it 5 man. And if I go into the group storage here you can see we have 8 malediction shards too and I will put a picture on the screen right now of the odium shards that they got as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and solo some Chaos Fanatic. It is the most annoying boss to get the shards from. And hopefully we can get some Odium Shards. The Malediction Shards we don't really need. But the Odium Shards is definitely what we want. I am now actually 107 Chaos Fanatic kills in. And I have not got anything yet. The reason why I'm standing here is because I got PK'd like 3 times. I did not die a single time. But all of those PKs happen in like the last 10 minutes and I was offered now to come raid with a team. So I'm going to take a break from this and do that. And then it's back to the Chaos Fanatic. Here we go, this is the purple. Goodbye. I have white. TV. white. Oh. oh, I got a dark relic. Oh, oh nice. nice. I got the some Torstoles and Snapdragons. Yeah. Well, how oh. many deaths was that? Like I eight, nine? Tablet. Is that what you're oh, talking about? Oh, yeah, now you can teleport to the raid on Serik's nice. Talisman if you apply it to it. I'm super stored up. You're hitting. <clears throat> Last minute 20 fall. HP. 50k point raid. Nice. Nice. White oh. light is bad. Okay. Damn. But it looked one hour and 11 minutes, though. That's, That's an so improvement. 20 minutes faster. Yeah, that was a huge improvement. And we wasn't able, like, we had to do all the prep without making yeah. any progress Pre at the same pretty time. much all the deaths as well was in the last phase on in all dynamite lol plus i only died what twice yeah so... i died once yeah once me I, as well i i didn't die a single time but because duggan alone and everyone basically i collected the last craps from the floor and <laughs> yeah. kept you alive and we're back to the Chaos Fanatic, and that is a Malediction Shard. I think like 190 kills in, something like that. But that is not the shard we want. But it's not bad because we have all the other Malediction Shards, so that is a completed shield. Well, well, well. This is very interesting to see. Jagex actually tweeted out that they have made it possible for people to create their own next sessions. Which is going to be very essential for Group Iron Man if they do not want to lose their prestige. But it has a very high requirement, you have to complete the hard combat achievements. 
and I am of course the person with the most combat achievements completed. I have the full easy one, half the medium and not really but close to half the hard one. So it is actually something I want to start working on. It is some very fun challenges to do. I think I can complete the entire medium one whenever I want to. I have all the requirements. But the hard one is going to be a big grind. So it is a long term goal I want to work on. For example you can see it requires Abyssal Sire. As well as later down here you need a Kraken I think. There we go. And that is of course 87 Slayer. So it's going to require a lot of Slayer, but I am going to work on these golds passively. Actually, I'm really looking forward to it because I love doing combat and it is a nice excuse to work towards it. So yeah, that is going to be something I will work on. I do want to note that even if it takes so long for me to complete the achievement diaries, that basically there is a very easy to find worlds. As I said, it is still possible that other people would crash us in the session. And if a group comes into our session, we just have to straight up leave because of how the prestige system works. If any of uh, the normal accounts help us, we're going to lose it. So it is nice to have sessions, even if there are a lot of empty ones. But that is 300 KC on the Chaos Fanatic, no Odium Shard overall from any of those kills. But now I'm going to stop and I will get back here in the future. But now it's time for some combat achievements. I'm going to start with the medium diary and there are two barrels tasks I can do that should be fairly easy. The first one is you cannot get hit a single time from Darox, Varax, Torax and Guthans. Even if you get hit a zero that does count. And the second one is kill all of the brothers without taking any damage and that is basically just prey. So that should be easy. I'm surprised I don't already have it honestly. I feel like clicking on the chest is the most scary part about the uh, not getting hit achievement because it could spawn and literally just hit you right away I feel like so let's see how this goes. Have to run and hopefully it doesn't hit me. There we go so should be fine now. Unfortunately I did actually get hit once by Torag so that was unfortunate but uh, I did not get damaged by any of them so this should actually still be an achievement so let's see what we get and if we get it. And that is the pray for success achievement only one more to go. Another failed attempt, but can we get something nice? We cannot. Now I'm going to assume that the easiest way of doing this is just barraging it, but I don't have 94 magic and the imbued heart is currently not in the storage and I don't have it. So this is how I did it. I just uh, clicked on the tomb and tangle it and then I placed myself in a good spot where I can line of sight on the tomb when the entangle is about to run out. So I'm doing that right now, just waiting for it to remove. And after this you can't untangle for like a few seconds, so I just wait, place myself a bit further back, and then I untangle it again, and I attack it, and I just repeat this until it's dead. I think this is the third attempt, and I hope that I actually completed it. I don't think I got hit any times, so let's search it. And uh, that is the achievement done. Nice, that should be everything for Barrows. The next one is Demonic Weakening, which is kill Scotisa with no altars active. Should not be too much of a big deal, but it does have quite high stakes. I only have a one totem. So if I do fail this, I have to grind an entire new totem. So let's hopefully pray that I actually do this on the first attempt. And that is the Demonic Awakening that do it on the first attempt. It was quite nerve-wracking honestly, but uh, Mahogany Planks as a drop is not bad construction experience as well. So for the next two, I'm going to do both of the Briar Fighter ones. I already have all the keys, I just collected them real quick. I already have two kill counts and this one is five times, so that is just use all the keys. And this one is very easy, kill all the three minions within three seconds of the first one dying. Get all of them to low HP and then just use an axe on them real quick. All the minions are 1 HP now or 0 HP. Now let's change this actually to you so I can do it real quick. So let's save and let's use the axe real quick on these. Should be fine to do it in 3 seconds. Yeah, there we go. Quick cutter. That was very easy to do. And there it is. That is the 5th kill. Should be the achievement done. Champion. And that is actually all of the achievements on this boss overall done. Which is very nice to see if I go all the way up here. It is now green. I think that's the first green I have. Oh, I have Winter Todd and Solcano as well, I guess. And after that, I thought I might do Obor. And look at this. I did uh, 76 kills for 3 keys, which is all the keys I need. I did not pick that up. But yeah, the drop rate is 1 in 60, so very lucky. Have to do 5 kills. That is very easy. This is the other one, which is kill Obor without taking any damage off prayer. My decision was basically just go with melee and have as much ranged defense as possible. 
with the crystal shield, ring of suffering and all this. And then I'm just going to pray melee and hope that I don't take any damage. I think that's it. I don't think I took any damage of prayer at least. And that is squashing the giant. So I did do it and I got another key actually. So that's pretty nice. And of course, that is the five kills as well. So now Obor should be green as well on my combat achievements. Let's have a look at it. Go to bosses and there it is. Another very easy task is just 50 deranged archaeologists. So now that is done. Another 50 kill task, which is the giant mole. I already had 47 from doing some slayers. So that was literally only three kills. A medium task where you have to kill Dagonoth Rex when he is entangled or immobilized in general. So I guess Ice Burst, Ice Brush, stuff like that works as well. Get him to low HP. Let's use the entangle. And now if I hit him here, I think he should die. That should be the combat achievement done. Yep, there we go. Look at this. I'm starting to get really close to done with the medium diary. But uh, I do have a pretty big one now, which is actually the Sarachnis one down here. I have to do 50 kills and my current kill count is 10. So I will have to do 40 kills. It's going to take a while, but it actually is pretty good because it drops a lot of red spider eggs and we do need them right now for the team. And that took two kills and I have 100 red spider eggs. Uh, you have to have a knife and you use it on this and you get 100 red spider eggs. So very nice. Well, randomly while killing the boss, I also got a hard task. Honestly, I think that is the one where you don't allow the boss to shoot more than one ranged hit per time. So nice, that's going to be good to have done for the future. Definitely not as bad as I thought it would be. This is going to be kill number 50 if I can get a hit in. There we go. That's going to be the Sarachnis champion or adept, whatever it's called. The champion, there it is. And the loot... Is actually not bad. I got 400 red spider eggs and 3 grubby keys being the notable drops and some decent alks. There's only 5 tasks left and the brutal black dragon one I can literally just eat a wild pie and I can kill it with a 77 slayer requirements so that is very easy. And the last ones are all the king black dragon ones. One is to kill it with a stab weapon. One is to kill it with anti-fire po potion and anti-dragon shield which is also very easy. I can do both of them. And this one is protect from melee. I can do all of these three in one kill. But then the last one is 50 kills. So my setup for all the three ones at once is this one. I think the best stab weapon we have is a leaf bladed sword. And then I have the anti fire potion and the dragon fire shield. Or anti dragon shield rather. So yeah, let's go and get all those three at once. And this was a very slow kill, but it is going to be three achievements done here when I do get the hit. There we go. That's the first achievement and hopefully I get the two other ones here. Yes, there we go. Anti-fire protection and claw clipper. That was a very slow kill. Now I'm going to get my bow for in and because I am not going to do another 39 kills with this setup. Dovidas was kind enough to help me out to get the KC as a duo, made it a lot more chill, and that is the King Black Dragon champion completed. I do have a wild pie in the bank, so let's go and complete the medium achievements. Here we go, this is the last combat achievement to complete the entire medium one. Let's see the pop-up and also in the chat. There is the broadcast, also some uh, rune plate legs, nice alk. Yeah, let's go and get our reward. I'm here to talk about the combat achievements. Let's uh, get the upgraded items. I think I've completed a combat tier. And that is the medium one completed. The XP lamp and the upgraded Gomal's Hilt. Which now can teleport me to Trollheim or to the God Wars dungeon five times a day instead of three. And if I complete the hard one, it is actually infinite. So that is pretty nice. And the XP lamp, of course, is going into Herblore for 10,000 experience. Let's see how this looks. Fits with my crystal armor. Now with that done, it is the hard diary we are moving forward to. And you can see I've already done some of them. But the by far hardest requirements here is actually the Kraken one. I think I talked about that earlier. All the other ones are pretty easy to do. And uh, this Kraken one requires 87 Slayer. So that is quite a requirement from 76, but it is something I'm going to be working on in the next videos, doing a lot of Slayer, grinding it out, trying to get it completed, and otherwise in this, this is not too hard. There are some ones, like uh, up here, there's going to be 50 Calphite Queen, that's going to be uh, quite annoying to do, but not really hard. Same thing with the Grotesque Guardians, like 100 kills, also not too hard, I might do that if I get a Gargoyle task. So we have some very interesting things ahead of us. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see future content. And until next time, guys.
Take care. Welcome to another group Iron Man episode. In this one, we are going to do a lot of Slayer. I need to get to 87 to be able to complete the Hard Combat Diaries. And I have put a counter here. Zero experience. And let's see how much we can get in this video. The first assignment is going to be Black Demons. That's pretty good. That is pretty cool. I just hit 90 hit points. Soon done with the task as well. This is going to be a good amount of combat experience, which is very nice for future bossing as well. But 90 hit points is a very good level to hit. I have a very interesting bug. I actually was on my main account and I was using the Orb of Oculus where you basically disappear and you can film like small cutscenes or whatever you want. But uh, when I logged into my group Iron Man account, I'm still invisible. I don't know how long this is going to last. Maybe I have to relog again. But I mean, I logged out and logged in and it was still the case. Like maybe I have to teleport, maybe I have to use the orb of, orb of Oculus again or something. Yeah, this is interesting. I think I can still take damage though. If I go into melee range, 68 HP or 69 HP. Yeah, I think it's definitely attacking me. I can't really see though, but I think it is. I'm 100% sure I did not do this when I became invisible, but I guess the game does it when you use the orb of Oculus. By the way, 91 ranged while I'm recording, but uh, you can actually type this. So in the chat, render self. And you will become invisible. I guess that's kind of what the Orb of Oculus does for you. But if you type it again, if you get the bug, you will be uh, back to normal. So that's how I solved it. Very nice coincidence. I got a greater demon task of 136. Meanwhile, Dovidas actually has one as well. So we are going in to do some trio krill with two slayer tasks. So this should be nice. Hopefully get some drops. Not quite a samurai spear, but uh, gold to chart one. And that is actually apparently something we need. So nice. So there's actually two hard achievements I can do now that we're doing Krilla anyways. They're all the way down here and this is the one. All the minions have to be dead at the same time as Krill dies. So we're going to try to do that and the other one is for 50kc. I will get that passively anyway. So I'm just going to tank the boss here. Meanwhile the other ones try to kill the minions. And then we will all circle the boss at the same time and hopefully get it. All the minions are dead. This should be the achievement. Let's see if it is. And we get a steam battle staff on top of that as well. That is the same drop rate, by the way, as a Samuraki and Spear. So it would be nice to get that instead. But yeah, that is the uh, hard combat task completed. Nice. Oh my god, we actually finally got one. That took so many kills. The first Samuraki and Spear for the team. That's going to be very nice. I'm not sure if that is going to be turned into a Samuraki and Hasta, honestly. Or if we're going to keep it as a spear to maybe do like Corp and stuff like that. So that is very nice to see regardless. And that's 50 KC on Krill, which is the last hard combat achievement for the boss. So and now I'm done here. But we're going to do probably one more trip because, uh, hey, you can't get a spear and then leave. Hey, that is another one. Steam Battle Staff. I think that is unironically like our fifth or sixth one. So I don't think we want more of those. And that is the second one. Actually, very short after that. We have been so dry here, but getting two Samuraki and Spears in a very short amount of time. And good thing we actually went and did this when we both had a Slayer task. It's paying off. Nice. First Slayer level of the video. 77 Slayer. Still need 10 more Slayer levels overall for the combat achievement to be completed but uh, yeah still nice so it is time 181 gargoyles is excellent because i am going to get 100 kc on the grotesque guardians which is one of the tasks i need for the hard diaries and i need to do 90 because i currently have 10 it is a pretty slow boss to do on this uh, gear set i have so this is going to be quite a grind, but it's a nice drops and maybe we can get some rares. Just quickly before we go and do that, I actually have quite a lot of Hispori tasks. One is kill all the flowers within 5 seconds, finish off Hispori with a special attack, and the last one is literally just 10 times. So I need to do this anyways as often as I can. Weed Whacker got it instantly, just had to throw some darts at the flowers. Very easy task. One last spec chance here. Let's see if it dies. Oh, there we go. Okay, I actually splashed the uh, specs before that, so kind of unfortunate. But there we go, Hesporescent. And also, I am now at 2kc, so I will need overall... Oh, 73 farming as well, nice. But overall, I will need uh, 8 more kills. The best advice I can give to people who have like a mid-tier account that want to do grotesque guardians is to actually bring Guthans and bring a toxic blowpipe for your range setup. It's actually really strong here, the toxic blowpipe. But the special attack also heals you, and that's the reason why I want to bring Guthans as well. Even though you can't actually use the Slayer Hammer with this, it has really shown that it can make me sustain a lot longer here. 
because when I wasn't using these things to heal, I could only do like two or three kills. Maybe if I get a food drop, maybe four kills. But with this set, if I get some decent heals, I can sometimes stay here for like seven to eight kills. Look at that. That's not a half bad drop. Runite or an Onyx Ball Tips, I'll take that. The halfway point has been reached, 50kc, and I have a question for you guys. What boss is your least favorite to do in the game? Personally, I wouldn't say that this is my least favorite boss. It's really close, I would say. It's such a hassle to do, especially on a lower tier account. But uh, otherwise, I would say probably the wilderness bosses, because of the risk of getting PK'd. I have to focus all the time, otherwise there's going to be like a team logging in beside me on Callisto and just uh, AGSing me and I'm dead. The first item, Granite Ring. Not very useful. I think it's a tank ring. Let's look at the stats. Well, now I already have a good tank ring on, but uh, yeah, it has only defense stats. You can actually imbue it as well, but it is still going to be vastly worse than the Ring of Suffering, so I'm not going to do much with that. How much does it look for? 9k. Wow, nice. Oh my god, here we go, finally, if I can get a hit in, this is actually going to be 2 in 1, that's going to be 78 Slayer, and on top of that, 100 KC done. That is quite a long grind actually to do with this account, that took me from like 10 KC, so 90 KC, probably took me like 6.5 to 7 hours, so nice to be finally done with that. I'm going to finish off on the normal ones and resume with normal Slayer grind, at least I got a lot of Slayer experience for that. I almost forgot, this is the loot that I got, some pretty decent Alki Balls, and you can also see that the coal here was actually surprisingly good, 2400, I'm just going to put most of this that I got in the storage, I guess these diamond ball tips is also pretty good, and whatever my team wanna do with them, they can do, I I'm not really going to use much of it myself. Oh my god, I've been so autopilot doing Slayer, that's 92 ranged, that's uh, halfway point experience wise to 99, so that's very nice to see. Oh, Odium Shard 3, that is the one we want. By the way, in my last video, I was talking about how we're trying to get the Odium Wards, and uh, we are doing some Scorpia right now. That's actually the second one. Dark World Order got one, and uh, we need a third, and we're done. And uh, there it is. Look at that. Odium Shard 3 again. We now have three of this. We have three from the Crazy Archaeologist, and we have zero from the Chaos Fanatic. We wanted three Odium Wards, so now it is literally only three from the Chaos Fanatic to get three shields. Oh my god, 400,000 Slayer experience, and this is the first burstable task I got. Interesting, uh, it is a very small one as well, unfortunately, but I only have like 195 points, and even if I would extend it now, I would not get this one extended. I'm not sure if I want to spend that just yet, but I will in the future. This one I will definitely get when I get to 80 Slayer. Nothing too eventful happened on that dustable task, but I had to AFK something, and I thought I might as well AFK some cannonballs, and look at that, 5,850 of them. I still have like 700 steel bars in the bank as well, but the main reason why I actually wanted to do that is because the task I was working on is Caliphites, and doing that without a cannon is terrible. So having a lot of these cannonballs now for those specific tasks and a couple of other ones is pretty nice. Probably going to go through these very quickly, but... Uh, I had to AFK anyways, and, and whenever I have something to AFK, I'm probably going to do cannonballs. But uh, I don't even have a cannon right now, so I'm going to go and buy that. I have the money for it. Just look at this. This is why you want a cannon on this task. It is disgustingly fast. I mean, they have 40 HP. It can hit like 30s, so I don't even have to do anything. I can just auto-retaliate, and it just kills everything for me. Actually, very close to three levels, I'm going to get 81 defense, 81 attack, and on this black demon, I'm going to get 79 slayer. Pretty nice. One more level until 80, and I might have that as a goal for this video. Might do more. We will see what happens. One big hit here, and that is 81 attack. One more hit, 81 defense. Nice. Managed to get myself a Barrow's task, and there is actually two hard tasks I can complete. Kill carols using only special attacks, and the second one is... Kill all of the brothers without using any prayer points, so should be easy enough. I'm pretty sure this should be it, it's like 1 HP, so let's get the d Halis back in with Piety. That is a 6, and just like that is completed, so only one more task to do now. Not that hard of a task, just had to do all the Bears brothers without having prayer points, and this should be it. Faithless Crypt Run completed. Now I don't have to worry about barrels for the hard diary anymore.
I'm always doing my spiritual creature tasks here for the ancient ceremonial gear chance. I already have the top, but look in the chat. Dovadas is doing the same thing. He got dragon boots. And before that, he actually got the legs. And I have the top, so we now have the top and the legs. And I think those are the best looking items, except for the helmet. So if I get the helmet, we have basically all the items I would want from that set. Just cosmetic wise, I, I just think they look really good. Look at that, that is the gloves achieved, not the helmet that I wanted the last piece, but that is a unique, we don't have that yet. It's the boots and the helmet, and we have the entire set as a team. With 14 kills left, that is a duplicate, at least I can put it in the storage if someone wants to use it. Now we have more of them, but they're not very useful. If you're wondering, they are the same stats as monk robes, so they are basically just fancier versions. It has been quite a grind, but that is now 80 Slayer achieved, which is a big milestone because that unlocked Necreals. Now I am basically going to use most of my points in the future to try to get as many Necreal tasks as I can, Ice Burst them for insane Slayer experience, and from now on the Slayer experience should be going up by quite a bit compared to what I've been getting. I haven't really been getting any Burst tasks unfortunately over this grind, and I am currently at like 141 tasks. I started at 103, so I've done like 38 tasks or something like that in this video, which is quite a bit. So I am coming up pretty close to that 150 point mark, which is going to give me a lot of points. I do have almost 300 points, so I do feel like it's definitely worth to uh, extend the Necreals if I do get them. They are just crazy experience. Let's see what the first one is. Oh, Dust Devils, that's a bursting task. Actually, second Dust Devil task I've got this in, uh, entire video, basically. But uh, yeah, let's hopefully get a lot of burst tasks from now on. Oh well, uh, Dust Battle Staff actually not even from a superior. That is actually in the collection log as well. That's the first one I've ever got. I think we do already have one or two of these, but we definitely do not have five. So that is a nice drop. And it's very rare, I feel like, from these normal Dust Devils. Let me check it up. Yeah, it was pretty rare. One in 4,000 drop rate. So pretty nice drop to get. Oh my god, look at that. I got 218 Necreals as a task, and I want to see how much Slayer experience there's going to be from one task. I currently have 16.6% of the level, so let's see where I end at. I actually killed like one Necreal, and I already got a superior, so let's see what we get from this one. Almost 3.3k experience, that is so nice, and uh, I will actually need a lot of these totem pieces, because I have to kill 10 Scotiso for the Hard Diary. So actually getting any superior, regardless of if I get any rare or not, it always gives a totem piece inside of this dungeon, so it is good for that reason. And as you can see in the chat, that is the task completed. I actually killed 290 Necreals because I was using the Bracelets of Slaughter. They basically, I don't know if it says here, occasionally prevent Slayer kill count from being decriminate decriminated? Is that even a word? Alright, anyways. Uh, it's 25% chance to not count a kill on your Slayer task, so it is very nice for getting more Slayer experience on task. But uh, yeah, I started with 16% Slayer experience on the level, and I have now 49%. So what is that, like 33% of a level, one third of a level on one single task. Hopefully I get a lot of these tasks. Now from the Slayer grind I've done in this video, which is 732,000 Slayer experience, I did not complete any hard clue scrolls because I didn't want to uh, waste any time farming as much experience as possible, but I did want to complete medium clue scrolls and I actually only got two of them, but uh, we are going to open them right now and see if we can get lucky with the ranger boots. Also, this is all the alkyballs I got, it's not uh, too many. Most of it actually from Necreals, like the Rune Full Helms, the Square Shields and all that. But uh, I was mostly on the Ancient Spellbook and that is why I did not Alk them. But let's open these two mediums and see what we get. First one is two uniques. Peaceful Blessing is a Gothics item I would assume, so it's not too useful in the God Wars dungeon. And the second one is... How is that a unique? Oh, it's from the other one. Okay, so this is just terrible rewards. Unlucky. Before I end the video, I want to say I am going to make League's content, so if you're looking forward to the Shattered Relics, I am going to make content on it, and I think it's going to be a very interesting and fun series, so hope to see you there. But for now, this is going to be the end of this video. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see the future Shattered Relics content or Group Iron Man content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Imagine yourself waking up having a bronze dragon task from Konar. When you complete this, you go from like 70 slayer points all the way up to 380. That's where I'm at right now. Welcome to another group Iron Man video.
Two things I quickly want to show off. Doug is doing Solcano and he is giving me most of the steel bars. So in my downtime, I can make cannonballs, which is going to be, of course, very nice for Slayer. Also, Dovidas has got the Ancient Ceremonial legs. I showed that off in the last video, but I did not get to put them on. And if I take them out, I can actually do this. Ceremonial. I have the top as well and the gloves. Oh, there they are. So uh, let's, uh, whoops, on the note, the chest, take it out and equip this and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks really good. I think it's such a cool looking set. The helmet is actually really cool as well. So if I do get spiritual creature tasks, I will always try to do them until we have the full set just because I think it looks so good. That is the task we're looking for, 221 Necreals, and I'm going to get 81 Slayer on this task as well. The Greater Necreals actually have zero magic defense, so I was thinking about skipping the Arims because it doesn't really give any magic damage anyway, it's just accuracy, and go with the Ancient Ceremonial items because this just looks so good. And on top of that, it is like Monk Robes, as I've said that multiple times at this point, but uh, plus 5 prayer on the bottoms and plus 6 for the chest, and that should actually help me stay here quite a bit longer. I'm a bit worried that the minions might be shredding me if I don't have the Arims on because they kind of hit through prayer or they hit with like ranged when you have to pray melee. So uh, we will have to see. It's an interesting test. Honestly, I would say that this is a lot better. I am doing basically the same damage. You can see the XP drops are very nice and my health is not really going down much at all. I can really just blood burst all my HP back. So I'm going to be using this for the future. There it is, 81 Slayer in the chat. Only six more levels to go until Kraken. 90 magic as well. Pretty nice milestone. If I get four more, I can just uh, barrage without boosting with Imbued Heart. Now, after that, I got 187 Blood Velts, and that is a very long task, but a good task to do. But it can be sped up quite a bit if you have a cannon in the Dark Mayor dungeon, where it's actually multi, and you can use a cannon. So what I'm going to do now is uh, smith 1,600 Steel Bars into Cannonballs. It's going to be many hours, but it's kind of chill on AFK, so shouldn't be that bad. And that is all the bars done. Let's see, 6.4k cannonballs nearly. That is actually going to last quite a while. I decided to use some of the granite dust I got from my 100 kills of the grotesque guardians on the cannonballs. I actually already used some of the cannonballs, but uh, 4.8k granite cannonballs. What this does, it increases the max hit of a cannonball from 30 to 35. And that is an overall DPS increase of 16.67%. So it's going to uh, get me some more value out of these cannonballs. I actually forgot to record it, but I hit 93 ranged like two tasks ago, but this level I am not going to miss. 92 hit points, that is the halfway point experience wise to 99, so pretty nice. I think my first, uh, or actually second 99, I forgot I even had fire making, but second 99 is probably going to be ranged, and then the third one uh, hopefully hit points. I completely missed that. I have been so autopiloting Slayer, but that is 82 Slayer. We need five more levels. And actually in three more levels at 85, I can do some Abyssal Sire if I get that as a task. So that's going to be very nice. Now, I've been doing a lot of Slayer. I've gained so many levels in the past days, and I actually want to take a bit of a break and I want to do something pretty interesting, which is on the Hard Combat Diary. I actually want to complete, if we can find it here, one Theater of Blood run, and you can actually do this as a group, but I want to do it solo. It is this one, complete the Theater of Blood entry mode one time. It's called entry mode because it is a part of the uh, Night at the Theater quest, which is a way easier version of the Theater of Blood, but I think it's... It's possibly decently hard to solo. I've never done it before, so it's going to be interesting to try. Definitely for sure, so uh, let's see how we do. Before we get into the Theater of Blood run, I have to do this Hispori kill. It is a part of the quest, and it is in the middle of Mauritania. It's kind of a weird feeling, but I guess I literally just do the same as in the Farming Guild. I just hit these, and I think I should be fine with ranged. Easy enough, that should be the kill, and now it is pretty much just teleport to the Theater of Blood after I cut here. I think I get some bark or something. If the ghost doesn't interrupt me, there we go. I got his spory bark, and now it is back to the Theater of Blood, and let's do this. No idea how hard this is going to be, but uh, I'm bringing a lot of hybrid items, I have less switches, this is going to be my inventory, and uh, yeah, let's just send it and see how it goes. Okay, well, so far I have done this boss before, I've done a full run before, and this is ridiculously easy. I mean, this is just the first boss, but it is meant to be soloed in a quest, so of course it's going to be quite a lot easier, but look at this. I'm going to uh, burst this minion, 
And it should literally just die from like one hit. Yeah, that is a lot easier, at least in the beginning here. It's already half HP as well. You can see in the normal mode, I think it has like thousands of HP. Yeah, quite a difference here. The last 1%. There we go. That should be the last hit. And that's the first boss completed. The bloat is going to be, of course, extremely easy, but I will have to do it in a couple of runs, I guess. I can't uh, DPS it down in one go with my gear. Oh, that's not good. And it turns around. Okay, so it's still kind of the same mechanics, I guess, as in the normal mode. It's just uh, very low damage on everything. Probably should have brought stamina now that I think about it, because here I ran out of run speed, but uh, should be getting the kill here. Oh, please do not splash again. Please! Oh no, this is so bad. There's no way he's not dead. Yeah, there we go. That is the bloat completed. Now over to Nylocast. This is going to be pretty interesting how you do the solo. So, Nylocast, what is this boss like? Well, it is going to spawn, as you can see right now from different corners, white, blue, and green spiders. You have to kill them with the respective style. So the green ones you have to kill with ranged, the white one you have to kill with melee, and the blue ones you have to kill with magic. There's also going to be some bigger ones, you will see in a bit, there is a blue one. You kill that with magic, and it is going to spread out two small ones. And the more spiders you kill, the lower the HP is going to be at the top of the screen. You have to get that to 20%, and as you can see, the pillars are getting attacked by the spiders. If a pillar breaks, you take, like... 25 damage or something like that so it's not the end of the world i guess the only way you would really fail this is if all the pillars go down but in the entry mode that is not that hard but the spiders also attack you so you take some damage your food is going to get drained and the better you are being tick perfect on attacking a spider every single time the less spiders there's going to be so a win win and when all the minions are dealt with, the boss spawns and it works exactly the same way. So when it's white, you have to actually hit it with melee when it's green, ranged, and blue magic. But you also have to protect the same thing. So if you're going to hit it with melee, you want to protect melee. And if it's ranged, you protect ranged and so on. And you do this all the way to the end. Usually you get two hits in with a style and then you have to swap again. So you can do two hits, get ready for the swap, and then just uh, deal with that. And there it is, that is the boss done, that feels like probably the most annoying one, maybe the last one is going to be a bit more annoying, but yeah, Nylokas is quite annoying even in the entry mode. Well, two Sara Brews and I can't get any more food, I have to kill Soda's Egg before I can actually buy more food, so this is going to be interesting. Here we go, this is the maze, of course if you're in a team you have to do this a bit differently, now I can just uh, basically run through the whole thing. And it should be fine. I'm not really sure how you would do it in the correct way. I know you can like skip click somehow, but I'm just going to be safe now. I don't have to rush it. Very easy. I actually thought this would be a lot harder than it was, but that is one more hit. And Soda Seg is dead. Yeah, now I can buy some more supplies. Hopefully it's going to be enough for uh, the other bosses. I think you only actually get these band-aids, which he like 16 or something. I'm not 100% sure. Let's go up here and see what it looks like. Search the chest. And uh, yeah, it's just band-aids, but I can get 10 of them, which is probably not that bad. Sarpus is definitely one of the bosses I am the least familiar with, and I think ranging it is going to be the best thing to do before it goes to lower HP. I'm not really sure how it works, I know you have to like spread out the poison, and then in the last phase, if he looks at you, meanwhile you hit him, you're going to basically just one-shot yourself. I'm assuming that in the uh, entry mode, it is going to be vastly less damage than like a 99 I can actually take a hit, I guess, and see how much damage I'm going to take, but uh, otherwise, in normal mode, it would be like a one-shot. Alright, so let's see if I do take a hit from Sarpus now. I'm just going to stand here and attack, and let's see how much damage I'm going to take when he looks at me. Maybe he's not even going to look at me, maybe I'm going to be very lucky, but uh, hopefully I only get hit for like a maximum of 40 damage. I think I got hit 15 by a one- okay, let's see how much damage am I going to take. 31 so yeah that would be like a one shot if you're doing normal mode but uh, definitely not in the entry mode but uh, that is Sarpus dead let's now go to Versic Vitter very interesting to see how this is going to go I really have no idea if I will be able to do this and I don't even know what happens if you die if you have to redo the entire thing or if I only have to redo Vitter I feel like this is going to be an absolute disaster of course it's going to be easy mode but I really don't know most of the mechanics of this boss 
I know that the Dawnbringer in the beginning here is very important. I wonder how it's going to work in the entry mode because usually you actually have to trade this off to people and it can hit massive amounts. And let's see if the spec bar is even going to be enough. I guess it's going to be enough. Or do I have to wait for one more? Oh no, I have to just wait it out for another spec? Interesting. Of course, normally now you would be running in between the attacks and hitting the boss to do more damage, but I don't know if I have to do that if I'm doing solo. Maybe that's even going to be enough. Oh my god, that is so close. Guess I can run in now. Man mode. Get it done. Oh, yeah, I think I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Nice. What? I got an elite combat task? You can actually do that in here? That is very strange that they allow you to do it in entry mode, but uh, hey, nice, I guess. What am I doing? I don't even have spec. Well, I'm definitely doing something wrong because I can't kill the boss. It's just getting healed by this minion all the time. I don't have the DPS actually to kill it, and this minion just takes zero damage. I killed one of them. It just respawned another one, so... Yeah, I'm kind of out of food here and not sure what to do, but it seems like I am just going to have to redo everything. Guess I'm dying here. Let's see what happens if I die. I am going to... I guess I'm going to just get teleported out and I have to redo everything, so... Let's see what actually happens. I am dead and I am going to go into the prison and then the run should be ending right here. Oh, so I'm still in the room, but I don't have any food, so what do I do? I figured out you actually have to have a poison weapon or a serpentine helmet to kill those healers. So I have that now reset everything and look at that. I actually got an elite combat task from the first boss as well. And right before Vitter, we get another elite combat task. Don't look at me. Nice to get this out of the way now anyways. If I will go for the elite diaries in the future. But uh, looking quite a bit better on the inventory now. And the healers should be no problem anymore with the uh, serpentine helmet. So let's see how this goes. So much better this time. And uh, I think I should be able to do it. Look at my supplies. I still have a lot of things. I don't really know what is going on in this phase. I'm going to be honest with you. But the damage I'm taking is kind of minor anyway. So I don't think it matters that much if I screw up. But uh, I just know the nets you have to run away from. So it seems to be fine. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I died literally on the absolute end of it to the mechanic where there's like a yellow thing you have to stand in and the tornado landed on me at the same time. Oh well, I do have enough supplies and ways for another attempt. It's going to suck if I have to do the whole thing again, but I think I have it down now. Oh my god, this is just so bad. What world am I on? I feel like my ping is just insane. I cannot run back and forth on Vitter without just tanking so much damage i'm clicking and it's like one second delay look at that delay oh my god i should have probably checked that out before i entered that is so bad after we do everything smile oh something i didn't really consider was just ranging it i saw every guide basically meleeing but yeah in the entry mode you definitely can range this i'm not sure how it works in the normal mode but uh, this is going to make it a lot easier. I had to redo everything. I kind of just scrapped using magic gear overall. I didn't really need it. And I brought as much food as possible if I would screw up here. But uh, seems very easy with range now. So should be good. Oh my god. Please. How much damage am I going to take for this? 45. Okay. That's how I died last time with a combo of the beam. But yeah. That is now the boss dead. And that is finally the night <laughs> at the theater done. That was a lot harder than I expected it to be. Also, the task, of course, the hard one, which I had to complete, the reason why I did this. I mean, it is very easy if you know what you're doing, but if you have basically never done this, it is definitely a learning experience. And if you're doing this yourself and you've never done it before, I would recommend something like this. Just a lot of food and, like, barely any switches. And range the final boss, because meleeing it is a lot harder. And the loot is going to be... Four battle staves and one palm tree. I actually didn't even expect to get any loot, so I, I guess that's not that bad. Wait, did I even bank it? And there it is. It is completed. Three antique lamps that can only be used on combat skills, I'm pretty sure. So what should we take? I guess I'll just put them all into ranged. It is the most useful skill anyways. 20,000? Is all of these 20k, so that's literally 60k range experience. That's uh, not bad, I'll definitely take that. But it's back to Slayer, and I got 250 Necreals, the dream task. But I have no money right now, and I have no runes to actually do bursting. So I'm going to take out all of this now that I'm on the normal spellbook. And I'm going to alk everything, try to restock on some runes, and then go back to Ancients and do the task.
Not bad, almost 4.3 million, so I'm going to try to get 16k death runes and 16k chaos runes, that's uh, the maximum amount you can have in your rune pouch, and then I won't have to restock for quite a while, but I don't know if this is going to be enough, I guess we'll see. Oh my god, I feel like this is the video of missing levels, but uh, I did hit 91 on bursting this task, so that is pretty nice. I mean, only three more levels and I don't have to boost anymore for the Ice Barrage spell. That is going to be extremely beneficial for Theater of Blood in the future, especially for the first boss. Oh my god, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. 238 Necreals again, almost back to back actually. And uh, it looks like we're going to get 83 Slayer for this video, which is a nice milestone to reach. Last Necreal task I did, I got 0 superiors in 300 kills with the Bracelets of Slaughter. Hopefully we get like 6 this time to make up for that. There it is, that's what I wanna see. Please give me a lot of these during the task. Thank you, Mr. Necriarch, for the imbued heart. Yeah. This is the third superior on this task, so getting a lot of superiors this time, which is very nice to see. Only halfway with the task as well, and we get some blood runes and totem base. 133 Calphites, and I'm going to hit 83 Slayer on that task. And because it is Calphites, I do actually want to try to do like one or two kills on the Calphite Queen. I will have to do 50 kills for the Hard Diaries to complete it in the future anyways, and I would like to gauge how hard the boss is to solo with my Bow Faradin and probably like a whip or something. I guess we'll see how goes. Now that I think about it, I think this setup is definitely not what I should have went for. I should have probably went for like tanky setup with a BGS main handing and just flinch it. I think uh, tanking the damage is pretty rough on Calphite Queen because she does so high damage even though she is a very old boss. You can see the damage I'm already taking now, so yeah, this is quite the challenge. I've never really done much of this boss, I haven't learned the flinching methods and all those, which would be the best bet of getting the 50 KC for the diary if I was a normal Iron Man. But because I am a group Iron Man, I think in the future I'm going to come back here and actually do this with a group and just get the 50 KC that way, because doing this as solo is just not very fun and I don't really feel like learning the whole new strategy. But at least I'm going to get one kill for the diary, I know- look at this damage! I had to teleport out because it was just slapping me. Look at this damage. It's such an entry level boss as well, which is kind of funny. Like it was released a long time ago and it still slaps this hard, which is kind of interesting. But uh, that is the kill 536 Slayer experience and we get some rune knives. But that is also, as you can see, the hard desert diary done. So nice to have that at least done for the future. But regardless, this is going to be 83 Slayer, which I did not miss this time, and this is actually a pretty big level because and now I can kill Spiritual Mages, which is going to be a better creature to kill when I get Spiritual Creatures than the Rangers, which I'm killing in the Ancient Prison outside of Nex. So that's going to be pretty nice. They actually recently made them able to drop Dragon Boots, which was apparently something they just forgot about, I think. Or maybe they just patched in recently, but they can drop them now. So they are overall very profitable and good for Iron Man. Now, before we end the video, I have a couple of important things to let you guys know. The first thing is that I'm going to be making Leagues content. And from now, there is two days left until the Shattered Leagues is going to be released. I am going to go for a pretty interesting goal in that series. So I hope you guys will watch that and enjoy it. But during the meantime of me creating that content, I am still going to be playing my group Iron Man. But I'm probably not going to be posting any videos on it. I am going to be doing a lot of AFK activities, meanwhile working on the other account. And if we go into the bank, I now have 2200 steel bars and barely any cannonballs left, and Doug is actually doing a lot of Salcano, so I am going to get a bunch of steel bars from him, and one of the AFK activities is going to be make a lot of cannonballs for when I get back and I can focus on this account, I can blast out 87 Slayer right away. So that is basically what I'm going to be AFKing on this account. I might do some other things as well, like Nightmare Zone AFKing, Woodcutting, or anything that is decently AFK on this account. The second thing I want to say is that I am very close to 15,000 subscribers, so if you guys want to help me out on that, that would be greatly appreciated. Of course, only if you enjoy the content, but yeah, would be nice to get 15k. Now for the absolutely last thing I want to say, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and until next time guys, take care. 
Welcome back to another group Iron Man episode. I am going to be AFKing a lot of cannonball making in this video. And because of that, I want to actually get 80 Hunter. Because look at this. Here is a crystal impling. And I am going to see a lot of them when I am smithing at this furnace. Thousands of steel bars making them into cannonballs. I am going to miss out on a lot of crystal implings if I do not get that. So I am actually going to go from 73 to 80 Hunter. The uh, only level I'm going to be recording before 80 Hunter, but this is a nice milestone, 75 Hunter achieved, 5 more levels to go, I should if I don't get PK'd, end around 3000 black chins, and I'm not really sure what to use them on, I might just train range with them, because the other option would be at Kriara, but if we're doing it as a 5 man anyways, I don't think we need them, but I'm going to talk with my team about it before I use them. And that is the last trap I have to do. I am at Black Salamanders, by the way, because I got PK'd a couple of times at the Black Chins, and I just wanted to finish 80 Hunters, so there it is. But I managed to get like 1,400 Black Chins, and I think the best way of using them is literally just to get myself closer to 99 ranged. I talked with the team, and they said that we don't really have any use for it, so just use them for ranged. I do want to stack up on some impling jars, so I don't know if this is the best way of doing it, but I just went to Puro Puro and I catch a random amount of uh, these implings or random implings, and I just trade them in for jars, I bank them, and repeat. I should be fine with like 100 of them. I, I don't really think I'm going to catch 100 crystal implings, but it's just nice to have. It has been a very long time since I recorded, and I have been AFKing so much cannonball smithing. You guys have no idea. I am going to show you guys how many cannonballs I have in the bank, as well as how many crystal implings I managed to catch, meanwhile doing all the smithing. So let's go ahead and do that. 40,000 cannonballs. And I still have steel bars left over. That is incredible for my Slayer grind. And I also collected exactly 40 crystal implings. So let's go ahead and open them now and see what we get. Down to the last three implings. No signet yet, but you never know. Could be the last one. And... We did not get a signet. The crystal implings can drop Raynor seeds, but I actually got zero of them. But this is all the loot that I got. But I still have some Raynor seeds in the bank if we have a look. 16, I can farm those. Meanwhile, continuing Slayer now with all these cannonballs that I've made should be quite effective. We are back to Slayer and look at that, 247 Necreals, I'm already on the Ancient Spellbook, I have set up a counter here, I have done 36,000 Slayer experience so far, but uh, this is going to go up quite a bit on this task. Very big level incoming here, this is going to be 92 magic, I just hit it right there, and that unlocks Blood Barrage, which is actually going to be very helpful in the future, especially on, for example, the Abyssal Sire, there is uh, some phases where you basically in the end heal off the minions and having the blood barrage is going to heal me quite a bit more than the blood burst so nice to have so i think all the way until 87 slayer i'm just going to do one slayer level per video because every single level at this point takes quite a while and i don't want to wait like an entire week to post the video so i'm going to do that and other than that i'm going to work on the hard combat achievements because there is still quite a lot of them left mostly casey on wilderness bosses and a few tasks on those so it should be some interesting things to do meanwhile working towards the 87 slayer i finally got it i got a 192 lizardman task i recently unlocked them and and I want to get the hard current diary done before I do this because you can use the slayer helmet with the Shazin gear if you complete this. I have basically all the requirements, the farming I can just boost very easily, so it should not be too much of a big deal to complete this. And I just thought I might as well do listen man on task to try and get a dragon warhammer. If I do not get it, it's not the biggest deal. And that's the medium diary completed, might as well just complete the hard one as well before I go and collect the rewards, it should be very fast. Monster Examine, I've never cast this in my entire life and this is going to finish the hard diary, there we go. Alright, it is now completed and I guess trolls are combo level 69, we knew that already, he has 90 hit points and some interesting stats, but let's go and get the reward. So first the medium reward with uh, an experience lamp, of course all of this is going into herb lore and also we got the Radas Blessing 3 which uh, only has one prayer bonus right now. 
It can get a 2 plus if I complete the elite diary, but that is a bit too far off. But it is pretty good for this teleport right here. You can teleport right to uh, Konar. This is quite a lot faster than I what I've been using before. I used the fairy ring down there. But uh, yeah, let's use these lamps. I think this is the hard one. 15k and another one for 7.5k. It should actually be a level, I think. I was pretty close. Yeah, 72 Herb Lord. Now I have to go and talk to a guy that is actually pretty close to here. He is right here to make my Slayer Helm work as a Shazian 5 Helm. This guy right here is the guy you have to talk to, and he is actually a relative of Neve, so that's why he's called Captain Cleave. So let's talk to him and do that, and it should be done now, I guess. Yep, that is it. So now I can use this as a Shazian helmet. Oh my god, Celestrus Seed. What is the drop rate of that? I need to look that up. It's not as rare as a Dragon Warhammer, luckily, but uh, 1 in 3,125. Task completed for a grand total of zero Dragon Warhammers. Shaking my head. I actually luckily landed on a Commander Siliana task. I just picked three because I don't really need that many kills to level up and also get this achievement. Commander Siliana Adept for 50 kill count on Siliana. I was already at 49, so that was very easy. Also finished the second achievement, which is the last Commander Siliana achievement I needed, and got 84 Slayer on the kill, which was the Commander Showdown, have all the minions killed when Siliana dies. Now the first wilderness boss I want to complete is the Chaos Elemental, it is pretty easy, I have to do 3 tasks, and that is 50 kill count, kill the Chaos Elemental without it equipping any of my items, and then kill the Chaos Elemental without taking any damage from its attacks. All of these are pretty simple to do, and the 50 kill count is just a time commitment, so let's do it. I could not get the uh, take zero damage on the first kill because of where the boss was actually spawned, but the hoarder achievement where you basically don't get any of your items unequipped, completed. I realized I had to bank anyways because you can't flinch with ranged, but I got attacked by this PKer at Chaos Elemental right after a kill, and I have no idea what he's doing. I, he might even die to me. What is he doing? And he TPs out. What did I just witness? It was just staff bashing me the entire time. This should be the flincher achievement completed, but compared to the bow Ferdinand and the crystal armor, this is extremely slow. So I only wanted to do one kill like this, and I'm going to just tank some damage and use the bow Ferdinand for the 50 kill count. That is kill number 25, no rares yet, but that is the halfway point, and it is pretty fast, so I should be done with this pretty quickly. And that's the last kill for 50kc and the Chaos Elemental Adept. We got uh, no Dragon Two-Hander and no Dragon Pickaxe. But we are going to go to Venonatis now. Try to get 50kc there. I think that should be decently easy as well. And Venonatis has way better drops as well than the Chaos Elemental. So we might also get a Dragon Pickaxe there. Who knows? Well, initially I was just thinking that I can just stand in this tile and shoot the boss like I'm doing now, but uh, I realized the bow Ferdinand is not as fast as the magic short bow, and you actually need to attack at this specific speed for it to be stuck like this. But um, the magic short bow with rune arrows is not very good. So this is either going to take ages for me to get 50 kills, or I might have to do the other save spot, which takes a lot longer to do. I guess I'll see what I'm going to end up doing. I'm not joking, I think this actually took me like 7-8 minutes to do, but uh, what is even my KC? 5 KC, so I will have to do 45 more kills. I am definitely doing the longer save spot that is over here at the north. I'm not doing that for 7 minutes per kill. Getting him stuck in this spot is quite a lot more annoying, but yeah, it is more chill and it works with the bow Faradinan, so this is the spot I'm going to be using. And here we go. I was expecting this. There's a lot of PKers at Venonatis, and at the spot I am standing, it is actually multi, and it is pretty risky. So, unfortunately, I'm probably going to die here. I don't have, like, any food left. And I am TB'd, so I am going to just have to accept that I'm probably going to die a couple of times. Well, that is unfortunate. I just lost my Archer's Ring, because before I was using Black Dehydes, I was uh, not risking my Anguish, my Bowfred, and the Archer's Ring. When I swapped the Crystal Armor, I forgot that. So, I brought too many items. Well, after that, I have now at least reached the halfway point. By the way, the Archer's Ring is not super useful anywhere, really, which is uh, why I'm not that annoyed by it, but yeah, it kind of sucks. 
And here it is. This is the last banana. This kill for 50 KC. I am so happy this is done. I have been dealing with a lot of PKers at this place, and I just do not really enjoy wilderness bosses, especially this one because there's so many PKers. But yeah, that is the Venonatus Adept done. Now to take a break from the wilderness stuff, I do actually have two Temporos achievements I can do. One of them is Y Cook, which is really easy. That is just doing uh, one Temporos solo kill basically. And this one is I need the full Angler's outfit and subdue Temporos one time wearing it. Of course, getting the Angler's outfit takes some time, but uh, should not be too terrible of a grind. Oh, there we go. That's the first piece. Took like seven runs. What is this man? I just hit 70 fishing, I've gained 34,000 fishing experience, all at 4.6k an hour, and I have done 59 fishing trawlers, getting one item. Every item is 1 in 12, so I am pretty unlucky. Is this the one? Are Number you actually on fishing trawler 70? Yeah, 70 fishing trawlers. Exactly. Oh, I got the legs! Nice. Oh my god, finally, 70 <laughs> Oh, Only need two more now. Oh, second blob. Second. Oh, I got the angler's hat. Nice. Now I'm getting spooned. That was like four, four or something runs after that. Yeah, this is the one. If it means anything, uh, like everyone said, this is the one every single time I entered the inferno while streaming it. So loot number ninety is going to be the last one. Wait, you already? Okay, so this is ninety. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now you're more dry than anyone Wait, that I've ever back seen. Back to back oysters. That's <laughs> back, back to that back, back pretty oysters. Crazy. Pretty good. That pretty no, that's actually crazy that you're more dry than literally anyone I've ever seen, like even on the internet. That is actually pretty crazy. I do, yeah. I've never seen a player more dry than you. Here, dude, this is the one. This is the one. 91. Oh, it's copium. not. Big copium. Actual copium. 90, not the one. Oh, finally, I have the angler boots. That took such a long time. Holy, that was 95 trawlers to finish the entire set. Finally, I can complete the Temporos Hard Diary parts. Quite a lot easier than getting the angler set, but feels good to be done now. But that is both of the hard achievements for Temporos done. The dress like you mean it, having the full angler's outfit, and Y Cook getting 10 permits in one, which you have to do solo. It's impossible to do in the mass world. But yeah, that is now done. Everything on Temporos is done for the hard diaries. Now on the hard diary, there is the Scotizo veteran, which is 10 Scotizo kills, and there is also the Hespori adept, which is 10 kill accounts. On the Hespori I have currently five, so I'm halfway there, but for Scotizo, I only have two kill counts. But I do have a, quite a bunch of totems in the bank, I have six of them, so I can get my KC up to eight, which is not enough, but it is pretty close, and I would like to do that right now. But before I do that, I do need to complete this hard clue scroll, and I do want to complete every hard clue that it drops, so we can open seven clue scrolls at the end of it. While we have neither a headband or a crozier, so I guess some of the hard clues, unfortunately, will have to go to the ground. Now, this hard clue step I actually can get all the items for. Mystic Fire Staff you can actually make after doing the Scorpion Catcher quest, which is a very fast one, so I might as well do it. I do not have it completed, even with 226 quest points, and I will show you guys how to do it after. And that's the quest done, and now you just talk to Tormac, and you said you can enchant my battle staves. I have it in my inventory. Let's do the Fire Battle Staff enchanted. 40k, and that is now a Mystic Fire Staff, so I have all the items for the clue. And this is the last Cotisa kill for the video. I did only have to drop one hard clue scroll, so we are going to have six after this one. Let's see what we get. And we get a Dark Totem base and four Ancient Shards. That is definitely not bad. So from those Cotisa kills, I got six hard caskets. And what we still need is the Blessed Dehyde Bodies and the Boots. So let's see if we can get any of those. First one is nothing too great. Nothing again. Can I not get this bad caskets, please? What? <laughs> oh my god. At least I'm getting some collection log items, but uh, this might have been some of the worst hard clues I've ever seen for Uniques. Last one. Redeem. Armadillo page 1. Yeah, that is pretty bad. I think this is a good point to end the video. I made some nice progress, especially on the wilderness bosses on the hard combat diary. I am pretty happy to be done with half of the wilderness bosses at this point. Of course, we still have Vetion and Callisto left, so that is going to be kind of annoying to do, but it is what it is. Also, in the next video, I do hope to actually get to 85 Slayer and do some Abyssal Sire. I need to get 100 KC on this boss 
if we can find it it's right there so that's going to be quite a time commitment before i do end the video though i do want to quickly shout out that you can actually become a member on my youtube channel now i have this set up for a while but i have never really mentioned it it's only like three dollars a month if you want to support me it gives some nice badges and that's about it also i will uh, list your name at the end of every video so if you just want to support my content you like it and all that you have the freedom to do that if you want to through the membership program you just have to click the join button under the channel but until next time guys take care what a great way to start a video 183 listed men let's see if we can get that dragon warhammer well we unfortunately got no dragon warhammer from that task but we have a superior here so let's see what we get oh missed battle staff that i think that is actually the first for the team we have a couple of dust battle staffs but uh, that is the first missed one not sure what the use for it is but i'm sure there is some use for it konar you have forced my hand i am going to take the maximum amount of vetion kills because i might as well do it on task i need 50 kill count anyways for the achievement diaries so let's do it 39 kill count unfortunately i can't use a slayer helmet because i'm going to use a salve amulet but this is the motivation i need to uh, get it done so initially i was going to try to do with the vigorous chain maze but uh, you need to risk like 1000 ether and we don't really have any ether every single time and there's quite a lot of pkers there so i'm just going to go with a bandos god sword and have it on crush right now i'm not really risking anything i think what i'm risking at most is the proselyte the climbing boots rune gloves which are like nothing worth and then all my potions and the salve amulet i can obviously easily get a lot more salves so i should be fine with this setup so if you're using a vigorous chain maze you usually get one attack in here and then now you would get two in but because i'm using a bgs i only have time for one and then i have to go back here and i have to wait and make sure that i can attack right away when i click the boss because otherwise i will take a hit so it is going to be quite time consuming to do it this way but it is the best way i think Scrap all of this I just said because I realized we have some Rakian spears and I could just make a Hasta with that and I think that with a Dragon Defender is better than the Bandos God Sword. Here it is, we got the spear turned into a Hasta. Now I can't actually equip this yet so I will have to do some Barbarian training but I think I brought all the things to do that. Man, I can't believe I have not finished this quest. Uh, type 1 at Trio is now done. I had to complete this to be able to actually uh, wear the uh, Hasda, as this guy says in the chat about time. Yeah, I haven't been able to fish Karambons on the account since the beginning because, I mean, everyone else on the team already has, so leech time. That is the Barbarian training done, so let's see if we can equip this. There it is. The Hasda is now equipped and we are going to try to get that Vetion kill count done. Now with the Hasta I should be able to get two hits in and also I have the defender so I have even more accuracy so one hit and should be able to do two hits here and then we move over to this tile again and yeah it's still stuck so I can definitely do this. Oh, that is a drop I was actually waiting for, 100 super compost, I was completely out so that's going to be so nice. Oh, long bone? Really? I think that's 1 in 400. Unfortunate. There it is, the first Raynor drop. That's 100 prey potions, which is actually so good. I'm going to send this to Max Nick. He will get the herb lore experience for making them, and that's going to help for my Slayer supplies. Oh, that's back to back. 100 Raynors again. That is like one of the best drops, if not the best drop I can get. Except, of course, the Ring of the Gods. But uh, 200 Prey Pots already in two kills. I mean, listen, if you're going to PK me, that's all good. It's in the wilderness. But do you really need this many people for one person? I'm risking like, I would say 15k, maybe a bit more than that. Maybe like 20k or 30k. But yeah, congrats to them, I guess, on that 1k split. As you can see in the chat, it says I killed a 39 Vetion, but I only have 37 kill count. It's because it works kind of weird sometimes if I do like half of its HP and damage. I leave because I get PK'd. Sometimes that can count as a kill. I'm not really sure why, but uh, I'm going to stay here until I have 50 KC anyways. Dragon Bones? Oh, I even forgot you could get these. But yeah, that's also a very good drop, like uh, 30k prayer experience or something. Here it is. This is the last kill of Vetion that I will have to do. Kill number 50. 
And this is actually such a relief to be done with, honestly. I mean, the loot was very nice, the 200 Raynars, and I actually got another Super Compost drop. But uh, there we go, that is the achievement done. I won't come back here for a very long time. This actually took basically the entire day. If you're wondering how many times I got PK'd, I probably died like 8 times and I got attacked maybe 15. Yeah, that's how many PKers are here. Back to Slayer, and that is the first Drake's task, actually, of the account, and I just barely have the level for it, so that's why 84 Slayer is the requirement. They can drop some nice upgrades for the boots, so I am just going to try and do this. Oh my god, I actually got the Drake's Claw, which is the best item I could get. This is to get the Brimstone Boots, so I'm just going to go over here and do that in the same clip. I think I can do it at least. Not sure if you need a chisel or anything, but uh, this is just straight up better versions of the uh, Boots of Stone. So let's do that. Oh yeah, I, I need to have them equipped so I don't die here, but I guess I go outside and do it. At the end of the task as well, 22 kills left. So let's add them and proceed with the alchemical combination. And that is the Boots of Brimstone. Look at that. It has pretty good stats. I I'm definitely going to use that for all the future tasks in this dungeon. Oh my god, I actually completely missed this because I wasn't thinking about getting ranged experience from the cannon, but uh, that is a 95 ranged. I'm getting pretty close to 99, which is uh, very nice to see. It's going to be very helpful at next, especially in the future. Another boss task that's actually in the wilderness. There is a task I still need to do for this, which is uh, use no prey potions for 10 kills in a row. So basically just pray at the altar close to it. Also, we still need the Odium Wards from this boss. So I'm going to do 39. And uh, we have three Odium Wards of all the other types, but uh, we still need three from this boss. So if I would get any of them, that would complete an Odium Shield. Killing the Chaos Fanatic with a Slayer Helmet, the Crystal Body, and the Bow Faradinan is ridiculously good. And I think this should be the last kill, and I hope that the achievement is going to be done. I was thinking about doing this pretty soon anyway, so might as well do it now that I got a Slayer task for it. That should be the last hit. And do we get it? Yes, we do get the achievement. Praying to the gods. Oh. My. God. I just got the pet. Uh, it's 1 in 1000 from uh, this boss. I think it's 1 in 300 from the actual Chaos Elemental, but I guess it's time to ensure it. I have 6.6 .6 million, so I don't really care that much about 500k, so let's do that and let's check. We now have the Hunlef, or Younglef, I guess, and the pet Chaos Elemental. Two pets I actually really like. And that is the task done. I did not get a Odium Shard, but come on, I can't complain with that Chaos Elemental pet. Pretty happy with that. And actually, next task is going to be task number 200, so that will be quite a lot of points. But here we are. After these die, I will actually get 85 Slayer, which is the second to last big Slayer milestone. There it is. And uh, the last now we need is 87 for the Kraken to be able to complete the entire Hard Combat Diary. But with that 85, I'm going to finish this task and then try with all my Slayer points, I have like 800 of them, to try to get an Abyssal Demon task to get that Abyssal Sire done. 189 Abyssal Demons, the perfect task. And I only had to use like 300 points for that, so not too bad. I did skip a couple of tasks. I probably should not have st skipped like uh, 12 Black Dragons or something like that. But I really just wanted to get into the Abyssal Sire. If you're wondering, by the way, the drop rate of the Unsired, which is the rare drop you can get from the boss, is 1 in 100. And I need to do exactly 100 kills. So I should get one, theoretically, from doing all these kills, but this is going to be very time-consuming. The boss is very slow to kill, and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. On the screen right now, you can see all the achievements that this boss has that I have to get. The uh, Don't Stop Moving and Don't Whip Me is very easy, but they grow up too fast, and Abyssal Adept is the harder ones. So I will have to figure out a way to do that. I do have some plans, so let's see if those will work. Here we go, this is the first kill on the account for some Abyssal Ashes, and we got the Don't Whip Me Challenge done, which is just uh, to not get hit by any of the tentacles. I did take a hit from one of the Miasma pools, so I did not get that, but I should get it within a very short amount of kills. Pretty sure this is the one. Yes, Don't Stop Moving, and also got an Elite Task, Perfect Sire, so yeah, that was a good kill. Now let me talk about the last combat achievement except the 100 kills I had to do, which is called They Grow Up Too Fast. 
This one is very tricky, especially with my gear. If I had max gear, this would not be as much of a challenge as it was. It ended up taking me around three hours to complete this. I used two different strategies and the second one was the successful one. But if I had, as I said, max gear, I could have done it with the first one. But it just turned out to be way too difficult. And what the achievement is, is that you do not let any of the minions when they spawn turn into the bigger versions and they do that pretty quickly so you basically have to kill all the minions really fast when they spawn now after you kill the vents the first phase of the boss is pretty easy to kill them because it only spawns one at a time and they have 15 hp and you have a decent amount of time to kill that 15 hp so that is not the difficult part but when it goes into the second phase, it will actually spawn 4-5 to five minions in the same tick, and you have to kill them all pretty fast, and this is where I used Chinchompas. If I did manage to kill all of them before any of them turned into the bigger versions, I had an infinite amount of time before the actual DPS race started, so this was a good time to know if I was doing well or not. Now when you get the boss down to 139 HP, it will teleport you and this is where the massive DPS ray starts because it will spawn a massive amount of minions, there is no way you can kill these, so you just have to burst down the boss really quickly before any of them mature. So my initial strategy was to run away from the explosion and then use the dragon halberd spec because I do not have the crystal halberd which definitely would be a lot better. But it is still possible to do this with a dragon halberd but this is where my lower stats really come into play. Having like 85 strength or 80 attack really does uh, damage my DPS chances here and getting down 139 HP in a few seconds is very difficult. So after doing probably like 10 attempts and failing every single one at this stage mostly, I actually decided to change the strategy to a way more risky one, but it felt like I had to do it to be able to do it. I actually changed my spellbooks over to Lunars to be able to vengeance the massive hit that always hits 60 damage when the boss explodes, and that reflects 45 damage. So that would be 45 less damage I would have to do in the DPS race, which should be able to help me enough to get the kill. The more annoying part of having Lunars though overall in the fight is that you don't have Shadow Barrage and you don't have Blood Barrage either, but Shadow Barrage actually stuns the boss in the first phase so you can kill the vents, but if you do not have that you have to do 50 damage to the boss and that will stun it instead of just using the Shadow Barrage which obviously is instant. But probably after an hour of doing vengeance attempts, I actually finally got the achievement and as I said this took me around 3 hours to do. If you're a max account though, this is not nearly as hard. If you just have the crystal halberd, you can just basically pray for massive specs with the really high combat stats and finish the boss pretty quickly. The halfway point for some coins, 50 kill count done. So 50 more to go, but no unsired yet unfortunately, but we still have a good chance. And here we go, this is kill number 100 on the Abyssal Sire. Unfortunately, unless I get one here, I did not get a single unsired. But that is now all the achievements done on the Abyssal Sire for the Hard Combat Diary. And I'm very happy with that. I might do a couple of more kills to try to get that unsired. Now this is good news, look at this, I actually got a bottomless compost bucket donated to me by Dark Will Order, he got an additional one and I think I am the last one to actually have this, so he just gave it to me and the volcanic ash as well, and with the super compost I got from Vetion, I can make that into ultra compost, when you put it into the bottomless bucket it actually doubles it, so I will have 400 ultra compost for uh, future farm runs, that is beautiful. Ended up doing 29 more kills and still no unsired. I feel like my time can be better spent somewhere else. So this is where I'm going to stop. But uh, yeah, finished every achievement for the boss. Finishing the task on just the normal Abyssal Demons. But I actually forgot to show you guys the loot. If you're interested on what I got from the Abyssal Sire, this is it. 129 kills for 6.3 million worth. And I think the most important things here is the orbs. I think that's very good for the uh, battle staves I have to make them into actual good profit. As well as the cannonballs is pretty good, 900 of them. That's quite a lot of time saved smithing them in the future if I would need them. And yeah, overall the loot is pretty decent. Look at that. That is the first superior Abyssal Demon for the account. And we get... A totem base, that is not bad. I still need more totems for Scotiso. I think this is the last base I need. I have one more totem, I have 8kc, and that means I only need two more totem pieces to be able to complete Scotiso. 
Have a look at this in the chat. 96,900 experience from this task. That is, of course, mostly from the sire. But yeah, the sire is not terrible experience, but it takes a very long time to kill. So overall, in the long run, the XP per hour is not the best. Now, with the Abyssal Sire done, though, the next goal, of course, is going to be to complete the Kraken tasks, which are the last Slayer requirements I will work on for quite a while, and that is 87 Slayer. Of course, I also got some nice amounts of experience from doing the Sire, as I just said, and I actually picked up a new task of Abyssal Demons because they are pretty good at barraging experience as well, so that's going to be another task I can get a good experience from. But uh, for now, I'm going to end the video here. Happy with the progress. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see the future uploads. And until next time, guys, take care. Starting off the video, checking my mahogany trees, trying to get some Hespori seeds. On the first one, I do get one. On the second one, I also get one. And is the third one going to also give me one? That would be great. Unfortunately not. But 74 farming. So for the Hard Combat Diaries, I have to get 10 Hespori kill counts, so getting these two was really good. I think I have one in the bank, and that means with 6 KC, I only need to get one more Hespori seed to be able to complete all of the kills. And can we get another bottomless bucket on this one? It would be kind of funny. Nope. But uh, at the seed, I guess it's pretty good. Kind of at the end of my Abyssal Demon task, and I actually get back-to-back -back superiors, and this is actually a very important superior. This is going to give me, regardless of anything, oh, a surprise exam as well, the last totem piece I need to get 10 Scotiso KC. So even if I get nothing good, that is going to be the last totem piece I need. And let's see, what is it going to be for the last superior that I need? And it is just the Dark Toad on top, and I don't know if I will be able to make this, but uh, hopefully the exam should be fine as well. Can we get it? Yes, nice. What is this? I just got two superiors up on the same game tick. Look at that. And maybe this is going to be the time we get an imbued heart. Let's see if we can get lucky. Let's see if we can actually kill them on the same tick as well. That's a big hit. Oh, so close. 4.2k experience, a totem base. And another totem piece. So no imbued heart or eternal gem, unfortunately. But uh, that was like 8,000 experience right away with Slayer. One more Abyssal Demon. And I am going to get 86 Slayer, which is not the last level I need. But uh, one more and I am done with the Slayer grind. So 374,000 Slayer experience left. It is going to be quite a while. Probably like uh, 15 hours of Slayer. Depends how many burst tasks I get. But we are getting closer to done with all the Slayer requirements for the Hard Diaries. Bit of a random story, but I just thought of this meanwhile killing Shamans. Back in actual 2007, I remember having like 30 million cash. And I had sat on that amount of cash for the longest time because I was kind of scared of wasting any money. But I ended up buying a Bandos chestplate for basically all that money. And the first thing I did was I went to God Wars Dungeon and I tried to kill Bandos. And I instantly died. I went into the room with like three other people, obviously crashed them, but I didn't understand. I was a kid and I just got two banged by the boss. And that was probably the best day those guys ever had because uh, the mechanic of death back in the days was that if you died after like one minute or something, everything that you lost was on the ground for everyone to pick up. So I basically had 30 million cash for like a year on my account or maybe a bit less than that and I was so scared of spending it. I finally spent it and I lost everything within the same day. So if you've ever had something like that happen, let me know in the comments or like what is the first big spend you ever did in old school RuneScape. Oh, the more Chaos Fanatic I can do, the better. I'm going to do 39. We still need those Odium shields. So let's hopefully get one. Oh my god, I got the freeze right away. This is it. Oh, big hit, d -claws. He's just dead, there's no way. Oh my god. Oh, I love having d -claws in LMS, especially when it's early on. I got this, like, literally in the beginning. The reason why you saw that last man standing clip is because I wanted to get the blighted super stores. I don't want to waste normal prey pots in the wilderness. And that is the last kill. We did not get a Odium shard. And my overall kill count now is 376. And the collection log is looking like this. So if I do get that Odium shard, I have actually completed the log. But uh, we still need three of them. Duradel was very kind to me and he gave me a Calphite task and uh, normally I would do this on the small ones with a cannon for really good Slayer experience but I remembered I actually need 50 kill counts on this boss, the Calphite Queen 
to get the hard combat diaries done and this is actually quite a long grind it's a very annoying boss to do and i haven't really done much of it so i'm not good at it at all i will have to learn how to do it efficiently but i might as well do it on a slayer task if i'm going to do 50 kill counts anyways so that is why i decided to do this boss now there's also another achievement that i have to do which is going to be very easy to do uh, it is just reduce the defense of the Calphite Queen and then kill it. And of course, we have a Bandos God Sword. So all I have to do is land one spec, get the kill, and I should be done with the achievement. Also, I am going to bring Thralls. So I'm on the Ar Archeo Spellbook. And uh, I'm probably going to stay under the boss quite a lot because uh, the boss hits very, very hard. I've actually been here one time before to get just one kill to try it out. But uh, this is the second kill, aka the first kill of this trip. I think the best drops we can get is like wine of samurai and <laughs> as i say that we get wines of samurai because we need it for ranging potions and they're kind of annoying to get so yeah that's very nice let's see if we can land a bgs spec and get the achievement that's a miss one more chance can we get it please piety on and oh we got it okay so uh if i do get the kill now i'm going to get the achievement all right there it is 500 experience in slayer and that should be the achievement yes it is a very good drop as well but that is the chitin penetrator wow that's 300k snapdragons are worth quite a lot now uh, another one down what can we get magic seed oh my god these drops are so good a calphite queen kind of low-key a good money maker maybe now, I am kind of considering maybe bringing only melee because you can kind of flinch it in this phase as well. I've kind of learned how to do it now and I can actually just let my thralls do a lot of the damage as well. Meanwhile, standing under here, I guess uh, I might try a couple of different things just to see what's best. I'm probably going to end up doing it this way without the ranged setup and just let my thralls do a lot of the damage in the second phase. It is protecting melee, but that doesn't mean you can't still hit it with melee. It's just reduced damage and harder to hit. So it's going to take longer to do it this way, but I don't have to use barely any supplies and I can do more kills per trip, which actually saves quite a lot of time. So it's probably the same amount of time to get the 50 KC if I would flinch because I don't have to bank as often and uh, it will save supplies. So I think it's the best thing to do. That's a five kill trip. Look at my inventory and that's really good. And the reason why I have to leave is not the food. It's just a prayer potion. So if I bring more, I could probably do more than five kills a trip. So flinching is definitely better. I'm going to start using the old graphics again. If you want to know why, check the description. I don't want to spend time in the video explaining. Here we go. This is actually going to be the last kill and thralls with flinching made this a lot easier than I anticipated this grind to be. I was really dreading this, I thought this would be a massive pain, but I could do like 8 kill trips now and then with the flinching method, so yeah, really not that bad. And here we go, this should be the achievement, Calphite Queen Adept, and let's have a look at the loot. As I mentioned earlier, I did do 1 kill before, but 49 kills here on the tracker, and look at this, 360 wines of Samurai. That's really good because we were actually lacking those and the herbs as well are really good. The potato cactus is also super nice. I think that's for making magic potions and magic seeds as well. So overall very good loot. Well I'm really good at keeping track of my slayer experience and I'm really close to 87 but uh, I always miss my range levels. That is 96 ranged, only 3 more levels to go. I am so lucky at Drake's. That is another Drake's claw. I think my overall kill count on Drake's is like 190 now, and I think it's 1 in 500 roughly. So that is Brimstone Boots for another teammate. Finally, it is time. All the Slayer grinding has paid off, and it's going to be the last one Slayer experience for 87 Slayer in the chat right there. And I'm going to finish the task, and then we're going to try to get a Kraken task. I only have like 120 Slayer points, so getting one might be a bit hard, but hopefully I'm lucky. Okay, I guess I'm just the luckiest person in the world. 116 Cave Kraken, that's all I need to be able to complete all the tasks, and I have zero points left. So that was literally the last chance I had, so let's go and do it. So there are three achievements I have to complete on this boss, all of them being actually very easy. The first one being kill Kraken 25 times in a privately rented instance without leaving the room. That is surprisingly easy because the boss does basically no damage to you. The second one is kill the Kraken after killing all four tentacles. Also surprisingly easy, just kill the tentacles and then the boss, they do not have that much HP. And the last one is just a normal kill count, kill the Kraken 100 times. And that's the first achievement done, unnecessary optimization, which is kill all the tentacles before you kill the boss, easy enough. 
Killing the Kraken boss was made so much easier with the fishing explosives, you can buy this from any Slayer Master, just use them on the Whirlpool, and you do not have to tag any of the tentacles on the side anymore, and you don't actually have to click on the boss, you just automatically attack as well, look at that. This is the reason why Kraken is actually one of the most relaxing bosses in the game, which is actually pretty profitable as well. I have done 25 kill count now, and that is the hard combat achievement done, and I have so much food left, and actually most of the food I ate was to get space in my inventory. Look at that, Trident of the Seas full on 78 KC, so we're getting pretty close to done with all the tasks, but that is a nice drop to see. Yep, uh, how many kills later was that? That was like 9 kills or something, 78, 75, so 7 kills later, and for another one. Well, unfortunately, I missed it, but that is the Kraken Adept. I've done over 100 kills now, and that is all the Hard Combat Diaries done for the Kraken. Now, just to show you guys how close I am to done with the Hard Combat Diary, there is still some that will take some time to complete, but I only need 10 more. I'm 48 out of 58, and I think the one that's going to honestly take the longest time is this one. Kriara, 50 kills, and maybe the uh, Callisto one, this one, 50 kill count on the Callisto, but... Yeah, they're not that bad and they are basically the hardest ones left. Time to complete the 10 King Black Dragon kills in a privately rented instance. I'm bringing so many Sarah Brews and Restores. I should be able to do it with ranged. I'm just going to stay in melee distance and melee prey. This is the one who is the king now, so let's go and do it. I actually took quite a lot of food. I have 3 Sarah Dominion Brews left, but uh, that's kill number 10. Used Thralls as well to make it a bit easier, but that is the who is the king now completed. Another very easy one, 50 kill counts on the crazy archaeologist, and I already had 46, so literally only had to do 4 kills, and that is now kill number 50 for some sharks, crazy archaeologist adept completed. I could not really be bothered doing the hard clue scrolls, but uh, use two totems to get the Scotizo veteran hard combat task completed, and the last loot is going to be... Runeplate legs, ancient shards, three of them as well, that's not bad. But after all of this, I think it's time for me to complete the wilderness overall for the hard combat achievement. So I am going to get 50 Callisto kill counts, and I think this is the setup I'm going to use. I think Crystal Armor with the Bow Faradina has proven to be pretty good at all the wilderness bosses. And uh, hopefully we can get the 50 kill count without getting PK too many times. Well, I think Callisto might be an exception. I have been hitting now and then on the boss, but uh, the accuracy from the Crystal Armor on the Bofaradina is not really enough here, it seems. I think maybe Ruby and Diamond Bolts might be better, so I'm going to try that on the next run. Actually, never mind. I forgot we have full Verax, and I should be protecting everything with the item protect, so it's all good. And this is in singles as well, and I do believe this is the fastest method of killing Callisto, so this is how I'm going to do it. I did start bringing Thralls as well, and I just want to show you guys I'm on 19 KC now, so it's going pretty good, but I've been so lucky with seed drops, I've got a lot of Snapdragons and Raynor seeds, overall 16, and all of these we will use of course for super stores and prey potions for future group PVMing. Very happy to finally be done with Callisto, this is kill number 50, and this is all the wilderness tasks done, all the bosses completed, 50 kill count on all of them in uh, the hard combat diaries. And that was quite a grind, that took a long time, and also it is a bit later during the day now, so more people started logging in. In the beginning, I think the first 30 KC, I did not get attacked a single time, but the last 20 KC, I think I got attacked about 5 times, but I never died. So that was a good thing, but uh, yeah, finally done with all the wilderness bosses for the hard combat diaries. And here is the loot that I got from Callisto, 47 kill count, as I started with 3, and of course I got a lot of Raynor and Snapdragon, Dragon seeds, which is really useful for the team. Mahogany logs is also not bad for future construction, so overall very happy with the loot. Now for the next video, we are going to complete the Hard Combat Diaries. We're going to do one Nightmare kill count. We have to do 50 Kriara kill count up here, which uh, might actually give us some armadol pieces, would be pretty cool. And these Grador tasks that I have done are very easy. I can do them both in basically one kill. So yeah, we're getting really, really close. Let's see on the list here, 52 out of 58. But for now, this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe for future uploads. And until next time, guys, take care. Nine kill count on his Bori, and only one more to go to complete the task with the hard combat achievement. And also... 
75 farming. Pretty nice milestone. I have really been slacking on farming, but uh, yeah, I'm doing some now and then at least. There he is. Max Nick is going to help me do some Kriara. I have 9 KC right now. I need 50 for the hard combat diaries, so we're going to have to do quite a lot of Kriara. Let's see if we can manage to get any uniques. That would be really nice. Oh my, dude, plate. no way. Nice. Arma <laughs> chest plate on the first kill. The first kill, we get a chest plate. Dude, there's no way. Hello. Hello. Oi. <laughs> nice. Is this the achievement? You yes, I got it. Airborne showdown. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, that was a short but very successful two man trip. The Armadil chest plate is now in the group storage. Look at that. Beautiful. That's going to be so good for Nex. It has really good magic defense, which is super good at specifically Nex. But what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to do some more Kriara, but uh, I'm going to do it solo. I have actually 1.5 thousand almost black chinchompas, which I caught before, and I didn't really know what I would use them for, but I guess solo Kriara is really nice. No one is on right now to do it with, otherwise I would do it duo, trio, whatever, but uh, I want to get that 50 kill count done as soon as possible, so I got these three ecumenical keys. So let's see how many kills I can get per trip. I'm at 16 KC right now. My gear is looking great. This is actually kind of like a main account. I'm not even kidding. Like the Armadil chestplate makes you look so high tier and the Anguish, the Verox helmet. I think the setup overall is actually going to be really good for soloing Kriara. I'm honestly very pleasantly surprised with how well this went. This is the fifth kill of the trip, so all these keys should get me 15 kill counts. Which is a lot when I only need 50, so getting the 50 kill count done is probably not going to be as bad as I thought it might be. Doing pretty good, 35kc right now, but Nick logged in and he's going to help me try to complete the Org Freezer and the General Showdown achievement from Bandos. Should be very easy, he is going to bring the Ice Barrage to freeze the boss and then I'll kill it. And the second one is kill the boss meanwhile all the minions are dead. Also pretty easy I think. That's not the right potions. I've been ranging so much, I, <laughs> I didn't realize I am going to use melee potions. I think this is it. Should be the general showdown one with all the minions dead. Please don't respawn. Yeah, there we go. General showdown completed. Okay. Ready? Okay, did I freeze it or did I freeze? I freeze him. I freeze him. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I'm trying to kill. Try try help me as well. I, I think it actually has to be your hit. That's how I think the problem was. Oh, he's not dead. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. Is it should be. It? it should be. It should be. You love to me now. Yes, I got it. Nice, nice. Nice. That's all the I the bandos achievements. Yeah, come and give me your brutes of stone, bro. I'll Are upgrade them for you. Yeah. I have the Drake's Claw. Let's do this. Oh, boots of stone. The best trade deal in the history. And yes. No experience gained for that, unfortunately. But yeah, I was looking at seven hundred K trade back. Jeez, nice. Oh, no way! Armadil helmet on 46 kill counts. In what, like 35 kill counts, I've got both the Armadil helmet and the Armadil chest plate. And the helmet is actually useful. Look at that. Imagine if I would get in the last 4kc the chain scare. That would be insane. And here it is. So this is kill number 50 for some Dragonstone bolts. And that is the Kree Adept combat achievement completed. Which was the one that was the hardest one left of all the achievements I have. I only have to kill the Nightmare one time now. I can actually teleport out. Kill the Nightmare once and kill the Hispori boss one time. Which I already have planted. Which is going to be completely grown in two hours. So technically in two hours I will be done with the hard combat achievements. Look at this. 56 out of 58. And I actually do believe that I am probably one of the first group Iron Man to do this. I think this is a very niche thing to go for. You have to specifically kill a lot of different bosses. So yeah, probably one of the first to do this. It is now time to do a duo nightmare kill. It is the second to last achievement I need to do for the hard combat diaries. And with the help of Max Nick with a beautiful infernal cape, it should not be that bad. Dude, <laughs> come on, it's so close. I think we got it. Oh, yeah, my oh my god. Dude, I have I have 8 HP left. <laughs> oh my god. 8 HP clutch. That could not 40. have been closer. Erebus. Yeah, I got uncut emeralds, 33, but yeah, that is- I'm basically done with the hard combat diaries now. Just the spore left. That was clutch. That was clutch. 
And here we go, this is going to be the completion of the Hard Combat Diaries for the 10th Hispori kill. And now you can see in the chat as well, Blue's Cat 2 has completed the hard tier of the Combat Diaries. It was quite a grind, let's see what we get for this Hispori kill as well. Maybe a bottomless bucket, I don't think we need any more, but uh, yeah, nothing too special. But let's go and get the reward. And for the third time, we are back here to Gomal to get our Combat Diary rewards. Let's talk about the Combat Achievements. I have completed a Combat Tier. And uh, let's see what we get. We get the Gomal's Hilt 3, which actually has infinite charges to the God Wars dungeon. Before, it only had 3, so that is really good to have. Also, it looks pretty nice. And this Experience Lamp is, I think, 15,000 Herb Lore experience. Yes. There's also multiple passive rewards that you get for completing the Hard Combat Diary. All of those will be on the screen right now. Now when it comes to the Elite Diaries, I am not going to go for this actively. I am just going to get the tasks. If I'm doing the activity anyways, I might as well do it. But I'm not going to push for it and complete it as fast as I can. Because one of the requirements is actually kill the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil. And that is 93 Slayer. And I'm not about to grind out 6 more Slayer levels after doing all that Slayer grinding. I'm kind of done with it, so I'm going to do a couple of different things now. This is something I've been putting off because I've been doing the Combat Diaries, the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. Vorkath is one of the bosses I actually really enjoy, and I have basically all the requirements, just a tale of two cats and maybe something prerequisite to that. But I really want to get the upgraded Avas because I have this one still. It is not very good, and the Avas assembler from Vorkath is actually substantially better. Before I can do a Tale of Two Cats, I had to complete a Clarin's Little Helper, and this jump right here is the worst jump ever. I think I've fallen like 7-8 times, I guess 9 times now. Great. 231 quest points, and that is the quest completed. Some decent experience right there, and we can now do a Tale of Two Cats. I'm doing a Tale of Two Cats right now, and I'm pretty close to done, but uh, I saw a video by Colonello, the OSRS YouTuber, and his latest video was talking about how the red cross icon on the hat is actually illegal for Jagex to have in the game. You have to be associated with the organization to be able to use it, otherwise it is illegal. But in Old School RuneScape they just kept it for no reason, I'm not sure why. In RS3 they changed it to a green icon, but in Old School RuneScape they did not, so it's actually illegal that they have this in the game. You should honestly go and check out the video, it's called the RuneScape's rarest items are glitched. I think Bob's girlfriend's name is kind of neat. A Tale of Two Cats completed, you can say that in the chat, and we got the present. Let's see what this is, I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's experience lamps, okay, well, uh, how much experience is this going to be in Herb Lore? 2.5k, and I guess this is all 2.5k, so 5k Herb Lore experience for free, not bad. Uh, I was just looking at the requirements for the Dragon Slayer 2, I have basically all the items. The Goutweed though, oh my god, that is so annoying, if you don't know what it is, you have to like run through a maze at the troll stronghold, and if you get caught you have to redo it. I think it might be easier than I uh, remember it being, but uh, I think I spent some time there last time. Bit of a jump, I already completed the quest now, and I just killed Galvec, but uh, I went to bed after the last clip, and I just sat here in the morning completing this quest, and it was really not that bad. And the last boss actually died on one time, even though I have killed it before, because I just got completely one-shot in the beginning by the bombs. I forgot how they spawn, and uh, that would have been bad if I was a hardcore Iron Man, but luckily, I am not, and that is Galvec dead. Time to get the experience reward and access to the Myths Guild. Let's talk about the quest with Alec. And that is the quest completed. Let's see the experience drops coming in in a sec. 15k agility, 15k thieving, 18k mining and 25k smithing. 5 quest points and that is 72 agility. Let's actually go and buy a Myths Cape because that is going to be a very good item. I did not have a voice crack, that's fake. So let's buy the Myths Cape from Jack. It is very cheap, it's only like 10k. Yep, so I'm buying a couple of them. 
And looking at the stats, it has 1 plus strength bonus, but it has 6 plus crush. And this is the only cape that has that high crush bonus. So it's actually pretty good for Dragon Warhammer specs on Corporal Beast and, for example, Vetion, where you always use crush. We actually have like no Solar Scales at all and I need the Serpentine Helmet to do Vorkath to not get Venomed. We don't really have a lot of Anti-Venom so I'm going to do some Solar, get some Scales and when I have a decent amount I'll go to Vorkath. Actually going to be an achievement here, I am 10 kills in and that is 250 solar kills which is a master comma task. I started with 240 kill count and I think I will probably go to 260. I think I started with 50 scales and from 20 kill count I now have 3709 scales in the helmet. If it turns out to not be enough for 50 Vorkath kills, I'll come back. The backpack upgrade is kind of weird, it's 1 in 50 drop rate, but if you haven't got it after 50 kills it is guaranteed, but the first kill is Manta Ray, it's actually really good, because you can see in my inventory, I'm using only Karambons, because that is the only food I have, so now I have something to combo with. Oh my god, such a slow kill, sometimes my Ruby Bolts does not want to work with me, but uh, this is a quite important drop I want to mention. Wrath runes is very hard to get, unless you have very high runecrafting, and uh, basically no one in our team has runecrafting leveled, so uh, that is the only way really we get wrath runes, and you use them for the Archaeos spellbook to make three ashes into prayer experience, and it's actually really nice to bring to like Abyssal Demon tasks, and stuff like that to get a bunch of extra prayer experience. Oh, well that was easy. Vorkath head on 16 kill count on a very very slow kill. But uh, yeah, very nice to have that done. Uh, this boss does drain some supplies. I didn't really have good food as you guys saw. But uh, yeah, time to make the Avos Assembler. All the loot from the Vorkath kills on the top right here. Some pretty good loot overall. But let's now talk to Ava and I think maybe devices and here we go the Ava's assembler I have everything to make it and let's look at the stats the attack bonus of the Ava's accumulator is plus four ranged the defense is one slash and four magic upgrading it to this one is going to substantially increase that to two ranged strength which the other one had zero of also double attack bonus and a bunch of more different defensive stats also it looks better. This fits really well with my crystal armor. Two items I want to get right now which I should have got a long time ago is the soul bearer and the ash sanctifier. The ash sanctifier I can just get actually by talking to Tiss because I should have picked this up after completing the hard combat diaries. And here we go. Can I have a ash sanctifier? There it is. And uh, what this does is uh, basically a bone crusher but for ashes. But it costs death runes with charges, which is not that bad because it gives a good amount of charges every time. So if I'm doing a necreal task in the future, I can have this. Now the second thing is the soul bearer. This is an item that you can also charge runes into and it will automatically send the ensouled heads that you get from Slayer into your bank. It's kind of expensive on runes, but it is worth it now and then. If I have a full inventory, I can activate it. And if I have space in my inventory, I would just deactivate it. So it's pretty nice for those last and sold heads of a task. So I'm going to go and get that now. It's from a mini quest. And there we go. That's the soul bearer completed and the ash sanctifier. So that's going to be really useful when I go back to Slayer in the future. Me and Max Nick have been talking about doing some raids soon and trying to get the Arcane Prayer Scroll and the Dexterous Prayer Scroll for the Rigor and Augury Prayers. But I only have a 72 prayer but I have a lot of experience banked right here so I'm going to go ahead and use all of the bones on the Chaos Altar and use all the Ensouled Heads of course at the Archaeos area and let's see how much experience we get. And here we go, this is 74 prayer for the Rigor Prayer whenever we do get that Prayer Scroll. But uh, I have been PK'd like twice and I lost overall like 20 bones maybe. But I still have a lot more to go, so 77 is probably going to be uh, pretty easy to get. One more Ensouled Head and I am going to get 77 prayer. And I've used up all the bones that I had in the bank except for the big bones because that was kind of bad experience and I don't want to spend too much time doing those. But I can use them whenever I want to to get some experience at least. But that is 77 prayer. And I still have quite a lot of Ensouled Heads in the bank. So I might even be able to reach 78. I guess we'll see. I use all of them now. 
Not quite all the way to 78, but uh, pretty close to it. 42,000 experience, and after this one, like 40k experience of 78. So I will be able to get that pretty fast if I would go for it. But we did get 77, which was the goal anyway. So now whenever I do get that Augury Prayer Scroll, the Arcane one, or the Dexterous Prayer Scroll for Rigor, I will have those, which is very convenient. I do believe that overall we're going to start doing more group bossing again pretty soon because we've been kind of waiting on Dovidas. I have been doing some with Max Nick to do some combat achievements, but Dovidas has been doing a lot of League's content and he did say recently he is feeling kind of done with it. So as soon as he's coming back to the group Iron Man, we're planning on doing quite a lot of group content. But this is going to be it for this video. I do hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see the future uploads of the series. And also I'm very happy about that armadillo chest plate and the helmet that I got early in the video. Going to be very useful on next actually when we do do it. So that is a nice convenience. But uh, until next time guys, take care. Welcome to episode number 40 of the Group Iron Man series. For the past day I've been doing some AFK fishing. I've gained 213,000 experience and uh, rocking this new anglers outfit that I got recently. And I've gone from 70 to 73 fishing. But now Max Nick has asked me to do some Chambers of Seric, so let's get into that. Oh, we did Deathless. We did a Deathless, nice. Oh. Jeez. Ah, uh, no loot though. Not yeah. for me at least. Jeez, no loot for me. Bit of a random thing, but in my last video I commented on that the nurse hat has the red cross icon on it and it's actually illegal that they have this. The day after I posted that video, it's not because of my video, but there was a bigger video by Colonello talking about this. They now have it changed, so it was obviously an oversight. Imagine if I would die now. Okay, I think he's dead. Yep, he's dead. <sighs> Anything? No, white. Ah, uh, wait, late. Yep. It's so a new personal best that we shaved off three minutes. Yeah. And it was a harder raid. It was a harder raid. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Yeah, good stuff. Good progress. So. Just level 94 magic by Camelot teleporting. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> now we can use Barrage. Now that I hit 94 magic, I have Barrage without boosting, which helps a lot in the Theater of Blood on the first boss. And if we're going to do the Theater of Blood, which I hope we're going to do kind of soon, I will need Void. I don't have it, Dovidas doesn't have it, but everyone else does. So I'm a bit late to this, I'm one of the later people to get it. So I might as well start working towards it. And I currently have like no points, I have 18. And I think for just the base set, I need 1,250 for all the helms and all the items. And for the superior, I need 400 more points on top of that. Or elite, I guess it's called. So let's get grinding on this. It's going to be quite a while. The nice thing about this grind is how AFK it is. I'm over 1,000 points right now. And I've gained like 150,000 strength experience by just having the BGS slapping minions here at the Void Knight. But when I have 1,250, I'll buy all the base items and then I'll work on the Western Province Diaries. Then go back here and get the 400 points upgraded to Elite. But I have enough points now and I'm buying the last items. And this is all the base items completed. And I technically can do Theater of Blood with this. It's not the worst in the world, just going with this. But having the Elite is pretty nice, so I'm going to start working on the Hard Western Province Diaries. I'm getting really close at this point, so what I have left is the Chompies, which I'm going to do both the medium requirement for 125 and the 300 for the hard one in the same session. And I have a palm tree planted already, so that's good. But what I need now is to catch a monkfish, wait for the palm tree to grow, and then basically just do the Chompies and I am done. Now for the Swan Song quest, I also need to do the Garden of Tranquility, unfortunately, which is one of my most hated quests in the game. But it is what it is, I have to do it. But here it is, this is the Garden of Tranquility completed after the cutscene. The reason why I dislike this quest so much, it, it doesn't take that long to do it, that's not the thing. But it's just so much farming, you have to teleport all over the place, plant things and uh, pick them up and then bring statues from like Lumbridge and Falador all over here. It's just quite an annoying quest, but uh, nice to have it done anyways. And there it is, 240 quest points, 5000 farming experience, and now we have everything to do this swan song quest. It's kind of funny how swan song requires 100 quest points to complete, it literally took me like 5 minutes to do the entire quest. Meanwhile the Garden of Tranquility, which was a requirement for it, that is a pretty early game quest, took me probably like 20 minutes or something to complete, so 
Yeah, yeah, this is the swan song completed. Also, of course, uh, access to the monkfish fishing, which I might do now and then. Not sure how useful it is, but uh, 10,000 prayer, 15k magic as well. And a very long conversation that should be done in a second here, hopefully. Oh, 10k fishing as well. That's some nice experience. And of course, why I did this, let's cook one of the monkfish in here to complete the hard western province task. That is that done. And now I think everything I have left to do, maybe something more as well. The chompy bird hunting on the medium one. Oh yeah, and I have to check the palm tree in Letia. Hopefully it did not die. I didn't pay for it, but that is the last things I have to do. Moment of truth, let's see if it died or not. It is alive, perfect. So that task is now also completed when I do check this. Let's see in the chat. That is now done. So now it is time to get 300 chompies done. You know, there are some times when you do the chompy bird hunting and you shoot the chompy bird like four times and it refuses to die because the ogre arrows are so bad. That's why I'm going to be making these mithril brutal arrows. I think it's going to be good enough to kill them on one shot every time. If I have a good gear and I'm using the ogre compo, of course, which looks absolutely disgusting. Look how big this is. I don't even know how anyone would shoot an arrow with this, but uh, yeah. I have 30 kills right now, let's uh, have a look. 30, and I will have to get that all the way to 300, and then I am done with the diaries. And here we go, that's the last chompy I need. I have everything now. This actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I went from 30 to 300 in probably like an hour of active gameplay. I was uh, doing it over like three and a half hours of very AFK doing this, so I could have definitely done it in an hour. But yeah, let's go and complete both the diaries. Oh man, which option is it? Is it, can I have a hat please? I'm not sure, but I need to get the hats for all- Oh yeah, here we go. This is the hats, so many collection logs. And Jesus, that is a lot of hats for 300 different kill counts. But yeah, that is the medium and the hard diary now completed overall. And I just have to go and get the rewards. Some free Erblore experience incoming right here and some nice banners as well. Let's get all the rewards for the medium and the hard diary. And I have a crystal weapon seed in the bag. And the reason for that is because we can now get a crystal halibird on top of all of this. Which is going to be excellent for a lot of PVM activities. I might be bringing that to Chambers of Xerix in the future. Which is uh, of course a very good spec weapon for the hand. But that is also 73 Erblore, very nice. Kind of lucky that Max Snake actually got this seed from the Corrupted Gauntlet a while back, an extra that he obviously did not need, so I can actually make this halberd. Is this going to cost me any money? 450k. Okay, that's not too bad. And that is the halberd unlocked. A very good spec weapon. Well, this time around, I only had to get 400 points for the top and the bottom, and now we have the elite top and the robe completed. So I am done with pest control, which is very nice. I think overall, maybe I got like 300k cash from this grind as well, which is not too bad. But uh, yeah, I'm basically ready for the theater of blood now, and I think we are going to do it kind of in the near future, hopefully. For quite a while, the group has had three Odium Shards 3 and three Odium Shard 2 in the bank, and we only needed the number one, which is from the Chaos Fanatic, which is uh, the most annoying one to kill. It is the slowest to kill, but it is kind of fast with the Bow of Feradinan, which I have the upper hand of having. But we still need three of those shards, and every single one of them is a completed shield. And we really wanted to use that at Nex for the crossbow users. Me and Max Snake is going to be using a bow for Adinan, but uh, not everyone in the team has that. So I'm going to go to the Chaos Fanatic, hopefully get some Odium shards. If you don't know, I actually have already Chaos Fanatic, quite some KC, and I have not got a single Odium piece yet. So hopefully we get that soon. Well, I can't have two of them, but that is a second Chaos Elemental pet. I now have two pets from this boss and zero Odium Shards, and that is not the collection log. But uh, I want to have a look at this. Let's go to Chaos Fanatic. Two pets, two Malediction Shards, zero Odium in 457 kill counts. So there was just an update where they introduced the combat achievements finally for Nex and I thought I might as well comment on this because my videos lately have been about the combat achievements. I was a bit worried that there would be a hard achievement and I would have to do that but that is not the case. And let's go to bosses all the way down to Nex which should be right there. There are 11 achievements and there are only two elite and a bunch of masters and three grandmaster ones and this one is very easy kill next ones. 
kill next without anyone dying also these i mean these should be done very fast whenever we start doing it with the team and this of course is a time sink 100 times i'm kind of surprised that they went with 100 times because they have been talking about making the kill count ones a lot shorter i feel like 100 kills on next might be a bit much then again you can always mass it so it's not that bad and the rest of these are probably not that bad i can see the grandmasters being pretty crazy kill next with two or less players inside the arena at the start of the fight yeah that sounds pretty difficult not too bad though i mean some people have almost soloed it so it seems decent for grandmaster kill next while a player is coughing uh do you have to bring the cough all the way from the start to the end of the fight i think that is the case so that seems very difficult or actually, maybe it's not that bad, because you can do that in a mass as well, now that I think about it. I mean, masses do it all the time, unintentionally. So maybe not that bad. And uh, kill next while completing the requirements for there is no escape shadow moves aside. Okay, so I'm not sure what those are, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem that bad, honestly. I'm at 569 kill counts, and of course, I get a malediction shard... We have way too many of these. How is my collection log looking? I think I just looked at this, but uh, three of them and zero odiums. I'm thinking I'm going to 750 KC and then I'm going to stop. Hopefully I'll get an odium in that time. I went to put in the malediction shard in the bank, which actually completes another shield. But do you guys see what we have in the storage? Look at this. We have a draconic visage. Apparently, Doug actually got that, like, the day after he posted his latest video. So that is insane. It's like 1 in 10,000 drop rates. And we do actually have Dark World Order that can make that into an actual DFS. So that is going to be really useful for maybe, a, like, Bandos tanking or something like that. It probably has some other uses as well, like, maybe Rune Dragons with a Hasta. That could be good. You know, RuneScape does weird things to your brain. I really want the Odium Shard, but I'm at 675 kill count, which is two and a half times the drop rate for the Odium Shard. And at this point, I'm like, how dry can I actually go? If I go like 1000 kills without getting it, I mean, that's kind of like cool, but also very sad. But there it is, 750 kill count on the boss, I basically doubled my kill count in this video, still no Odium Shard, I think how I'm going to do it is I'm going to do 250 kill count every single video, until I get 3 Odium Shards, maybe I'll end at like 2000 KC or something, I guess we'll see. Now when it comes to the loot, I missed tracking 60 of the kills, but 317 of the kills I got this loot. The Ancient Staff by the way is basically the same drop rate as getting a shard, so I got three of those, but I only got one Malediction Shard, so even on Malediction ones I was unlucky. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll get lucky in the future. Now after that, with the knowledge of me having done 750 Chaos Fanatic on my group Iron Man, I want to show you guys my main account's collection log on the Chaos Fanatic, because this is ridiculous. I have 137 kill counts and I have 3 odiums, which is li literally what we need on the group Iron Man. So imagine if this was swapped around, that would have been perfect. Now what am I going to do next? Well, I feel like no one in the team is doing much of a medium clue scrolls, so I'm going to go here to Puro Puro, I'm going to start stacking up some impling jars, I'm going to catch a bunch of eclectic implings, and maybe I'll do like 250, 300 or something. By the way, medium clues from them is 1 in 25, so 250 jars would be around 10 clue scrolls. Of course, I want to do more in the future than 10. The ranger boots is roughly like 1 in 200, so we will have to do a lot more than that, but I feel like it's a good thing to start grinding now and then. It's actually really easy to catch the eclectic implings because you can just go to one of their spawn points, which I've marked right there with a tile marker, and you can just sit here and spam click until you have a full inventory. Sometimes you're kind of unlucky though, and it spawns on the other side, and you will have to root it and walk over there. I think it will happen in a, just a second here. This is post commentary, by the way. Um, I think right now, yep, there you can see right there, and you will have to root it and run over there. Actually went pretty fast, 266 eclectic implings, and I already had a medium clue in the bank as well, and all I needed for this was actually a mithril plate body. I have the adamant square shield and bone dagger in the bank, so I can do that real easy. But what I'm going to do now is just complete this medium, open all the eclectic implings, and then I'll come back to you guys with the caskets. I honestly feel like this is not my video. Uh, I was really unlucky again. I already had one medium clue in the bank, so I expected to get around 11 clues. 
And I have now seven, so I got really unlucky. There was a time I opened like 70, 80 of them and I got no medium clues. But yeah, let's go ahead and open them. Hopefully we get something good. <laughs> of course, not expecting to get ranger boots in seven clue scrolls, but it is a nice beginning on the grind. So let's see if we can get lucky or not. First one is not great. Oh, that is really nice. Ancient Mitre. That is an ancient item, which is actually really good if we're going to next for the kill count. And overall, it has a good prayer bonus. So I'm very happy with that. And we get another Mitre. Bandos Mitre. So far, insane luck actually on these. I'm happy even if we get nothing more now. Philip Hills Teleport. Actually, I only have two left of those and they're pretty good for completing medium clue scrolls. So that's nice. A boater. Look at all these uh, collection log pop-ups. And the last one is nothing. But yeah, a very successful opening, I would say. They look pretty good as well. And have a look at this. Dark World Order just made the dragon fire shield. So uh, this is a potential range setup for someone in the team. Looks absolutely insane. Of course, I don't have any boots equipped right now, but it would be like ancient boots or something. But uh, hopefully I can get those rangers in the future and we can get a pigation crystal. And on top of all this gear, that would look insanely good. And also, of course, I might as well complete the Malediction Ward. This is the second one for the team. And if I do get another one from the Chaos Fanatic on the Odium Shard Grind, we will have a third one. But yeah, they're pretty useful for a couple of things like Kraken, Solra. I'm sure there are a couple of uses for it. Unfortunately, I did want to do some group bossing in this video, but the team has not really synced up. I think in the near future we will actually get to do some group bossing though, and now with everyone basically having Elite Void, we are going to be able to do Theater of Blood. Not right now, Sandwich Lady. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the end of this video. I do hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see the future uploads, and until next time guys, take care.